Hello and welcome everybody to the One Piece and Digimine uh, World Championships. I'm Doe along with Ying Hong and Steven, otherwise known as Champion Steven. Champion of many things. What would you say your primary champion skills are, Steven? I'm just curious. That's why I want to start things off. I would say a lot of people watching the English broadcast of the Bandai Card Fest World Finals Tour Finale in Japan would say I'm a Digimon champion. And I'll be joined oh, later today go. by my friend and Digibro Yoshi Sudarso as we bring you guys the uh, Digimon Finals. That sounds good. So just to uh, give everybody a little bit of a uh, uh, taste of what's to come, we're going to go through some Swiss rounds for the One Piece World Championship. Then we're going to dive into Digimon for a while. Then we're going to come back to finish off One Piece. That's what you can expect over the next... Oh, I don't know, Ying, like uh, 8 to 12 hours, something like that. It's it's going to be a long, beautiful day of card games, isn't it? You have quite a long day ahead of us, but like like you said, uh, we start with One Piece. Uh, One Piece will have five rounds of Swiss. After five rounds of Swiss, we'll go into the playoffs of Digimon. Digimon will then have semifinals one, your fi uh, where you'll get the finals, uh, one of the finalists. And then we'll have semifinals two, the second finalist, and then you have the finals of Digimon. After the finals of Digimon, we'll come back to One Piece for the One Piece playoffs, where you have uh, semifinals one, where you find the finalists, and then we have the third place match. After the third place match, we will then have the grand finals of One Piece. That's right. So I know we're going to see a lot of One Piece, obviously, today, but that makes me want to talk a little bit more about Digimon to start things off. So, uh, Stephen, what can you tell us about what to expect about the rounds we're going to see today? What are the decks to look out for? What are the players to look out for? Uh, what can we get hyped about? Well, much like the One Piece participants in today's event, we have 16 players from all the different nations representing the 2023 competitive year for the Digimon card game. And as of right now, the current format we'll be playing in is BT15 with the brand new restriction list that just came into effect on March 1st. So this is going to be the wow. first event for this brand new format for a lot of these players. And um, a good chunk will be players that played the original BT15 format where this restriction was never put into play. So they'll be playing with decks that they didn't even have actual experience with. So definitely expect a lot of hot takes, I guess, for a better, uh, for, for lack of a better term, because this will truly be unexpected and I'm sure people will bring what they're comfortable with, what they know, and uh, maybe we'll see some surprises there. I've seen a couple of deck lists and I don't want to spoil too much for you guys, uh, don't. but yeah. let's just say <laughs> we're in for a treat. Uh, Ying, you, you've been known as a Digimon dabbler from time to time, to say the least. Uh, what, what are a your Digimon thoughts demon, coming to this more one? like it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Uh, just because I play Demon Lords doesn't mean I'm a demon now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I had a deck of choice, if I were to ever play it, I would be playing Milu. But that's just me. I'm not sure about everyone else. And I'm really excited to see what decks people are going to be bringing into this, because we have a Newsmon that got limited. We have a Pocklin um, that got limited. So we have to hmm. see what would players be looking forward to. Uh, what is their comfort pick? Uh, of course, don't forget, we have the Garuru line that got limited as well. So Fair I just want to stress here that my boy here said he wasn't a demon, but then said his deck of choice would be a mill deck. I stand by what I said. Uh, you know, I, I got to agree. I'm not a Digimon player myself, but I've been firmly anti-mill for my entire, like, almost 30-year card gaming career at this point. So, Ying, you're kind of you're kind of alone here. I'm sorry. I'll have to be, uh, I'll have to poo-poo on that as well. But uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, One Piece. Obviously, we're going to see a ton of that today. Another great set of 16 players from all around the world coming to compete to try to be the world champion. And uh, the question is, I think on everybody's minds, uh, are we going to see a Sakazuki heft the trophy, or is it going to be another one of these decks? I gotta say, my um, deck of choice to win the whole thing is Sakazuki. One, uh, due to number of presents. The presence of Sakazuki, they're more likely than not um, players will be playing that deck. By mm. sheer numbers, it's more likely to be at the top. Uh, other than that, we have Anel that can possibly win it does have a pretty good matchup into that uh the sakazuki but then yeah that's to see about everything else will there be other purple luffy players where anel does struggle against whereas sakazuki barely does have a good matchup in there in my opinion at least i'm just mm -hmm. sad that uh i i, I want to see the red purple luffy i don't think we're gonna see the red purple luffy i'm a little bit a tear, you know, it's you can't see it. it's very small, but it is coming down my cheek right now. But I, I believe in an L. In fact, my pick to win the whole thing is none other than uh, the winner of NA, Jonas. Not that I've got any bias, of course, 
But uh, I'm just putting that out there. I, I think uh, I think he's favored. I think his Anel list runs into the Sakazuki's really well. I'm sure it's been tweaked slightly coming into this one to uh, handle whatever little shifts we've had in the meta. There has been a couple little things over the last, you know, month. What, how's it long has it been? About a month or so since, uh, since uh, the North American Championships. There hasn't really been any changes to the game itself. We're still on OP5. There haven't been any new restricted lists or anything like that. But still, the meta does evolve over time as people play, as people kind of figure out how to play around things. You got to adapt. Uh, but Steven, I know you're here to call the Digimon action, but uh, what do you think about the One Piece event we've got going on to? Well, um, may I join you in sh shedding a tear? Because sadly, I don't think my favorite deck of One Piece, Nami, will be represented today here <laughs> at not. the uh, World Finals. But that doesn't mean I'm not equally as excited. Like you've said, the awakening of a new era beat uh, OPO5 format has been a long one. But it's been a really cool one, full of yeah. tech, full of evolutions, and full of a very dominating deck that every single player needs to respect or hop on the bandwagon for and just be like, guys... Let me just show how good of a player I am with this already solved perfect deck. Uh, so I have no doubt in my mind that Sakazuki will perform, but I wouldn't be surprised if some hardcore players like Jonas or the surprise purple Luffy's, what have you, will show us what they're made of because they are the world finalists for a reason. So they're going to figure yeah. out what to do. Now, I, I feel like we have to clarify something because we were talking about being a bit anti-mill a moment ago. We have to clarify that we're not anti-self-mill, self right? Mill. So oh. the Nami is okay. Uh, oh. Don't milling your opponent. That is just that is just atrocious, right? But but milling yourself perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. Yeah, I um, always say I mean, uh, the reason why I love you. Nami so much is I get to play One Piece without playing One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> you just like to play <laughs> Solitaire, so right? Solitaire with One Piece characters. I, I want to play yeah, a different maybe. game than everybody else, but I want to play go. it with you. That's the whole point. Yep. Fair well, enough. Here's the thing, though. I know we talked about um, NA finalists during this year, but we can't forget about our other finalists from other regions. We have Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, China, mm -hmm. um, Europe, Europe, Latin America, Australia. We have players from all over the world, and everyone's trying to compete to be the Pirate King here. Now, mm -hmm. just because we see Jonas perform extremely well in NA doesn't mean other players in the other regions can't perform really well. Now, which region do you think will end up being on top? It's a question now. Well, here's the thing, all right? We have more players, I believe, from Japan than any other region represented by quite a bit. So I think, personally, that puts a lot of pressure on the players from Japan to try to win it, right? Because if you have the most representation, but you can't quite get over the finish line to victory, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's going to sting a little bit. That's going to sting. So I, I almost feel like there's more pressure on the players from Japan just because of that alone. But that said, I mean, we've got a lot of talented uh, players from around the world. I believe the EU was a Sakazuki mirror, if I remember correctly. And, and uh, who knows if they're playing the same thing, but either way, good players over there. But I'm curious, right? Because this is kind of the first time we've really done things on this scale. So I feel like we're in for a surprise either way. Yeah, this is so funny to say because this is like, I think, the first world finals for one piece but it's the third one for digimon and so yeah. i know that we have uh chung man was the first ever digimon world finals winner uh he was from uh, the na region playing from canada uh ying do you remember who the second young player was i believe he was latin america correct correct he is from latin america with black world greymon winning the second one mm -hmm. so we could have a potential to have like the first repeat nation winning here today or we could have a completely newcomer because like Ying said we have people from Oceania from right here in Japan and who knows what else what's generally known as like the strongest region worldwide for Digimon again like I'm not I'm not into that game so I don't know so educate me well I, I look, look 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 I don't want to be biased and let my America hat shine but sure. I'm a, oh, I'm a bit of a fan of the North American player base <laughs> specifically here in California I feel like we have some of the best players in the world for every single card game and Digimon Fair. is just it's just a couple of those I agree I, 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 I agree gotta say think, I yeah. gotta say though for Digimon my number one player has still is gonna be our first world champion show man I have yet to take a game off him he even through back the time yet to like, get take a single game off is. him <laughs> Wow. All right. That's yeah, something. he is he's a he is just a, an amazing player. Couldn't be here today, sadly, because I don't think he was able to compete in many events throughout mm. the competitive season. But if he did, he'd be able to pick it up just fine. Now, in the realm of One Piece, I'm very curious about this too, because uh, in in North America, we're kind of a little bit behind. We're we're like uh you know we're in the we're in the past a little bit. 
uh, getting to, to this, in fact, OP5 meta that we're playing the uh, World Tour Final on uh, is a little bit of a step back for the Japanese players because they're already a bit ahead of us. Uh, they're into OP6. They're even looking ahead to OP7 at this point. So to come back to the OP5 meta, which again, it seems like one a lot of people enjoy, um, has to be interesting for them too, to sort of get their brains back into that gear. But it also means they have perhaps a little bit more meta experience on the other hand, you could look at it and say, well, North America has been able to see what has been done in Japan and also iterate on that to a greater degree coming into this. So I think there's a lot of questions on, you know, if Japan has the edge in an OP5 meta, uh, considering that, you know, they're already a little bit ahead expansion wise in the, the main game, you could say. Well, they had a lot of expansion. Yes, they uh, played OP6, EP01. Um, mm. I believe OP7 is released, just released, uh, if I'm not uh, wrong. But right now they're traveling back in time. They're going mm. back to a format they played previously. Uh, whereas, compar comparatively, we look at uh, the English playing uh, regions where they've been playing this format, OP05, for a very long time now. They've been practiced. They, this towards the end of the meta and they're fresh. It's fresh in their mind. Uh, whereas, um, the Japanese playing betas, they, they've been playing new formats and now they're going back inside, so they're less practiced for this specific format. But hmm. you can't take it away from them, they do have more experience in the long run, but it's compared a fresh in mind format versus a going back in time format uh, type of players. Well, we'll see if but it's something like, that uh, I'm sure. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add to that a little bit, like something that I'm sure every Japanese player that is playing in the One Piece tournament today could attest to is that even though they haven't touched a uh, OP05 meta in a long time, they've been messing with Sakazuki nonstop ever since. Like that is a deck yeah, that they've iterated on for OP06 and definitely been playing them until probably like maybe two weeks ago. They were like, okay, maybe it's time to finally put it down. Oh, wait, World's Called? I can pick it back up again? Cool. So, no. you know, even though this specific specific meta isn't something they're like as accustomed to, playing with these decks that they're bringing today, I'm sure are more than second nature to them. Yes. We'll see, is it is it like uh, jumping back on a bicycle or is it not? Uh, we'll, we'll find out soon because I believe we have to go to a quick break. We're gonna say goodbye to Steven. We're gonna let things get set up in the venue and when we come back, we're gonna get things started with the Swiss round of the One Piece World Tour Finals here at Bandai Card Fest 2324. So do not go anywhere. We'll be back with the start of Swiss for One Piece right after this. Yeah. So, 
ワンピースカードの頂点決めるって感じですよね、この世界。ま、優勝ですよね、それは。ま、環境の適温でま、それに有利な適応を持って持ってくことします。使えるカードも多分もう決まってると思うので、本当どれがどれだけそれを研究でき
uh, it feels like lately I've been seeing a little bit more, specifically like Blue Hina added in. Um, we saw it off and on before, of course. There was like a couple here and there. It wasn't uncommon, but I feel like lately, looking at some of the lists that have been topping other tournaments around the nation, uh, it's been in like every list now. What, what do you think about that change? So, uh, Blue Hina itself, it's really good consistency boost, um, allowing yeah. you for a turn two play or turn one. Actually, yeah, it can only be a two turn play. But like, being able to play it where you can replace yourself and worst case scenario on late game, it's it discard target for uh, your effect to cycle it for something else. It could be something better. I feel like it's something too where it's like if you're going to run into the Sakazuki mirror, you're going to have to play some of those games from the first turn player perspective. And so just having like a decent three drop uh, is to rely on, I think is, is nice. Yeah. So I'll cut you off right here real quick. Um, right yeah, here you can see it. that there's playing... Uh, the number of players was 60 or 16 players and then time yep. uh for each round is 30 minutes unfortunately i do i wow. cannot read the remaining japanese play uh, names uh, it looks like they're cutting to top four after five rounds that's what it is. it's 16 players uh five rounds of swiss cutting to top four 30 minute rounds all right there you go well I can't read Japanese at all, so you've got the uh, the edge in that <laughs> category. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't read the last line. Okay, if it was Korean, I would have us all uh, covered. But no, Japanese is a language I haven't delved uh, quite too deeply into yet. Aside from whatever I've picked up from watching anime over the years, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Here, so we saw the introduction of uh, individual players during that video, right? Which yeah. player stood out the most to you? Um, again, like, I, I said it before, like, I really have become a Jonas fan, uh, both from the North America, all oh, those playmats are sick, by the way, oh my gosh, it's beautiful, but uh, <laughs> a Jonas fan, I just, I just really, I mean, I, I really love his attitude, right, where it's just like, he has an attitude of, I want to win, but I also want to, like, show good games, I want to, uh, you know, change the meta, I want to make them think differently, like, I feel like he feels like a real card gamer's card gamer, if that makes sense, right? Uh, so I, I hope he does well. Obviously, there's some NA bias uh, in there too. But uh, I just kind of liked his attitude when we talked with him in LA, and when we heard from him just a moment ago now, which I believe was an interview they shot in LA as well. Yeah, it's not just about playing the best; it's playing against the best and be able to win against the best as well, which is what yeah. he wants to do. He wants to be able to play against the best in the best game possible and win against them. He wants to triumph and be that number one, be that very best. Yeah, both both him and Clyde honestly showed some uh, great sportsmanship in the finals when we casted that uh, in uh, L.A. like a month ago or so. You were just like great attitudes from both of those players. Um, you know, obviously, I think that's what we're going to talk about the most because uh, that's the event that we were at. That's the one we casted. Um, I've watched some of the finals from some of the other regions, but don't know the players quite as well. But how about you? Uh, who who stands out to you? So I like um, Perboya's uh, attitude towards games. Like you got to believe in yourself. If you can trust that you believe in yourself to win, you can play the game better. And yeah. Fabian had a really good attitude where he was he can say he was able to represent Europe after playing against some of the best players there. He's saying Europe had a lot mm -hmm. of good players and he was able to come out on top and represent the region for it. So I gotta say Europe had a really good uh, showing for this. Yeah, for sure. I, it's going to be very competitive, and why wouldn't it be, right? It's a World Tour final. Like, this should, in theory, be 16 of the best, if not the 16 best One Piece players in the world. So whoever ends up lifting the trophy at the end is definitely going to be someone who has uh, absolutely earned it. It's a long road to get to where these players got to, and it's impressive, right? I mean, there's so many different things that go into it, right? There's the, the raw card game talent. There's the hours of practice with uh, friends, with your playtesting group there's the hours of uh, tweaking your deck to be just right to face what you think you're going to face in the meta then you get to the event there's the adaptation on the day a lot of these players are going to be battling still a little bit of jet lag it becomes a, a bit of a marathon so keeping that mental stamina going for that entire period of time it's tough like uh, it is i don't think people really think about just how grueling some of these big card game events can be and just how like on the ball you need to be for so long so it always impresses me anyone who makes it this far yeah speaking of jet lag we have players uh from na which are 14 plus hours difference uh it's about have, 14 like, depending on where you are yeah, yeah. Have 14 that's why i said 14 plus uh mm -hmm. and you have players from um Latin america where or where also just as much uh yeah. in europe uh 
quite a couple hours, a few hours uh, difference as well. Um, so the, that jet lag will definitely impact the way they play if they are still feeling it, uh, depending on when they arrived in Japan and how long they've had to practice and be able to get a good rest before today. Yeah, I mean, as, as someone who's like flown around the world doing different events and things like that, when you're on a plane for like 17 hours, I had to go from Sydney, Australia to uh, Katowice, Poland uh, to, to do an event once. And like, that was a, an insane day of flying. You just hope you can get some sleep on the plane. You just hope you can get some rest when you land. You have to fight the urge to be like, I'm in this new place. I want to explore. I want to check it out. You have to remember why you're there and like uh, really kind of like go to work, right? And sometimes work involves sleeping. So hopefully everybody's well rested. Hopefully, uh, speaking of sleep, hopefully we can last the night because we're getting started at like, well, it's, it's 5.30 for me, Central. It's 6.30 for you, Central. And we're going to be going, uh, we, we might see the sun come up. We'll, we'll see. Oh, it's going to be a long We night. have our viewers <laughs> to keep us company, right? So they're going to be yeah. staying up and watching the sunrise along with we are. <laughs> That's right. Yep. I'm sure Gavin's well rested <laughs> over there. I'm sure he got a great night of sleep before the, before the matches today. Yes. Yep. And there's our, of course, our casters over there in uh, Japan as well. Still getting things uh, ready on stage for our first match. Not sure if maybe we're going to have uh, any interviews or something like that. I would imagine going to Swiss, Ying, they're just going to do some discussion about, uh, you know, the same things we're talking about. What do we expect to see? What little tweaks do we expect to see? Uh, so on that topic, um, you know, Sakazuki, Enel, Zoro, maybe a little bit of Katakuri, probably some Purple Luffy. Uh, any, any outliers there? Anything you think we're going to be really surprised about this weekend? If there is a surprise, if anyone were to surprise me right now, would be mm -hmm. if someone takes and brings Uta to this. But <laughs> I'd really yeah, that'd be surprising, extremely yeah. doubt this will happen. I would love to see it, but I really doubt this will happen. I, you know, I think Uta's solid. I, I don't think I don't know if that deck's a world champion deck, but like uh, I think it's I think it's pretty good. It's fun at least. What do you think? Oh, it's extremely fun. It's, it has a very good matchup into yellow. However, it has a very poor matchup into Sakatsuki, which is the prominent dominant deck yeah. for this specific meta. Cool to see some of the film characters get a little bit more support. Like, I, I just kind of like the, the theme of it all. Um, and, you know, One Piece Film Red is like the only quote-unquote modern One Piece content I've seen yet. Because I, I don't know, like, I've talked about this before, but like, I didn't start watching the anime until I started playing the card game. And uh, so I'm like way behind in that regard. I'm in like Skypea right now. Obviously, I'm spoiled on like a million things that happen, but you know, I haven't, I haven't seen it. All right, they sh they're showing the, oh, the deck. So okay. it's eleven it Sakasuki, yeah. two surprising. Anel, two Purple Luffy, one Zoro. Yo, I respect to the one Zoro out there keeping the aggro dream alive. I, I guess Purple Luffy falls into that category too. Sure, why not? You're ramping, you're playing threats, but there is nothing like pure aggro and that's what Zoro brings and so as as a long time aggro player in card games myself it warms my heart to see our one singular red player in the pool how far do you think he's gonna make it uh i'll just say this uh, hopefully he can make it Zoro's pretty good in this matchup against sakazuki and so. uh purple luffy the only, the biggest struggle yeah. in this is the anel matchup so if he can avoid the anel he can make it really far uh, totally. So I can say this. I'm pretty far off of my prediction. I only predicted eight Sakazuki's. Now there's 11. And I'm surprised there's not a single Katakuri being played. You know, I, I feel like Katakuri has been falling off like slowly but steadily. So I on the one hand, I'm, I'm surprised. On the other hand, I'm like, all right, if you're going to bring something off of the big three, you know, off of the Sakazuki and L Purple Luffy, what are you going to bring? It's probably going to be Zoro. And where does that leave Katakuri? So I... I would say I'm only mildly surprised that we're not seeing any, um, but but it is interesting. I mean, I think a lot of a lot of players out there still like rocking the Katakuri. It's still a strong deck, but for the World Championship, everyone just seems to be saying, "All right, Sakazuki's the best deck." So either I'm playing it, or I'm going to play something that I feel I can pilot into the Sakazuki well enough to win. Yes, um, but in that regard, that's why I was, that was what I was thinking is like. Maybe Katakuri wouldn't be a bad choice because Katakuri to me is feels pretty good into that matchup. Um, obviously, if you miss the trigger, really then it feels really bad. Ones. It's gonna be rough. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing that always kind of held me back with Katakuri a little bit too, because I feel like you are punished a lot more for things that Anel just like shrugs off, 
right? So if you're going to be playing yellow, you know, God Eneru is the, the way to go, it seems like. Yes, uh, and now it is definitely super strong in that regard, especially if you can starve out your you can really starve out your opponent as an if you want to and play the mm -hmm. uh, big drop game where you're playing multiple Yamados. And if you go back to the NA finals, Jonas had three Yamados on board at some point. That's a lot. Yeah, that was crazy, right? I mean, that was the game three of the uh, of the uh, nationals in LA, and I mean, there's not much you can do about, uh, against that. You know, three Yamados on board. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of that's a lot of survivability. That's that's a, that's a problem for whoever you're up against, obviously. Yeah. So I so because part of my goal here is this weekend or this this evening is to get Ying in trouble. I'm going to ask you to settle a debate in the community uh, right now. This is going to be you, your statement officially, Holly or Holy. 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 Wow. Okay. But it's, but it's spelled Holly on the card. I, I, I need to go back to watch Skype here to remember uh, <laughs> the actual name. <laughs> I, now, I, I, like I said, I'm watching Skype here right now, and I believe they do say Holly. In that case, it would be Holly, because I need to go back to watching that. I don't remember. It's been mm -hmm. a very long time. That's, uh, that's a really, really old arc. I know, right? That's, that's where I'm at right now, you know? But uh, I, I believe, in, I've heard, in Japan it's pronounced more on the Holy side of things. So who knows? I but anyway, Ying, Ying has spoken. It, it's apparently holy. I might still call it Holly tonight on the broadcast. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. That's gonna slip out a couple times. I mean, uh, I just wanted to get we, your opinion on that. We go by that. cards. If the card says Holly, then we go by Holly. <laughs> oh, we do. Okay. All right. So so now the official stance is Holly. Right. I see. I'm, I'm being put on the spot uh -huh. right now. <laughs> that's that's the idea. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Like I said, I, my goal is just to get you in trouble with the One Piece community. You know, you will be a heel. You know what a heel is, right? Like in wrestling, you've got the character that everybody loves. You know, no one can hate you, Yang. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You're, you're going to be fine. Well, hopefully we're just moments away from getting into our Swiss rounds here. The cast are still chatting. Uh, any other topics you uh, want to cover going into this one? So we saw the number of decks and what decks there are. Uh, 11 Salkazuki, mm -hmm. 2 Anel, 2 Purple Luffy, and 1 Zoro. Now, out of all of those, what's your top 4 pick? Top 4? Yes, top 4 pick um, that's finishing 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So I we, we made our tweets about this earlier, so I have to go with that. I, I tweeted that I thought Anel would take it with uh, Sakazuki coming 2nd. I gotta look up my Twitter profile real quick to just to make sure I'm getting it right. Okay, yeah, I picked Anel, Sokka, and then uh, third place, Sokka, fourth place, Zoro. So I went Anel, Sokka, Sokka, Zoro. What, what did you go? I uh, went with Sokka, Anel, Zoro, Sokka. I oh. went with Zoro being right. third out of all those because I think Zoro has a very high chance of making it through as long as he dodges the Anel. Just all he mm -hmm. has to do is dodge the Anel. But I put him as third because i think at uh when you on for playoffs he plays the unknown and that ends up losing push, pushing him to third fair enough okay I, I i like that we both believe that the zoro the one zoro can make top four that's that's pretty cool oh speaking of pretty cool we got our new star deck the three day two year that. star deck 14 yeah that's that is pretty neat uh that will be out uh a while later, I would imagine, for us. But it looks cool anyway. I've just been told, though, I've just received word from production that we actually have the Zoro players list that we can take a look at if we want to. So I do. Let's let's check it out. All right. So uh, across the board, seemingly like a fairly standard Zoro list. What do you think? It's very standard. You have or your searcher, your yeah. one-drop searchers. Uh, he's going going with the Nami side. So they are not. They don't play the. Wipe your side like they did back then with uh mm -hmm. <laughs> with the older sets. Now we're going yeah. to the not uh, the straw hat side where you're able to search all your straw hat cards, especially Diablo Jambe, which is oh, yeah. your win condition uh against heavy blocker decks like Sakazuki. They're they constantly play like Rebecca, Borsalino, uh Sabo. And of course we have the Nico Robin, the one drop where you can easily KO that um Rebecca, because Rebecca is a zero power blocker. Yeah, the Nico Robin, kind of the, the, the one sole card, it feels like, that jumped in from uh, OP5. It's made a difference in this deck. But 
Zoro was already doing, I mean, Zoro's been doing Zoro things since, like, the beginning of the game. So it's just been something that's been iterated on over time. And like you said, you go back and forth about what the sort of, like, general pirate crew you roll with is. And lately it's been Whitebeard. Seems like it's been pretty strong. And again, I mean, if you can if you can just run into Sakazuki's all the way to the finals, you're going to feel pretty good. And I, I have to imagine that's the plan for our Zoro player here. Yeah, another thing here is because, let's see, you have the Don here, of course. Currently, the Don being able to search at one drops. You have, let's see, one, yep. two, three, four, five. You have 20 search target. No, 21 search targets with Curly the Don. And then Nami, uh, Nami here, searching your Straw Hats, you have is it one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I can't even count anymore. There's too many searches. You're very unlikely oh, yeah. to miss those searches. And the increased consistency in searches make it so you will always have a hand size. You're constantly having a hand size. You will have hand advantage. You will have more presence. And then because you're constantly attacking your opponent, you take away their life. So I was curious, what do you think about uh, four of the Rush Luffy's? Uh, because that's that's a card in particular that people have been kind of going back and forth on, where I feel like I saw three for like a long, long time. But it's such a linchpin card in getting things done with this deck that I've been a little bit surprised we haven't seen four more often, or at least I haven't seen four more often in some lists. But here it is in uh, in this one. I'm kind of glad to see it. I, I like the way this is set up, like his list right here, where you have four zero because yeah. that is your primary uh, Rush card, where you play a card, it's Rush. Uh, it's probably swinging six or seven k. However much you want, uh, however much dawn you have available as well. And then wherever you can play the Luffy, it's swinging for seven k because you have one dawn under the Zoro as well. So that's mm -hmm. so constantly swing, you know, get these big swings in, forcing cards out of the hand or forcing blockers to turn sideways. And you're gonna get a lot of cards out of these. A lot of, you can get so much advantage just by having one card and forcing your opponent to remove it. Because if they don't answer it, it's just gonna swing big again next turn. Yeah, I, I feel like one of the other things that jumps out at me is just how, like, clean this list is. Tons of four ofs, not too many, you know, two ofs, not too many one ofs, just the one Nico Robin. Uh, no guard point. This deck is just like, I'm going to hit you in the face, and I'm going to hopefully do it enough times quick enough to win, or I'm going to lose. That That's it. This deck is very linear. Yeah, so he's putting every dawn possible into the offensive stance. That's why they're playing oh, yeah. uh, kick course instead of... Uh card point here where kick course is a zero cost yes you lose a card in your hand but mm -hmm. you have buggy that's a dead card uh, counter in your hand you have zoro that's a dead counter in your hand you have luffy that's a dead counter in your hand and of course you have fire fist that's also a dead counter in your hand so having multiple dead counters in your hand a kick course can add on to the uh, amount of counters that you have overall in your deck yeah, pretty much. And it's it's not sort of like, a, oh, I'm going to do a little bit of guard point. Oh, I'm going to do a little bit of kick course. It's just three kick course, no guard point. It's like, if I'm going to use this, I don't want to have to pay for it. Um, I'm just going to get, you know, I can I can afford to trash that card, you know? Yeah, and all, you, all your Dawn can be used for offensive stances instead. So all your Dawn, yeah. you can commit your Dawn to attacking with Zur. Commit your Dawn, attacking with Luffy. Commit your Dawn to attack him with anything else you have on board. Just keep on turning cards sideways, apply the pressure to your opponent, make it so they cannot respond. Yeah, I, I like it. I'm excited about this list. Uh, we'll see how it ends up performing again. The lone Roranoro Zoro in the entire top 16. So it remains to be seen, right? I mean, they could end up dropping out in Swiss, but I don't think that's the case. Not with 11 Sakazukis out there to just... To just chew through. I it's, think the Zoro's going to be not just the Sakazuki. Pretty, pretty I, I find it a very good matchup into the Purple Luffy as well. That Purple Luffy yeah. struggles really hard into Zoro as Zoro is rushing him down. Purple Luffy is mm -hmm. unable to take the life to ramp, or they do. They're putting themselves even closer to defeat. As yes, they can play blockers, but what's blockers going to do when your Luffy is unblockable? Your Zoro is unblockable yeah. because of Diablo Jambe, and then of course you have cards like um. Fire Fist that can reduce the power of your blocker, and then you play Nico Rob into Pop. It. Yep, exactly. Uh, now, speaking of Purple Luffy, too, uh, people were talking about removing the Magellan, where it's a card where it's like, yeah, it's a good card. In, in isolation, Magellan is a great card. It can still cause some very awkward situations for your opponent, but in terms of the mission of the Purple Luffy deck, it's never quite felt as as you know as much as that it fits in with all the other cards in the deck i feel like it's just a good really good purple card like one of the best purple cards so we're putting it in there it doesn't really feel like it's in tune 100 percent with the mission of the purple luffy deck so i've seen some lists run without it i don't have uh, the purple luffy list for this in front of me right now but 
Do you think we're going to see any take it out? I feel like people talk about it a lot, but nobody's really been brave enough to do it yet. I, I do think we're going to see the Magellan in those decks, because Magellan is very good in the yellow. And mm -hmm. it's not the worst into Sakazuki as well, as it takes them off of their curve. It takes them off of their 7 curve to be able to play the 7 cost for you know, Especially if you play 2 yeah. of them at once, you're putting it even further back. So as you're able to play on, they can't answer it right away, uh, then it's going to do damage. Yeah, and the question is too, is what would you replace it with, right? I mean, the rest of these lists are pretty tight, you know, as far as what people have been running in Purple Luffy. So, you know, at this point, like I said, I've heard a lot of people talk about it. I haven't seen a lot of people actually pull the trigger and remove it. I don't think we're going to see that this weekend as well, but I think it's worth bringing up. Back to stage over there in Japan. And uh, we will see. I would imagine we're getting pretty close to our first game here. Yeah, it looks like they're I would hope. finishing, they had to finish up setting up, so they're going with more uh, discussion on the players and yeah. the matches. Look at Gavin's microphone. I, I, I was worried <coughs> it was going to fall out. It's just being held in by the very, very tip. You see a shot of it again. That microphone is in a precarious position. <laughs> He's holding it very properly right there. He's doing fine, but Gavin's mic, I'm worried. There, look at that. It could slip out any moment. I'll be fine, right? It's dirty. <laughs> Should be okay. So, how much of this do you understand? Other... Zero. Oh, How about you? Um, just a tad bit, just a tad bit, but not enough to translate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I said, man, I I lived in South Korea for six years, so I can speak Korean pretty well. But Japan, I visited, never started learning the language. Aside from, again, I, I'm like, Nani? I'm like, oh, I know that what that means. I've seen enough anime. Well, here's the thing. Like, it. What do you think they're going to put on for their very first match? I'm thinking they're going to put on Zoro because this is our soul Zoro. I would like to see that, but it is Swiss. So it's not like the Zoro is going to play one match and be out, right? You're going to get five rounds uh, either way. So you can go to that Zoro later. I would imagine they're probably going to want to highlight some of the Japanese players. But maybe they just pick some interesting decks. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, I... I no, we're going to probably see a good amount of Sakazuki mirrors today. Do I want to start with that? Not necessarily, but that said, I actually find the Sakazuki mirror uh, pretty interesting to watch. Uh, it, you know, it, it does kind of turn into a little bit of a Rebecca Hino Hina Luchi combo off, but you know, I, I think the matchup is pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I find it very interesting. It's very skill based and very, uh, knowing what cards to discard, knowing what cards that you need to keep in your hand, knowing when to counter, when not to counter, and sometimes you just have to counter because you don't have a choice, and sometimes you don't want to discard the uh, Rebecca to counter with, but they're attacking in a sense where it forces you to do so, or it put yourself in a very precarious situation. Yeah. Once again, seeing uh, the breakdown, in case you're just joining us, we've got 11 Sakazukis, 2 Anels, 2 Purple Luffy, and 1 Rora Nora Zoro. And that's our breakdown for the top 16. Uh, and again, I think both of us were predicting like 8 Sakazukis. And you predicted 8, I, I think I predicted 7 or 8? I definitely predicted 8, I was very far off, because I thought that we were going to see some categories, but there's not a single one! Yeah, I predicted a seven Sakazuki, but uh, I did. Uh, I predicted more Anels, one more uh, Purple Luffy, and I, I predicted one Red Purple Luffy. I, I know, I know. Well, I can say this for sure. Gavin was the closest it. in the prediction with the ten Sakazuki, two Purple yeah. Luffy, two Anel, one Katakuri. That Katakuri uh, ended up being a Sakazuki instead, and the one Zoro. He was close, though. I can see that. He was the closest by far. Yeah. But that said, you know, I did make my Red Purple Luffy prediction back at uh, U.S. Nationals, and, and I was very close. We were very close to having a Red Purple Luffy in the finals. Yes. Yeah, we were very close. Um, he's actually in Japan right now supporting um, the NA players. Oh, nice. All right. Oh, so our first match is going to be Jonas from North America taking on Allen. And so we'll see what we end up getting with that. I would imagine that'll be an NL Sakazuki match, if I recall correctly. We know Jonas is going to be playing NL, and uh, you know, Law of Averages says that Allen will probably on uh, Sakazuki, but we'll see. I don't know for sure. Well, we can only find out, right? We just yeah. gotta wait for them to set up, and we will find out what they are playing. 
Yeah, they, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, too, if they wanted to show us, like, an a, a L a purple Luffy matchup, too. It's just something a little bit different, because we know we are going to see a lot of Sakazuki throughout the day, but we'll find out. Yep, and purple Luffy is very, very good into an L. However, if this is Sakazuki, then we can see an L Poppy taking it on top as well, as Jonas is very seasoned for that specific matchup. He has tested against... Uh, a lot of good Sakazuki players. Yeah, I want to go back and, and talk about uh, Jonas Abraham's uh, Enel list really quick with that uh, because it was very it was very blocker heavy. That was one of the things that was very interesting in, with it is that he was running things like the Charlotte Brule, which we haven't seen uh, as often in some of these Enel lists. Uh, and but then the four uh, eight cost uh, <coughs> Katakuris and then four Yamatos and the big thing was like four Enels too, four seven cost Enels. So. He really like stacked the top end and then just played a very, very defensive early game too. So his approach to Anel um, was very, I think, kind of like Sakazuki-centric, if you want to say that. But it was also very much kind of his own thing too. So I wonder if he's brought the same list. I wonder if he's made any changes. I'm very curious. I can say this. I can tell you this for sure. He has brought the exact same list to this okay. World Finals. I like it. I, I love his list. The more I thought about it uh, after the event that we saw in uh, the U.S. Nationals, uh, and the more I kind of gave it a try, I was like, okay, this this list, if it's piloted well, and that's a big if because it's, I'm not certainly going to be doing that, but if it's played by someone like Jonas, it can be deadly, deadly effective. But I wonder now that it's kind of been, been unveiled, so to speak, um, if people are going to be ready for it, you know? It's, it's not just knowing the list. No, uh, even if you know the list, a player can change... Uh, how it's played very easily because of player style. Sure. Because you could be playing very differently from how other players would be playing the deck as well. And as you can see, like because he's going with the seven drop and no um, centric and not seven cost big mom uh, centric mm -hmm. uh, build, the seven cost and no is one of the win conditions for the Sakazuki matchup because you're kind you're applying so much pressure against them where they have to deal with the no. If they don't deal with the no, uh, it's going to keep on going. So he can choose to save that now, or he can choose not to, and then play a second one and just keep going. If they run out of removal, that's that's trouble. That's just straight trouble for the you know, Sakazuki player. Yeah, totally. And I mean, we've seen him do things like uh, use the trigger on Satori to uh, you know put a little bit of board pressure on there with that, with the Ohm, the Holly coming in. You know, and you add the Anel. So this is a deck that can be very defensive early. It's got the blockers to be able to do that. Uh, or it can, you know, just go wide and put a lot of pressure on, too. So I think you bring up a really good point where it's kind of like how you decide to play this list uh, can vary game to game, and, and that's a, a good sort of litmus of, of player skill as well. And we know uh, Jonas has got that in abundance. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm excited that we get to see our, our North American champion in our first game of the day. And we have our players setting up. There they are. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jonas Abraham on the left there, and on the right we have none other than Alan Liu, who is. I'm trying to see. Well, he's got uh, Uda sleeves. That's uh, for his dome. That's not going to really tell us a whole lot. We, we can't really tell a lot. The leader is face down there. That's right. All right. Alan Liu. That again. Um, I believe he is the Australian winner, and he did win with Purple Luffy, if I remember correctly. Look at the bottom. Okay, yeah, that, I see an X Drake. I see an ulti. That is indeed Purple Luffy. So we're going to have uh, what we kind of predicted where it's going to be uh, an L versus Purple Luffy. We're avoiding the Sakazukis for our first game of the day. And uh, I, I don't mind that. Again, I, I love Sokka. I enjoy the Sokka mirror, but we're going to see a lot of it no matter how this day shakes out with 11 of them in the top 16. So let's just take a break from that for a moment, Ying. Let's take a look at some of the other, uh, the other leaders represented. Yeah, because right here, um, like I said earlier, Luffy, Purple Luffy does have a very, very good matchup into an L. Uh, mm. So we got to see how this will do. That's right. Judges getting the players ready here. A little bit of translating on the fly going on. And uh, I wonder, I didn't see the edge of the table. I wonder if we get that sweet, sweet hand camera view that we saw from uh, some of the, the matches in Japan a few months ago. It uh, looks like the, it looks board. like it's incorporated in the table. My fingers are crossed. I do believe it's incorporated onto the table. If, I'm, if I'm not wrong, I love it. I think all card games should have this for the rest of time. Oh, I would love it. I would love it if it's there. Yeah, I mean, the 
The one thing I really love about uh, watching the events from Japan is the production quality is just fantastic. I agree. Like, being able to see the hand of the players, be able to see what they're going to do and predict as if you're playing yourself. Um, yeah. You can really up your game just by watching the uh, the players play the game as well. Like, what Mina. would they make? What would they do versus what would you do? Is it any different? Um, is it the same? Yeah, exactly. And the deck cuts coming in. I gotta say, uh, it looks like they're playing in Skypea with how uh, how uh, white and heavenly everything is looking there on the set. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Waiting for it. Uh, it looks like they're deciding who is going first. Uh, Are they gonna now? The official rules say play rock paper scissors, but will they do that or roll the dice? They're rolling okay, the it's dice. It's gonna be the dice. I've seen rock paper oh. scissors happen on official matches before. That's as bold. We're gonna see the roll. We saw one and something because the other one got went off really well, far. Well, that's gonna win either. By way. that time, yeah, there's no way. That's gonna win. <laughs> Alan gets the dice roll win. What's it gonna be? He's gonna opt to be. Uh, looks like the first player. If that's what that token is any indication of. We're just kind of, you know, like we said, we're kind of piggybacking on the, the broadcast from Japan here, so we're so, sort of seeing what you're seeing and, and uh, gleaning what we can from that. So we'll do the best we can, guys. Hopefully everyone enjoys and it out there. I think we're going to see a lot of players decide to mulligan. Oh, wow. Okay. That was very Bold a move. self-optimal hand for both players then, where you, de you definitely need to see something. Well, as a NL player sometimes, right, uh, so, uh, when you mm -hmm. play, what would you do for this matchup? Like, how do you win this matchup? Are you supposed to be playing aggressively versus, um, how else? Like, and like I said earlier, Magellan is yeah. one of your key cards for this matchup. Being able to take yellow off of their curve, you know, take them away from play, be able to play the big cost cards where you're able to recover with uh, Yamato or even um, mm -hmm. Katakuri, where you I mean, put could... a card back into your life. I would be curious to get Jonas's take on that because I could see it going a couple different ways. Uh, the the other thing about Magellan too is that he can oftentimes come in uh, to directly mess up your uh, rush and L plays. Right, that's kind of the specific time when that's that's going to be a big concern in a lot of games. Um, so do you just decide to go wide with some of your lower cost stuff with the Ohm of the Holy with the Satori if you find the trigger? you know, hard cast it once in a while? Do you just go wide and aggressive? Or do you pull back and go defensive and say, all right, I'm just going to try to deal with what they've got out there. I'm going to try to wait it out. And then, you know, eventually get to my late game. I don't know if you have that kind of luxury, uh, but we'll see it. It is the uh, the first player for Alan. Yeah, putting that uh, down out. Alan does the obstacle first. He just gets a down and then passing turn because there's no... Oh, what's going on? Uh, oh. Oh, they're getting ready. They, ha they haven't started a timer yet. Then. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, hey, it's it's the uh, the World Tour uh, finals, so everyone's just raring to go, right? No, hey, nobody they, wants to I'm wait. sure the players are nervous too, because they're on they're all on camera right off the bat, the very first match of the day. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd be pretty uh, pretty nervous as well. We know they have a 30 minute timer. We play Fast and Furious. Here we start. go. So let's see. Opening right. hand, I see. Two Kaidos, a five cost kid. I missed the rest. Uh -huh. uh, all right, just in the hallway uh, out there. All right, there's Ashura. No, no Ashura starting. Yeah, doing a bit of searching. How do you feel about mulliganing, mulliganing as a purple Luffy player and drawing into two Kaidos? Um, <laughs> Kaido is great, I think, especially for this because there's no out in your opening Kaido. hand, though. Yeah, I think it's fine, but we have yeah, a really? okay. we have a poly, we have queen and five cost kid, and the OT now. So now, okay. using the Luffy effect, will he find the page one? I I can't tell what it is. I'm sorry. Uh, it looks like another Kaido actually. Starts with. I'm in the end there. Oh, yeah, you start with the a five at life countering, saying, yeah. "All right, I need to stay healthy. Just place the mm -hmm. o, uh, OTM passing turn." Yep. Why not? Over to Jonas now. Uh, I don't and, see uh, the Om Holly. There is a category. There is a No Yamato Holly. And of course, we do have the um, the event. <clears throat> yep, that's right. The two hundred million volts of Maru, right? Yep. Uh, so we we saw a swing with Anel that got a counter with the kid, and now he's going to swing one more with a sure and four K Don attached to that. So really trying to put the pressure on early, it seems like. So I mean, I guess that could be a, a partial answer to the question you had earlier. Yep, you want to apply the, as much pressure as you can onto Purple Luffy, because in this case, yeah. when you apply pressure, you either take cards away from their hand, 
or take their way from take away from their life. As you take cards away from their life, they're unable to take or uh, use the Luffy leader's effect to take life to ramp up as well. Mm-hmm. So going five at lead, opposite take the hit. It is a seven drop an L. What sh- you're right, okay. that's three Kaidos in hand. There's an Apu for turn. Yep. All right. Another and five pay at leader. Trigger. Oh, it looks like there is a trigger there, but opposite bring it in hand. What was that? Another two. An, uh, so I don't need to use it. So yeah. It's, ramps another card. It's two, uh, two dons. Now he's at seven. Looks like it's going to be a poly play, I believe. Yes, yeah, it is. Okay. All right. Good turn for that, obviously. Goes up to eight don. That's the plan. Going to take out that Shura. And so that does clear the board over on his side, at least. All right. That means he is able to Kaido next turn, which is very, very good here. Yeah, so I mean, you're right. He did get to that. Uh, sometimes I feel like I underestimate just how fast Luffy can get up to uh, nine Don. He can get there quickly, and he's taken a, a bit of a damage, a bit of damage in the process, down to two life. But once the Kaido start hitting the board, things start to get very, very difficult on the other side. So waiting again, play over to Alan, and the Don in there, ten Don. What's it going to uh, be? Th- gonna that be Sanji stay sticking is pretty unlikely, right? Yeah, uh, I would say so. We have a lot of cards in hand, though, for now. Because now, that, as, as I was saying, those cards, about to rip two cards from hand now with that flaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the dangers, right? If you let that hand stack up too much, lock can come in, make you discard a couple of them. Yep. What's it going to be? But we did see two unknowns earlier, yeah. so... There, there's a lot of non counters. So Yamato and an Anel. And an Anel, yeah. But hitting right. the Yamato is very, very big here because Yamato is your recovery. It is your um way to do more damage as well. It's your offensive card. Yeah, totally. All right, so Polly swinging in. Seven. At life. Takes Yo, it. This is going to take it. Yeah. It is an Grabs Ohm. Grabs Ohm out of there. Yeah. Okay. And Alan thinking for a moment, deciding what to do next. If that is a second law, he could law again. Like, can he? he or is that six cards? Is that six cards or is that seven cards? Um, that six, is seven, I believe. Six. One, two. Oh no, no, it is six. It is six. It's six so cards. The, the edge of the uh, the table kind of made it. Or no, I'm second guessing myself. One, two, three, four, five. That is seven cards, right? It's, it's going to be the queen instead. Scarlet and Kaido, as he does have three Kaidos, don't need that many. No, I don't think so. I think you can cycle that, yeah. <laughs> Go for a little bit more card draw. Oh. Then passing turn. Yeah, now you okay. He only has an eight dog. He's able to use the... Uh, the uh, Katakuri if he chooses to. Or he can start playing with the... Uh, no. Yeah. What's the plan going to be? So... Looks like it's going to be an L. So starts with six so. into the poly. Trying to take cards from hand now. Yeah, and I, th- I think this is a good idea too. You know, you, you threaten board. You try to take back a little bit of advantage there. That is going to be the counter with the Scratch Man Apu to keep the poly alive for the moment. Then the Don turns sideways. Here comes Rush and L, like we talked about. And Does he drop be? cards from hand or will he use the blocker? He uses the. OT keeping do. car keeping board presence as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean well, so if you're Jonas, you can be satisfied, you know, at least that you got a couple cards out of hand with that. You've got some characters on the board, but it's still looking a bit scary on the uh, NL side of things. Yes. And there's the law ripping cards from hand again. Wow, that is that is so rough. I mean, just to be hit by that once in a game is something nobody ever wants. Getting hit by it twice. Potentially devastating. What are the cards going to be that he lost? It's going to be Anel and a Holly. Okay. Oh, that's There's another three Anel. Anel's so gone. I was going to say, yeah, that's a uh, two out of the three he had access to in his hand have now hit the trash. Starts with five lead. There's the Ohm. Okay. Yeah, Ohm with the counter. Another five K lead. Now. Takes it. Yep. You want a little bit more in hand at this point. Looks like, is that another Yamato, I believe? It was a Katakuri. 
Discarding the Maru. Right, right. Yeah, back up to one life again. GNL's ability. Now Polly swings in, and, and that Polly body is difficult to uh, to handle sometimes. Just being 6k natively is such an annoyance to deal with. Yep, you have to use a 2k to get out. Yep, there's the 2k. Exactly. Yep. Tosses now he can apply more dawn to, to attack again, try and take that last life. Because the more, the more life you can take away from your opponent, the better it is. A brulee comes out. Oh, okay. All right. So we do have another blocker available, so that's going to maybe keep things going a little bit longer. But speaking of blockers, another queen hits the board. Yeah, I'm going to just do a little bit of uh, card drawn cycling with that. Yeah, trashes another Kaido. Has, has such a big lead right now, especially with board presence. Huge. And of course, we do have another Kaido in hand. You have two Gatlings in hand as well. So that Kaido is yeah. not a dead card. I mean, this might end up being a, a sub-10 minute game. It's, it's kind of wild, actually. Let's see which we'll half see, the draw for turn is grim. Ashira Hoshi. So here, yeah. Yona's able to recover with the um, Katakuri at the very least. So he can start with a 7k swing somewhere. Does he go for board or does he go for life? That's the question. Hmm, rethinking it. Because again, this is a really difficult position, right? Very, very, very. Your opponent has the resources in hand to counter out of Pretty much any attacks that you want to throw. So he starts at law. Okay. And is he going to let it go? No, he's going to block with one of the queens. Block and plus one. And counter. Yeah. Counter with the scratch mana poo. Trying to eat cards from hand at this point now. Yep. What else can you do, really? I mean, uh, at least you've got a decent board to throw. Uh, he's going to, yeah, send the NL into the queen. That's going to be a block from the Trafalgar Law, it looks like. And, yeah, I think if you're going to give up any blockers, it's going to be fine. And then and going so, under six at the Law. Yeah. Fighting back for that board control. Now the decisions come to it. You know, you've got the Gum Gum Jet Gatling in hand. He's got two of them, in fact, so... He does use one of them. He wants to protect the now. Law. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty reasonable. Two cards in hand, and we know one of them is the Kaido. So that Kaido, most yeah. likely, more like it not, it's going to hit that brulee. <laughs> yeah. So there's the recovery. Okay. He's managed to do it. He's managed to get himself in a little bit better of position. That said, still a lot of pressure coming in from Allen's side of the board, isn't yeah. there? That's five attacks on board, and then, of course, you have the Kaido in hand for the sixth attack. So can... Yeah. This is a lot. Especially now you... in Yona's hand, where you only have one Shirohoshi as a counter. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you live through this. Not as it. Jonas. It's not going to be easy. Definitely not. Gonna start with thinking about sending the law in. He does have a lot of blockers. He has more than enough. So it starts with a law. Five counters of one. He's getting yep. as much as possible out. Yeah, he's got a missed double finger in there. That's the last card in hand with counter. He still has that one gum gum jet gatling. Next, Polly. But that involves discarding two, so yeah, it's not great. All right. Recover. All right. Yep. No ability. Got the two hundred million volts of Maru. Down to no cards in hand, so it's five guarantees oh. go in. That was rough. He has one blocker, right? In terms of the brulee, or am I missing? Takes the hit. One no more, counter. yeah. Yeah, we don't see what it is. So yeah, they're reminding him. Put it on the. We have the table slanted for a reason, Jonas. So seven. There we go. Blocks, and then the Kaido will come down to. Yep. Remove the Sanji. That should do it. We'll oh. see. There it is. The Kaido yep. does KO the Sanji. And going for a 10k at life, this is that's, game. That's that. All right. So, Alan strikes first here in the uh, One Piece One Piece World Tour Finals here with the Purple Luffy taking down the North American champion in the first round of Swiss here. And what do you think? I mean, there was just so much pressure put on early 
from Allen that, uh, you know, Jonas, I feel like, was playing from the back foot from turn number one. They both mulliganed. Uh, it turned out pretty well for Allen, though. It was very tough because when you see that many blockers coming out, it's really hard to answer. There's just, just so much advantage coming down, especially the double law ripping four cards out of hand. Four cards where two of them were an L, one was a Holly, and one was a Amaru. Yes, one of them was a counter and the rest were non counters, but being able to have four cards removed from hand means you can change the numbers in how you swing. You can swing uh, lower numbers and force cards from their hand, making them go down to zero. As you can see, he did go down to zero cards in hand at some point. Yeah, I, I think that was extremely well played for Alan. Really, really knowing how, like he said, to you know, get the most of those Trafalgar Laws, uh, you know, which is one of the best cards ever, probably, in terms of power blocking, draining cards from your opponent's hand in a lot of situations. It's a scary card, and, uh, you know, sometimes if you're, if you're you know, in Jonas's situation, there's not a whole lot you can do about that to try to prevent it. Like, can you think of anything Jonas might have been able to do differently? Um, I can't say for certain at all, actually. Yeah. It's, that, that was uh, not something you would normally see. That was a extremely dominant play from uh, Allen there. They, he yeah, understood I, what he needed to do. I was going to say, like, I mean, well, like I said, kind of a... In the you know during the game, I, I can't remember the last time I've seen you know two laws go off and get the discard in one game. Like that's a you see one pretty commonly, but two I feel like I don't run into that very often. No, definitely not. Yep, it's rough. So now the question is, um, you know, are we? Uh, I we're gonna have to wait probably for the next round of Swiss to begin before we get into our second game of the day. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're a fan of Jonas, if you're a fan of the North American region, still four more rounds of Swiss to play. Still a chance to come back. And if you're a fan of Alan, uh, Alan Liu, victory in his first game of the day. So a great start for him on the Purple Luffy. That was very good. Like, you want to take down first round? It takes a lot of pressure off of your shoulder. You're just you're one less win away from making it further into the future, into the finals. Right. Or maybe we're seeing players talk about their uh, their favorite cards, maybe? That is what do you think? Love Love Bello yeah. from the starter deck. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, Luffy. yeah, I like that card too. That's one of my favorites. It brings out Luffy's laugh. Look at that. Look at that smile. Yeah, I mean, it brings out my smile, too, because when I play it, I'm like, well, I, I guess I win. It's definitely a powerful card once you're able to get it down on board, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, this has got to be, what's your favorite card? Oh, uh, wow. Yamato Big Leader, Uda the new oh, leader Yamato in leader. OPO oh. 6. We will be oh getting God. that in very shortly, actually. The pre-release is next week, and the following week is the release day for the English version of OPO 6. Yeah, March 15th. Coming out. What are you planning on playing? I'm gonna plan. I'm gonna play some uh, Gecko Mori. I think. I actually don't know yet. <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying uh, Yamato as well. Very aggressive. Play style. All right. Fair enough. Just tur just turn leader sideways. That's all you're doing. <laughs> I've been missing playing Mono Black, so uh, I, I miss playing. Uh, I mean, obviously Rob Luchi is a very different uh, kind of deck from from uh, Gecko Moria, but uh, I want to move back into Mono Black again. Right. There's Kaido. Kaido. See, like all these characters, I don't know them from the anime. I only know them from the card game. Well, I know NL from the anime. I, I guess I should. I'll retract my earlier statement from a moment ago. That's the exception. <laughs> now everyone's everyone's enjoying themselves at Ben and Carfest, the finals right now. Like, there's so much going on. Yeah, I'm sure we would if we were there too. If we're not. But we're still getting to cast these games, so I guess it's still pretty decent. We're still getting to bring the action. Everybody live out there. Yeah, we'll bring the English maybe next year, huh? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. Right. Maybe next year. Who knows? But for now, uh, more uh, discussion. We're kind of waiting to see if we can maybe get some uh, results, too, from the uh, other rounds of Swiss. But honestly, I got a feeling we're going to be waiting for a little bit because like, that game was so quick. That was just barely over 10 minutes, I think, out of our 30-minute timer. So... 
I would imagine there's a lot of games going in the first round that are still going right now. Yeah, especially because when you have players that understand the matchup, you understand what you need to do. There's no not much thinking going on because at this point, it's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. I'm checking to see if maybe we can uh, wrangle up some uh, match results as they come in and keep you updated. Wait, what's Gavin got in his pocket? It's a Cavendish? Yes, it is Cavendish. Right. Five cost Cavendish. There you go. You never know what Gavin has in his, in his pocket. What card it's going to be. Today it's Cavendish. Well. While we wait. I feel like there's not much more to say about that first game. It was pretty... Uh, it was a pretty convincing win for, for Alan Liu and the Purple Luffy, and, and uh, we're going to have to wait to see if Jonas can kind of bounce back in some of his other games, but I don't know if there's a whole lot to add to that. I, there's really not much to add. Like, I was looking at the yeah. list. Um, it's really... How should I say? Um, it was different. Let's go with that. It's, it's different. Like, I, I can see the list here. Um, it looks like there's... Is this the list? I actually can't tell if that is the list or not. There, I see one... Ah, there it is. So there's... No Magellan, actually. This list is no oh, Magellan. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm looking at it right now, too. Yeah, that's... And I mean... Hey, I'm glad I brought that up then, because uh, I thought, like I said, like so many people are talking about not running Magellan. Wait, here's the thing. Because he's running no Magellan, he is running on four Miss All Sunday. And you can see yeah. there is four uh, loss, which is why he was able to play those, see those loss and play them on on a good turn, like on a good timing where Jonas had one of the cards in hand, it's going to hit him. Yeah, worked out well. Do a Roby too. Be interesting. Don Quixote. No Flamingo. 10 no cost. Flamingo. I wonder what yeah. they're talking about, actually. I actually Maybe I they're know. talking about their favorite cards? I don't know. What's your favorite card? I actually don't know. Piece. I can't think about it. Right on top of my head right now? That's that's tough. We got time. We got time. That's tough. I'll, I'll think about it throughout the day. Throughout the day? Yeah, this is day, seconds. right? This is daytime right now. It's day in Japan. Exactly. I'm there in spirit, so it's daytime. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'll t well, I already kind of spoiled mine. I, I really like the new 10 cost Luffy. Respectable. My Res very respectable. Game. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I got to go with my, my second favorite card is uh, the 9 cost uh, New Gate. Uh, it's too good. There's too one, much PTSD with that 9 cost New Gate. One leads into the other so well in red, purple Luffy, you know? But I, I in my the first deck I ever built and played in one piece was New Gate. Mm. I can see a lot of people doing that. <laughs> yeah. See, so they, they've got these, like, plans for when uh, they have to fill time on their desk. It looks like we need to come up with a plan, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's why you need to tell me what your favorite card is. It's, it's, there's so many good cards in that. I can't tell right now. I, uh, 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 I can't Decision think. Decision paralysis. Uh, oh, oh, uh, it's not me, leader. Not I love milling. I, I love I love milling. What are, are you channeling the the spirit of Champion Steven right now? Like what's no, going I am on? channeling the spirit of just mill. Oh, okay. The spirit of mill, but it's self mill though. It's not like it's not traditional mill. You're a Hoshi. It's still mill though. He looked a little bit embarrassed when he held that up. I'm like, dude, you don't need if if, if you like if you like hard draw. If you like cycling, you can like Shiro Hoshi. That's fine. He just held it up so hesitantly. Maybe it's because, compared to the other cards, it's much less flashy, right? There's no foiling. Uh, you know, it's it's not like a, it's not a high-cost card, per se. There, is, there are alternate arts of this specific Shiroshi, though. But being there able to are. draw three cards, too, is kind of nice. Yeah. It's I mean, powerful. there was debate, too, about, you know, how many Shirohoshi you want to run, and I think a lot of people aren't, aren't for right now. I like it. Like, no, being able to like, filter your oh, hands for, all right, I don't need these cards anymore, I don't need these cards. It's great, especially yeah. when it comes out of life. Well, people are like, well, I don't want to hard cast it. I would never want to spend five on that. Um, but it's like, there's actually situations where it's really not that bad to hard cast a Shirohoshi. Maybe not your first choice, but it's not as bad as people like 
thought it was, I think, early on. Mm-hmm. You think they're going to vote to see who's, who's, uh, who had the best choice of the favorite card? Well, having this is the most flashy one, I gotta say, though. That is true. That is true. Well, what's your uh, what's your favorite leader then? Well, no, you already said Nami. First. I did say Nami. No, I like... should have said non-leader. Oh, what's your favorite <laughs> non-leader card then? Oh. Non-leader card, huh? Yamato. Nine drop. Nine drop Yamato. Nine drop Yamato. All right, that's cool. Nine drop Yamato. A linchpin. Yep. Of the NL deck, yeah. I can say I like my that. favorite deck to play, though. Uh, that's different, though. Oh, what's your favorite deck to play? Favorite deck to play, it's uh, purple, yellow, croc. It's so fun. It's very fun. I don't really play it often uh, elsewhere, but it's very fun. That's cool. You know, I was actually thinking about building that a while ago, and I didn't end up getting around to doing it. But uh, maybe I should now. Maybe, maybe I should. I mean, my favorite, most fun deck, Red Purple Leaf, for sure. Oh, it looks like they're taking a break. So I wonder if we can take a break, too. I bet we can. Waiting so for a word from we production. We will be back shortly. Okay. That's right. Word has come down. We're going to take a quick break, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Bandai Card Games Fest 23-24 World Tour Final in Japan. We'll return with the second round of Swiss for the One Piece Championship just after this. Bye-bye.
Hey, and we are back here at the One Piece World Tour Finals, and we are getting right into the match. Yang, we have ready to go. Europe's Corboye on Sokka here against... Um, give me a moment. Uh, waiting for the other player. I missed mm -hmm. I can't tell right now. I, I, I can't... I, I am unable to associate uh, face to name at the moment because I don't know everyone's. <laughs> That's right. Not been able to see spots of everything. But we do know Horoye is on Saka. That's right. So, he's getting ready. And it is, it is a Sakazuki. What do you think of the opening hand? I'm pretty hyped about this, actually, if I'm Herboya. That's a... That's good. Uh, yeah. Well, also depends on matchup. Oh, Sakazuki Mirror. So this will oh, be a, a very skill-based matchup here. But as you can see, Herboye does have the opening of having the brand new. It is your favorite opening, after all, being able to see uh, three cards and picking one. Providing you can go second, and that's the other question we have. But it looks like uh, it looks like <coughs> Boya might be going first again, judging by the little icon that's up by his life. Uh, yes. I believe that signifies that he'll be going first. So yes, it signifies we'll first to... uh, player going first. Yeah. Um, even then, it's not bad even going first because at your turn two, you're able to play it, uh, play the brand new, yeah. and then swinging for six. Swinging for six totally. is really good here, where it guarantees the hit unless they drop a two K. Yeah, and a big part of this matchup too is making sure you have cards in hand, right? You have counters to, to think. And look at this, not a single counter actually in the hand of the uh, opposing Sakazuki player here. Yeah, but we do have the uh, pilaf, Sandy's pilaf here. Sandy's pilaf yeah. is amazing, especially going first. But here you're going second, it really doesn't feel as good versus going uh, using it going first. However, you are still able to play it and draw two cards and just discard that Kuzan instead. So you can swing with uh, swing 6k right back at your opponent. Is that the worst? Yeah, true enough. And here we and go, 30 minute timer is underway. Our second round of Swiss here at the One Piece 2023 Championship in Japan it is uh, Guanrong on uh, the other side here. That's the player name we were yep, looking for. Guanrong. Yep. Run versus <coughs> Boye, or or we can go with Railzo. Yeah. Or Rail Z Zero. <laughs> Goron does discard the Hina, uh, drawing one in passing turn. He does not have the brand new to play. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just a swing with Sakazuki, opting to not go for the uh, the six K swing of that, and it is going to be the life taken. Like Ron. There's the brand new. Yep. Uh, one target, just the Hina. Yeah. Uh, it's very unfortunate losing the Rebecca so early, though. That's one less Rebecca in the deck. But at the same time, we do have that um, man sharing in hand. Yeah, I was gonna say, like you, it's actually not that bad to lose a Rebecca early on. You can you can bring it back later on, and you've got three other ones in the deck. Um, I'm trying to see. Yeah, it doesn't have one in the hand, but yeah, you're you're planning on finding a Manchuri at some point. Uh, you know, if anything else, not the Rebecca herself. Yeah. All right, and yeah, going in, I'm the life again. Back. Yep. Oh, that's and another it, brand feel, new. Wait, here's the like thing. Oh, that's two pilafs in hand now. Does he play the pilaf or does he play the kuzan? He goes the kuzan. Yeah, and Kuzan's one of those things where it's like, it, it requires uh, an immediate response, right? Because if that Kuzan stays on the board until your opponent's next turn, then suddenly things you put out get removed very easily. So, yeah, you uh, get the card draw either way, a lot, So he's like, alright, I don't need to, I'm going to just discard one. Uh, yeah. Because later on, like, you're going to play, at most, you can do is play Hina, play Luchi, and then you have three left, then you can play the uh, Pila. But that doesn't always happen. Yep, pretty much. What's the plan going to be? For Rails. Railzo? Rails Zero? Alright, if you can't say his name, we'll go with Railzo. 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 It seems like so, Rails discarding zero the Ice game. Age. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one where it's like, it's, it's useful later on in the game if you want to take down something really huge. That said, 
oftentimes you're going to be trying to set up your Rob Lucci combo in the Sokka mirrors, and so the Ice Age doesn't come to play quite as often. Um, I'm curious if these players are running Kaido or not, because that's one that we still usually see it, but it has been cut from time to time. Yep. And Borsalino. Or Borsalino. Here's the thing, Borsalino yeah. cannot be KO'd by opponent's card effect, and as you can tell, there is no Houndblaze in hand. Yeah, Houndblaze so... is your removal or Borsalino, so unless he draws into the Houndblaze, it's not going to get removed. There it is! Wow, alright. So, I mean, that's that's what you're looking for, right? If you can't KO it, you're going to want to bottom deck it. And that's what makes the Sakazuki so strong, is you can get around those uh, anti-KO uh, abilities that some of the characters have, the Sabo, the Borsalino, with your own, like, 7-cost Borsalino, or something like a Houndblaze, you know, once you get the cost low enough. The question is, how does he want to play I can see two Rebeccas in hand. He can go Rebecca, grab the Hina, and then Houndblaze. Or an AK swing. I don't mind that. Now, question is, do you turn the uh, Kruzan sideways or not? Because you could also, if you, if you do, you could also set up a, uh, a Rob Lucci play as well. Ah, uh, alright, so it looks like what he's going to do is going to go for the um, Raid eruption, eruption, Hound yeah. Blaze, and then peel off because he has time. Uh, he's okay, able to, yeah. he has time to peel off yeah. here. I don't mind that, yeah. And I mean, it, you know, usually hand advantage, cards in hand, is such a big deal in the mirror, too, because you want to be able to counter if you need to. Yes. Obviously, you don't want to counter any more than you absolutely have to, but uh, that's why we see a lot of players taking that early, uh, those early life hits, too, in the mirror, too, is just to build that hand size, give yourself more combo potential. Uh, yeah, he starts with a 5, and then going for an 8, and then he goes, there's the peel off, drawing two more cards, increasing his hand size, increasing his advantage. Pilaf is so good. He brought that poor pirate to tears. Right. He knew he was working for Krieg the whole time. So it looks like he's on seven, Don. What can you do with seven here? You don't. Unfortunately, there's no removal in hand. It's very painful to see, like not having a removal at all. He could try to. He can play brand new and look for a. Uh, Luchi or look for Houndblaze. I don't mind that. Otherwise, uh, okay, yeah, it's just gonna use Sock Hino. ability to cycle. Yeah, I guess we're the Hina for the moment. And I'll find some and... Kuzan. That's not yeah. what you want to see. I mean, it's something you can play at least. It is. It is a body on board. It is a little bit of card draw. It does you know again like provoke a response on their turn? But yeah. He could technically go for a removal. He can try to attack over the Kuzan. Mm -hmm. But is it worth it? Is it worth committing the extra Dawn to try and remove the Kuzan? Or do you just go aggressive here? Yeah. Eight into All Kuzan. Right. Kuzan like, goes. Right. Kuzan got value yeah. already. It, it got the attack. Yeah, there's his own Kuzan card draw coming in. And uh, not bad. Yeah, I think you're pretty happy with that. You develop your own Kuzan, you get rid of theirs. Well, here's the thing. Now, one uh, going wrong is on eight on. He has the mm -hmm. Rebecca Hina Luchi play. That is a four wipe. Yep. Well, you kind of have to expect that, right? I mean, at some point in Sakamura's, it it does oftentimes become a you know Rebecca Hina Luchi trade off, right? Where it's one person does it, then does the other person have the combo, then does the other person have the combo? You you kind of go back and forth until people sort of run out of steam sometimes in this matchup. Um, he choose not to. He we'll just see if that's the case. A brand new. That's a third peel off. We see. Yeah. So he plays all right. more than two. Takes... He just really wants to have a lot of cards in hand for the yeah. uh, for the mirror. I would imagine. Takes the shigi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Kuzan. We heard the player. One goes to six. Yeah. All right. There's. The uh, Tashigi for the counter. And then Great Eruption. Looks like a minus Kuzan again. So Kuzan's at one. Uh, Luchi does hit both. I'm going to go for. Uh... All right. There's the Rob Luchi. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, so there's a couple ways you could do it. You were right about the Rob Luchi. The way we got around to it was just a little bit different. And now, of course, we're going to just do a little bit of cycling with the Rob as well. Yeah. But three. He lost to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mind that, you know? I mean, yeah, why not? 
I, that's are you ever gonna? Yeah, you got me. <laughs> Yeah, and you're like, well, I'm never going to play these again. You know, everything else in my trash I, I want to actually maybe bring back, right? Whether it's with the Moncherry or it's with the Rebecca. So, yeah, I think that pilaf is, it, it served its purpose, right? You played it, you got the cards, send it to the bottom where you're not going to worry about it for the rest of the game. Yep. All right, so, Ranu takes Hina. He is on nine, so back down, he's down back to, to seven. Wants to see what's left in the trash. Uh, how much? What cards have you we seen? We've seen two Rebecca's hmm. already. I guess like Guanrong plays with some flair, man. I mean, like even when he's sending those peel-offs at the bottom, he spreads them all out. Be like, see, all three, no questions asked. Puts his opponent's trash, spreads it across the whole middle of the board. That's a that's a player with panache. What's on five K? We have Sabo. We have Brand New. Three Rebecca's. And two Tashigis. That's yeah. a He's lot of power here. in that hand right there. Yeah. So Hina and then Luchi hitting both. Okay. That should do it. Yep. Waiting for the official word. And yeah, that does uh, manage to take out both the brand new and the Luchi on the side of Quanron. And we're going to go back over. To our so other Sakazuki the, player. Tons of Don. What's is, it going to be? That 10. That looks like 7 drop for Slino. It does. Yeah. On the very end. Yeah. I believe that's the case. So you can bottom deck that Rob Luchi, which is, you know, way better than KOing it because it, it can't be brought back. It essentially has to be cycled through the deck until you find it again, which is so unlikely like in this match. That lead. Does minus yep. one something. Yeah. Brand new. Right, there's a Moncherry. There is another Rob Lucci as well on top of that. Suru okay. for this. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, sometimes you just want that 2k counter in hand. Mm -hmm. Especially with a, a board state on uh, Rails side that we're seeing here. What's the plan? Uh, you almost run into decision paralysis once in a while when you're playing this matchup and you get these hand sizes. Yeah, that large. Does she get? I don't need this as she get anymore. And nah. here comes the Hina, uh, Rebecca, Hina, Luchi play that we're so familiar with. Yep, that should be the case. Hina comes in, yep, going to minus the Rob, and then the other Rob comes in. So that plus the uh, minus one from the Sakazuki leader is enough to remove both. Yep. Classic. Mm. Classic Saka versus Saka. If, you, if you're new to this matchup, uh, you're going to see this a lot. Yeah, you will definitely see this a lot. And as you can tell, we already see all two Rebeccas in uh, Rails of uh, Trash. So that means he only has two mo at most uh, in his deck. At that point, hmm. you're, in the matchup is who can play more you know, Rebecca Lucci, back to back to back to back to back. And then right. and we see two more in Guanrong's hand. And more likely than not, Guanrong is ahead in this uh, Rebecca count, as well as having the uh, seven drop for Sino in hand to remove uh, a body if he needs it to. Mm -hmm. Starts with 5k. Yeah, attack on Mahina. It. Looks like the counter came through there, and there's a brand new. A new for three different, oh, three Borsalinos, <laughs> two of them being a blocker. Takes the blocker, Borsalino. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. It, it feels bad to, to drop the seven uh, cost Borsalino in the trash, but at the same time, I think we're getting to the point in the game and a board state where that blocker Borsalino might come in a little bit more handy for the moment. Oh, yeah. Rebecca, grab Lucci. Mm -hmm. Get the Hina, uh, play the Hina and then Rob. Lucci hitting two right back. Yep. You can send three at the bottom, including that seven cost Borsalino. So, yeah, that is one of the ones where if you do get to the second cycle, you, you do kind of want to draw that. And yeah, removing the Hina, Rob Lucci. I feel like we're, that's a, this is a situation we're going to be talking about over and over and over again tonight. Yeah. It will be played. again and again and again. There's eight yep. cards in his hand. Uh, two, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six. So Guanra has card advantage in uh, terms of the hand. Starts with a 6k into Hina. Yeah, okay. Wants to take a 2k out of hand. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. I mean, uh, you just want to, again, you know, try to take a little bit of resources out of your opponent's hand. They're down to one life right now. That is tough. He's going to go ahead and give up the Rebecca. And there's a Hound Blaze coming in onto Brandu. It's going to bottom deck another 
part of the board on Rails side, and you've got a decent attack coming in. Has to be countered, the zero use for that. And there's that seven cost Borsellino. Yep, that's bottom deck, I believe that was a Robert. In bottom deck, a Hina and a Lucci. That's yeah. two very core cool cards for this matchup. If you're if you're unable to have either one of those two in your trash, and unable to recycle them, you're going for further and further behind in the mirror match. Yeah, that was kind of a back. That might have been kind of a backbreaking turn for Rails to deal with here. He's going to a great eruption. A little card draw in there. Okay. So, Great Eruption minus the Borstino, uh, yep. attacking security, uh, attacking life, and then minus the uh, Borstino again. You know, you did not Wait. hear that. Uh, reset the clock. It's been zero games since Ying has said security instead of life. And it casts a bunch of one piece. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, we, we, need, uh, we need one piece uh, a tournament bingo for this. <laughs> I'm going to do it at least once per, uh, once per tournament at this point. <laughs> yeah. So takes, I'll be waiting for the next one. Takes the hit. Takes the hit here. Um, uh -huh. We are at <laughs> nine. No, ten dawn. Nine dawn. That's right. And yeah, tough spot for Rails to be in right now. Yeah, he's just gonna Discarding cycle to try to find something else. What's it gonna be? It is the Tashigi. Okay. Well, so another five. Hmm. Trying to take as many cards out of hand as possible and then playing the seven drop Borsellino to remove their Borsellino. All right. Hmm. Seems fair. Life is even right now, but what we talked about a lot is is the the hand sizes for each player, and it's it's still hand does matter pretty a lot. dominant. Yeah. We, saw, we see another Luchi, a Hina, and of course you have the Rebecca. That is. Well, or not, that uh, Borsino's probably going to get removed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't really plan on anything sticking around a whole lot in this matchup. You can get he one attack three off of the, the side. He's ready. With. Yep. <laughs> the, the combo. Might as well keep them separated. So, yeah, seven in the hand versus five on the side of Rails, which uh, those two cards can make a difference. I mean, he might be, be down a couple more after the end of this. The question turn. now is, yeah. does he want to remove a Borsellino, or not Borsellino, a brand new as well? The Borsellino is more likely not getting removed. Oh. Alright, players taking a look at each other's graveyards. It's so important in this matchup because you just need to know what they have access to, what they've used. What's remaining in the deck. Yeah. Yeah, this matchup you see players looking through their graveyards as much as, uh, or their, their trash rather, as much as their own hands. Reset the clock. And zero games since Joe said. Being able to keep track of your opponent's trash. trash is very detrimental in this matchup. It starts with 7k at leader, takes the life. Alright, there goes the last life. Minus the Borsalino. Mm -hmm. And here it comes. Rebecca. Yep. Grab Lucci. Rob Lucci brought back. Play We're gonna Hina. see the Hina get played, right? And then and play the Rob. Lucci. Removing That'll do it. the Borsellino. So he here opted to grab the Lucci because now he can prep for next turn if he want, needs to grab the Hina and having a second Lucci in his hand. He also mm -hmm. played the Lucci he grabbed, so then your opponent doesn't know whether he has a Lucci or not. Yeah. Any little bit of information you can conceal from your opponent is always a, always a good thing. Yeah. Oh, we see two great eruptions in hand, but hmm. is that enough? It doesn't look like it's gonna be. I don't think so. He needs to yeah, be able it's... to remove those attackers and a blocker and set up a blocker. That's a lot to do. Right. Now it looks like there is a. Do I see a Manchuri? Yes, that is a Monshari. The hand too, yeah. to grab the... Um, yeah, I think that's going to be the... Uh, to go for a Hina Luchi play. Yeah. Oh, he now he can't. He drew a Luchi. Oh, all right. Okay, that's, so what do we have now? Yeah, now we have maybe some potential here. There, That changes things. He it can a little bit. now try to remove both uh, Rebecca... No, not Rebecca. Uh, Luchi and Hina. But he still needs to establish multiple blockers. If he doesn't yep. establish multiple blockers, he has to try and push for a game, which is 
really difficult with that hand size and having two blockers out in play. Second. Right, great eruption again. Great eruption. As you grab this time, it's going to be another Suru. Yep. But now they hmm. are both in target of the Luchi. Hit yeah, but it almost feels like if you if you just keep fighting for board at this point from Rails side of things, you're gonna just keep slipping a little bit farther behind, you know. Yeah, you're going further and further. But at the same, <clears throat> yeah, at the at the same time though, I mean, you know, you, it really doesn't feel like you have the gas to to get in there and actually win the game. So it's a rough spot to be in mm -hmm. for a player from EU. Uh, he's looking, he's right. digging, he's, he searching. needs blockers. Yeah. No blockers. No. Well, if I recall correctly, one of those Borsalinos was bottom deck, one of the four cost blockers. There were in the, some in the trash, but. It'll be sock ability and. Oh, uh, it's a hound, hound Blaze? Yeah. That is a Hound Blaze. Yep. You can remove one. But... What's that going to do right now? Mm hmm. Not a lot. Not a whole lot. Reducing the other Rebecca, he says. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Yep, he's going to bottom deck the other Rebecca. He's uh, trying to push for a game and hoping your opponent doesn't have enough counters in hand. Ah, uh, well, let's see. Look at the other side. There's of more things. than enough. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. He's There's got the. 5k in hand. He yeah, he's got a lot of okay. counter. Yep. And does he add even more counter to the hand? Ice Age just oh, KOs the other brand new. Oh my new. gosh, that is that is devastating for Rails. You can see him kind of looking a little bit dejected there. That is so rough. There's not a lot of triggers you have to worry about in this mirror, but that is definitely one of them. <laughs> That was oh, uh, that's no. what you normally see. With only six oh, cards no. in hand, mathematically, it is impossible to get out. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is like, I respect to Rails, he's going to concede there. Respect to Rails for going for it. Like, uh, he had to try something, but in the end, it was just Guan Rong that had the win, he had the board, he had the cards in hand to get it done. And yeah. that he is our first Saka mirror of the day all the way. Every yeah. moment, he had no way of actually clearing the board and establishing blockers, so he had no choice. Yep. I need to push for a game. If I'm able to push for a game, great. Otherwise, I don't know what to do anymore. Yeah, I and I totally, I totally am on board with that decision. Sometimes you just have to go for it. And I think what separates some of the good players from some of the great players is knowing when you just have to take that massive risk, you know? Mm -hmm. And be like, you know what, if I just don't send it right now, I'm not going to come back in this game. It is either do or die, you know, and, and uh, he went for it. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it does not, but the point is, is I think it was the right call to go for that there. Unfortunately, that leaves him at 1-1 one and one on the day both of those players were 1-0 coming into the second round of Swiss. Uh, Rails from EU going down to 1-1 one, one in Kwangrong, uh, going ahead to 2-0. But out of game 1-1 one one does not mean you're out of the, the tournament. You're able to not continue at all. to play and win. We can, uh, I believe, mathematically, after five rounds, you could be 3-2 and two and still make it in, potentially, based on tiebreakers. In a 16-player tournament, I, I haven't done the math, I'll be honest, but I think you may be right. Yeah. So it's very possible for this to come out uh, that way. But mm -hmm. we have Guarong taking a win over EU, and I believe Guarong is from Asia Finals. Um, let's see, okay. I believe that is the Malaysian one. The Malaysia Singapore one. If I'm okay. not uh, wrong. Yeah. Him along with SG Alice. Oh, what do we have here? What's it, what's it gonna be? We're interviewing our attendees. Oh, yep. All right. Oh, that's a really nice art for Sugar. And then we have seven cards. Yeah. I was gonna say I haven't. I don't know if I've seen that Big Mom before. I believe that is for one of their um, prize cards for Japan, actually. Oh, okay. That's cool. All right. Well, so uh, we already talked about what our favorite cards are. So I hope at some point we get some uh, Swiss results so we can talk about that a little bit. A bit. All right. 
I'm going to ask. So we're kind of in the downtime between rounds right now. Obviously, we have to wait for the next round to switch to end. Oh, okay. We're, I've been told production is, is on it. Hopefully, they'll be able to get that at some point. And now, oh, again. That's okay. Okay, so both of these, uh, both of these guys like the yellow decks. There's the Katakuri and the Anel. Yep, both yellow. Yeah. Both very popular yellow decks. That's right. The next generation of One Piece players right there. Or next generation of champions. The current generation of players, actually. They are playing the game. So I got one of their our results. Um, okay. Jackson won against our European champion. So All he's right. currently two and zero. Nice. Okay. Cool. So that's uh, that is a two zero player from from uh, North America right now. And uh, I I'm curious if Jonas won his second round or not too. We know he, he was down did. the game. He played he did. the mirror right. match and won. Nice. I do feel like that deck does well in the NL mirror, so that's kind of neat. Yeah, because uh, NL does not have any 5 plus blockers, so that uh, Amaru does a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Yay, favorite cards. <laughs> All right, well, we'll uh, give you more results as we get them. In the meantime, this is a good chance to uh, go and grab some coffee or something like that, because it is going to be a, a long and wonderful evening of, uh, of games here tonight. Oh, don't, don't, not just coffee. Make sure you eat. Get some food. Get, uh... Oh, yeah. I got to do that at some point. I'll, I'll do that during Digimon later. Yeah. All right. So we will uh, step away for a moment and uh, just kind of let things go in Japan here. We will rejoin the rest of you fine folks out there when we're getting ready to get into Swiss round three. So we'll, we'll be back later. Talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> いいっすよね。いいね。それ。あ、それで言うと、あの、去年のバンダイカードフェスで、もう ま、これ今日マカリメスでやってますけど、はい。本当に多くの方にお越しいただいていて、昨日も今日も。はい。多分ね、本当にえ、お前いたのみたいな方が絶対いらっしゃると思うんですよ。本当にいますよ。この全員
And we are back here at the Bandai Card Games Fest World Tour Final. That's right. We're covering One Piece right now. We're going into round three of Swiss. I'm Doe. With me is Ying Hong, otherwise known as just not just another human. Just you got but it. your your Twitter handle is your Twitter handle actually just another human? Yeah. Or should there be an A there? Well, hmm. if you add the A, it's too long. I just took the A out. Oh, okay. Got it. Well, anyway, we're down uh, through two rounds of Swiss so far. Uh, we're trying to get the results to you uh, as soon as we can. But again, we're kind of at the mercy of the broadcast over there. We are doing this remotely as as best we can. So thanks for uh, joining in and hanging out with us as we get ready to jump into Swiss round number three. And we'll find out in a moment yes, who these I'm players excited. are. So we have our two players here. Let's see who they are. It is Alan again. That's right. And, we recognize Alan. Yep. And our other player is uh, Shiroko Kun. Okay. So another Sakazuki yes, mirror. Seems like. Or uh, no, maybe not. So Shiroko Kun is on Sakazuki, I believe. Mm. Let me double check. Yes, he is yeah, on Sakazuki. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And. Alan here is on Purple Luffy. Sakazuki versus Purple Luffy. All right. Well, here we go. So, uh... Oh, not... Oh, Zoro. Sorry. Zoro, yeah, yeah. Zoro player. Nice! We found our Zoro player. I apologize. There's another than uh, uh, Kabu, I believe, is their ID. I mean, That's right. And, uh, right now... I have the wrong point. Double check our players. <laughs> Waiting for our players to come up. <laughs> we're we're easy, yeah, again. Yeah, I'm making sure our, I get the names. Oh, we've got about as much info as you do, so yeah. we're we're rolling this, with this as best we can. Yeah, I, I thought they were doing all the undefeated, but this is uh, actually not one of the undefeated tables. So let me see. Uh, Interesting. Let me double check the players. Uh, Zoro is Kabu. Kabu is. That's uh, what our information said, but uh, we're going against our tournament. Singapore player, uh, okay. SG Alex. Right. Okay. Who is uh, on Sakazuki, apparently? Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah. Both players are one and one. Yep. We got a little bit of info here. Yeah, it does uh, appear to be the case. I'll send you this. Our buddy Gavin over there hooked me up. <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah. So it looks like we've got two one and one players here. So this is a big deal. You don't want to go down two losses, obviously, in a, a Swiss 5 uh, top 16, right? Because then, uh, like we talked about earlier, you may be running into situations where you're relying on tiebreakers to get through to the top four after the next uh, couple rounds are done, and it's it's rough. So there's a starting hand for uh, so, Alice there. <coughs> after after five rounds of Swiss, you will have one five and zero oh if undefeated wins the last round. Uh, yep. Up to two or three four and ones. If there are three four and ones, then that means uh, there will not be any uh undefeated. Actually, it would be a uh, three one single three and two player will make it. So this is do or die for both players right now. It really does. It really does end up like that quite a bit in these situations. So yeah, crucial game. No, we don't have the undefeated. This is a potentially make or break for one of these two players. Yes, you do not want to have two losses, especially on round three when in a total of five rounds. So we have two K cores and Makino, Zoro, and Nami in here. That is really, really strong for Zoro. Yeah, Going it's a really nice Sakazuka, start. That's very, like your turn two. It's really strong. You go in for you're going in for a lot of attacks. Yep, and I mean that's what Zoro does, right? You try to go wide. You try to use that hero ability to get lots of uh, cost efficient attacks. Yes. And so we'll see how it ends up working out. I mean, uh, I'm hyped. Both of Here these we go. players They're getting again, started. one and one. We have Sakazuki going first. That's right. All right, Saka cycle. Yep. Mm. And what's the draw? It is a Ra, a Sabo rather, Sab. Yeah. All right. So <coughs> now we're jumping in on the 
Zoro side of things. Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of searching with the Nami first. Where are we going to find? There's a Nami. All right. We see a Zoro in hand uh, right there and a uh, Radical Bean. Takes a Zoro. He wants more aggression. Just going to keep him going face. Zoro is the best way to do it. Yeah, why not? It's one of those situations, too, where we know he's already got one in his hand, but his opponent doesn't necessarily know that. So uh, he might not be expecting the second one, but you oh, got to imagine this. Next be turn, there's going to be three 6K attacks going in. Wow. That's not going to be bad I mean, at all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the... a lot of attacks. But I mean, that's what Zoro does, right? You just put tons of pressure on as fast as possible. And this is why people are willing to bring Zoro into a meta of Sakazuki, because if you get a good start, you can just run the Saka player over sometimes. Yeah. Many times. And the Makino going to help a lot. Scar screws on the draw with the effect. Yep. Uses a eruption. Does he draw a two cost? He needs a two cost. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, yeah, minus on the Nami. Why not? Max 7,000. Takes yeah. it because there's no, no need to uh, defend the first set. That's fine. Yeah, you, you want more cards in hand anyway, as the Zoro. You want to have those. The he, can, he can up to search some more, or he can really start swinging. I think you go aggressive here. I want to see it. This six, three, six K swings is a lot. There's the one under Zoro. Use the yep. Makino effect. Nami is now 5, plus the one zero is 6-2 leader. And the choices are a little bit scary. Yeah, you take the life, all right? That's a 7 Mine's drop. A Borsalino. No. Another 6? Yeah. This is life. really strong. A lot of hits going in. Luchi? Oh, that Luchi is so good right there off the top. Totally, yeah. SG Alice, though, needed those cards in hand. There's the block. Uh, coming in from the Suru in the end as the uh, Rush Zoro hits the board. So definitely ways to get rid of this, but it's kind of like when you have multiple Rush Zoros coming in, you have things like the the uh, Diablo Jambe to finish things off, you're already a little bit scared, I think, if you're SG Alice here. What is the SG Alice or SGA Ice? Uh, SGA Ice? I don't know. Else? Yeah, you're right. I, I can't tell. Maybe you're right. Who knows? We're doing the best we can. Starts with six. Probably his ice, isn't it? At Amakino, minus the Zoro, and there's the Luchi hitting both. He needs to remove them. Right, there's the board wipe. That's what Sakazuki does best. Especially yeah. against Zoro, where it's a lot of low cost. <clears throat> yeah, but you, you know the uh, Zoro's ready for seven this, right? Lead. Yeah, swings in for seven. Yep. Plays a Zoro. Puts That's a that second on. Zoro. Another seven. He's going hard. That's that second Zoro. Remember we talked about this earlier. You know, I you know, I saw the Zoro get drawn uh, with the Nami. May not have expected the second one. He doesn't want to go to zero. Like, no. Going to zero is detrimental. That means the Abu Jambe is live and it would yep. end up being lethal. Yeah, you can't take that chance. Oh man, this is this so much pressure coming in from our Zoro player into Sakazuki. This is the matchup you want to play the most. Totally, and I mean, with eleven Sakazukis in the in the you know top sixteen, you know the Zoro might get their wish and uh, get to play all Sakazuki going right into the finals. It's possible. This leader takes it. Yeah. Five at leader. I mean, speaking of uh, more rushing here. Ooh, okay. Yep. Counter that out, yeah. Seven drop personnel will bottom deck the Zoro. Yeah. But we saw earlier, there is another Zoro in hand. Yep. I believe he is at eight dawn. Starts with seven at leader. Mm -hmm. Looking over the hand of our Sakazuki player. Another yeah. Zoro? And yeah. 9,000 leader, That's and that. that is over wow. super fast. That was a 4 minute and 46 second game. That and is... that is a win for Azoro. Moves to 2-1 in the round of, in the Swiss round of 5. And uh, yeah. yeah, that was quick, wasn't it? That was very fast. Like, I, yeah. That's Zoro doing what Zoro does best. Rushing that's what, that's what it down. would be, though. And especially against Sakazuki, where a lot of the cards in the deck are actually non counters. And non counters is. Like, all your removal are non counter cards. You have so, yeah. mi so little 
6K or so little 2Ks that there's those 6,000 attacks requires at least two cars to take out, uh, to get out. If it's not taking two cars, you're taking at least a 2K. And as soon as they're out of 2Ks, they can no longer guard those uh, or counter those uh, 6K swings. Right. And I mean, those uh, Zoro games, that's how they either go. Either Zoro wins fast or uh, Sakazuki wins it, you know? <laughs> It's uh, You're kind of just pedal the metal from uh, second number one with that deck, but it is one of the things that makes it fun, right? It's not quite like, uh, not quite as crazy uh, mindless aggro as people think. Like, you have to really structure each turn perfectly to be able to pull something like that off. You know, one yeah. small mistake will cost you the game as the aggressive player. Definitely, you want to structure those uh, swings at good numbers, like specific numbers. And yeah. in that turn where he was going all 6k, it was, it just went, because... Yeah, it forces your opponent to have to have multiple 2Ks in there. At the yep. moment they start taking the damage, it means they do not have multiple 2Ks. So that first 6K said, or he took it, okay. He doesn't have a, he either doesn't have a 2K or most Sakazuki players does tend to take that very first hit. But yep. in a sense, when you're going against Zoro, you don't want to take as little hits as possible. And the moment he took two of them, you're telling your opponent, okay, I definitely don't have a lot of 2Ks. I'm just gonna keep on going six 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 six, and that's what he did. And afterwards, he drew it another Zoro. Having three Zoros in hand allowed him to go. I don't need to worry about your board, or I don't need to worry about anything. Mm. I am applying so much pressure that you have to respond to me. I am now the aggressive. I am the aggressive player. I am the proactive player. You are now the reactive player. You never want to be a reactive player. You want to be the proactive player. Right. I mean, part of it too, finding, you know, so many Roranora Zoros so early in the game too. I mean, that's just so difficult to deal with. Like you're, you're prepared for, you know, some of their stuff to come online, some of the stuff that's being buffed by a Zoro leader to be kind of scary to deal with. But having all that rush happen that quick, that's just, that is too much damage for like anybody to handle. Yes, especially Sakazuki where the deck has so little counters. And here we are, we're back to interviewing right. our attendees on their favorite cards. What's your favorite card? It's gonna be oh ace, all Ooh, ace. right. This is from the premium band I ace. Oh, all right. I uh, I recently found out a major spoiler about ace. I didn't even know about it until nationals actually. I was one of those that spoiled it. You were. It's okay though. I don't care. I I knew. I accepted when I started playing One Piece that the show would be spoiled for me. All right, it went Mihawk. Hey, I love this card by the way. This is one of my favorite cards too. I still advocate for running this in Sakazuki, but nobody believes. I really me. like the Mihawk uh, art where he's just sitting on J. It's looking down on you, you know. He's yeah. He's the boss. Yep. Borsalino. Yeah, four drop Borsalino locker. I mean, always a good decision. It's been a good card uh, for uh, well since pretty much the moment he came out. Yeah, that's a black staple for sure. Yep, hard to remove. Blocker. Tell me your favorite card. Seven oh. cost Lin right. Lin Big Mom when. A lot of the, big mom she fans. loves the ripping soup. <laughs> That's right. I mean, food is. I, I mean, you, everyone loves food, right? I I do. I like food. I hope to eat some tonight. In fact, how about you? <laughs> oh, I, um, I definitely want some food. <laughs> That's great. Well, all right. Show me your favorite card. Uh, yeah, Newgate, <clears throat> White Beard himself, Nine Edward D. Newgate. Beard. He's got a D, right? Like everyone. <laughs> Everyone who's powerful I mean, in the show, everyone, everyone who's powerful in the show has the D, right? I mean, at the very end of the first name, sure, but no. Yeah, that counts. That counts. Nope, absolutely not. I think it no, counts. I'm not giving you that. All right, we have the Shankston from set two. Yeah. OPO two set uh Shankston. All right. That it. That is cool. That is cool. Um. I bet, I bet Shanks has a D in his name, too. Red-haired D Shanks, right? And, of course, Katakuri, leader. Yeah. Katakuri will stay good ever since release and stays good. Continuously. But back to 7 another, Big Mom. Another Big Mom. We can only... <coughs> we should start keeping track of how many uh, favorite cards we go through before we get to another 7 cost Big Mom. Oh Yay, God. favorite cards. And we're back to our host... But That's right. that game finished so fast. We're gonna it it's gonna be a while before we get into next uh next round and have it. I up. told you, man. That was a, that was an under five minute game. So yeah, we have probably a full twenty minutes left before uh, round number four. So again, you got some time to 
go and caffeinate yourself, grab a snack, even go to the store if you don't have snacks. If there's a if there's a shop nearby, you have a chance to go and do that. Tell them to tell them to watch the One Piece finals. Spread the word. Definitely a possibility. Yeah. It's a possibility. <laughs> but right now, our four undefeated oh. players. So. Going uh -huh. in, in round three, our four undefeated players are mm -hmm. Shirokoku, we have Allen, we have Guanrong, we have Clyde. So that is our four. We have one player from Japan, uh, Allen from, I believe this is Australia. Okay. Uh, Guanrong is from Asia Finals. I believe that's right. either Malaysia or Singapore. Um, and Clyde. Our second place from NA, our runner. Yeah, Jackson Hong, our Sakazuki player. Oh. That's right. And then our remaining matches, we have Jonas, uh, one and one playing against D, our uh, from Japan. Then we have Motoro, which is playing against Rail Z. Um. Moro, I believe he is our Latin. Okay. Latin America. Um, we have Fabian versus Shuga uh, on Sakazuki. So it's a Sakazuki mirror down there. And we, of course, we saw SJ SGA ice. Uh, on Sakazuki against Kabu on Zoro. And then our remaining two matches is Tsuki Usagi against uh, ooh. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell who it was. <laughs> anyway. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out later as the, the rounds continue. But as you can see, they are taking a break over there in Japan. So I think we're going to do the same thing. And any any quick thoughts before we uh, we send it to break for a little bit? So, we saw round three just now, um, Zoro against uh, Sakazuki. If our Zoro player can continuously put that kind of show, he can make it. Yeah, he showed I believe. a very dominant presence, especially in that matchup. If you can keep on playing against Sakazuki, against Sakazuki, or even Purple Luffy, those are very good matchups. But if you were to pair up against Anel, it becomes very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. True enough, we'll find out. We'll keep track of that throughout the day. Two more rounds of Swiss remain. We will be back with round number four here at the One Piece Championships. The World Tour Final, do not go anywhere. The stream will be back for the next round in just a little bit. All right, we'll be back later.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back here at the uh, One Piece World Tour final. That's right. I'm Doe. With me is Ying. And we are about to go into round four. It's already round four of Swiss here. The uh, results are heating up. We can talk about that a little bit. But I think we, what you need to talk about more than anything, Ying, is our next match. It is going to be a North America finals rematch. It's going to be Jonas versus Clyde. NL versus Sakazuki. Now, Ying, in North America, in that match, that was the best of three. Yes. It went 2-1. Ended Ooh. up going uh, Jonas's way. But here we go again. I'm excited it's about this one. It's going to be a best of one for this. Yeah. And we have our rematch. Here's the thing. Both players are on the exact same list. They played in North America. Yeah, I mean, they both played it very well. It got them to the finals, so it's not super surprising. But... And that was a 2-1 again. So this one could really go either way. And with both players coming into this at a 2-1 record in Swiss, it is also a crucial game for both of them too. On the one hand, I'm psyched that we get this matchup again because it's fun. On the other hand, my, my NA heart bleeds because we have NA versus NA, and that's not good for NA. So, they said, so it looks like Jonas is going first. So it uh, looks okay. like they said to wait. Uh, wait until they said start before we actually begin. <laughs> Oh, it's the second time he's done that now. <laughs> Clyde uh, won the dice roll. He won yeah. the pick. He definitely opted to go second. Uh, this match is definitely winning the dice roll is very, very important here. So they hit two Yamados in hand, a Gidatsu, right. Sanji, and Katakuri. So if we can get to that late game point, we're going to see multiple Yamados coming down. I mean, that's like the Yona special, right? I mean... Having three Yamatos on the board is what won him the North America Championships uh, just a month ago. You and I were there on stage in L.A. watching these guys play, and, and uh, it was a really tight battle. But Yamato, I would say, was like the, the MVP card in that final game for sure. Although, I feel like Jonas would tell you uh, that uh, he really loves that he uh, runs four of those seven-cost rush NLs, too. And... I don't know. Two great options, Sewer, Houndblaze, okay. and Hero opening. But going second, hmm. that is fine, because he's going to be able to cycle at least twice with the yep. Cedar effect or anything. So he can actually even top deck or draw into a brand new here for his turn one play. Or for oh, turn two, depending on what he draws, Nahino could end up being discarded to or another card. Yep. True enough. Waiting for the time to start. Will this be the salty run back where Sakazuki takes the win, or will Jonas stay on top of Clyde? I mean, you know, both of these players have been thinking about this, you know, every day since the NA finals, right? What yes. if we match up against each other again at Worlds? What's going to happen? Uh, you've been talking to both of them. What have they been saying about the possibility of this happening? Uh, obviously, they wanted this as a finals. They didn't want this now, yeah. right now. They wanted this as a finals or an a repeat. However, they... Oh, we do see a Kaido now. That Ki All right. We did not see it last time. We did not see um, Clyde being able to play the Kaido before. But this time he does. He uses the other great eruption. He wants to draw. He wants to see cycle more cards. So yeah. he discarded Hina and used two great eruptions. He drew into one, a Tutorial and passing turn. He says, I'm going to starve you. Um, I'm not attacking because I have a Gidatsu. I'm going to play brand new and pass. So in this game of ma a game match where you're starving you each other, Clyde does have a advantage because of the Kaido in his hand. So once we get to that point where you can play the Kaido and have it be extremely healthy, it feels amazing. Yeah, for sure. While he, he did put one down under an L, he thought about it. Do I want, really want to attack? Do I really want to give you uh, take a life? No. Oh, hey, did not no find Holly. Oh, Holly. that hurts. Passing that turn. hurts a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, what can you do? So we're now uh, on <laughs> two, four, six. Yeah. Six talk? Yeah, what do you talk. now? Jonas had a Gadatsu in hand, I believe, as well, right? So, what do you think about the uh, going for the Ohm? Uh, Holly potential versus just uh, playing the Gadatsu. He wanted to, he didn't play the Gadatsu because then he can potentially play it this turn. And also, uh, um, also if he able to find Holly, then he's able yeah. to apply pressure doing so. True. And here's the second one. All right. Second All right, that's charm. Tank, another five cards deeper. Will he find it this time? He found the dog. There it is. Yeah. All right. 
That the dogs is were hidden. 100% a win condition for this deck. Well, this is what a lot of the games looked like between these two players at the North American uh, Nationals as well, is that yes. Jonas was able to put a lot of pressure early on with the Ohms, with the Hollies, with the uh, Sauteries sometimes. Get a lot of those 5K, 6K <coughs> swings going early. There are two Borsalinos, though, now, for Clyde. Thing, though, we do not have a Hina or yeah. the Moon Blue two bodies. That's true. The Scar's Mansherry, he draws brand new. Okay. Not does what he wanted wanna to see. Wait a little bit longer, or does he want to start playing cards? Let's, let's see. Yeah, I think the Borsalinos give you a little bit more time. Starts with a 5. Yeah. Reduce the Holly. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely take that life. First hit. It's a category. Okay. Now here, do you actually do you just play a Luchi, or do you play t your two um, the Suru. Oh, Suru reduce. Hina. Yeah. Not Hina. Um, Tashigi reduce. Tashigi. Yep. All right. So and then kinda... Luchi, he removed two bodies. And you know what? I'm going to get rid of two bodies. I. It's fine. I'm losing two two case counters, but I get to remove two bodies. That's fine. Because now it's equivalent as if they're attacking 5k with those two bodies. And then you're countering with the two two uh, two case. Another thing is now that the is on board, you have to attack into it. If that Tashigi stays, that's of gonna do the, that's gonna do damage. And I mean you're just gonna block with the uh, Borsalino, and you're gonna be okay there. But at least you want to try to force that block. And there's the uh, yeah okay. So First, Yamato, Yamato able to uh, down, remove that. Yep. Removing Tashigi, and we have Which ten dollars. Yeah. Here is what makes um, Kaido really good here. You have four life. You're very healthy. Playing Kaido allows you to draw your cards back. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean, you get your like cards I said, back, this is... Fine. If they swing nine, okay, I don't mind. I get to, I'm still drawing cards. Yeah. Now you've got Kaido out. Kaido's a massive threat. This card forces you know, to draw a new card. Alright. And passing turns, like, I don't need turn. to attack yet. Yeah. Playing it slow, but uh, now Clyde in a much better position than he was a couple turns ago. Yep. Jonas under pressure now. Not maybe attacking there is, swing? to me, is, I was like, no, it maybe it might have been okay to start attacking because that Luchi might not even stay. And putting mm. it down to two isn't the worst. Another six. All right. Six, six. <laughs> Do you counter? Why not go into that? You block and counter. He counters. All right, there's the uh, there's the Katakuri as well. Yep, to keep uh, your own own back into life, saying I don't need this. It's fine. I I'd rather yep. play multiple big bodies. Now you have to deal with multiple big bodies. <clears throat> yeah, trading the uh, own for a Katakuri, not too bad. Yeah, I get a little bit of life. Still though, I mean, I Clyde's in. Really nice position right now. Starts He's a five, minus on the Amato. Okay. Yeah. You take that on back. Why not? It's gonna be another six. To face. Yep. Takes it. All right. Does not trigger the Charlotte Cracker. It looks like. Oh, that was a beige actually. Was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Then he goes. You know. Thought it was a Cracker alt art for a second. And then, Borsalino to bottom deck the Yamato. Passing turn. Yep. <clears throat> That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's it's a ton of uh, a ton of power on the side of uh, Clyde right now. So if you're Jonas, you're definitely going to be a little bit worried. Still decides to go ahead and send 6k to life. You got to try it at least. He's happy to have that. Happy to have the hand size. He knows when he needs it. He's got all the blockers in the world. Yamato, though, sends a Hina. The trash and passing turn again because he doesn't want to turn that category size. The second it gets turned sideways, Kaido runs right into it. Oh, yeah, well, what's the plan for Clyde here? Looks like let's see how much can he reduce. He can reduce double Hina and hmm. Houndblaze to reduce. I mean, that would definitely get rid of uh, something there, kind of take your pick at that point. Yes. He's got the Rebecca's, but I don't... Uh, yeah, I, there is a Rob in the trash, isn't there? Yes, there is a Luchi in the trash and a Hina yeah. in the trash. So yeah, both in the trash. Yeah. 
But that's some uh, that's some expensive stuff on the other side, though. Mm-hmm. I really rely on the classic combo this time around. But I don't I don't mind the uh, the double Hina Hound Blaze. What do you think? Mm. Thinking about Shigi with that as it's well. It's hard to say because you can apply pressure by start swinging like fives or even higher if you want to swing higher and yeah. force cards out of hand. <coughs> yeah. Start from five, reducing the Yamato. Okay. Counters the five. Get, uh, all the counter, yeah. Hmm. I taking a lot of time to think. Checking the hand size again. Hand. Yeah, it is nine on the other side, and that's going to be uh, blocking Barcelino attacking base. Or another five. Yep. Counters the five. Yeah, so this seems like a turn to try to just reduce the hand size of Jonas a little bit. Definitely one of those setup turns to take into a stronger late game kind of finisher situation. Mm -hmm. If you can. Very careful about goes for another five. Wow, all right. This one, he oh, he's thinking it's a trigger. What is it? There's no trigger, it's a Satori. Oh, okay. So it's like he wants to save the Satori. Hmm. Interesting. Takes another life again. He he says no attack. Wow. Uh, Kaido doesn't get to attack, he gets yeah. to recover, and then discarding, discarding a Katakuri. Yeah, not a bad idea at all. Yeah, I mean, he has a lot of Kaido... in Mortal, so I was like, alright, I don't need another category. Uh, Kaido yeah. cannot attack. Because the Kaido cannot attack, it's fine. Um, we just go for a different way to remove. And keeping the category at bay is, is so nice, too. Or keeping the Kaido, rather, at bay is, is, uh, is very nice. Yeah. Being unable to get that last hit uh, in with the Kaido is... It's unfortunate, because now he doesn't go to zero. You want to put an L to zero as, as soon as possible. Oh, oh yeah, sure. brand new find oh. a great eruption. Great eruption, yeah. Okay, all right. It looks like yeah. he was trying to fish for a um, ice age mm -hmm. eruption. I mean, ice age would definitely be helpful in this situation, yep. <laughs> for sure. Grabbing one Hina. Hina does. Allow him to remove the Yamato. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like you do have to remove one of these this turn. You know, they've, they've stuck around for long enough. And now it's time he's going to use the Rob to do just that. And a little bit of cycling as well. Yep. Yep. Just not cycling. Just sending some of those events to the uh, the bottom of the hand. And then passing turn. All right. <clears throat> bottom of the deck. Back to Jonas. Uh, all the blockers are turned sideways now. So Jonas can actually try and put it... Mm. I down to zero, but putting down to zero doesn't mean it's enough. Yeah, and it seems like right now Clyde is kind of just counting on the fact that, you know, the pressure is not going to be strong enough from Jonas to really, you know, concern him at all, right? I mean, he's got a good amount of counters in the hand. You see Jonas checking the uh, trash right there of Clyde. But Clyde kind of kind of saying, all right, feel free. Go ahead and attack. Attack my uh, have, characters, attack me. Do whatever you want. For Jonas, we no, we ha he has another category. He has yes. um, a Yamato as well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, six. And that can still be either Yamato or Katakuri, too. So that doesn't give Clyde a whole lot of information. That's a lot of 2Ks in hand, though. I gotta say. It is. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's why, you know, Clyde just wasn't too worried about. Uh, you know, tipping his blockers over this turn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next. So if you're Jonas, you kind of see this. You're like, all right, well, I feel like I should probably go a little bit wide here then to try to just pull out as many cards as I can. He's just going to play the Amato instead. He doesn't want to attack with the Katakuri. He doesn't want to turn it sideways for the Kaido to hit. Yeah, yeah, that is the concern, He knows. Right? The moment he turns it sideways, Kaido will run into it. And then once yep. Yamato gets removed, it goes the entire board. Pretty much. <coughs> I take a lot of time. Yep. To think through that turn. Yeah, just seven. A little attack with Rob. Yep. I say a little, but 7k is serious. It's going to take one That's of them. Saw Sanji now. coming out. Yep. Yeah, not bad. Getting another blocker on the board. Seven cards Getting in a hand. A blocker on the board. Yep. Hmm. 
At least he doesn't have to worry about law this time. <laughs> this card, Hina? It's a Kuzan. Mm -hmm. Now, how aggressive do you want to be if you're Clyde in this situation? I feel like you've got the room to do that. You have We did space. see him... Yeah, you did see him turn everything sideways last time. Obviously, he couldn't attack with the Kaido after the, the beige figure came in for Jonas. But... Things are a bit different now. He does have space, so in order to really continue attacking, he has to turn either the porcelain, or like one of the porcelain notes sideways. He starts with the eight, co the seven cost porcelain note. Mm -hmm. Doesn't block. Takes the hit. Okay. Yeah, no ability. Chooses not to use the Amaro for the double heal. Wow. All right. Very confident is Jonas he that he's he going to be able to handle this. He used the offensively in this case. He wants to be able to rest those blockers. He knows Clyde cannot so. go for the win as of right now because of how many 2Ks are in his hand. Yeah. Hmm. And he discards Katakuri for this. Alright, yeah. Time to attack with the Kaido. Does he block with the Sanji or does he take the hit? Like, uh, if he blocks with it... Yeah. Well, if he blocks with it, then you just... You just do you just go aggressive then? He just takes a life? Take okay. Wow. Alright, another uh, 200 million volts tomorrow. What, what was it? Maybe something else? Was that a... Uh... That was a 2k count. Didn't see if he grabbed it? Okay, yeah. Grabbed a 2k count. He put it under the, uh, under the event, yeah. <clears throat> So does Clyde uh, want to remove the Sanji here and go big? Because the second those forcing notes turn sideways, Jonas could potentially come back and swing for game. Right, right. There is one, two, three, four, five, six 2K counters in Jonas's hand with a You've 1K got... uh, Sanji. So that you... is 13K encounters. I feel like you're right on the edge. You've got a lot of Don to spend. Uh, if you want to go ahead and attack a little bit more, yeah. Okay, there's one of the counters here. Onus coming in. Six. There goes the counter. Yep. Clyde seems very unsure that he can get over the line this turn, and and I can't blame him. I I'd be very concerned. He knows well. that if Jonas has double Amaru, those Sportslinos mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, does he need? Does he want to play more count, more blockers? Does he? What does he want to do? Does he it's want the hardest to part of the game of One body? Piece, I think. I think this is the hardest part in the whole game, right? Where you know you have the potential to win this turn, but it all depends on what is in their hand. You know, how much can you deduce, and how much of a risky <clears throat> call is it to just go for it? Yes. And we don't know whether Jonas is able to recover or not. He just took those hits. Having yeah, eight. that's why you, so you he look starts at the trash. Yeah. By playing a Kuza, he wants to draw. Uh, okay, all right. So not going to go for the, the game this time around, it seems like. It looks like he's just going to play setup instead. It, it looks yeah. like he's about to just play another blocker and, and that. With that amount of cards in your opponent's hand, I would also feel very uncomfortable about trying to, to win it right here. A little counting on his hands. I, that's the only way I know how to count. He does attack. Wow. Now. There goes the 1k counter. Okay. Hmm. Oh, oh, excuse Rebecca. me. Wow, he's going to replace the Borsalino with the Rebecca. No. He wants to grab a 2k, so that is a lot of counters in his hand. Does he get another yeah. Amaru? He does not get another Amaru. There's only one Amaru here. He still needs to get through two life, two blocker, and the rest mm -hmm. cards in hand. He's gonna really look like for the play. second Amaru. We find three, it. Four, still two blockers five. to deal with. Oh, uh, I can't there quite see. No Amaru. No, not there. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> had to show him. Had to show him what card it was. Yeah. No, trust me. It was Sky Island. I promise. <laughs> this is tough because now he's unable to recover. Starts with a yeah. 9k swing. Can he brute force it? One, That's two, the question. Four, six, 
7k counter in Clatan. It's enough for a 12, a 13, 11k swing at some point if there's a finisher at 11k. You choose not to count. Mm -hmm. You're gonna block with Rebecca first off? Okay. I really love that play, by the way, of swapping the or so for the Rebecca and grabbing the. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, going to use the uh, the one Amaro, like I said, to get the Borsalino sideways. And now, now you go for it. I guess. Now we say, all right, let's see what you got. What's in the hand? There is six Dons remaining. Does he mm -hmm. want to start countering here, or does he want to take it? <clears throat> yeah. Or is it bait? Because we've got a Katakuri and Anel himself yet to attack here. Here's the thing, though. The second Jonas did not use double Amaru, Fly knows mm -hmm. there's no second Amaru in his hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. He takes it. Yeah. Uh, okay. What is it? What is it? It is an Ice Age. Yeah. Not with the Katakuri, and then you can swing with a. Uh, I guess it'd be what? Two, Ten? two, you know? one. Okay. It's out. Okay. And that's game. Yep. He yep. knows exactly. he can't go for game afterwards. And I mean, Jonas. Jonas had to go for it again. It was a similar situation to the another game we saw where you know he knew it was it was kind of do or die at that point. And that, that was what he yep, had to respect sure. that your opponent. You cannot win unless you go for it. So he had to go for it right then and there. Yeah. Um, the only other way he would actually start an extra turn was if he still had a Katakuri or anything else that can recover one life. But even recovering, yeah. there's way too much or presence. But uh, how about Clyde, right? I mean, great play, great patience with the Sakazuki getting the win there. He's going to move to 3-1 and one in Swiss. And it's it's bittersweet, right, to, uh, to send your fellow North American qualifying player uh, down to uh, X and 2. But at the same time, like, uh, you know, we know Jackson is looking for a little bit of uh, a little bit of revenge, a little bit of comeuppance from uh, the way the finals went in the North American regionals. And he's got a chance to go on and uh, make it to the world finals if he keeps up this performance. Yes, this, he did get revenge here, uh, winning. So in a sense, they are two and two. In a, in a sense, yes. they are two and two. In, in overall games, yeah. If you count the two-one victory for uh, for Jonas at NA, and then you count the the victory in this one round for for Clyde now, yeah. Then you've got two and two overall in uh, in regional and world championships yes. for anyone keeping track. Their, their lifetime record in big matches, I suppose. Yes. But that was an amazing match. You can tell by the both players were seasoned. They understood what they needed to do. They they were very. They slowly took it up. They wait. All right, I'm gonna do one bit at a time, one card at a time. I will go up, wait until I'm set up. Once I set up, then I pick up the pace, really go for it, and start hitting. Yeah. Oh, we've got some updates. I'm seeing from uh, the various tables around the Swiss rounds. It uh, looks like we have uh, Matsume versus Mao got the win there. Then uh, we have Rails. Remember Rails from earlier in the broadcast. Uh, three one now. Yep. Rails win over on Kabu. Took, takes out Kabu on Zoro. Yep. That's right. And we have another. We have a four zero player, Quan. I'm trying to recall what I they were that on. I believe that is Wang Rong. Uh, Quan Rong? Yeah, I believe so. Like... We've got a bunch of different names flying around here, but that would be another Sakazuki player if I recall correctly. Yeah. And Leapy takes the win over SJ Ice. Yeah. So our Zoro player is 2-2 two -two now, so uh, on the bubble. Yep. Correct. For any, any Anyone that's 2-2 two two are currently on the bubble. Yep, yeah, a, a third loss will definitely sink you in Swiss, for sure. A second loss puts you in a very, very difficult position where you're going to have to probably rely on a tiebreaker to, to make it through, but we'll, we'll see. we got to wait. Still going to be one more round after this. Yep. It's going down to the wire, but we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back to final round of Swiss, we will find out who our top four is. Do not go anywhere. World Tour final for One Piece returns in just a few.
Back here at the One Piece World Championships World Tour Final here, and we're about to jump right into the match. We see none other than Rails from uh, the European qualifiers. Against, against our North oh, American against our qualifier, NA. Jackson, that was just on screen. Yeah, and a runner-up, yeah, he just uh, took down uh, his NA counterpart. Jonas and a Sakazuki versus NL Mir, uh, not Mir, Sakazuki versus NL match. And now we get to see the uh, the great NA versus EU battle. The NA versus EU, it's, it has been the talk of the talk for quite a while across the regions. I mean, I can't think of a single game out there, like card game or video game, where people don't love uh, NA versus EU. It's Sakazuki versus Sakazuki here. So we do get the Sak Mirror. And it looks and like. And we'll see what happens. EU will be starting going first? Apparently so, yeah. I mean, that little icon above the life seems to indicate that. And taking a look at the first hands, you got the Kaido there. Rob, Borsalino Branu, and the blue Hina. So he does have one of the ideal starting hand where you have, yeah. if you're going first, you have either Bors uh, Branu or Hina. So whichever you can opt for. And then. Wow. Jackson here, okay. Clyde, does also have the Kaido, <laughs> also Hina, and a brand new. I mean, mirrored hands, aside from the uh, the Sabo and the uh, the Rob, I believe it was. That, Sabo uh, versus Rob Lucci. That Rails uh, had, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, identical hands to start off with. This will Interesting definitely game. be the game to watch out for. Yeah. Who do you got? Who do you got? You got North America and Europe. I both, mean, both you, players. Do you both even players have to ask? Both players second in regions, in their own regions. Yeah. Well, so, so you know both these guys have a chip on their shoulder. They want to do better. They want to see what they can do. Uh, both players right now are three wins on the day. Both three and one. So we'll see who ends up getting that fourth win. And, and pretty crucially, I mean, a win here more or less punches your ticket to the top four, I believe. Oh, he discards the brand new for the Sakazuki effect. That means All next right. turn he will be wow. playing that Hina. Oh, he has a... Yeah, for sure. And <laughs> there it is, the brand new. Yep, that's right. And we, grab? Ooh, we have 2k counters or choice. we have Borsalino. Yeah, I think you grab the Borsa. Okay. Borsalino, yeah. yes. Gonna Borsalino is that. very good in this matchup where you get to bottom deck their Luchis, Hinas, or pretty much yeah. what wins you that mirror. Bottom decking is the better removal in the mirror for sure. Yes. There is. There's the five countering with the Hina because I don't, I don't need to take the five. And then playing the Hina to draw one. Now, what do you discard? Discards the Borsalino. All right. <coughs> I don't need that quite yet. Uh, any you know a lot of that stuff can be brought back if you really need to. You're not gonna probably bring the Borsalino back too often, but you know at least you can. That's uh, gonna be discarding. Uh, speaking of Borsalino, uh, discarding the Borsalino over there to the Sakazuki ability, I believe, and he's gonna go ahead and attack life. Gonna be a life taken by Rails. Discarding here, playing a Borsalino to pass turn because now the only way to now remove that Borsalino is to use Houndblaze because there's not enough time to play anything else. Uh, he is on 5. In order to use Houndblaze, you need to use uh, at least a either a Hina or a Great Russian, which he doesn't have a Houndblaze. So that Borsalino is staying unless he can draw into it. Yeah. Not a lot else you can do about it. We'll see. I suppose, uh, I mean... Discard Hina. You could still find it. You could, uh, you could Suru into uh, Rob Lucci, I suppose. Uh, but I don't know. You, that, Suru, Suru that Rob Lino Saka on kind of strong. Yeah. Does he want to block with it? It is a free block. He does. You can't... Uh, and he goes 5 at lead. So 2 fives at lead. I was trying to do the... He wants to take a card from his hand or have him take a life. He does take the life. It, well, why not? It's a cheeky. He just... You gotta fake him out. And Borsalino comes right back down. Yep. Now, does, does Clyde have the removal? Oh, does he want to discard? Oh, he does discard the Ice Age. <coughs> yeah, it's the second one, I believe. No, two Ice Ages gone. So far. So he thinks he doesn't need the Ice Age now. Mm -hmm. The thing about Ice Age is very, very strong when it counters the. Um, 10 drop Kaido play because if your opponent ever plays it, you then 
makes it very, very easy to remove. I feel like if your opponent can safely play the 10 cost Kaido, you're already in, in trouble anyway. So removing it Ooh. might not help you as much anyway. Gonna grab the, the uh, Hound Blaze. The Hound Blaze, yeah, okay. I mean, that's a, that's a good one. Like we talked about, yep. bottom decking is what you want to do in this in the mirror match. Yep. Oh, we looks like that's... great eruption into another great eruption. <laughs> so that's a not so great eruption. There's the Helm Blaze. Right. You'd imagine he's going to send the Borsalino packing. Mm -hmm. Question is, what does he want to pump? Source of five. Yep. All right. Hina. Yeah, so he wants to remove the Hina because now the Hina could end up being an attacker. Yeah, for sure. Now, did he put the Hound Blaze on the Borsalino or? It was on the brand new. Uh, or six. Okay, on the brand new. Oh, right, right, the brand new. That's, I, I he goes to say six that. and then another six. Yeah. All right, forcing a 2K out of hand. Mm. All right, so now they're on seven. He could play his seven calls um, for Sino here. Not a bad <laughs> body, just to get on the board. A long look through the trash of Clyde. And what's the plan? Because you've got uh looks like a 5k swing the... at the brand new. He wants to remove the brand new. That's one less attacker he has to deal with. And he does have seven dawn, so okay, more likely yeah. than not, that seven drop Borsino is coming down to remove the Borsino himself. Or he could opt to remove the brand new. Yeah. Which okay. I don't think it's I think the play in the seven drop is coming down. It is the seven drop. Okay. Moving the Borsino, because the Borsino will be continuously attacking unless it gets removed. Yep, why not? Next turn, he'll have access to the uh, the combo. No. The combo. In Sokka versus Sokka. And now it's on Clyde. How are you going to come back? He does have this? 8 Dawn, so yeah. there's the Helm Blaze. Not Helm Blaze, um, Great Eruption. Draws yep. Oh, he drew another Great Eruption. He just keeps on replacing <laughs> itself. I mean, at least you know where all the great eruptions are now. Five at leader, minusing the brand new, not brand new, yep. the Borsalino, and then Borsalino back to Borsalino. Yeah, why not? All right, now uh, Rails over to back his to uh, nine Don. Rails. Uh, so hmm. he needs to be able to remove this Borsalino because otherwise, an AK swing is very, very big and could be very detrimental in. Being unable to play the 10 cost Kaido because of it. It does yeah, so look like he has the a, uh, ability to remove it because he does have Hina, he does have mm -hmm. Luchi. Yeah, Sokka Hina would reduce it to two, which would get it in range. Oh, for that's an another Rob 7 Luchi. drop. But it doesn't yeah. have enough. Not for that, no. Starts with a 6k swing. Okay, yeah. I mean, this leaves you with uh, enough resources to do what we were talking about. If it is indeed the, the Hina Rabuchi play. There's the two. Yeah. There's the Rebecca. Okay, yep. Mm hmm. And the Hina. He the Hina He's got a Hina in the hand anyway, yeah. So. Hina comes out, and then we'd imagine the, the Rob. Yep, there you go, and that's going to remove the Borsalino. The brand new lives, because the uh, all the negative cost had to be sent Borsalino's way. Yes. So here's the thing now. He could go for... There's no removal in Clyde's hand. This is a Kaido play if he opts to go for the Kaido play. <laughs> That would be uh, that would be brave. I mean, he's got three life remaining, so maybe is this is a, a window to do just that. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, if there was ever a, a window to this would be the window. Play a this Kaido. Thing, because yeah. he discarded two uh, Ace Ages, there's a lot of cost reduction that he he got rid of. Right. At the Hina, I mean, he's gets rid of Hina, basically plays saying, the Kaido, draws four. 
Yeah. I like this. I think it's 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 good. I mean, Kaido can be so clunky Ooh, sometimes to, to get out cleanly. Oh, and, and two Hinas. So that he is yeah. able to remove the Kaido if your opponent plays Kaido now. Yeah, he's in great shape now. This should be gonna be for rails. I'm still thinking here. Yep. I'm gonna use the Sakazuki ability to cycle a little bit. Yep. All right. Back to rails. <clears throat> Five a lead. Yep. Counters one. Six a leader. Takes the six. He wants to keep those two Ks, and Kaido's right back! Wow. All right. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't think I've seen a Kaido versus Kaido in a Osaka mirror in a while. That's a, this is a rare treat. Who's going to be able to remove it first? We know uh, we know Clyde has the potential. Clyde does have the potential to remove it. And we see... Let's see. Look at that hand. Her boy... It looks like wow, he has... Big hand. He had enough? I could not tell for a moment. Oh, we've got two Hinas. Let's see. We do have two Hinas. And we do have the Hound Blaze. It guarantees yeah. gets through. But... Yeah, I think he can. But yeah. here's the thing. Clyde could potentially try and push for the win. Or reduce yeah, as many cards enough. from the hand as possible because he can he can, he can re remove that Rebecca. He's able to. Yeah. Do you do you eruption. really like that though? Is that too brave? He's just going in. Yeah. Oh, he All says right. going at the Luchi blocks it. Yep. This is more kind of a tempered play, right? Where it's like you're not using your move on the block here. Oh, he got some, he gets another. Rebecca out of that. Mm -hmm. That is a Kaido removal there. Those cards leave with two Dons remaining. It just seems like the safest play is to just get rid of the Kaido, right? I mean, there's, you're just so not guaranteed to be able to swing for lethal this turn. So you've got your Kaido. Get rid of their Kaido. Yep. Continue building that board. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're going to see. 10k Bottom deck into Kaido. The Luchi just removes the board completely. Unless he wants to save that Luchi right here. He's like, no, that's not so. worth it. That's way yeah. too many cards. <laughs> so, I mean, Clyde just trying to lock it down right now. You know, That's a lot of bodies. And it is. Rails, or boy, right here. He has to remove multiple bodies for the Kaido at the very least. And it's not easy to remove Kaido. He doesn't, there's not a lot of um, cost reduction. There's not enough. Yeah, what does he have access to? He's, I see a Hina there. He does have Hina. He does have Luchi. But... He does have Great Eruption. He is able to yeah. remove one Kaido, or he can remove two Hinas. He has to pick one or the other. He cannot do both. Which do you feel is more threatening, right? Kaido is, is kind of unstoppable at anything he wants to attack on the board. You know, it's, it's going to get, but the ability to present multiple strong attacks with the two Hinas is very concerning as well. So... Are you in sort of a catch-22 situation as Rails here? It's hard to say. It's definitely hard to say because it's this where um, their expertise comes more um, into play, where they're more yeah. used to this matchup. He takes the 5k to life. Mm -hmm. He says, all right, I don't... It's not worth Not worth it. So we start to start brand new. We do have, see Houndbase, we do see Great Rush, and we do see Suru. Yep. <coughs> What do you need to grab here? I think the Hound Blaze is going to be, and that's what he's reaching for. I think that's going to be the uh, the take here, because you know you need to remove something on the other side. Yes. Well, what's it going to be? Rebecca coming in. Looks like Rebecca, yep. Hina, Luchi to remove the double Hina, because he says too yeah. many attacks. Need to remove them. Yeah. And you build your own board, too. You have that blocker for the Kaido. Yes. Uh, you know, unless it gets removed. But still. I think that's a, probably a pretty good direction. Both Very players just kind of play but it here's the same. thing though, yeah. it's, the same, it's the same situation as before now. However, um, Clyde here is down to one life versus uh, Boya, two life. And he right. has, looks like, 6k encounters in hand. Oh, this card's the worst lean to draw one. He draws... I couldn't tell what he drew in the exchange. <laughs> but we see lots of cards in hand. This card's Kuzan. To draw another. Oh, he drew another... Tashigi, so that's a lot of counters. 7k yeah. turtles encounter. So, 
if Plaid goes to try and push for it, he will not be able to push through because of it. So it starts with a 12k swing. We know he's probably going to block it. There's the block. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you have to block it. And that's kind of the plan that Clyde had all along. You know, now the question is, what do you do to handle the rest of this board? And it's a little bit trickier than last time. Now you're just sitting, uh, like you said, on a bunch of counters. Starts with eruption. Hey. Shigi. For the first in three great eruptions, he didn't find another great eruption. <laughs> Reduce the Luchi. He cannot Hina this time, though. No. He's unable to trash. use Hina. Yeah, there's just not like a... Definitely not a clean way to do it right now. Yes. But with... Being the player with less on the board definitely puts you in a scary position, right? Because you're, you'd imagine your opponent has you know, a relatively equivalent amount of counters in their hand. Choose to protect yeah. the Hina, or life. Okay. It's one of them. It's a six at one of them. <laughs> yeah. Need the life or Hina. Either so way, yeah, the can, counter comes in. Right here, Mai is able to Rebecca Suru Luchi to hit both. Yep. That might be the way to go now. It does grab the Luchi. Yeah. Makes sense. Place the Suru off of it to reduce the other. And there's the Luchi to hit both. Yep. Just leaving uh, rails with the brand new. So this is uh, Sakamira in a nutshell, right? The boards have these big swings back and forth. One character to five characters. Back to one character versus five characters on the other side. Yep. It's going to keep on going or back more. and forth. Let's see. Yeah. Until somebody oh, runs he out draws removal. another Rebecca. So he's able to wow. Rebecca, Hina, Luchi again. <laughs> That's the combo. That's what you do. That's what you do in Sakamira is Rebecca, Luchi, Hina. Rebecca Hina Lucci. It's going to keep on going back and forth, back and forth. Yep. Keep repeating it to yourself, Rebecca Hina Lucci. But uh, that won't get rid of the Kaido, though. No, the Kaido will not get rid of the Kaido, there. but. Yeah. He is 100% able to remove the Lucci. So, does this Kaido become a problem in that it starts to just kind of grind you down in terms of removing your blockers each turn? You know, we saw, uh, you know, Rebecca's out in front of that Kaido a couple times. You know, now, it looks like we're probably going to have another one. But yeah. it's not going to last you forever. I mean, you need to kind of get the match out there and then I start bringing it back, I suppose. But then you're in a dangerous situation. <coughs> it has to go back and forth, removing bodies one after another after another. Yep. Oh, and he's going Sherry now. now. Wow, okay. Going for it now. He wants to save... The Rebecca back, so he wants to have one yep. extra Rebecca. So now he's ahead in Rebecca counts for sure. Yeah, it's so crucial, and and you need to play another one anyway because you know that Kaido's coming in. You keep throwing the Rebecca's in front of the Kaido's. Yep. Seems like that's probably the plan. Mm -hmm. And there's the Luchi. All right. <laughs> there it is again. Right back the, down. Uh, yeah, the third uh, Rebecca Hina Luchi combo of the yep. game, I believe. This time it will hit the brand new and the Luchi. Yeah. You know, bottom deck here. It looks like the uh, Hina Tashigi. Rebecca. Yep. Making sure those get back in the deck. Yep. Now he has to answer that man share because if that man share doesn't get answered, it's just going to keep on going. Yep. Oh, there's the Luchi there and. <laughs> we gotta see a heat, Rebecca. You know, Luchi back. All right, again. let's let's go. This is what the fourth turn in a row we've seen it. But I mean, like, <laughs> this is just this is just what this deck does. You just try it. That's the combo you try to put together. There's a lot that goes on around it, but the essence of Sakazuki right now is is this this core combo of Rebecca into bringing back the Hina or the Rob Luchi, yes. playing the Hina for free and then playing the Rob Luchi. Yep. Starts at the brand new. Yep. A very good place to start. As far as Borsino, he takes up a Luchi. Another Luchi. Oh, okay. The more the merrier. Yeah. Never a bad thing to have another Rob Luchi in the hand. I mean, you can even discard that to Sakazuki ability and bring it back later. 
He goes attacking Rebecca at the man share. He's like, it. you know, I'm getting rid of that man share. I love it. You're discarding two is, cards or you're losing a blocker. Yeah, you need 3K to save this man share. It's, it's, it's worth a, it. Kind of a brilliant play, I think. <laughs> it's I, quite. Maybe I spoke too soon, but I, I don't think that Rails saw that one coming. You do not see the uh, Rebecca versus Manchuri Mortal Kombat very often. Uh, here we go with 12. Look, is he going at life or is he going at the Hina? There's 8 dollars remaining, meaning that means a Rebecca Hina Luchi is more likely not coming down. I mean, it's, it's clever that you know, Clyde might have found an opportunity to just get removal through Don versus through playing out the combo again. There's another look through the trash. See what's left, how much removal is left, how much cost reduction is left, how many Rebecca's are left, uh, how many Luchi have we gone through, how many Hinas have we gone through. Yeah. What might be in the hand, what might be in the deck yet. A little rearrange. Takes the hit. It is a 12 at lead. Wow. There's the Rebecca. Right. There's the Hina. Yep. And of course, we have the Luchi <laughs> removing the two. Yep. Rebecca Heem and Luchi, say it with us now. One more time. The Sakazuki mirror. Rebecca Hina Luchi. <laughs> All right. Check it out. Those go to the bottom of the deck. You gotta put three cards in the bottom of the deck every time you do uh, the uh, Rob Luchi play. All right, we're back to Purple Yay. We have how yeah. many cards in hand? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cards in hand. Two Clyde's five. However, we have a full five character board. Yeah. And now it's back to uh, to Rails. Like, can he remove this? Starts by discarding right. the three cost Hina to draw a new card. What's a grab? What's a grab? It is a man another share. Rebecca. Uh, Monster, is it? Yeah. yeah it is a Monster. Yeah, it is. But it we is. do okay, have yeah. two other Rebeccas in hand. Yeah. So, All what right. I think that I've seen the Rebecca being played. <laughs> I don't think that's a bad thing at all. The Montreal can always bring it back. Yep. Yep. So why not go ahead and do that? Throw another blocker out there. You've got one life. One life. Well, Rails do the same thing. With Rebecca attacking a zero. <laughs> I mean, he could. He could, right? You could just go Rebecca and Rebecca. Does he want to take this? Or does he want to block? He blocks. Okay. Man Sherry. Oh, okay. I'm not opposed to that. All right. Yeah, brings back. Uh, looks like you got to save a... Okay. Yeah. And so now we've got the combo. All right. There's Rebecca coming down. Grab Luchi. Play Hina. Yep. Yep. And then and Luchi, Luchi. There's, there yeah. they go. We're back at it again. Uh -huh. I mean, you could just like record the last two or three minutes of us talking and then just keep playing it over and over again. And it, it, that it would be continuously uh, back almost all the turns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on repeat. We're on repeat right now. Yeah. The we're record is not skipping. Away. This is just the we're, game. We're actually not here. It's just that. Uh, <laughs> That's right. You weren't supposed to tell them that. It's just a recording of us saying Rebecca Hina Luchi the whole time. Yeah. Production's back there with just like a, a vinyl record of us talking about the combo. Just repeating it. All right. More exploration in the trash. All right, let's see. Back to Clyde here. Hand on. We do have two blockers on the other side. Yeah, that that is <laughs> where things start to make a little bit of a difference, right? Yeah. Because now you can't do your cute little, uh, you know, run Rebecca into Monstery anymore. Uh, you've got the double Rebecca's on the other side. Yeah, but here's the thing: it's a, it's a we Rebecca do party. have um, a Hound Blaze on yeah. the right side. Clyde, put your arm down. We can't see your hand. Thank you. He does. There is no! also a Luchi. There's a Luchi. <laughs> There's um, Hound Blaze. Mm -hmm. Uh. I don't remember the rest. There we go. It starts with a 12. Where is he going yeah. and with the 12? Uh, it doesn't matter because it's going, going to go into one of the Rebecca's inevitably. Yep. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, there was a Borsalino there. Okay, so... Hmm. Mm. It's a Houndblaze too. 
I mean, you can even hear uh, Gavin on the, the Japanese stream saying Rebecca Hinalucci. Yeah, we're all out of the it Rebecca Hinalucci play. It but transcends all cultures and languages. But there is removal for two bodies. There is mm -hmm. enough to remove two bodies. You think they're gonna tell him to? to think they're gonna tell Clyde to not put his uh his head in his hand like that? To block their camera shot. So. The nerves. Alm Blaze removed the heat. Yeah. Rebecca's attacks into wow. the Mancheri. It's a 3k attack. Alright. So here's the thing. He blocks here, yeah. right? Oh, he Block blocked. It. So now, Ply is able to play a body and then Luchi to remove the board. I like this. Board. I, I like this a lot. I Once again, I think Clyde navigated a very complicated situation very well. So right here, Rails is unable to push for a game. Wow. I Unless mean, like... he plays the Rush Usopp, which I don't think he does play it. <laughs> I have not seen that in a soccer list in a, in a hot minute, I'm not going to lie. But it, it is it is out there. It's It exists. I don't think it's in any list here tonight. I don't know. I haven't looked through all of them, but I'd be surprised. If I'm about to eat my words, we'll see. But yeah. I, I got to say, though, like all the attacks, like... Clyde has just shown such mastery of utilizing zero power characters as attackers in this mirror. Like, really, 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 really impressive oh, decision making. I do believe there is a Luchi in hand. There is a Rebecca. So we see a Rebecca Hina Luchi again. Uh, Sakazuki is going to attack the leader or Rebecca? Rebecca. Removes the Rebecca. Yep. So this okay. Rebecca Hina Luchi will remove the board. It won't remove the Kaido. It won't, definitely won't remove the Kaido. But yep. if Clyde has another removal for that Rebecca, there is a chance of pushing for game. Yeah, very much. I, I And I, I think, you remember way back when, we were like, this is oh. just the perfect time to play a Kaido. That is a Luchi. Yeah, that's the Rob. Yeah, I mean, so it's... So, let's see, there's counting it up. four cards in hand. Hmm. Clyde can go for a 10 and 12k swing. If yeah. he uses the uh, Suru and Luchi. Suru Luchi, um, yeah, to remove the Rebecca and then you the go for it, question is, right? how much counter is in Rails' hand? I don't think he's got enough to survive that. A 10 and a 12. He draws? Yeah, I don't. Oh! I don't think he will do that. That, that, I think that might be it. He draws uh, it a Hound Blade, so he uses less cards and has yeah. more power. Yeah, that should do it. Suru? Then you Hound Blaze, yep, Hound Blaze exactly. Hound Blaze is 8k on the Sakazuki. Oh, he knows. He knows. He's dividing up the Dawn. Yeah, here come the attacks. So it's 13, Clyde 14. almost certainly has this one. 13 guaranteed right. to go through? Yep. 14. And then there's a 14. Yeah, that's going to do it. Clyde. Clyde, Clyde from North win. America. He is one of our four uh, am I analysts. Yeah. Wow, all right, just kind of the home place in the end. But yeah, Clyde from North America, one of our top four at the World Championships here for One Piece. That, that was amazing. That was a very masterful play from both players. That wasn't just yeah. Clyde. It was both players playing extremely well, being able to understand when to play that man, Jerry, when to look uh, to get that Rebecca, continuously go Rebecca Hinaluchi, Rebecca Hinaluchi, until we get to that end. And as you can see, that was to the point where if Clyde did not have a removal, that Rebecca was enough to stop the double at the two attacks to prevent Clyde from winning. But he did get the removal. He did get the Hound Blaze. If he didn't have Hound Blaze, he was going to be a 10 and 12 at most. Yeah, and I got to say, I, I think that was probably the most impressive Sakazuki mirror play I've, I've seen probably ever. I mean, that's it's, 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 such a, it's a match with such a high skill ceiling, even though we like to joke about it being about one combo. And... Sure, that is like the crux of the matchup in a lot of cases, but there's so many things you can do around that that oftentimes determine the winner. And I feel like that's what we really saw from Clyde. Again, like I think his his ability to utilize zero power attackers at just the right time with just the right amount of dawn uh, really, really impressed me. Yeah, Clyde understood. Blockers are not just blockers. Blockers are also attackers. Yeah. Don't, don't be Everyone afraid be to turn attacker. your blockers sideways when you need to. Just be able to turn them sideways. Understanding the timing to turn them sideways 
can make a difference in winning or losing a game. Yep, you push your back too far. He's going to strike back. That you don't was want to definitely mess with it. the most impressive game I've watched in a long time. Yeah, that was that was a great game. And uh, so that's it for our Swiss rounds here. And uh, that means now we have a lot to look forward to in that we will be going to Digimon soon. And then after Digimon Resolves, we'll be back to One Piece to see the final matches of that one. Yeah. But uh, man, let's let's recap Swiss a little bit. Uh, Ying, what stands out to you besides that last uh, excellent game we just saw? Of course, we have that game where Clive stood out extremely well. Of course, we can't forget about the person that took down Clive, where that gave him his one loss. He's also in Sakazuki, so we have the two Sakazukis mm -hmm. in our top four. I can't wait for that rematch. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing too, like who our other top two players are that made it through the next round. I'm gonna. Hopefully we'll have that information for you fairly soon. Um, or again, there was 11 out of the top 16 were Sakazuki, so it's entirely possible we just have a Sakazuki top four. You know, we did see uh, at least one of our NLs in uh, Jonas uh, end up being X and two. So uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get him through. You know, we talked about a lot of times that's going to not be enough if you do end up taking two losses in five Swiss rounds of 16 players, but. There's always that outside chance that depending on how the other records work out, maybe we have a tiebreaker situation, but we just don't know right now. We ought to wait, and uh, when we find out, we'll uh, we'll let you know. Yeah, we do have a... Yeah, and so uh, let's bring in our uh, Digimon casters, actually. Let's uh, bring Steven and Yoshi back in here to chat a little bit about uh, what we're going to see as our little break from One Piece here. But I say little break, but this is actually like one of the biggest matches in the world for Digimon. Like, it all comes down to this. And Yoshi, welcome to the broadcast. How hey, you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Nice. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll go to you first, Yoshi, because we had Steven on a little bit earlier. Uh, what are you expecting, hoping to see out of the uh, Digimon Top 4? Well, uh, as most of the people know already, I'm a huge green player. I love green, and we're having the possibility of seeing bloom lord as on the world stage <laughs> we have two wow. possibilities of it which uh <laughs> steven made me aware of and i was so excited to see that and they're very interesting uh deck lists so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how they play it out and how it goes against a lot of the the security control players that we have on this tournament um it's a little bit scary uh as a sure. bloom player seeing all that security control so we'll see how they they uh survive through it and how they push through it and maybe i can put that into my gaming stuff <laughs> oh, all right well steven uh fill fill me in like uh we're into the top four like as far as the players that made it through as far as the list that made it through are you surprised are you not surprised like uh what's what are your thoughts right now looking at that well let me just check my notes uh we've got <laughs> oh, a couple of things to look forward to man uh, as of right now <laughs> always, always. Uh, I have some notes about your guys' stuff as well, too. I'll bring up later. Oh, um, but boy. the thing I want to mention briefly is that we're still currently in the Swiss rounds for Digimon. So right now, we don't have a guaranteed top four, but some of the decks that are looking really good are, like Yoshi like said, Security sense. Control. Control. He, he selfishly, selfishly has his, has eyes, his eyes also eyes on also. Blue Nordmon. I had to bring <laughs> that up to him so that way he could keep oh. an eye out for all that information. <clears throat> and we have um, a surprise uh, contender named Shane Tan, who's the only hmm. Lugamon player. BT14 Classic SOC member, and he's doing really well. Okay. Currently, X1 has a big shot of getting into that top four. So, obviously, wow. we're going to take a little bit of a break after we finish Southeast jabbing Asia. off right now. So that way, we'll be able to, uh, you know, bring you guys the actual top four once we come back. Uh, I do want to briefly mention that I had some notes watching the One Piece live stream as well. Uh, those notes are, are Zoro is amazing. Zoro's four minutes of a game is awesome. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Clyde... Clyde is the goat so <laughs> okay. yeah, there, yeah. Those are there's a little bias going on over there because you he's from na <laughs> no way i mean hey we can have that na bias you know this is the this is the english broadcast they they stocked it with north american uh you know talent i suppose I think, you know, the casters you know but here we are you know we, we gotta we gotta hype up clyde and that mirror yeah i also have a little thing to say about the one piece um uh, there was cool anime characters 
turning sideways and attacking and doing things, and it was fun. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Say yeah. some more. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. I got. That's <laughs> all I got. Let's go to that's how I. That's how I sound about Digimon. I'm like security. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what Ying says when people when he's talking about someone's life in One Piece. Sometimes I. I, I know that. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't remember this. I had that note on here as well. Yeah, Ying says security when he means life <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> I'm learning the different parts of the Digimon board from Ying casting One Piece. That's a, it's. Been, I, I'm learning two different things at the same time. It's super useful. This is what happens when you play <laughs> some big games. games. Yeah, a man of many talents. <laughs> yeah. Well, Something I think we can all look forward to, I think, once we get back from break, is going to be just how dynamic a lot of these Digimon decks are. There's no one-trick right. ponies. There's nothing solved, like I alluded to at the very beginning of stream. This is a super unknown meta. We are seeing the flavors of the individual players showcasing in all of their different decks, and I think it'll be very exciting to see when we come back. Oh, yeah. I'm really excited yeah, about cool. the Shine Greymon, actually. I forgot to mention that the, the when I was looking through the Shine Greymon list, it's not your typical Shine Greymon. You know, we were talking about how He's running only eight uh, level fours, which is very uh, dangerous. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Eight level four, uh, fours is fine. Oh, I've seen eight level know, threes. Come he, on. Is, yeah, he's lived so with eight you. level threes. And he, and he calls so it you. limit testing. I call it demon mode, and you know it. Stop it. <laughs> and that's yeah, why totally. he's not just another human. <laughs> <laughs> Doe is just like, yeah, levels. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Exactly. Level up. Woo, exactly. superpowers. We love it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll ask I'll ask you, Ying, then. Uh, what what do I, as a... Because obviously we've got a lot of One Piece fans watching this stream. Some of them might not... Might be like me, where they're not as familiar with Digimon. Uh, but they're going to stay and watch anyway, of course. Because yeah, it's going to be fun. Be it's, always, it's always well, fun to learn a card game Digimon's you don't know. Over, it's over. One Piece is back. You have to be yeah, ready, but, for ready for that. But while we're watching Digimon, you tell me what's like the number one thing I need to know to get something out of watching Digimon if I'm not super familiar with it. So... So, Digimon, Digimon um, goes um, around goes around level 3, you're going from level 3, which is rookies. Actually, no, let's actually, go back. No, let's go you have level 2, level which two, is your training. Is your they're little babies. That's me. You're, tra- you're They're in training. You want to level them up, go into level 3, pretty much a power-up, and keep going up, up, and up, depending on the deck you're playing, and go up to level 6, possibly level 7. Uh, essentially, you're getting stronger, you get a different effect. Um, think of it as raising a child, and now it's an adult, and it's been dead. <laughs> Okay, and they're cool. very well, very will... cute. They start off like that, Aww. and then and then they go like that, Aww, and then like that. that. that so it goes adorable. from cute to kind of scary. This is what happens when a, a green player holds up cards on a, a green screen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you're right. <laughs> That's a... Drawbacks of it playing green. <laughs> Yoshi, I didn't know you were on Digimon cards. That's so cool. I can see you on there. That's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you were trying to say, though. They, they are adorable. That's neat. Yeah, wow. The, I want the transparent card edition. That's pretty sick. Hey, well, while we figure I out how to get those. Cards. Whoa. Oh. Custom, personalized cards from Yoshi over there. Well, I'm going to, uh, you know, be over here being very, very jealous of that. While we take a quick break and then we come back, it's going to be Digimon action here on the stream. So do not go anywhere. We'll see everyone in just a moment for the end of the Digimon World Championships.
Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the stream. Uh, Steven, how you doing, baby? How you feeling? I am doing really good. Let me just go ahead and check my notes here really quick because we have the top four for the Digimon World Finals at the Bandai Card Game Fest in Japan. Coming in at fourth seed, representing Oceana, we have William piloting Leviamon X Antibody. This young gentleman looked at the brand new restriction list on Mar March 1st and said, mm, I'm going to play purple anyway. Coming in at third seed, we have Peter Frankie, the North American representative that Yoshi and I saw get sick second That's place right. uh, just a month ago, piloting the good old classic security control with some new BT-15 inclusions. A little tweak. Definitely works. Coming in at just a little tweak, a little like the smallest tweak. Coming in at second, we have representing Japan. I hope I'm saying this correctly. We have Take piloting Leviamon X Antibody. Another one saying, you know what? Purple is just too good even if you restrict it. And finally, to no one's surprise, they went undefeated in these five rounds of Swiss. Piloting Leviamon X Antibody once again, we have Frozen from Germany. Hey, I, I think you missed one. Isn't there, isn't there a green deck somewhere in there? So <laughs> so there was a couple of Blue Mormon players. I know you, you and I were both batting for them. Okay, there was even a Deva player by the name of Deep that I was really looking forward to that sadly was unable to participate in today's event due to absence. But sadly, they didn't make it. These are the top four that are going to be fighting for the chance to win this year's champion title. And what I think is really interesting is we have all colors that have never been represented before, at least as far as I know, that have an actual shot of winning the uh, World Finals, which is pretty cool. Yellow or purple, basically. I mean that's that's pretty interesting. It's not it's not even like a couple of them. It's only it's like two of the top ones that made it through are purple. First and second seed, yeah. Yeah, that's that's. Are, are we seeing them go against each other, or is it? What are we seeing? What's the matches? Do we have that yet? So, so my understanding will be that it'll be the first seed versus the fourth seed, which is a Leviathan Mirror, and it'll be the second versus the third seed. Uh, I'm not sure which Great. match we're going to be getting. I really hope Ooh. they showcase Pete's security control deck yes. at least once because I have a really fun memory to share with everyone that wasn't able to come watch in person the North American finals. But we had people cheering for Peter and his security control deck. Every time he checked Chaos Degrade, the crowd went wild. I hope the same crowd will go equally as wild uh, in the comments and in the chat of today's live stream. But on the opposite so, end, we got them cheering wild when it wasn't Chaos Degrade as well. Me true, one of true, them. <laughs> true, true. Basically, when anything happened, people cheered. So when anything, when literally anything happens during today's stream, make sure you guys go buck wild in the chat and uh, cheer on your favorite players that are competing today because Yoshi and I have to be impartial but you don't have to. So definitely That's make right. sure you cheer for who you want to win. Cheer for your your, your friends that are up there, people that you've probably play tested with or people you don't even know and you just are into the deck that they're building. Cheer for them. Uh, let them see it, you know, do the, the spirit. Oh, wrong game. Um, <laughs> give the crest of the Digivice, whichever crest you want it to be. I guess we're getting a lot of sin. <laughs> the sins, the deadly so sins on here. So, Yoshi, sadly, I was unable to, to participate in last week's Ultimate Cup, which was the first mm -hmm. big tournament in North America for BT-15. Uh, this was pre restriction list, though. You were able to participate in that tournament. Like, what have been some of your main takeaways from this format that some of the beautiful people at home can look forward to uh, in today's matches? I mean, we went into it with the ban list not being affected yet. So everybody was expecting uh, Apoc Apocalypse to just run around rampant, which they... Don't get me wrong, it did, um, but it wasn't as many. I, I only ran into two Apocalymons and I built my deck to, I played Machine Dramon to be able to like survive the Apocalypse. <laughs> and I did, I, <laughs> I took one game against the Apocalypse and then lost one. But, you know, I feel like people forget about the decks that are around, that have been around, that are getting, you know, support uh, where you're not expecting the support. So again, purple was very, very powerful, but, the two decks that ended up making it to the top deck was a uh, top seating was uh, Numamon, uh, which we're not even seeing in this. And this time there is no restriction and there is a restriction on the purple. And yet we are still seeing purple on top. So you just never know what's going to happen. We can kind of have an idea. Like again, when we were at um, Final Card Fest in LA, 
you know, we thought Anubis would make it. And sure enough, Anubis was at the top. But then coming out, seeing Pete's security control, and again, seeing it in the world stage is something that I think is so exciting about this game that you just never know. And Sekhan just, I guess, will never go away. <laughs> yeah, uh, I my favorite part of that is that you play a deck that literally played into a Pokemon and said, thanks for the more cards in my trash. I was going to put those under my sources anyway. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's how it happened when I won. And how when I didn't win, it was all of my level sixes were in trash. So, you know, you just you just cry then. <laughs> You're like, I can't get those ones back. No, right? come on, mill the other <laughs> cards so I can use those. Uh, but yeah, no, Yoshi, you're totally right. Like this tournament will be unlike any other we've ever seen. Or sorry, will be just like every other tournament we've ever seen for Digimon where player expression will play a big role in who's going to actually take this down. And I think actually a really cool thing is because of the success of Numamon that we saw in BT15, that uh, people who played an accelerated format like in BT16 and onwards saw from like the Japan Nationals and whatnot, this was a deck on everyone's radar. And maybe that could be why Leviamon is being has been so successful today. You know, like, yeah. oh, I'm playing against a deck that literally wants to play as many Digimon as possible by effect during my turn. Cool, yes. let me evolve into my most powerful level six for free wipe their whole board again, and then punch them twice with Cerberus Mon X antibody. Uh, That's true. Plus security Which, attack. you know, what is wild is we have one of the top seedings of the top four decks uh, going into it, Take, and Take is actually not even running the the bite. Which is, you know, for me, uh, seeing uh, from the outside uh, perspective of Leviamon, that's something you want to play because it gets your Leviamons out for free. But not running it. And it's doing well for him, so. <laughs> yeah, Leviamon, like the best way I can explain this deck to anyone that's never seen it before is basically it punishes other decks for playing the game. <laughs> like you have this gigantic crocodile alligator monster just hiding in the depths of the ocean. You have no idea where you're doing. You're just sailing on your merry way. And then out of nowhere, boom, you get chomped up by these scary option cards like Biting Crush or even the brand new Leviathan <laughs> X Antibody, which can evolve itself from the trash whenever your opponent does uh, uh, play Digimon by an effect or a Tamer by effect. Uh, right. Very important. And then we, we get the uh, Seventh Lightning as well in there that just adds on top of it, being able to delete even more bodies on the field. So it makes sense. Um, again, I know that, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, explain to me a little bit more about Numamon, but Numamon, you want to be able to get deleted on opponent's turn, right? Not on your turn. Yes, but the sad thing is like the reason why you want to get deleted is because then you can activate various on deletion effects that let you play right. Digimon from your hand or from your trash, like Monzaemon or various Numamon, specifically Platinum Numamon level six, that basically hammer sparks your opponent past his turn and allows you to filter even more cards in your hand. The problem is that when your on deletion effect also plays a Digimon, Leviamon just goes, sweet. So not only am I deleting you, I get to like delete you again and again and again yeah, because you yeah. keep playing Digimon by effect. And because the deck is so wide, having cards like the original Leviathan just eat like crazy and the brand new Leviathan X Anybody being a mm -hmm. gigantic threat that can attack multiple times and has really powerful ways to sort of like, for lack of a better word, like ensnare your opponent uh, in very unfavorable situations uh, is something we're going to see, I'm sure, a lot really today like in these uh, finals matches. By the way. In snares? In snare with the mouth? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was like, what does he do? Does he wrap your tail around you? No, yep. he just straight up yep. chomps on you and you're ensnared. <laughs> and of course, we're seeing the shine uh, shine gray ruin for uh, most of these top ends because, again, if you're going to go wide, you just put a full blanket minus 5k to everything. Nothing gets played. Even you play it by effect. It just gets popped as soon as it gets played. Bye-bye. Or even if you're able to do the on deletion, get the 10k off the board, which is just absolutely insane. And this is what I like to see too, coming out of like metas and people that are like adapting and playing like specific stuff for the field they're expecting, you know? Leviathan yeah. was probably played because A, it's a purple deck, purple's really good, but also it you know, beats decks that play Sigemon by effect, like Numamon, a deck that people were very excited about or really, like, you know, right. think is really strong. But then we have Peter coming in, who's like, oh, hold on a second, decks that like on deletion effects and go really wide, I'm security control. That's a little scary. So having yeah. these Leviamons kind of like feed on the Numamons or feed on each other and sort of set Peter up to be like, oh, all I got to do is fight against one Digimon that may be really big and have plus security attack. 
I think I can handle that as security mm -hmm. control, you know? So there's going to be, I think, a very interesting dynamic playing out here where we have a group of people in this top four that were very prepared for this tournament, but now they need to, like, put their money where their mouth, mouth is and play against mirror matches and potentially unfavorable matchups in order to actually claim that champion title. Right, exactly. I can't believe we're here to see it and witness it. I I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of like alluded to it when I was like referencing like North America and how electric that, you know, crowd was yes, and the people watching was. at home too. But I'm equally as excited, if not more excited to be here commentating like in, in my experience, the first ever live Digimon World Finals that I've been a part of. Like I was a part of the original World Finals back in 2021 when Chung Man won, uh, but that was all recorded. That all happened not with people watching live, not with people watching oh, live and in person in Japan. And so now getting to have this, what feels like a truly complete experience and share it with yeah. all the beautiful people at home is uh, pretty awesome. And I could not be happier to have you as my partner as well. I know you're not actually there next to me, but on the stream, it looks like it, but you know, so. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm the wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> I was waiting. I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but he got the cue from production saying, Yoshi, I love this moment, but you're facing the wrong way. Don't worry. It was a train. It was a train of love, and then it was going into everyone watching at home. So it was perfect. I tried. I tried. I tried. <laughs> uh, we love you for it. I had 50-50 I had chance to get it right, and I just went full gung-ho. I was like, hey, confidence. Let's just do it. Look at the, the screen. I was like, oh, no, that's the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh super super exciting i think we're about to get uh started here real soon guys awesome. with the actual top four matches i think we're gonna head straight into the games as soon as uh the people in japan have them ready but in the meantime we have some i think fun things to talk about i believe yoshi you participated in some fun events this past weekend for digimon anything you want to talk about or are you too shamed of, of what happened <laughs> you know what um I got destroyed in it, so I'm totally okay with talking about how badly I got destroyed. Uh, but at least when I got destroyed, um, I got to do it with my boy Machine Tremont. So I'm totally okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the start to your BT15 journey wasn't off to the best. But because you're here now, I imagine it's a little bit of a W in your favor. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, so yeah, guys, like I said, I think we're just waiting to figure out like when the actual top four matches are going to like start playing. I, th I think they're going to start both matches at once. So once they finish, we can head straight into the finals for you. Uh, again, I really hope that they let us watch Peter versus uh, any of these Leviathan decks. I <laughs> think specifically point, yes. Take will yeah. be the one that he fights against. Uh, otherwise, we're watching potentially two rounds in a row of like Leviathan mirrors, which would be like... Right. Mm, I'm okay with not, not doing that. Yeah, 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 I mean, it's all, it'll be awesome to see. Like I said, ensnaring, yeah, yeah. ensnaring. That's the ensnaring. word of the day. Yes, uh, that's right. <laughs> uh, and yeah, here we're just seeing like a, a little panel slideshow yeah, of all cool. the this players that really were participating today. Cool to see all, all the uh, player name cards and everything. Representing those super awesome uh, jackets that they got for qualifying for this event. Uh, which is super awesome. Something that uh, was a bit unfortunate was that we weren't able to showcase any of the Swiss games that were happening today for Digimon uh, that y'all got to see earlier for One Piece. Like I said, we had a ton of really cool decks. Uh, we we mentioned Bloom Lord Mon, we mentioned stuff like Leviathan, we mentioned stuff like Lugamon earlier, but there, there were decks too, like Shine well. Greymon, yeah. Red Hybrid, of course, the, the boogeyman of all boogeymans for the English mm -hmm. meta. And then I think, like I, like I mentioned, there was this really cool Deva's deck piloted by Deep, uh, who I believe is a representative of Japan that I was super excited about. Yeah. Oh, speaking Ooh, of excite, here we go, guys. They are bringing in the Digimon stage right now. This, this is like the announcements for uh, Top 4. He and I are kind of matching it, actually. I should have... Uh stand next to him his his full-on <laughs> vibe is right there i love it it's it's perfect you're twins i love it who are we seeing here oh that's pretty cool the are screen opening up let's go no i th to, to, to my knowledge these are one of their commentators for the okay, digimon uh, say, monthly streams are we getting something <laughs> here a concert I have no doubt in my mind that they could sing a beautiful song for us, but I believe these are the Japanese commentators. Nah, he's more dressed how I am. Y'all can't see it right now, but I'm in shorts. 
100% in shorts. I'm not going to <laughs> That is the one benefit to doing this uh, over Discord and not doing it uh, in person like we did in LA is we can dress. It's up to an imagination what's happening below the belt. Mm -hmm. Hey, do got poses. I'm, I'm seeing the chat here on Twitch. They got poses, mm. they got confidence. I love it. And I'm really excited that he's wearing shorts. That He's like, yeah, I'm not doing this in front of just a camera, but you're going to see all of me, but I'm doing the shorts. I don't care. <laughs> I have one word. Old. What's that? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> would love to oh man i really wish i could understand japanese again you know steven we've talked about this before we gotta we gotta learn our japanese we gotta work our, on our japanese here i actually have been learning a bit of japanese and so i was like I, I noticed that i believe the the young lady on the corner there was actually telling a joke which is why i, I snickered i was like oh that's funny that she said that I, I think i recognize one of the words as like language oh it's well better by like 0 0.001 percent you know not by anything marginally important I love their vibe. Oh. Yep, so the uh, rounds are going to be best of three, 55 minutes, uh, with 10 minutes of overtime. 10 minutes of overtime, okay. And yeah, 65 minutes total. I, I love guess. it. And I think they're going to go through what we kind of already went through, like the deck breakdown, the people that are in the top four. Like, again, for everyone, reminder, we have Frozen, first seed, playing Leviathan X, represented if, of Germany. Uh, we have second seed, Take, also playing Leviathan X from Japan. Uh, we have third seed, Pete, Frankie, playing Security Control from North America. And then finally, we have William, Playing Leviathan X, representing Oceana. I think this is the time rules. So for everyone that does not know the time rules uh, for Digimon specifically, it's going to be after standard time, you have three turns to finish that game, 0, 1, 2, 3 for both players, or 10 minutes. Yep, so they're just going through what we are already... But it, it is different that it's doing 10 minutes when I'm used to the 5 minute uh, overtime. Top cuts, baby. We need more Top time. Cuts. We got to make sure we have time. a winner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No ties allowed. No ties, please. I mean, it is a limb at this point, so. Exactly, yeah. Um, so funny, too. Like, like this whole entire uh, English broadcast is, is, is always kind of like reacting, like always like a step behind the Japanese. But this was like the first time I think we're ahead, where we're, they're going over all the stuff we've already told yeah, we've you. We've already, all. yeah. <laughs> You know, that's a, little, that's a little fun. Oh, hey, I took my notes. I was diligent about it, and I was able to tell you guys really, really efficiently go. what's going to be happening. I love it. Now, I'm, I'm really interested to see how they're going to do uh, the Digimon, like, uh, top-down for it. Oh, it's going to look good. Uh, I, I think, I'm so excited oh, for the these are the prizes. Oh, my goodness. The prizing. Yes. I've never wanted cardboard and cloth mats more <laughs> i think they're made of metal my guy i think these they cards are made of metal metal and they might I, actually I'm... have gold on it uh don't take my word for it i may be talking out of my theory <laughs> <laughs> um oh gosh like the shininess just made me lose my train of thought i had this really amazing point that i wanted to make but i totally lost it oh yes doa uh the people that were oh I got distracted again by beautiness. Oh my Look goodness. Look at those. Oh my goodness. We got the Jessmon wow. GX. We've got the Jessmon X antibody. And we've got the Gankumon X antibody. Oof. It's, it's so cool. But also for me, I'm like, if I don't know what that Digimon is, I don't know what it is. <laughs> if I can't read it, I would not know. <laughs> but these are so right. cool. Yeah. Uh, I think they would make them special for whatever region you're from. So, like, if an English player wins, they, they get right, printed in English. Oh, no, by the way, there they are right there in metal. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, those are I'm pretty sure that's sick. actually got gold on it. And, like, crimson gold. Oh, the there. first place one definitely little does. little ruby. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, instead of bronze, it's, like, more of a ruby for third place. I like that yeah. touch. That's really nice. That is cool. I feel like I would want third place i just give me the third place wow 
<laughs> yeah, new rule. If you win, you get to pick which trophy you get. You don't get assigned whatever first place is. Let me right, just call right, right. up. Uh... <laughs> like, no, no, no. I want this one. <laughs> That's um, actually not a bad idea, though, right? Like. <laughs> Oh, here we go. We got our four players. Uh, that is Frozen, the representative of Germany. Shout out to him. Let's go. Absolute rock star. Ooh, that jacket. Clean jacket. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Only a very special few have access to those beautiful jackets. Ooh, yes. Uh, that's Take, second those seed. Those who have earned it. <laughs> those who have earned it. Yes, exactly. exactly. Every single person on this stage is among good company there we see peter frankie look peter at him cool oh, calm collected oh, just so cool oh come on let's go both oh and the yes, bow and the bow swagger <laughs> baby that's some swagger and then we let's got go william from oceana let's go william william all right so three leviathans and one our very own North America playing sack control, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. North America. Mm -hmm. That's representing us very, very proudly. Yep. I gotta move. I gotta move out of North America. So <laughs> get out of the second. Uh, I'm feeling very confident because I've won uh, all five rounds so far. And, uh, my opponents are the ones that I beat already, so I'm hopeful Ooh. that I can do it again. I know. Frozen coming out confident, saying <laughs> I've beaten every single person on this stage one time. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. <laughs> Bold. That was... Listen. That's, that's some powerful words right there. That is how you want to go into the finals. My play group for uh, rooting for me, cheering for me. And believing in me. Claps in the chat for Frozen, everybody. 5 0 in Swiss and representative of Germany, showing us that WCE world champion energy. Let's see if he can carry it all the way to the top. Right, let's hear from Take now. え、あの、ま、日本の、あの、ま、みんなの気持ちで折って、あの、勝っていきたいなと思ってます。おお、なるほど。改めて、ま、プレッシャーをかけるようで申し訳ないですが、日本残ったの一人ということで、目指すところは
That's right. Well, we are the English we broadcast. The English I do, th- I do, right. I do think we're being a little biased, but it's okay. Yeah. Me and Yoshi are here to be the impartial to- totally, commentators. Totally. But you guys can be as biased as you like, like I referred to earlier. So yeah. uh, let's go, everybody. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna have to try to not get too rowdy, but I can already feel it. Like, I can feel the, the, the jitters and the tingles of like, I'm not even playing, but I have it. I feel it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I totally know what you mean. Like, like, like I've been saying, this feels to be exactly like it felt back in LA, but on just a grander scale, we have a more diverse group of players, like you mentioned, and the stakes have never been higher. So of course you have those jitters, of course you're that excited, and hopefully the same can be said for everyone watching at home, because the top four for Digimon World Finals 2023-24 is about to go underway. Let's do it. Oh my God, here we go. They, they came out looking real cool too, with the doors opening like that. That was, that was dope. That's not, those aren't even doors. That's the screen that the, the screen game gets live streamed on know, and it just right. parted That's so cool. and they came through. Bandai, can you chill? Bro, making everybody look oh. bad. Again, y'all, look we've uh, we've already gone over all this information, but we'll go over it one more time. We uh, for did those that are wondering, we had saying the Gal- Galgamon as well. We did. I did forget that. So they they get they get a graphic. I have notes. You know, we do what we can. Um, but in case you're wondering, we had four Leviathan, two Red Hybrids, two Bloom Lord, two Numamon, one Shine Greymon, one Mirage Galgamon, one Lugamon, one Anubismon. Someone still kept the dream alive. That person was Bryce Miller, representative of NNA. We have Fang Long Mon Turbo and Security Control. That All 16 of our players for Digimon today. It just looks so menacing that they chose that Leviathan photo and to put it on the right top right side as if it's looking down <laughs> on everybody. That's, mm-hmm. That was purposeful. I'm sure it was purposeful. <laughs> Their graphics department knew what they were doing and they understood the assignment. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Also, Leviathan is staring right at Numamon X antibody and going, you. you. I made you're sure mine. you... <laughs> Got in charge. <laughs> Got in <it snared. laughs> You know, technically, that Anubis also has way more Leviathan in it than Anubis <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's restricted. So, but then they were like, you know what? Let's make this nice pie, <laughs> the quarter pie. I also just got the confirmation that our first match is going to be Take versus Pete Leviathan X versus. Security control, leaving Let's Frozen go. and William on the other end. Very exciting. Perfect. So we get what we wanted. We get what you wanted. There we go. We're seeing we get Frozen the Leviathan. And Leviathan yes. mirror that we're not watching. Uh, and we're going to get to watch the Take versus Pete. And this is where Pete really needs your support, y'all. If you are gunning for the NA, this is it right here. We got to get Pete all the way to the top. And if you want Take to get his rematch against Frozen in the, in the finals or mm. have a really cool upset against William in the finals too, let us know in the chat as well. Uh, something that I'm also really hoping for that the, that the chat will do for us is keep a counter of how many times Chaos Degrade is activated Pops from off. security. Yep, yep, from yep. security. Okay, it can be activated normally and doesn't count. So make sure you guys are diligent with your counters. How many are we seeing? Coming out of security in one game. What's your prediction? What's your prediction? Listen, What's here's prediction? here's what happened in LA, okay? Live, <laughs> it happened. Within the first two checks, it was two chaos degrades. I, like, it still, in, like, burned. The image is burned into my brain. That it was two chaos degrades on the first two checks. <laughs> that poor Anubis. And something that I remember, too, was specifically when Bryce had that matchup against Pete, the... Leviathan that he teched in as a one of was a super useful tool for him in that matchup because it was a big body that had plus security tech and could get in there for free if the opponent like played a Jumon by an effect and then it just lets you s- sling two damage into them and they had to like waste resources to get rid of it if they didn't get lucky in security. That's what this entire Leviathan deck does from Take is just summon um, 
Leviathan X antibody as quickly as possible, reuse it with cards like Seventh Lightning, and just go, 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 go. Right, because he needs the Seventh Lightnings in trash, right, for it to activate when you digivolve into the Leviathan X. Uh, exactly. Uh, the Seventh Lightning needs to be in trash, but the Leviathan can just be in trash, and you have a Digimon that has Leviathan or X antibody. Uh, in its sources, or is named Leviathan on board to be able to evolve into it for free from the trash. Right. Uh, and specifically, Take's variant, uh, Take's variant of Leviathan that I'm sure we're going to see pop up a lot in this match is playing a heavy amount of X antibody protoform as well as Cerberus Mon X antibody from uh, EX5. This card allows all your Leviamons to attack multiple times and get much value off of their um, plus security natural stats. That is going to be interesting to see how it does. I do remember that usually when it comes to this specific matchup of purple versus security control, the purple deck is incentivized to play a little bit slower, prioritize removal, building solid amounts of bodies before going in. Mm -hmm. But the Leviathan deck that Take is playing is like basically a stack deck. I'm going to have one giant Digimon that I use to attack over and over again. And if you try to play any Digimon yourself, I'm just going to delete them. So it'll be interesting to see if Take can adapt what I believe his game plan to be for the security control matchup. Yeah, and this is something that uh, uh, Bryce did uh, when he was playing against Pete, was that he had that Uber, and the Uber was able to bottom deck um, the Magna Anja from Trash. True. So we're not seeing that in this, so I think Pete is going to have a little bit of an easier time to be able to play out his Magna Anjas, uh, considering he's able to pull into them or draw them. <laughs> and He has to be careful, though, because if exactly. he plays with Digimon by effect, he can fall for all the tricks and all the little sneaky things that Leviathan right. can do to kind of punish him for that. So you got to be maybe careful. Like, maybe You're sometimes right. you... Like, can you choose to not activate Flame Hellscythe? No, Flame it's Hell a mandatory Sides? effect if you have a target. Oh. says, then play it. Yep. Yeah. So it does have to happen. And... Uh, is there other ones? Uh, well, the Revelation of Light is a May, so you don't have to play anything by that effect. But it is the Flame Hellscythe coming out of security could potentially hurt Pete. And we might see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll depend. It'll depend on uh, what Take's got up. Because again, Take is the one Levaya player that is not playing the Biting Crush. Um, still can do the Levaya X, but only if... Uh, Leviah is out, or a Digimon with X antibody that's a level 5. It is interesting that he's running the protoform, um, but I suppose it is because he's running a lot of the, like the Guru X, um, Cerberus X as well. So he's able to use that to go into his level 4s and level 5s. Versus running cheaper, the yeah. normal uh, X antibody. Yeah, so like he, his plan is specifically to be like, okay, X antibody protoform underneath a level four, evolve into Cerberus Mont X for two, get the on play effect due to the on digital effect, draw trash, and then during that turn or during the opponent's turn, evolve into Leviathan X. Right. That that to my understanding, that's like the whole kind of synergistic combo of all those cards is you get to evolve into right. Cerberus Mont X for cheaper, still get both of his effects, draw trash, and then if you have a way to make your opponent play Digimon by an effect, uh, due to like Dragomon or whatever else you have in play, yeah. you can just go straight into Levia X and super punish I will, say, them. I will say though, it is interesting for him not to play the normal X antibody at all, because if you go into the Drago, like say you're a level four uh, Guru or you're already into the Guru X or the Rare Mon or the even the uh, Dobermon, if he goes into the Drago and does, he has no way of getting the X antibody underneath unless he's mm -hmm, done it before. Mm -hmm. And he's only yeah, got it's, the it's one worth Guru X, you know, because it's restricted. He's only allowed the one. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so it, 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 it is worth noting that both Frozen and William, the other two Leviathan players, are playing normal X antibody and they're playing high numbers of biting crush so they're yeah. what i would call like the quote-unquote standard version yes. of leviathan x anybody whereas take here is playing i would call it like an aggro slash like a cerberus mon variant of 
Leviamon X antibody. Yeah. Uh, prioritizing overall consistency, powerful level threes that he can abuse using Cerberus Mon X antibody. And then, of course, like I've mentioned, attack multiple times with his various Leviamons to get big plus security damage in against the opponent. Yep. I am interested. It'll, to it'll see be interesting to see how it all adds yeah. up. Yeah. Because I, I want to find out I, from his perspective as well why to why to play the protoform versus the normal X antibody. There is something too to be said about protoform being an extra recover for you, so that way uh, when you're being aggroed against or in mirror match, you have a little bit more staying power because you lose your Digimon all the time. So like, like like your Digimon in the mirror match get deleted like all the time. And so getting that extra security over the opponent can maybe help you win that overall tempo race that the mirror match ends up being. Fair enough. It's definitely a choice for sure. And hopefully it's one that will work out for him as we see yeah. him play these games. Uh, I personally am someone that's put a lot of time into playing security control. And I can honestly say a deck like Leviathan X Anybody, specifically Take's version of, Le of Leviathan X Anybody, scares me a little bit more than like a quote-unquote normal version because really? you have that extra consistency of playing extra bodies off of Cerberus Mon X and you have that scary potential of four damage off of one Digimon. Yeah, like, yeah, I have to true. get lucky in order to actually beat you. And as much as it might pain me to say, or people won't believe me when I say this, uh, security control is not built to be a deck that goes, I get lucky, I win. It's built to be like, hey, I've built this in a way that allows me to play the game this way. And if you can't actually beat my game plan, I will just inevitably win the game. Uh, and then you have that extra benefit of all these powerful security effects that can just add to that game plan and make it super easy for you to take over uh, and take control of the game. Right, right, right. So, so Take's deck is one that I think Pete will have to adapt to if he hasn't already played against it, and one that could punish him. But here we see the beautiful Digimon card game stage. Our two players, Pete on the right, Take on the left. That's cool. Oh, I want to steal the table. Let's bring it home. <laughs> just Let's bring it home. Just hop on a plane. Yep. Take Go to... You break it oh, down, wow. put it into like tinier boxes yep. that you can uh, fly back home. Well, the playmat is like built into the, it is the table. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Just, hey, chat, no one tell Yoshi about the hand cam. He'll freak out. <laughs> <laughs> I did see the hand cam. I, it's, I, I like that they're doing the whole hand on the table thing. Because for me personally, my hands get sweaty. Uh, so I'm glad that they, <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about that. You would not. You would not. You have that Ooh, beautiful, beautiful holder for you. Beautiful. Let's go, Pete. Hey, with the turtle. Let's go. Let's go, Take. <laughs> Let's go, Take. <laughs> oh man. Honestly, is... I don't know. I, I don't know who has the quote-unquote advantage in this matchup because this is one that I don't. I haven't really thought about. Definitely have not seen and. You know, if I didn't know any of these players, any of these 16 players, any of these 16 decks, I never would have expected that this would be the first semifinal match we get to watch before we head into the finals. But right. I think the onus will be on Take to figure out a game plan, whereas Pete will be like, I'm just going to do what I always do. Uh, and that does feel like a winning start. Strategy, yeah, true. Sometimes when you play too much into what your opponent is going to do, it kind of uh, messes up your game plan and then you forget what you're doing. I've done it before. Mm -hmm. And the dice will see who goes first. It looks like Pete will be taking first turn. Four versus three is, in dice fact, a bigger number. It landed on a three, I believe. Oh, okay. I'd be on my... Here we go. Oof. And for people that are like... They've been playing all day and maybe possibly suffering from jet lag as well. You got to keep into... Uh, put into, you know, in your mind that this is... This is like not their normal time zone. I see a chaos mm -hmm. in hand already there. Starting Which you off. don't want them in the hand, but right, you exactly. Know, they're not bad. But there. he is seeing a level three. Oh, that, that's exactly right. He said, "I'm gonna mulligan this. I don't want to see the chaos degraded in hand." Whereas uh, Take looks like he's happy with his hand there and is starting to build the security. Mm -hmm. And I believe that marker that was placed on the table there denotes who the first player is. So we are correct yeah. that Peter will be taking the first turn, yeah. which maybe is why he mulliganed that hand. It may have had a rookie, but it probably didn't have a much better turn one play after that rookie. And so he yeah. wants like a tamer or a card like Digimon Emperor or 
really any of his ways to gain extra cards in security, like Magna Angemon or Magna Angemon Ace. Right. Here we go. We, we kind of alluded to him. Oh. Oh, After he's got to play with it no matter what. Okay, so, so we've ooh. got oh, the whole line. A literal just line Giza, plus rare. an option card. And the what? Uh, yeah, so yeah, he, he literally had... Yeah, he has everything. Cerberus Plus X. a training. <laughs> wow, and a training. That's like... That is... That is... What? <laughs> Your full stack in hand. That's it. That's all you need. And going for second. So, should he want something else, like an X protoform, maybe he'll draw into it. That mm -hmm. is like the ideal hand. Are you kidding me? I mean, as the I resident cyborg player mind. in the call. Well, as the resident cyborg player, remind me what that Raremon does again. It lets you trash and stuff, right? Yeah, so oh, there's Raremon the Kari. On play. on play or when did you evolve, you can trash one uh, card in your hand to draw two. Oh, that is a Ooh, rough that's actually really first good. hand. Yeah, it's no, no, great. that's perfect. Yeah. That's, that, that's perfect. perfect. You got hand. removal. Yeah, it's a perfect hand. You have you, you, you have get removal a and you have turn one Kari. You have turn one Kari pass. Like this is security control. Remember, Yoshi, don't look at this like a normal Digimon deck. This is a I don't different know. beast. The last time Pete started his hand with no level three, he didn't get a level three at all. And the Sal not having the Salamon really hurt him. That was the game that he it'll, lost. So we'll see. It'll only be bad if he has no way to recover. If 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 if, if like within the first two or three turns he has no outlet for gaining more security cards, That's I true. agree with you. This hand will become a bad hand. But right now, Kari turn one pass. <laughs> We'll take sure. it. It, it. It needs to be uh, security control. It needs to become a bad hand. Nothing ever starts terribly. <laughs> it's what you draw into that becomes a bad hand. That's what your opponent does too. Yep, that's true. All right, I think they're about to get started. That's true though. He does have the revelation in, in hand and Akari. So that's next turn he can play out the revelation. Was that revelation? Revelation of Light. I saw Loke. Yeah, I saw I saw Loke and... Oh, that is Revelation of Light. Revelation. Oh, yeah. that's Revelation. actually super good. He might turn one play that because that lets you... Um, but you need the card. Play level four or lowers. You need yeah, to yeah. Kari, I would Kari right? first. So, yeah. so, so, so you can get full value out of it. Yeah. And put it back on top of your security at the very least. Called it. Oh, yeah. He's he's big chilling. All right. So, yeah. Like I said, hatch. Play Kari pass. Three memory. Evolve into Giza after hatching Sunomon from BT6. Yep. We might see the training into a I'm over four. here just drooling at their sleeves. My goodness. That Nihon <laughs> Boko is so cute. Put himself to one with the training here. Oh, Leviya. You got to grab the Leviya, right? Yeah, because he already had regular yeah. Leviamon, and now he has Leviamon X. Yep. And now he can <sighs> trash it with that rare mon that he has in hand. Rare, exactly. But chooses and, to... Wow, purple, bo purple boost. Purple, yeah. Oh, that's just a different memory boost. That's the, the pretty one. The pretty, mm -hmm. pretty altar. the one, the one from the gift box, I believe. For gift uh... box, yeah. I didn't see what well, he bought next him turn death, we but can... he grabs the level three, Alabra. Did you see what he bought him decked? Uh, I believe it was like three Digimon that wasn't um a Leviamon. Okay, here it is. Uh, so here we see the revelation of revelation light, allowing of light. you to look at your security four. and I believe play a level four or lower, but you do not have to. And because we have Kari Kamiya in play, you actually get to place this card on top of your security, and it has a security effect to give all of your opponents Digimon minus 5,000 DP. Yep, as the Kari. So it's basically it just top. a ro it, It's basically just Holy Wave, Recovered. but a little bit better because it has a security effect guaranteed. <laughs> yep, trashed or not, it happens. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I think now Take is just considering how to go about this turn. We know he has Cerberus Mon X up to Leviamon probably completely available to him because he has the training plus the boost. He can get a ton of resources yep. this turn. He is but... getting a lot of level threes as he draws, too. He's not getting any of his uh, level four except for the rare Mon. But he's going to push mm -hmm. out here. He could digivolve into the rare yeah. mon for three, put them to one, and then trash that Leviya X. True. That could be really cool. Uh, but here we're seeing, I oh, believe, the mental training he's contemplating. Yeah. Sorry, the wisdom training. Mental training is the blue one. Oh, there we see the Dobermon X. Oh, there that you nice go. windage evolving. I don't believe we get any of the really cool effects besides giving retaliation. Draw oh, no, no. We, uh, we get to draw and trash. We don't get the, uh, the uh, retaliation effect because we don't have X antibody. 
uh, in our mm -hmm. sources. Trash is the Labra, not the mm -hmm. And then after doing that, Sunomon draw one. I guess it makes sense. He doesn't quite have the X antibody or the protoform, so it kind of just is a dead card in the trash until then. Mm -hmm. We could see if he, like, uh, what did he draw into? He drew into a Gazimon? We could see, like, yeah. hop boost, go to two, play the Gazimon pass. Um, because right. I don't think this turn screams, let's go into Cerberus Mon X to me. It just seems like we should maybe build out a little bit wider first. Right. But it, I mean, it depends. But also like it, going if he doesn't plan on attacking. While popping the training here to put him to one. And yep, that's what he does. Does not nice. get the second then, effect, the on play effect though, right? Because there's no Cerberus under or an X antibody. Exactly. He gets to draw on trash again though, which is like right. all this deck wants, wants to be doing to be is getting your super key pieces in the trash as early as possible. Um, and it's really possible that he, that he like draws into a proto form. Um, yep. But now the onus is on peak. He did draw that level three. It looks like Salomon evolved into it There's immediately and then drew into an Avenge Kidmon, which is huge. Ooh, Lone K, touching the Lone K. <laughs> it, it is, it is a, it, it is, is a dangerous. memory, but it does just Minus get rid of that, uh, of that beast. Minus twelve thousand because we have more than three security cards. That's right. Three or more. The magic is when you're at exactly three. That, that card becomes three. a one card, two Digimon removal. Mm -hmm. Or did he just help him by putting bodies in trash here? We'll see, and giving him a lot of memory. Ooh, Ooh seventh lightning seventh being lightning. revealed here. You don't want that to go to the bottom. You want that to be right. in trash. Ooh, Ooh, but we're going to the bottom anyway to getting multiple copies of Leviathan X. Yep. I think Take is aware that if he wants to win this game, he has to evolve into multiple Leviathan Xs for free yep. multiple times. <laughs> uh, and attack with them in the a lot. Too? Can't quite see what the card that is there. That is Guru Ramon from the starter deck. Oh, it is uh, Guru. The okay. BT-16 uh, starter deck? The purple one. Uh, security effect, play a Matashita. We don't have any, uh, but it lets you draw one trash one on Digivolve, I believe. And then we do play Guru Ramon X. Right. Did, he did it in the back, though, so there's no... Uh, none of those effects go off. But I don't see a Guru X in hand or an X protoform yet, so... Hard play. Ooh, but we do see that hard yeah. play of uh, Ramon, which when you're at three memory, it's only cost four is really good. We discard a Leviathan X and draw two. Now our trash is pretty set up. So if yep. we start getting some X antibody option cards and some more level fives, we can start setting up some pretty cool plays. Just the pass. pass. No card. Interesting. He did draw into it, the Yeah, card, interesting but... that... Yeah. yeah. I oh, think because, because... you don't want to have too many... Of the same, because uh, if you have more Digimon and Tamers, right, for Leviathan to do things exactly. to delete. So both, if both of no the, both of the, the yeah. yeah, so like for Leviathan effects to activate, they need to have either equal or more Digimon and Tamers to you. So as, right. if you always have less, you turn off all their removal abilities. And the right. Leviathan X can delete Tamers. And so turning that one oh. off is, I think... An interesting thing. Uh, but here we see the protoform evolving into the Cerberus my next antibody for a cost of two. Then we activate the effects, all of them, draw one, trash one, and play a level three from trash, discarding seven of lightning, gonna play Labramon. Labramon. Gain the memory, I believe, right? Or no? Uh, What's the underneath? That's Raremon. Okay. Raremon, I don't think, oh, gains so memory Raremon. for playing yeah, Digimon by effect. Uh, can trash when you attack, though, to delete a level three. Nice. So he's able to use the Raremon Inherit to trash more things. Mm -hmm. And then here he used Labramon, discard Gizamon, add back X Anymon, uh, Dobermon X Anybody. <clears throat> uh, so here we could go Memory Boost, then Training, Evolve for 4 into Leviamon X. Uh, if we have, let me see our hand, do we have access to a Dragomon or a way to force... Um, to play anything we don't right so we're probably just going to evolve straight up into leviathan next and attack twice with it because we have the ability to right. or we could just attack Start straight into this down. yeah exactly we could attack straight into this um what we know revelation is of light, yeah. revelation of light and keep our cerberus my next anybody alive but we're just going to evolve into dragomon in the back and pass two there's the second copy of kari coming down 
Mm -hmm. Take probably assumed that Pete didn't have any play to make, and so it was like, I'm going to give you two. But because yeah. Pete was conservative and kept his Tari back, Kari back, uh, he was able to do it. But now we get to pass turn. So, okay, a lot just happened right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Take was like, oh, I'm going to get rid of my Labramon by activating your security effect, and then I'm going to evolve into Leviathan X and delete one of your Kari's. And then he was like, JK, lol, use both Kari's, nope. pass your turn. And he's like, oh, yeah, right, math. <laughs> math. <laughs> Which is interesting. Yep. You forget about those Kari's and like, again, what we said last time about the Digimon Emperor, right? You forget about what they do because you don't see it that often. And that is what security control plays on is you uh, making too many mistakes uh, when moments that you should not. All right. So here Off we see, what is that? Memory boost and then and training, training going into via X. For, but it does have the X antibody underneath. So not worrying about it gets to delete the Kari. I am on swinging in for three checks. First check reveals Shadow Seraphimon and Mercy Mode. Third check reveals, uh, I believe that is a yellow memory boost. What is that? No, no, that's Magna Angemon Ace. Magna Angemon, yeah. That was a lot Did of checks. That's a little scary. But he's got the Salmon in the back, so he's able to swing, push out, hopefully get it deleted and recover. We, we checked Mercy Mode, right? Is, was there a reason why Leviathan X didn't get deleted? Does it have jamming and I'm just like forgetting no, that no, about no. it? I thought it was a Venus Mode. Oh, it was Venus Mode. I thought it was Venus. Mercy Mode for a second. And I was no, like, no, no. what? I don't think he's running Mercy. Yeah, yeah. It was the totally Altar right. uh, Venus. It just, it, it just looks so angelic. I was like, it has to be Mercy Mode. But I'm like, because <laughs> some of these deck lists are playing Mercy Mode, but not, not Pete's. Right. I had to double check that for a second. I was like, what just happened? I did survive, but then he did take turn away after that one swing. I don't think he was worried about keeping the turn. But... Mm -hmm. So he activated KSD grade from hand. He wanted to put the Leviathan on the bottom and trash the top versus trash the, top. the other way around. Which was the protoform that we had seen already. Exactly, because that does trigger off of D grade. Something that I didn't mention at the beginning of this matchup that I definitely should have was the actual win conditions for both of these players. Um, Hake just needs to take all of the security and attack for game. Pete, I think, is only allowed to win by decking out Hake's deck because specifically since Hake is playing X antibody protoform, he will have access to so many security cards that it might be hard for Pete to actually attack through without succumbing yeah. to all this crazy removal. I mean, that is exactly what we saw uh, Pete do was you know he had I think uh, nine security at one point for uh, when he was going against uh, Bryce and just mm -hmm. let himself deck himself out. Oh, here we have the one of in. Lament of Friendship. Let's him add any Digimon card from his trash to his hand. He's going to be adding that Magda Andromon Ace to his hand, getting a free way to recover. Activating the Kari, going to three, checking the second check off of Leviathan. Revealing a Shadow, Shadow Seraphimon, not That's strong enough. All these in security. Yeah, these Leviamons are big. <laughs> big boys. Big boys. And he's still got a memory to play with. Something that I know for a fact is available to Pete that might be funny if Take doesn't take it into consideration is Pete can just hard play Venusmon. <laughs> <laughs> and because all Leviamons always right, have a plus security yeah. effect giving, given to them, uh, that means that they won't be able to activate any of their effects. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure Venusmon does not work it. on play. No, Venusmon yeah, does not. not work on play, which no. means that you wouldn't actually give it a security minus, which means you right. wouldn't cancel out the security plus and minus effects. That's true. So, I don't know if it, would, being... it would, if it would cancel it out anyways, right? Because it's still got an affected, or maybe not, because it's at zero, uh, uh, one. I forget that ruling. I, I believe it wouldn't work that way, because yeah. it still has, like, two separate, basically, effects being applied yeah. to it. Uh, they don't Plus just, like, cancel each other out. Uh, but that would be funny if it did work that way. Okay. That's a crazy thing. Go, I, I, uh, it looks like Sekon is so behind, but who knows? Again, if he can't get rid of this Magna Anger, then the Magna Anger can go into that Venus Mon. Uh, we don't know if he we has know, it in hand yet. 
we know he has Leviathan X, which does which does have the ability to get rid of this Magna Andromon Ace. But the problem is that is that he has Dragomon in his sources and not Cerberusmon X. If he had Cerberusmon X, he could actually just attack twice for game, barring no bad security checks. Right. But he does not. All right, here we go. The security checks. He's checking into security? No? Yes. Uh, he's using the inheritables to draw and discard and stuff. First. Oh, Chaos Degrade! There it is! The There's the first one in security! There you go. That wow, is the first wow, one wow, wow. for all the people watching at home. First Chaos Degrade. And now he got to keep Magna Andromon Ace in play. That means yep. he can evolve into the Venusmon that he has in his hand. And as far as I know, completely shut down all of Take's abilities. Yep. The only way that would have been better is if he had the Salmon already to go in the back. To get the recovery right after, mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, but there's the seventh lightning. That is there's exactly the, the card Take wanted to see. It could be a removal for that Venusmon that I was just talking about. Would it work though? Because it can't be affected when digivolving. The when digivolving effects wouldn't happen anyway. No, no. Seventh lightning, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, oh, like just play it out. I see. You mean? Not yeah, by the... by treasuring one card in your hand, you can delete one of your opponent's level yeah, four yeah. and one of the level six Digimon. So you can just like straight up delete it using uh, an option card. Right, right, right. There you go. Here comes the Venusmon. But it is seven memory, which you know. Uh, Pete has just established his Salomon. Next turn, you can go, okay, cool, promote attack, play. Um, oh, wait, but right. the uh, overflow from the Magna Andromon Ace will counteract that. Never mind. Yep, we fail to delete level four, but we do delete this Venusmon. Overflow activates, giving three memory back to Take, putting Pete at a total of two. Promotes a Salomon, swings, Upamon, draw a card. Does it get deleted, question mark? It does. Yep. We get the recovery. Get Recovery happens. This is the game, y'all. Every step of the way, Take is like, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. And Pete's like, nope, you're not. Nope, you're not. Do it again, do it again, do it again, until you deck out. <laughs> until you deck out. He's got the Magna Anja there ready to go, but he goes for the Kari. Putting him at one. Something that will but be very again, interesting if he goes is... into the Leviah X, he's able to delete that Kari once more, but... Yeah. Something that'll be really important uh, to keep track of is the number of seventh lightnings in Take's trash. Because every time he evolves into Leviathan X, anybody he has the ability to put those cards to the bottom of his deck, which might help him get just one or two more extra turns that he might need to actually clinch out this game, where Pete might run out of steam eventually. You know, of actually trying to stave off all this aggression that Take is representing. Right, and currently we're seeing one seventh lightning or two. He bottom decked one. He bottom decked one, which is which I was very against when I saw. I was like, you want those in trash as quickly as possible, and they might just be very powerful cards for you. Uh, but here we see the patented combo of Protoform, Evolve into Cerberus Mun, or uh, X Anybody for two. That deck Draw is into trash thin. Oh, but we just drew the seventh lightning that we put to the bottom of our deck. No big deal, no big deal. Uh, and now we get to play Digimon by an effect, which thanks to the Labramon will allow us to keep turn. That's the other really cool thing about this deck is you do the quote-unquote Anubismon shenanigans, but at level 5, and that lets you keep turn to then go into Leviamon shenanigans. Right. Two games I believe, two back. I believe we have both of these trainings online, which means we can just straight up evolve into a regular Leviamon for free. Yep. But mistaken. again, it looks like he's got, what, two cards left? If he digivolves too many times... He's so his, his last card? Yeah, so his plan is to end his turn by evolving into Leviathan X and putting all the seventh like lightnings and trash to the bottom lines. of the deck, right? Yeah. But he's getting all the value he can off of all the Digimon he has established in play first, which I think makes a lot of sense because if you don't plan on actually attacking this turn, you want to force uh, Pete to have two forms of removal to get rid of both of your bodies, right? Right. Oh, this which is really Lonke good. Which Lonke could do if he was able to recover one. And then do the Lonke. Oh. Forcing him to play the Salomon, which... He's going to be able to recover with it. Uh, so that was Dragomon's effect to play the Salomon, but how's he playing yeah. the Gizamon out again? 
Uh, when on, you an play effect three as plays well? a Digimon on the other side field, you get to play one as well. Okay, cool. And because an effect was played, you get to go into Leviathan X here for free. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll then delete one of the Tamers and then delete the Salamon because we have four um, bodies versus yeah. the three bodies on Take's board. Recovery. And because you Digivolved, you oh, also the Gizamon gave when deleted uh, mm -hmm. lose one memory, so we gained one more. And now we get to put the seventh lightnings on the bottom of his deck. But the problem mm. is that he will be drawing if he plans on attacking. And I believe he has already activated the Sunomon inheritables, which means he will not activate them again. So yeah, as long as Take is but very is meticulous close. about how many cards he draws. Yes, it, it is what he very close. Again, if he recovers that Chaos Degrade or a Lonke right now, two bodies are gone. Mm -hmm. But this is three security checks, so this is just game if nothing else happens. Okay. Yeah. In the memory. Second check. And? Check. Oh, it's okay. a Chaos D grade! There it is! But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Wait, Drago... No, no, it does. The Drago was... The Drago was, was played this turn. Was played this turn, you're right. Yeah. It does not have Rush. It does not have Rush, you're right. But there are... I don't think there's any ways for Pete to force uh take to draw any extra cards but there could be right. ways in his hand to get rid of this dragomon and then just pass turn but luckily take gets to keep turn he didn't lose enough memory off of this car to lose his turn because he was able right. to gain so much memory uh so we're just resolving the order of operations here so the viamon x goes away he gets to add a digimon card from his sources mm -hmm. and he gets to pick where the Leviathan X goes, and that does happen last. So the last thing that happens is the Leviathan X goes to security. Everything else right. happens in between because it's triggered when the Digimon would leave, not after the Digimon leaves. Uh, for those right. that are confused, what we're Gazi, seeing it's a secure two hits next turn. Makes sense. And turn and off that reinforcing to, memory yeah. boost. Does stop him from being able to do that. Yeah, I think he's just curious if he has more ways to uh, refuel stuff. But he does not have Seventh Lightning in trash unless he. Oh yeah, I guess he can always draw it and then trash it. Exactly. As long as he has a way, to, as long as he has a way to trash cards in his hand and oh, evolve into Leviathan X anybody, he will never get deleted. He's gonna play the Avenge Kid because he needs to clear two different bodies, right? Yeah, and I believe. Remind me what Avenge Kid does. Uh, so for every single option card in both players' uh, trashes, you put those at the bottom, and then for each one, you reduce the cost to play this card by one. If you returned eight or more, you can delete a Digimon with 8,000 DP or less, which, surprisingly, Dragomon does happen to have. 7K, right? Now, the yeah. question is here, do you delete the Gazimon or do you delete the Drago? Because if you delete the Gazi, you can reinforce and gain three memory, go to five, Correct. delete this uh, Dragomon, and then uh, leave... Take with like way less memory. Yes, I love this line of play from P here. It's going to reduce the a maximum amount of resources that he gives back to Take, who is already super low. I mentioned that this seventh lightning game plan to keep your deck as big as possible is yeah. important. But if you have no more eggs and no more ways to like evolve up without just drawing out your entire deck, yep. it's going to be really tough for him to actually establish the plays nice. to win. And here we have Magni Ace. Magna. Reduce by one, Flame Hells has reduced by six, delete the Drago and play Magnet, recover again. Super big play. Beautiful. But also, he, the Avenge Kid does help uh, Take with getting his uh, options back. Yeah, but I think Pete's fine enough? with that, right? Because, yeah. because, because the best play Take can do now is hard play Leviathan. Okay, yeah. you delete two of my dudes. Cool. I'm just going to get rid of that body and pass to you. You, like... Take has to trash 7th Lightning from hand and evolve into Leviathan X every single turn if yep. he wants to have this quote-unquote loop of an infinite deck. But the second he runs out of eggs to protect whatever that line is, the second it's over. And if he evolves too much and draws too much without establishing that combo, he can just go, okay, cool. Recover, 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 recover. So here's that play I was talking about. Hard play Leviathan, delete some yep. bodies, get some memory back due to overflow, and then just pass it back and say, your turn. Yep. Just making sure we got the math correct. 
Always got to be meticulous here. Also, yep. keep an eye on that timer, folks. We're currently at 32 minutes. This is still just Oof. game one. It is super intense and back and forth. Both both players are playing out of their shoes, and it's amazing to see. No Salmon in hand, doesn't look like. Mm -mm. Ooh. But just the heart of all. Into the Venus Mon, stopping the security checks, giving him one more turn at least. And stopping all wind dribbling effects. Check, so right? he still got one. Uh so yeah, Leviathan can one. still swing for a damage, but it can't activate any wind dribbling effects. Right. And oh, there's a low key. Just put it on top. Okay. Just put it on top. Kari, go and to the zero. Thing is, still your turn. With the way he plays security control is he's constantly taking away the big bodies that they need and putting it mm -hmm. in security where it's not accessible and he's not swinging into security, stopping them from being able to access their trash. Instead of what a beautiful point. We have two Leviathan X's put into the security. I keep, I've been, I've been saying Take needs to establish some kind of loop with Leviathan X anybody and Seven Lightning. If Pete has three Leviathans in this security, that is impossible for Take. Do we know if he has a Leviathan X in hand? Because if he doesn't, he's actually out. He actually has I'm no way to one. get them back. Uh, he's a lot of cards, though, so it's hard to tell. He's only, uh, from what I remember, he was only running. He was running three. Yeah, I see uh, Ruin Mode, I see a regular Levia, but I do not see a Leviathan X in that hand. And so we can assume the third one is in the security, which means we have one in Trash, which means the only way we can get that one back is by evolving it on top of a Digimon with the X Anybody Option card, which luckily, we put all those back, thanks to right. uh, Avenge Kidmon. But those are also in the security too, so there's no way to like reliably uh, recycle those. Get it out, yeah, yeah, for sure. So here we just see an evolve into Service Mount X in the back and pass, and, and then we see the, the Magna and your ace. Recovering like I said, Pete more. is not trying to win this game by security. He's trying to say, Take, you have to win. I don't. <laughs> yeah. This is a tough situation. I don't even really see the way out of it for Take right now, besides just deleting the Venus Mon and saying pass, because he needs to actually activate his effects, and he can't promote right now. Right. With the Venus Mind in play. Yep, there we go. Seventh Lightning. To take out the level six gotcha. and the level four. And I believe that is the last Venus Mon we've seen from Pete. I believe we saw two and then that alternate art from earlier, meaning we're out. Yeah. So that's important to note too. Right. But there we just see another Magna Angemon from the original he does have BT1. The Lament back in his hand though. That is or not true. in his hand, sorry, in this deck. Yeah, yeah, eventually we can get so, there. But uh, but Take will deck out way before we get there. Yeah, way yeah, before. True. Pete has so many cards in his deck. <laughs> you know, he has, uh, I do not see a Leviathan X. Just yet. Yeah, I see two Ruin Modes, one regular Leviathan, no Leviathan X. There are three Leviathan Xs in Take's security, which is so bad for him. He needed exactly two in rotation to have this loop of seventh lightning available to him, and it's just not. It's just not available. Yeah. And even if he digivolves into Leviathan, like, Pete's at three security. Leviathan has plus one security attack, not plus two security attack. That's true. Yeah, like, just the heartbreaking yeah. thing about specifically this matchup. Like, we have so many ways to, like, get resources back as Leviathan, but a lot of Take's game plan from what I'm seeing him play like is very, my one Leviathan will get me there. And yeah. Pete just goes, better hope I don't have a security card. Because if I did, <laughs> that's a bad game plan. <laughs> That'd be bad. And that's the thing is he wants the chaos degrades from the security because it just puts it in security doesn't have to trash it but i guess you play it from hand you can put it up and then trash the top there's the zulong yep the evolve of a zulong mon gonna be bouncing that Levermon back to hand and just saying pass it's a nice four memory removal that doesn't give him any more memory than he normally would uh but that that, that, that does put two overflow digimon in play so but the on deletion of the zulong <laughs> is so good that if exactly, he it's worth it. it. He loses his body as well. He's got to be careful yeah, here. A, oh, oh, he's doing it. Does he not? Is he not aware I, of the I deletion don't think effect? He's aware. I yep, don't think he was Take aware. Uh, Take got ahead of himself. He saw the overvote value just like I did, but he forgot that a Zulong Mon is a good card, and it reads on deletion. He's bounce all, your opponent's it. highest level back to the hand, and this game ends with 
with, wow. with Take having zero cards in deck, zero cards in raising area, and zero <laughs> cards in battle area. <laughs> that was wild. I, yes, he fully forgot about Zulongmon's on deletion. I mean, again, the only reason I remember that is because Steven did that to me, and I forgot about the on deletion, and I was like, oh, oops, there goes my body. So I will never forget it again. <laughs> Aren't I a stinker? <laughs> but here's uh, the thing. But if Take is like me, again, that game you between you and me was like a month ago. I still remember it. Now it's fresh in Take's mind. So Pete can get that first game off. Can he do it again? And what will we see Take do to change his game plan? Because he's going to have to have to change it. He cannot do the same thing. Because they'll just deck it out once more time, you know? It's it's so we'll see. it's really hard um, when you're playing against security control to be like, like I, I envy Take's position because like as far as I'm concerned, both players played their decks perfectly up until that very last play where Take just misunderstood what a Zulongmon was. I think the writing was on the wall at that point anyway. He just didn't have the resources because of those three Leviamon X in yeah, security yeah. to bring it back no matter what. But he did everything he could. He established a really powerful Leviamon X turn where he had the opportunity to opportunity to attack twice with plus two security attack. But he just got unlucky against the security and all that came crum crumbling down. And then Pete yep. used that momentum to say, great, let me reestablish my defense, reestablish my board, and then offer it back up to Take again. Hey, all those resources you wasted to establish that one big play, can you do it again? No? Cool. I'm just going to keep recovering then until you deck out. You know, like that is a really tough play pattern for Take to get used to. Um, and Pete is really good at using the security control deck and just going, my job is not to necessarily win the game. It's to make sure that I make it as hard as possible for my opponent to win the game. Yeah. And if my deck can help me out every now and then, that's just a bonus. But keep in mind, guys, Pete has never once played this game going, oh, I hope I check a good security card. He's been going, what's the most optimal thing I can do every single turn to, 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 deny, to deny my opponent resources and make it impossible for them to get ahead enough to where any luck or any removal I have access to is enough to actually stymie them. So right. I think uh, what I want to see out of Take is... I don't want to say a slower game plan. I actually think he played the first game pretty perfectly. Just a more... Uh, actually, I, I would argue a more aggressive game plan. Like, the second yes. you have a Leviathan, start attacking with it, right? Don't have it to where now you have two bodies, one that got removed during your turn and one that's about to get removed from your opponent's turn. Establish that raising area, use it as much as possible as a way to increase your tempo, and then when you smell blood in the water, ensnare, 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 yeah. and go for it. Uh, and Pete, do not pass the, same the turn with a body on there without doing anything to security because he will delete it. Mm -hmm. And here we see Pete starting off once Ooh, again in game two. Take making him go first. We get the Salamon this time and we get the turn one Digimon Emperor. Hey, Take, Ooh. did you want to promote level threes from the raising? Too bad. Don't do Don't that. Don't do that. It's now, it's now bad to do that. Now let's see if he knows of this or will forget because it is hard to remember the Digimon Emperor. Nobody really plays it. Mm -hmm. But Again. usually in this matchup. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Oh. Playing out the Ghazi, having a body on the field already. Could yeah, I was curious. Taki's hand was was uh, was blocking that card. I was like, what is that? Really look cool looking Digimon. It's Ghazi. It's Ghazi. It looks it's really Ghazi. Cool. It's the Beelzemon one from the starter deck. Nice. <laughs> Magni Angemon hard play. Go up to six security cards. Draw, promote the Doberman. Did not trigger. Uh... Digimon Emperor, Digimon Emperor evolve into Doberman X, draw one trash. Are we going to see some going wide shenanigans? That too could also be a really cool game plan out of uh, Take. Is because of the Cerberusmon X antibodies, he has the ability to go super, super wide in this deck, uh, yeah. which is pretty cool. Play all these cool level three Digimon. But if you're not removing bodies, Pete just gets to go Shadow Seraphi, Venusmon, and then you go, right, those are cards. <laughs> those are there. Shadow Serafi uh, is, is a body that needs to be, like, it, you can't let it happen. Because on deletion, it'll delete you, or most likely, depending on your security. And if you don't delete it, every time you check security, you're getting de digivolved And a stack deck like this, that's not what you want to see. Mm -hmm. So here we have the first deck. swing. Revelation of Light, minus 5,000 to My both. Wow. Wow. 
And then we get to activate the German Emperor drawing a card. Whoa. Uh, that was a lot of value out of that card. BT15 yeah. is coming in clutch right now for Pete. This that, is right? the... No, it activated from security. <laughs> oh, from... Oh, he got it. He got it from uh, the Magna Recover. Yes, exactly. Like, he got it from the Magna Recover, and then it was the first check against Doberman. Uh, how funny that both of Pete's first checks in both these games were Revelation of Light. <laughs> yeah. One, he knew. Second, he didn't know. He was like, oh, hey, that's nice. That's there. Get rid of two bodies for free. Makes sense. Revelation of Light. Ooh, but we don't have Kari in play this time, so it's actually just no, going to be a potential look at the security and know what cards he has in there, uh, which is valuable information for sure. Oh, yeah, no Kari. Won't go in. Should have played the Kari, though. He has it in hand. Uh, but he only but had one memory, about... and Revelation of... Exactly. Say, yeah, so... he's worried about too, too many Digimon, or too many Digimon and Tamer. And also, I think it's um, a little bit better, too, if your plan is to either play Kari or pass. Just play a card like Revelation of Light, get a look at your security, and know what you have working for you for free. That's actually a really cool tool that not a lot of security control decks play anymore because they kind of uh, grew out of playing the original TK Takaishi from set one. But having Revelation of Light basically serve as that security information that you need to go, oh, I have this many free removal cards? Sweet. Yeah. Thank you, deck. It's, it's really cool. Plus, it's also yeah. a way to in increase your consistency because you can add level four lowers to your hand. Or I think play them for free, actually. And he does play a copy of Air Dramon, which I believe recovers on play. Ooh. That's an older Air Dramon, right? The yellow one? Yeah, the uh, the original Air uh, Air Dramon yellow from, I want to say, like, BT... No, EX3. Yeah, lets you add a card from your security stack, and then if it's yellow, recover one. So just more and more consistency. <laughs> Yeah, that's from um what is it the the what dragon's the roar thing building? yeah the dragon's yeah. yeah it was for the uh i think it was for the four great dragons deck yeah <laughs> oh so it's uh, it actually uh search your security stack reveal one card yep. from it add to hand okay so it's not a recovery exactly. but it's yeah, it, uh, it, 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 it it's like a replace a bad card with a potential good card right and then yeah. uh, you get to play it for free i believe off of off of revelation of light here's the kari or or you add it to your oh, hand yeah. i forget i think i think it plays for free Look at that hand, bro. That's just like, oh. Hellside, Hellside, Lonke. Oh, the one of Avenged Kidmon again. Woman. I own that alternate art. I pulled it at my pre release. It's a gorgeous card, and I'm glad he is repping it. I have never gotten a good alt art from a pre release. I'm just built different, you know? Uh, you are built different. <laughs> I don't like it. Unfair. I want it. Angewon Ace is actually a really interesting card if your opponent is unable to out it because essentially if you're at three or four security, every time you get hit, you recover one for free that turn. <laughs> so they need to actually deal with it. It's one of the few Ace Digimon I've ever seen that has a lingering effect during both players' turn, not just a on-play slash on-digital on effect. Yeah. So it's a lingering and uh, an on-play. Exactly. Uh, and then here we see the Garurumon being evolved on top of the Labra, getting that free draw on Digivolve, Trash 1, Trashing 7th Lightning, and then we're passing right back to Pete. Again, I think because of that early revelation of light, Take has been forced to play so slowly, and Pete's board is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where he's like, go ahead and Leviamon X. I don't even care anymore. What are you going to yeah. do? Attack me three times into my security that I know has a chaos degrade in it because I'm a big old security control gamer and I saw my security? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure that's exactly how his brain said it to him too. It's like, oh, look at that uh, chaos degrade in my security. I deserve to be here. <laughs> and you know, I'm like, you're, you're darn right you do. Yep, evolve for six into Leviamon X antibody. You're going to be activating that seventh lightning getting rid of the Venusmon, uh, because we didn't have a minus security effect put onto us? Hold on a second. Did that Cerberusmon get promoted this turn, or am I crazy? It did just get promoted this turn. I'm going to go with the, the on-site judges know what's going on and that we're good. So maybe yeah. maybe, maybe, <laughs> yeah. the, maybe the Venusmon effect uh, didn't actually happen. Uh, maybe I, we I missed think, something. I think the Venusmon was already out, and then last turn he played the Angel Woman, right? So oh, right, right, right. Over. I'm so silly. I'm so silly. I thought he evolved into... 
<laughs> Venus mod instead of hard play enter one. Yes, exactly. Uh, so we get to delete that. Uh, we got the overflow, so we got to keep turn, even though Leviathan X costs so much memory to evolve into. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. And he's he wait, but then he has uh, innately Leviathan has uh, Leviathan X innately has a security modifier, right? Uh, yes, he does. But he activated the seventh lightning ability to delete the Venus Mon first, which activates that effect first. So it doesn't. So the on deletion. Sorry, the on digivolve yeah. effect of Leviathan X happens after Seventh Lightning sees that it has been digivolved. Does that make sense? I see. Yeah. So because that happens first, he then gets to proc the wind dissolving effect to to to, to do uh, to delete the Andrew Woman Ace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and here we have all been to Guru Mon X. Technically, the effect of the Leviathan X, it's the effect of Seventh Lightning being in trash. Exactly. So even though mm. Leviathan X's initial on digital effect is negated, it's still Leviathan X, which means Seventh Lightning happens first, and then by the time Venusmon is gone and left the board, Leviathan's when dissolving effect has the ability to proc. That's why I also got super confused too for a second, because I'm like, what's the, doesn't Seventh Lightning happen have to happen first? Why are we activating Leviathan X first? Uh, all this right. fun stuff. <laughs> And then we see the power of the Gurumon X line that recently got restricted. Evolve up, get an extra memory, use that extra memory to activate X anybody protoform, evolve into Cerberus Mon for two. And we could see another activation potentially of Leviathan X this turn. Um, but I very much doubt that Take is going to. Uh, actually, I would really love to see Take attack and get one more security check this turn, no matter what, because having the ability to turn off Salomon. Uh, get deleted into playing Loke at three security cards exactly seems really good to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but we'll know know have to see what he's going wary for. you of that, right? Like, I don't, I wouldn't have been aware of that. I would have like, oh, I don't want to swing into security. I'm afraid of what's going to be in there. But you're right. If you take out one more security, he can't do the recover and then Loke and do the double body thing. Let's see if Take knows that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the hesitance makes me think it doesn't. But I, I I believe in Take. I think he knows he needs to play a little bit more aggressive now that he's gotten yeah. so much advantage this turn thanks to that powerful 7th Lightning into Leviathan X combo. I think he's just thinking about whether to attack first or Digivolve first. Oh, here we go. He's going to attack. If he Digivolves, he, he ends his turn. Oh. Oh, it uh, just got played. Did it? I'm confused. It must have gotten played. Yes, it must have gotten played. What, what, what did it get of played the... off of? I don't know. Cerberusmon. Was... Cerberusmon was promoted. Not this turn. Not not digivolved into this turn. Yeah, it's good. It yeah. This one oh. can attack. I, I me and Take were like, oh, did I? He's like, did I break the rules? And he's like, actually, <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because it's wait. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, other Cerberusmon X anybody that Leviathan X evolved into was promoted this turn. Meaning yes. the Labramon had to be in play before that. Right, right, right. There we have a second a Kari activating the first one going into two. Which is annoying, but not the end of the world. Nope. Because if it was A, a he, degrade, he gets to keep... Story. Always, always a different story with Chaos Degrade. Um, but Cerberusmon stayed alive, which is great. And Pete now has one security instead of two. Meaning he needs to recover twice and play mm -hmm. Loke. To get rid of two bodies this turn. Purple so, boost. What does he choose here? It's, it's very interesting goblet. because again, uh Take comes from Ocean, right? No, no, sorry. No, Take is Japan. 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 So Take is going backwards in his meta. Yeah. Like they, they've already played through this meta ages ago, but without the restrictions. So he's having to adjust for that very interesting mm -hmm. to me. and he's like my adjustment is to go big bad crocodiles attack many times <laughs> yep how to do uh, here you're right he is definitely thinking about that that uh lonke but the lonke is not quite enough it has to swing into a body he's going to swing into the body to make sure he gets deleted it's the draw mm -hmm. Sees, I see the Lonke in hand, obviously. Minus. Oh, this is. Oh, he's this giving is the minus. Oh, he's giving the minus one K so he can do the flame hell scythe. Exactly, and I think That's what he's beautiful. gonna have to do after that is go Magna Anjo Woman Ace. 
because sorry, Andrew will mount ace because that allows him to. Well, on play, you can delete a six thousand DP or less Digimon by giving it minus six thousand. Yeah. Uh, no, but no, he's just gonna go for a regular Magna Andromon. Oh yeah, she is seven K, huh? She's too yeah, she's too buff. I lied. Too buff. The too the big. Magna Andromon is six is six K, so that's why that works. I was confused of which Digimon. Uh, so here we're gonna have Protoform, go to the top, add back a room on X. That's really good. <laughs> oh my god, I, <laughs> that that's probably also a reason why he's playing four copies of Protoform instead of the original X antibody. Is he's like, oh, this one of copy of Guru on X? Make that four copies of Guru on X every time I have a uh, Protoform. <laughs> that's, I, that's true. Super I, cool. I get it. I get it now. I get it. That's Getting. Really I forget sick. what Protoform does, and it's the recovery from it afterwards. It has like so eighteen insane. effects. <laughs> It's yeah. like 18 effects on the card. It's actually a pretty stupid zero cost option card. And against a security control player, that's exactly what you want is to be able to keep your resources. Oh, for sure. But again, all the more reason for Peter not to uh, check security ever because that ex antibody protoform is in, in there and he just gets it back. He was never planning on attacking security ever. Like, uh, like unless it's a Salomon uh, purposeful deletion, I doubt it. I doubt he he would ever attack yep. security. He does have, yeah. The Zulongmon is a possibility. It uh, it is attack. an ace Digimon, and we do have a level five. You have a level protoform five. into Dober. Gonna get that on play and get the gain of retaliation. I just want to trash some more cards. Uh, and it's a little bit cheaper than going for uh, Gururumon next to anybody. We gain two memory off of trashing that card, drawing more cards off of Sunomon. Is it go time to go into another Leviamon X? Might got be. Cerberus for the full three. We get to again draw, again trash. This deck is just so good at digging through its entire deck and seeing all of its pieces. Imagine how much better it would be at doing that if it had access to all the Gururumon shenanigans too. Oh, gosh. But still, seeing this much dig through your deck is really awesome to see for the consistency of this deck. And why I think a lot of the yep. pro players that we saw in today's World Finals gravitated towards purple. It's just the most consistent color right now. You see the most cards, you touch the most cards, and if you want your game plan to actually happen every single game, no matter what that game plan is, purple seems really good at doing that. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. uh-oh. I could hear the commentators in the Japanese stream freaking out at the talking, yeah, going, don't yeah, attack, don't yeah. attack, don't attack! It might be no, bad, it might be bad. <laughs> A Zulong will happen. You gotta the problem is that, that we don't have first. any... Yeah, exactly. But because all the Leviamons are so beefy with their Digivolution costs, it's really yeah. hard to do this with, like, like efficient memory. Like, like, that's the one bad thing about Leviamon is they're so expensive. If you're, if you're not playing them for free off of other cards, it's really difficult. Uh, but there we see the, Div the Digivolution to get rid of the Magna Andromon. Uh, so we're just doing a count here that he had three Digimon in play to Pete's five, mm -hmm. which allows him to activate the effect to get rid of Magnandromon. He gained two memory off of a Digimon being deleted because of the Gizamon saying lose a memory, and then I think one of the Inheritables saying lose a memory, uh, yeah. Dragomon or something. Now, is Leviah X three checks? Three checks, right? Yeah, security attack plus two. And <laughs> he has the Cerberus, deals right? damage. Uh, I believe that one is a Cerberus mon actually. It's not Drago, is it? I think it's a Cerberus. Uh, no, no, that's... Uh, no, it's Drago. You're right. Yeah, oh that, that is Drago. And big 15 DP Death X Mon. Security? The that's only wild. Digimon. <laughs> the only Digimon that, in Pete's deck that is bigger than a Leviathan wow. X. Wow. <laughs> the only that one. That was wild. Blew but, it up. It is worth noting that this other Leviathan has security attack plus one and can attack twice by deleting another one of your Digimon. And this yes. Gizamon is not able to attack. But that has to happen on swing. So Take needs to make a call right now. Is there a bad card in that security or is there not a bad card in that security? Going Leviathan X we're just gonna evolve. passing. Evolve for four, get rid of some Tamers. Get rid of the one that gains the... memory during Pete's yep. turn. I gotta say, that card is beautiful. Oh, alternate art Levi X? Oh yeah, it looks yeah. really good. Very menacing. Nice. Mm -hmm. I, and the, the, word the colors use. are just, that. it makes me happy. That's the thing with Digimon cards. Like, looking at it makes me happy. I could be mm. losing. As long as I'm looking at my pretty cards, I'm happy. 
Imagine how happy you would be if that pretty card was made of metal and a first place trophy from the world finals uh, for Digimon. Uh, someday, my uh, friend, you and I will be in Japan doing this. And we will steal those cards from Bandai. Yes, I love the way you're thinking. Let's plan a robbery right now. <laughs> Live We're on heisting. air for everyone. <laughs> We're doing a heist, boys. So this was an interesting play from Pete. Because I believe he had the Loke in hand, which, correct me if I'm wrong, if you have less than three, would have gotten rid of Leviathan X. If, 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 if I'm incorrect about... No, no, no. Oh, but he didn't. He only had two. He only had two security. He didn't have three. Right, That's I believe less there. than three is minus DP, if I'm not mistaken. So it, it wouldn't have been enough. Uh, yeah, you I should forget. 15, uh, thir 13? 13K? It's so hard to look up Loke because I have no idea how you spell that card. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to... L-O something. It's like a apostrophe H or something. I don't even know. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go with he had no way to remove the Leviathan X is the reason why he made right. this play. But now Leviathan X can just go, okay, swing three checks. Blow up Goblimon, unsuspend, don't be a scary card. Take's like, let me see him. And then Pete's like, anything I can, can do? Nope, memory, cool. That's it. Yeah, but that's two. it. Another oh, ace. Imagine. And a Venus Mon, no, there we go. It. You got it. Leviathan X swings again. <laughs> wow. Having two of the Magna Angemons in that security was not good. Oh, <laughs> he's so excited that cards fell. <laughs> He's like, oh, my only Digimon in play did not get deleted or gotten rid of when I attacked a security control player? Can't be me. Can't be me. Um, the fear that that Take is feeling, that, like, anxiety, I know it, it went through his well. entire, and went I through his entire like spirit. I don't like it. What are you it. talking about? You love it. You love playing this game. Don't lie. Don't lie to the people at home, so to much. me, and to you in the same sentence. <laughs> But you can see he's changing his playstyle and, and adjusting to it, which is why these players are the top players in the world right now, because they're able to do so in front of, you know, thousands of people and keep their composure with people watch Hawkeye watching them like that close and keep your composure and figure out your moves the way you need to do it right then and there. Mm -hmm. Like any small mm -hmm. wrong move, They'll take advantage. Your opponent will take advantage of it. That's awesome to see. Yeah, no, I was correct. Loke does work three or fewer to put one of your opponent's Digimon face down on the top of their security stack. I wonder why he didn't do that to the yeah, Leviathan X, and instead he went for the Magna Angemon play. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't have Loke, and I'm just like misreading what what he had in hand. Maybe it was like a Flame Hellsight or he something, and two. I'm just blind. No, no, you're right though. He he definitely had to. He had two Flame Hellsight sites and two Lokes. Um, I saw it in the very back far right, but the th there was no other bodies on the field, right? And he it was, was just Leviathan X and a Digimon in the in the raising, and he had two he security. So I'm like two memory, or was he set at three memory? He was set at two. He was set at two. I guess Lonke is. I don't eight, know. So I would have given him six memory, and the other guy still had a body in the back. So maybe that's what he was worried about: was having two bodies that he could digivolve again. I'm not sure. Yeah, but like he already had game on board, right? Like, it like, like, like to me, it's like maybe recover one or definitely get rid of board. So my guess is Pete yeah. didn't have that option, and and I, and and I just misread his hand. Either way, we're going on to game three right now. These players have game five three. minutes <laughs> to play this game and then go into time. But they can't uh, go I, to a tie, right? Like, yeah, there won't be a tie for this. Tie. But I forget what the sudden death rules are for Digimon. It might be next. Uh, change in security it could also be next person to deal damage in which case that'd be very bad for pete's deck that famously doesn't like to attack but take's start here is really rough to see uh mm -hmm. actually too i think it, it might actually be number of security cards i'm not sure how they're gonna do it we're gonna see if that happens it'll it'll come up if it does i'm not judge steven today i'm commentator steven today <laughs> Very good, very good. Oh, oh wow, look at that. The, uh, what is that? The BT-8 Kari Kamiya coming down. A memory setter that lets you gain an extra memory whenever I believe you add a card to your security. Super nice, really nice that alternate is art. A beautiful altar. I don't think I've seen that one. I think it came out as a promotion in one of the new starter decks in what? Japan. Really? No, 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 that's our card. I don't know where, I, 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 I don't know where you get that one. I don't know where mm -hmm. you get one, but it's gorgeous and I love it. BT-8. Uh, we're going to swing the Salamon. Oh, yep, exactly. 
the, the one time Pete attacks is, is he knows we're going to time soon. He needs to be at less security than me. <laughs> yeah. wow. I will make sure he's at less Changing security than I am. his gameplay, for sure. He's he's laying the so game. He has security to, he's like, dang. It's definitely I think the that's the first thing. And then if it's a tie, you go to the next change. So, like, if, if, if by the time uh, end of overtime happens, if there's no clear winner, like, more yeah. security or whatever... We go to next uh, change in, change in security wins. I could be wrong though, but we'll see how they do it. We'll see. Uh, draw, draw, discard. If we see the, do we see the Guru on X in his hand? I don't see it. His hand's blocking. All I see is that beautiful, beautiful sleeve. Yep, it's a good sleeve. You know, I, oh, X it's, anybody protoform, and there it is. Maybe um, good to note that. They are wearing those jackets, both of them are, and those jackets are warm. They are very insulated, so I hope it's a colder arena that they're in, otherwise they're probably cooking under all those lights. And that sometimes and it is springtime. Uh, affects your, your, your uh, thinking power too. It, I'm pretty sure it's also becoming springtime in Japan, so it's probably also like very humid and kind of warmer outside too. So it like, yeah, probably, probably doesn't add up to the most enjoyable experience. Oh, he gets to play out his Salmon, but then he gets to play out the Goblimon. Mm -hmm. No Levi X or anything to Digivolve into? <laughs> no, nothing crazy like that. Uh, crazy but we could yet. see like... Now, this is where having the original X antibody would be really cool because then you could attack into the Salamon and then evolve into the Vimon X that way and delete both the Tamer and the Digimon. Uh, but nope. We just, we're, we're just going to evolve into the Leviamon straight up. Gain get rid the of both. Uh, gain the memory because I believe we gave some Digimon Swing when deleted, checks. lose a memory. We're going to take two, uh, check two damage, draw and trash off of the Garurumon Inheritable. Mm hmm. Check. First check Kari is a regular happens. purple Kari, and then a Wyvern's Ooh, Breath, which will just Wyvern's straight up delete breath. that and Leviathan. Keeps the turn. But Guru this X. will also activate Protoform. Yep. And now Taki and now has, has more to security swing than Pete. Into that body. Or sorry, into the security to the Protoform. What? What cruel irony do you think will exist if by the end of this game, the reason why Take wins is because he has more security than Pete does? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like what what cruel twist of fate. Uh, yeah. But here we have the on play of Andrew Wilmot Ace turn. to delete the Goblimon, get the security card back, which will then trigger wow. the Kari, rest the Kari to get the memory back, and then activate this card, which will let you add Plays or play Salomon. Salomon. Yep, and then we put this card right on top. So now we get the extra attackers we need to deal two damage on the next turn. I think they're asking, hey, Pete, how did you do that? <laughs> oh, Can you oh, do oh. it a little slower for us so it makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So Wait. for everyone that's wondering, Revelation of Light, play the level three. Because we have a Kari in play, it now goes back on top. We're still yeah. at that four number. Next turn, Pete can attack twice and bring Take down to three. They've already begun time. It was still Pete's turn when all this was happening. So I believe he will be turn zero. Then it'll be turn one for Take, turn two yeah. for Pete, and then turn three for Take. If by the end of those three turns, it's even in security, they'll go to whatever the tiebreaker rules are. If one person has more security than the other, I believe they're going to uh, be the victor. Okay. So never mind, I lied. I believe Take's turn zero based on those hand gestures. Then it'll go Pete, then it'll go Take, then it'll go Pete again. Yeah, and they're yeah. just explaining all the time rules. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, continue okay. playing. So it wasn't, it wasn't uh, Pete tell us how that happened, but it was a, oh, and we are now in time. It was probably like a combination of, hang on, what's happening? Hang on, it's time. Hang on, what's happening? You know, like a whole bunch of stuff yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. So now the question is, Take has one attack turn, basically, that he has to end on with being more security. Is right. I think the only thing going through his head. And Pete is like, it's time to turn into an aggro deck, y'all. Let's just yep. punch, we'll punch, punch, and not think at all. And keep recovering all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we know that the first security card is protoform, so we can actually swing with the central one and know that it doesn't get deleted, which is pretty cool. Right. And or do we want to delete it on our own terms? Oh, but if we can let go, 
Oh, if we can like if we can guarantee this Andromon lives and then evolve into Venusmon, it's just over. Because the right. only attack turn that Take gets, he basically doesn't get an attack turn. Yeah. Uh, but we right. currently do not have Venusmon in hand, so that option is not available. Real swing. To us. Takes the protoform back in hand. Shadow. Oh, but Shadow Seraphi is huge. That's big. You have to swing, and then it'll get, just get de digivolved. Right. But also, there's currently no way for Take to evolve into anything because I don't think he has any way to force Pete to play. He has no Leviathan X and Trash. He would just straight up have to go Protoform, evolve for six, or sorry, for five into Leviathan X after Protoform's gain of memory. And yep. even if he deletes stuff, he'll pass turn, and then Pete will, I think, still have at least one Digimon in play that he will be able to attack with for game. Or was They're just going the over the, the rules of time. Here. I'm sorry, are they counting the cards in their deck? Oh, yeah, number of cards in deck. If you have, uh, I think, more, you win. What? Yeah, so, okay, so that was the last turn of the game. They're both at four security. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. And then if he has, he has more. more, he wins. By an extra five, I think. By like 10. <laughs> was it 10? Uh, like, I don't, I didn't, wasn't counting, but it's a lot. And Pete was like, I win. <laughs> he was like unclear about that. Okay, so for those that are unclear of what just happened, the what? time rules for this game were, if after the uh, two turns, they each got one turn each, uh -huh. there's a tie in security, you go to number of cards in deck. If you have more cards in your deck than your opponent, you win. Okay, what? so because they were tied on security, because they had equal number of security, that is why that happened. And that is why Pete did not attack that second time with the Angelman Ace. He just didn't have to. He just evolved into Seraphimon and passed. I was about to say, did they know that? <laughs> yes, they. it was I explained to like, them that they... Um, I feel like I was like, I would not be digivolving if that was the case. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, well, I would have been attacking because I would have been like, well, um, if I don't attack, all you have to do is attack with that thing and I lose. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, they were told that. So they were told, you get one turn, you get one turn. After that, we'll do all these things. Uh, and then yeah. Pete was like, kinda, okay, cool, I'm cool like with that. They stopped Take mid-turn, right? No? Or did no, 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 it was passing it? over. It was passing over because he played yeah. the Revelation of Light. That is yeah. when time was called. And they're like, whose turn is gotcha. it? And they're, and, and they're like, uh, technically it's no one's turn. But because in Digimon, there's no grace period between like a turn ending and a turn starting. Uh, they're just like, okay, it's Take's turn. Your turn one. This is the only turn you have to attack. Oh, you have no Digimon in play? You can't attack. So now it's your turn. Wow. That's what's, that, that's what's tough about this. And that's why security control is such a powerful deck, especially when you have like time built into it you know you yes. have a really long game one and if you end up winning because your deck is super consistent game two yeah. never finishes and so you win outright or if you are lucky enough to finish out a lot of the time rules have to do with having number of security cards or even number of cards in deck slash hand and security control is really good at having a lot of all those things wow that was wild i've never seen uh, and I, count for the win uh, it it, it hey, happens in one do. piece it, it it happens in one piece a lot as well um okay. and uh i believe in one piece it's also the first thing you look at besides uh number of cards in life so really cool to see uh pete was the victor of that game i don't know if we have the information as to who won the other match uh between frozen and william but i want to give a huge con 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 congratulations to take that was not an easy matchup for you bro no that's a really tough matchup and you were able to steal a super awesome win in game two and you played like an absolute superhero Great job. Uh, you deserve to represent the great nation of Japan in this game. And uh, can't wait to see you again. Pete, you're also a rock star. Good luck into the final round. Can't wait to see you play. I'm so excited for this final round. It's going to be another Leviathan X matchup, but it's going to be completely yeah. different because the, both of these other decks have either zero or very low copies of Cerberusmon X, which actually I think overall hurts them than helps them but they have a lot of copies of a card called biting crush and so i dare pete to activate a copy of flame yes. health Scythe, staring one of those down i dare him to do it yeah that one will be that's going to change the way he plays he has to change the way he plays because it's a completely different one because 
the mirror they had a similar um so the mirror of that one what's up guys uh we're back now you get to see our faces for a little bit um but the mirror that we did not get to see their deck list is nothing like Take. so we're gonna have to see how pete adjusts to this playstyle. um i don't think like you were saying steven security control players don't really adjust to the play style of the people that they're playing with they're playing their game and making sure that you know the other person doesn't get to play their game but again like what you were saying the bite the bite coming down on the delay can't do your your uh flame health size shenanigans yeah and i think one thing too that i really want to keep zeroed in once we find out who pete's opponent is going to be in the finals is are they going to be able to like tow that balance of being aggressive enough to where we force security control to use up the resources they have to just stay alive versus control my board slash how do i insulate myself against all the potential removal that my opponent does have all these questions and more will be answered when we come back for the finals of the digimon world finals at the bandai card game fest 23 24 in japan be back soon see you guys soon
Welcome back, everybody. We have our official final matchup for you. We have, as you just saw, Pete from North America playing Security Control and Frozen from Germany playing, yet again, Leviathan X Antibody. But as Yoshi and I have been saying, Frozen is playing this deck a little bit differently. Yoshi, what are, what are some of those differences our players can expect or our viewers can expect? Well, he's not running the protoform. He's running the normal X anti Antibody, which is what I was expecting most decks would be playing. Uh, so he's kind of running more of a standard what you would see uh, Leviathan decks uh, playing. But I think it's more so the confidence that he has uh, coming into this game. He essentially walked in. We were talking about this during the break. He walked in and said, I've beaten all three of these guys. I'm not worried even a, like, even a little bit. Uh, so I think that's part of the mental like fortitude that you have to go into these games with. Um, so I'm expecting to see kind of a stare down, you know what I mean? <laughs> but at the same time, he, Pete now has had a chance to see how the deck plays out and will have had time to adjust to this. I'm sure he's played against a bunch of Leviathan decks. And if there's one thing that fuels a card game player more than being the quote unquote undefeated player in a tournament it's being the guy who's on a salty run back and wants <laughs> revenge after losing in swiss and if this is the cinderella story of pete playing security control to get his revenge against frozen in the finals mm. that's a pretty good storybook ending i would read yep yep this is that that uh, underdog story are we gonna see that story tonight Yes, security the control, question. the underdog of the Digimon card game. <laughs> I'm sure everybody will have nothing to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what, though? I, here's the thing. As much as people are like, oh, security control, I, I am one of those people, right? I am literally the one who talks about that the most. It is the underdog, right? Because even at finals, uh, the, the Bondi Card Fest, Anubis took it. Anubis won. But here, the underdog came up. The underdog is in the finals. So it is technically still the underdog. And purple, you can see purple, there's so many purple decks. It has like, we had three Leviathans in top four. And Sekon is the only Sekon there. So it is the underdog. Whether or not you or me and chat want to, <laughs> want to admit it, it is the underdog. 
Again, I cannot stress this enough. There were literal, thunderous, earthquake-creating cheers in North American finals every time Pete <laughs> looked at a security card. So if we can get even a fraction of that same amount of in-person energy that we get from the people watching at home, that would be amazing. It doesn't really matter who it's for. It doesn't really matter what deck it's for. Both these players deserve to be here, and I cannot wait to see who's going to actually take it down, whether it's the um, confident Swiss champ or the underdog of the top four being the only person playing a non Leviathan strategy. Oh, I got chills hearing you say that, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Look, look, when you look for the people that cannot see you right now, I have a notepad that was all written down, cue cards, whole big thing. You know, it's it's no big deal. It's it, it's all prep work. Not uh, nothing nothing is given to me. I have an amazing production <laughs> staff behind me. <laughs> Shout out to Darius. <laughs> We're, we're getting close we're getting close they're talking what are they talking about i want to know i need to uh, i think they're going over similar stuff that we're talking about like oh we just right. saw this matchup but it'll play differently because of this this and this uh frozen yeah. has already beaten pete today uh he yeah. might just Which, do it again <laughs> we'll see we don't know if he won you know 2-1 or if it was 1-1 oh. one, one and or like it was a 2-0 right we don't mm -hmm, know how mm -hmm. close of a of a game it was um, I'm trying to pull up which one was his uh, deck list here, but anyhow, it's the Utku deck list. It's it, it's it's the one with Guillemon in it. Um, the Guillemon from I believe EX three, no EX four, no. What what set did that Guillemon come out of? The, oh, Gilman, the red Gilman. purple one that gains rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. red purple Guillemon. Okay, um, okay, I like that. That, that Guillemon is going to serve a big, big role in this matchup, I imagine, because if Frozen plays the uh, aggressive game plan, I'm predicting that he plays. It'll be a super, super powerful card. It is EX4, uh, and, it, and, it, and it's if you have 20 more cards in both players' trashes total, it gains rush on play. That is a super powerful card, specifically in this matchup, because it's really easy to get a security control player down to zero. Right. It's really hard to get that last swing in. And as we saw in that first game, or all the games with Pete, uh, if you don't actually, you know, beat him, he's just going to gain all that security back, or he's going to delete your entire yeah, yeah. board or get rid of your entire board and make it really hard for you to attack again and get even more turns of recovery. And that is the play pattern he's going for. You hit me, I stop you. You hit me, I stop you. Oh, you can't do anything? Cool, I'm going to build up. Oh, you can't yeah. do anything? Cool, I'm going to build up. Oh, you can't do anything? Cool, I'm never going to lose to you now ever again. Have fun decking out. <laughs> that is what's that. That is literally security control. It is it is inevitability the deck. I imagine they're going over like because I, I believe they're looking at the individual players' deck list. They're going over every single card and they're like, I think this will be useful. I think this will be useful. Yeah. Um, Bar, you know, it's funny, I just had a whole conversation to myself because I was muted. Uh, this is the pro <laughs> commentator here. <laughs> you were so respectful of, you know, my spiel oh. that you're like, I don't want to I, I don't want to have my snickers at how funny Steven is talking so passionately about <laughs> about shiny cardboard uh, distract him. So I'm going to mute myself oh and then I'm going to come gosh. in with my awesome tidbits. What was that conversation that you well, had it yourself? Was, let, the let thing is, I was looking at his deck list again, and I'm noticing that he does actually run three of the protoform and just one of the normal X antibody. So he is doing a similar game plan that uh, Take had, which was to be able to take back the, the Guru X resource. Right? I, I believe you're looking at uh, Segetsu's deck. Uh, oh, who's also playing the Biomon, but a different player. You want the uh, uh, the Utku one, the one that we have on file here. Utku. Oh, so they're both playing the Gilamon. Which is good for both oh, of them. They're pretty smart. Right. That's a really so good card. This is all just three normal X antibody. Oh, the Waru Sijramon. Yeah, two, that Sijramon's really cool. The Rare Mon as well. Yeah, you're right. This is the one with the Octomon. That's right. But four Leviathan yeah. in this one, and four Biting Crush. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm telling you, Frozen was like, I want to play Leviathan and chew Bubblegum. Oops, I'm all out of Bubblegum. So let me yep. just play some Leviathans today. Oh my uh, goodness. But yeah, some really cool notable differences in this deck are going to be that Waru's Yudramon, that Giyumon, and the Octomon that I mentioned. That card, being able to give your opponent a token that is a terrible card, <laughs> will be very, very <laughs> funny. Because it, it basically says, oh, security control. You're going to choose to pass your turn and not play any, any Digimon or have any cards in your trash. Cool. I'm going to make you have more resources than me anyway. And you're going to 
lose out even more because of it. So it's a really interesting card for people that try to play around what Leviathan is doing. That's right. All right, so let's see here. We're, uh, did we see the dice roll? I missed the dice roll. Oh, here we go. We're doing it right now. For, is it frozen on the left? I'm... Yeah, yes, Frozen's on the on left, the and left. then Pete is on the right. Uh, and Pete right. wins Pete's once again. First. He's only going first today. The thing you never want to do That's is security right. control. But hey, it's fine. You have time. Or do you? Wait, is there is there going to time on this? Uh, the finals might be untimed, but uh, it doesn't mean that they won't try to play in a very timely manner. Uh, uh, right, until right. we see a clock, I can't say for sure. I'm not running the event. But we'll find You're out. You're not? Uh, I thought you... I mean... This is your event. I tried to make some calls. Um, <laughs> turns out, A, I don't speak Japanese, so no one would listen to me. And B, all, all my ideas, they said, were too radical. So Too um, radical. So, yeah. Steven, uh, the radicalest players, man I've ever met. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if, there's one, if there's one way people describe me, it's outside it's the box, if you know outside. what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> all right. Um, here we so go. Players, we get started. Yeah, both players did not mulligan. Frozen on the left, Pete on the right. Pete's going first. Uh, they're just making sure that their security is being made up correct. That was your first card. That was your last card. Last card's the first card. First card's the last card. That makes sense, right, everyone? Yep, yep, yep. It gets confusing after, you know, the first 20,000 times you do it. Yeah, he has it close towards him, whereas they want it to be first securities away from him. Yeah. Uh, they're saying it has to be the first card. Yeah, he just got twenty. He's like, they're like, let me flip it horizontally, and he's like, now it's a different picture, and I, and he's like, no, 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 it's still the same picture. I promise, it just looks a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. happens. But happens to me all the time know, in like, Photoshop. For me, I don't play with my deck up like vertical like that. I play with it diagonal because the way that sure. I draw. So if they force me to play like that, I will forget every time because I'm so used mm -hmm. to a certain type. You know, and who knows if you play, they might be like, hey, hey, no sideways shenanigans. You just digivolve <laughs> upwards. It's literally meant to do it upwards because we put the inherited on the bottom, Steven. <clears throat> That's what they would say. Not me, obviously. I would never say that. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I thought you said you weren't going to bring this up today. <laughs> <laughs> there was never any, any guarantee of that, brother. Never. I okay, I love the hands these two players kept. Or did yeah. they mulligan? I'm gonna go with they didn't mulligan because these hands are so much funnier if they kept them. He's like double trading and a rare mon. That's good enough. Uh, uh, Pete's like, oh, recovery plus Akari. That's good enough. Let's do it. <laughs> it's yep. so funny watching people play Digimon in such a different way because security controls thrown into the mix. Yeah, I mean, they're playing out the rare mon. If you're going second, is not a bad move. Yeah. Yeah, you know, especially if your opponent to... has to like Kari, probably, right? <laughs> yeah, the most common play for security control is play a Kari or pass, both of which give three memory. Rarmon costs four. It's yep. the best turn one play in the deck, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> or you could even start it off with the training and see if you get a rookie. Oh, I love the way you think. That I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Six card magic into seven and eight card magic plus a rare mon yeah, to pass right. the turn. Oh, oh, that's a pretty good first turn. Or even just, you know, two two trainings at once. You go training, get the rookie, Digivolve in the back, training again, put him the one. All right, here we go. First here game, we go. digital gate open. Pete starts us off, Upamon Hatch, and the hard play of the Magna <laughs> Andromon. I forgot he had that card in his hand, and I forgot Pete is built different than I am. That is a beautiful first turn play. Passing seven over to Frozen. Frozen's like, okay, uh, Rarmon still looks pretty good, I guess. Listen... It's the funniest thing because if he had a rookie, this would have been like, oh yeah, seven memory. Let me just go up my line for a little bit here. But mm -hmm. <laughs> ooh, ooh, <laughs> that's that's a that's rough a training. fighting crush. That's a rough training though. That's Has to put the X anybody at the bottom. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Octomon is on play. <laughs> Octomon is on play. If if there are four or more total Digimon, play one <laughs> Fujitsu Mon token. Suspended yep. to your uh, to opponent's battle area. That's so funny. Is it on play or on play and when did you evolving? Exactly, it's both. both. Oh, we like both. Ooh, Ooh, we get the Gabumon, the, the cool Gabumon. holiday event one. I I own one of those. It's a really cool card you got for doing the starter deck themed holiday event uh, during I, winter. Really cool. I missed that. I was not in town for that. I was very sad about that. 
It's okay, That's I won so for cute. you. And I played Beelzemon, so you'd love that about that. Oh, look at that. It's the most complete starter deck at that time, for sure. Yeah, I saw someone trying to make Ragnarok Mon a dream, but it's whatever. Uh, this game, <laughs> <laughs> I think we could see the rare Mon, but because Magna Edgemon's in play, letting him, letting him just keep that and go, here's a Venus Mon doesn't feel that great. No, yeah, uh, Biting yeah. Crush. Yep, Biting, Biting, Biting Crush. crush. Just, just get rid of Magna Whoa. Edgemon. Never <laughs> let them keep a level 5 in play is a good like, rule of thumb whenever you're playing against uh, security control. Let me just take this memory marker with me, though. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just going to gonna ensnare your Magna Andromon, and then on the way out, I'm going to ensnare this, uh, this memory, memory marker. marker. Ooh, Ooh, there we see the one of Pillowmon uh, oh, that he plays to kind of play around people playing cards by effects. Pretty neat. And interesting that he digivolved in the back. He must have really needed to draw. I think he just drew for this turn. Okay. Hard play, Shadow Seraphimon. That is a bold move, and I'm here for I it. I mean, that's a great move. No security checks, no willy-nilly security checks with anybody unless you're a level 3. And if you delete it, you just get to delete a body on board, so can't push out. Or should so you have out. six security, yeah. Like, yeah. That, like, like that line of text that says 4,000 for every security card you have is... It's a pretty scary line of text. And I think on deletion you recover, right? So it's like seven? Uh yeah. I think do you recover if you have less? I forget. No, I'm that's um I'm thinking of a different card. Let's look. I'm Shadow Seraphi. On deletion yeah, it recovery. Just one? Recovers. Yep, just, and then one just for a each straight recover. Card in your security stack. Yep. Gain the memory. <laughs> because he needed more memory. Two into the Garuru. I said that weird. Garuru. <laughs> Garuru. Garuru. Um, I love that art. Gosh. Is it? Oh, it's Tonami Kanji. Of course. Of course. It's my favorite <laughs> artist. Your fate. You know? Gosh, where do we go from here? Like, we have another copy yeah. of Biting Crush, but like, if we get rid of the Shadow... Oh, there might have been... um a world where we just stay in raising and biting crush again but are we only allowed to have one biting crush in play no we can have as many as we want yeah as many as you want there's, there's nothing there's but nothing if you that. don't have enough leviamons in the trash then you just don't play it they just don't do anything afterwards either, yeah. yeah and it has to be specifically Le leviamon by the way it can't be leviamon right, no x. x that's worth noting which is why we play four copies of the regular leviamon and not three copies of uh it in uh, Frozen's yeah. deck because he wants to trash that as early as possible. And right now he's he's only trashed two Leviathan X's. <laughs> um, he's gonna swing into security and take the D Digivolve, I suppose. Let's him maybe potentially evolve again. Slash, he, I don't think he really cares if this gets deleted or not because he might just hard play uh, so a level five of his Octo. own. Yep, he could go into Octo, uh, or, he, or he, which could be cool. And then Warosidra. So then you'd play out two bodies, right? Yeah, but you could also just go Rarmon, hard play, and then evolve into War Seatramon because you have six yeah, memory right now. That's true. Oh, there's there the Octo. discard of Octomon. Yeah, I think Octomon needs to have four more Digimon total between both players, so it's not the most useful card it's right Salmon. here. D Digivolve. Uh, so it, oh, it's a D so Digivolve. It gets... So it, it, it's D Digivolve before and the security battle checks. happens. Yeah, you're. Oh, exactly. My gosh. Again, Shadow Seraphi is a very, very dangerous card. <laughs> Dude, hard playing that Shadow Seraphi is actually insane because, I mean, this deck can't do anything with it with the Digivolves, but if they could, you no longer can. You just have to besides, actually delete it. <laughs> yeah, besides like literally evolving on top of Magna Andromon, hard playing it is way better than anything else because as long as you're not trying to like uh, limit your uh, opponent's resources. Yeah. Getting around like overflow, uh, quote unquote, being like a, a downside to Shadow Seraphimon is yep. really good. Like, if this Shadow Seraphimon gets deleted, it just takes something with him. You yep. do not care. As long as you're not playing against a blue deck, right? Because then blue deck would just bounce it. Mm -hmm. But apparently, against the deck that only deletes Digimon and has to yep. and has to delete really big Digimon, uh, turns uh, out yep. Shadow Seraphimon's a pretty good card. Yep. As long as they haven't dealt damage to you yet. True, exactly right. I think that's why he Magna Anjid first and then did the Shadow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To set up that potential play of if you don't answer my Magna, I'll just evolve into this for, for four, choke you to one, and be like, now you gotta deal with this guy and have no memory. Good luck. Yeah. 
or I'll hard play it. Oh, he is setting up. Look at that all of that so in the backwards. <laughs> You've got to add Guillaume on here, right? Like getting that into rotation is so huge for your game plan. True. But I don't think, yeah, we have the uh, the other holiday event started at Gabu. So we're just mm -hmm. going to take Guru Room on here. Get a Guru. potentially better level four that we can use to cycle through our deck. I guess the game, the thought process is like, this game is going to go long. I'm going to be able to see this <laughs> Guillaume on yeah. again. And plus he's got I want to get set up right now. So he'll True. be all right. True. All right, what do we Did we join another Salomon for turn? Or is that revelation? Oh, we're attacking. This is a board where I would start attacking because we have no reason to chaos degrade anything anytime soon. We're just going to be straight up deleting stuff. Ooh, oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Dude, this is what I'm saying, man. Every turn you do not pressure security control is a turn they get to go, cool, I'm just going to set up. Oh, turns out I can set up and delete your stuff thanks to these really powerful cards called Ace Digimon. Yep. Ace Digimon has been uh, substantial in, in Secon. Yeah, what are the odds of the deck that gets the most value out of Ace Digimon is the one deck that like never blasts Digivolves? They just hard play all the aces. <laughs> <laughs> like what deck? What deck hard plays aces this much? You know what I mean? I've never seen yeah. a deck do it this yeah. much. You're absolutely but right. But they are really cheap. They're yeah. cheap cards. And they also don't care about the overflow. They're like, sure. Whatevs. It did what it needed to do for me. Like, go ahead, use that three extra memory. Build up a bigger board. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Loke? Go ahead, go ahead. Chaos Degrade? Go ahead, go ahead. Wyvern's Breath? <laughs> I'm so glad they're 7,000 and not 6,000, because then you can just play it out for free from the Flame Hell Scythe, and that would be insane. I'm 95% I'm sure. It did Magna <laughs> Ace. Mm -hmm. Or is 8, sorry. Is... He's 8, eight. yeah. He's so a it's little over bit bigger than 6. It's, it's over, over 6. It's over. Yeah, it's over 6. It's 6 or less. 6 or less. 6 or less. But yeah, yes. yeah. I just was talking about Andrew Wimon and that. Whoa! Hard yeah. play. Oh, delete. Yeah. And then delete it. Recover So this does a couple of things. Uh, it deletes to Digimon, which is really good for Frozen to kind yes. of stymie some of this aggression that Pete is doing. But yes. it's really bad because Seraphimon gets to put Pete to seven security. Yes. But it's also kind of good because now we have a Leviamon in Trash, so Biting Crush can activate, meaning if we activate our Dragomons and stuff, we get to do really cool stuff. And you took out the Pillowmon to stop that. Exactly. Because Ooh, Pillowmon would stop negative. the person who owns it from playing stuff too. But here Dude, we have... I have a feeling that, like, <sighs> Pete was like, you think I'm going to play you slow like usual? Nah, bro. I'm going to pop you because I know you're about to play differently, and now I'm going to go in. Oh, this is so... That's dope. It, like, if it isn't back true that Pete did play Frozen in the Swiss rounds and lost, yep. he probably took a lot out of that because I personally oh. learn way more from losing a game than I do from actually winning it. Yeah, uh, and true. so I'm sure Pete was like, I'm just going to change my game plan. I yeah. know this guy's deck. It requires me to have things like Hell Scythe. If I can get a good amount of advantage, I'm just going to start swinging and not care because I don't want to yeah. give him all the time he needs to set up this major crazy cool combo with Leviathan X plus Restands plus an army of tiny Digimon and Guillemon to win the game. I'm just going to punch him before that happens. I'm surprised, I though, that, that the Venusman, Venusman did not attack. Like, why not attack? If you're if you're going to start whittling down his security, why not attack? You, because you, they can't attack next turn anyway, because they can't attack you with a security modifier, even if you go all the way up and know when Digivolving happens this turn, right? I would say it's a combination of you want to guarantee that Venusmon at least blocks this turn from wind digivolving effects. So you can't risk it uh, getting deleted by attacking into a Leviamon in security. Yeah, that's and true. also overflow. So you don't want to also overflow and end your turn and not do anything else besides evolve into Venusmon. So that's, that's why that timer was a bit more ideal probably for Oh, Pete. no, no. Um, uh, he played the TK and Kari and then passed turn. So he evolved into Venus, played the Tekken card, and passed? Is that, what, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yep. Hmm. He was at 8. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. He was at 8, and then Venus Mon for 4, and then Tekken Kari for 4, and then passed her. Something to note, though, is Venus Mon famously does Ooh. not stop on play effects. Does only stops not. when digivolving effects. So Biting Crush, after using this Octomon to play that uh, that, that uh, token, yep. will activate it. Yeah, that's right. 
so he'll get the memory back too. Uh, thanks to Overflow, yeah. And also, because that Digimon was played by Effect, he gets to now Leviathan. evolve into Leviathan X because Biting Crush played Leviathan by Effect. Leviathan X sees that, evolve wild. into again, get rid of that new Tamer that just got played. We can't attack with anything because we hard played everything, but that is a really good uh, sort of clapback that Frozen just did. Hey, you're going to turn off all my window drawing effects? Cool, 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 cool. I'm going to get rid of all the cards on your battle area. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm actually curious how important getting rid of that Tamer was because now this Leviathan X can just get straight up deleted. But I guess it needs to be specifically a card like Degrade and there's no purple source or it's a card yeah. like Wyvern's Breath, which Pete only plays one of. So maybe Frozen's like, I don't think he can get rid of this Leviathan X. So it's worth evolving into right, it immediately okay, so that way I can attack with it in the following K? turn. Yeah, and uh, Leviathan X is 14k. Ah, yep, 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 yep. It's big. Also, I believe this token has a win deleted effect to make the owner of it trash a card from hand, which yep. is just a random ability to give to a token, but it makes a lot of sense in this deck that wants to give your opponent Digimon and delete them and get value out of that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, plays out the pillow. Uh, so we're doing this because we're going to X antibody Digivolve Leviathan yep. X from the trash delete. and get a second one in play because, wow. hey, if I'm assuming my opponent can't answer one, I'm assuming they can't answer two. Uh, yeah. And this is something that I think Pete was worried about, was Frozen going for this crazy, crazy combo of playing two Leviathan Xs in a single turn. Next turn, having six checks, count them, six checks worth of attacks just by two, just from two Digimon. But six checks also mean six chances of Chaos Degrade being in security. I think Pete, I think Pete would like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, now he's just like, Kari pass. <laughs> yep, and then take the memory when you attack. Now, this is the third time Yoshi and I have seen Pete play. And how many times have we seen this exact board state? <laughs> A purple player having the craziest setup any of us have ever seen staring down Pete, who only has a little itty bitty kid, a little itty bitty, itty bitty <laughs> destined, nothing crazy. And he comes around and wins it anyway. I'm telling y'all, this deck is the deck of inevitability. Uh, uh, an inch goes a mile. So let's see if Pete can get a few extra inches this turn. If not, Frozen might just walk away with it because of how much advantage he's accrued over these super cool plays that he's been setting up over and over again for the past few turns. Yeah. Frozen was like, let's oh, I dropped this. this card. Can I not use it anymore? Is it illegal for me to pick it up again? <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, just pick up your card. Yeah, that, that's, um, <laughs> that little ledge needs to be a little bit bigger or like a deeper socket in there. Here we have the evolution of Waru Sijumon. This is a really cool card. It lets you basically say whenever a Jumon's played by effect, it gets the when, when deleted lose a memory effect. And that works for both players' turns, by the way, which is pretty funny. Whoa, oh, there goes the seventh lightning in trash. Mm-hmm. Discard to get off of the Guru Inheritable, I think. Gonna activate the Sunomon Inheritable now because you've discarded a card. Gonna draw Look at a that new hand. One. And then we draw one off of the Gabumon Inheritable, I believe. Uh, like I'm saying, Let's see, I got... need a deck like this. I mean, a, a table like this. Is that? But then the 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 table that they're playing on isn't cloth. So like your cards are just sliding around. Oh, you mean the hand handle? Yeah, it's it's made of like whatever. Like no, no, sorry. Or the 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 actual table, like the top tabletop, right? Unless it's that's made of the, 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 yeah, that's that's rubber. It's made of rubber. It's a rubber playmat, okay, okay. I think. Attacks the pillow. Mm hmm Gaining extra memory because Digimons are being deleted. Digimans. Digimon was played by an effect, so it also gains a memory off of Dragomon. Did we attack the token or did we attack security? Oh, I think we're still declaring targets, question mark? No, we've already declared our target, no, right? It has to be target. declared before. It's probably was it security? security? No, I think it was straight into the pillow. No, no, the pillow was played by... I'm confused at what's happening, but I don't think it matters. Uh, we, get, <laughs> we get a tamer here. The, I'm pretty sure he attacked security, so a card should have been checked, but whatever. Third check. Another Kari Kamiya? That was three tamers in a row. <laughs> That's wild. The army of children. The full setup now. But also, no security bombs. The best would True. be a security bomb right now, and then stop him at the one check. 
No, the best would be Loke. If he checks Loke right now, he gets rid of the Warwick Citramon and the attacking Leviah X, which would be so crazy. But it specifically needs to be the fourth card. Mm -hmm. Is Frozen like, let me not push my luck and just yeah, pass. Yeah, yeah. I love this restraint <laughs> from Frozen. I love this restraint from Frozen so much. Yeah. Oh, the Shine Ruin. Oh, it's, it's just like straight up. Hey, if you don't deal with both of these bodies and maybe even my War of Sijomon, I'm going into the Shine Gray. But is also, that even worth it right now? You don't want to, though. Like, yeah, you don't want to, huh? There's no bodies on the field for... Probably want to grab And the these Leviamons Leviam. hit for three damage each. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Let's get another Leviah. <laughs> Trash it again. I do. That sounds good to me. Biting yeah. Crush, something that comes out? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Biting Crush is a really powerful card. Like, the fact that Biting Crush can proc Leviamon X is crazy. That's a crazy yeah. interaction. Oh, and that restraint like, actually helps him not have, uh, not get more memory too, because now they both have four security. Same number. Exactly. You limit your opponent's resources. You still dealt three damage in a single turn against security control, which can I say is and awesome. And get deleted. And next turn, you just have game on board if Pete just, just says do nothing. And if Pete does do anything, he probably gives you like five plus memory. And yeah. you have a Waru Siegemon in play. Plus memory boost, plus memory boost, plus wisdom training. Like Frozen is so set up right now to the point where I don't think besides Pete doing some general Pete shenanigans, there's a way for him to come back from this. So let's see what happens. It's Pete's turn. He's at two memory. Yes. Yep. Send Makes sense. Bottom, Keep those Leviamons in the security and then trash the top. Yep. Oh, lightning. but it's a seventh lightning. That's not good either. But now yeah, he doesn't have game now. on board. Uh, he, and he potentially the, does. Uh, potentially. So if he has Giyumon and there's 20 or more cards and both players trashes, uh, uh, he could yeah. have game. Could have uh, game. If he evolves into another Leviamon. Mm -hmm. No, that wouldn't work because the most he can get rid of is three cards. So yeah, he would need one more attacker this turn, which can only be uh, Giyumon. Wait, isn't Levi X three checks? Yeah, but so yeah, but the but like, no matter what, he has four checks, right? And he only has yeah. two attacks. So those two attacks, no matter what their security modifiers are, can only get yeah. rid of all four of them. Right, and Not then you're saying after play that. the Gilmon somehow. Exactly. Yeah, the Gilmon would be the only way to get it. There's the one of a Gabu X coming on, coming down, searching for those X antibody Digimon. Being able to grab Leviamon X antibody out this is crazy, by the way. Just throwing yeah. that out there. Uh, it's awesome. Ooh, it's that's great. a thin deck. Insane. Shouldn't it's, be allowed. It's looking, it's looking thin. We know he has Gilmon down there towards the bottom. Is it in his hand? Yeah. And I'm just blind. He does have a. Uh, oh, he does uh, have it. He does have it. He's, he's he has it. So he just trashed yeah, Leviamon X that he grabbed. As the Gabu X, you have to trash a card when you grab one. Or if you take one mm -hmm. or two. It is worth noting that that There's is Frozen's X last Leviamon X anybody. And so if either one of them ends up in the security, it'll be really hard to chain seven lightnings like we saw Take doing in yep. the last match. Uh, not that I don't think Frozen is even thinking about that right now. He's thinking, how can I just win the game? <laughs> Draw. We're just gonna swing with the Waru here. Are we gonna use X antibody to evolve? We're not, Possibly. right? We're just gonna no because deal the damage, X antibody's in trash now. Uh, he attached the X antibody. Oh, oh, you mean into Leviah X? I see what yeah, Leviah X. Oh, um, but if is it Waru Cedro, uh plays a Digimon when attacking, or what is exactly? It plays a Digimon when attacking. So then he could then go it, into the Leviah X. Exactly, and he'll gain a bunch of memory off doing this. So he'll, so like he's 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 essentially maximizing his resources and his threats. Oh, he'll he play in. the pillow. He, he said, "I'll play the pillow." Oh, it doesn't matter. Leviathan yeah. still happens. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. I was yeah, because like, Leviathan evolves. He yeah, just yeah, won't yeah. be able to. Uh, I think I think Waru lets you do something else that Pillowmon stops, but uh, yeah. I forget. I think you're able to play a Digimon out. He, uh. Yeah, yeah, and then you may switch the target of this attack to that Digimon. So that's what I was missing, by the way, is he did end up attacking the pillow after he played it, uh, but he got to do that after going into Leviathan X, who now gains piercing thanks to the Waru Siegemon. That's why I was, like, so confused of, like, what is happening right now? Um, and this is where we get the powerful combination of X-Antibody, the original one, not a Loke, 
Magna Andromon, and Light minus 5,000 to everything. Yep. That, that takes out one will body. get rid of the Gabu X. And technically it makes Leviathan X weaker now. But, yeah, but not that much weaker. It's also just game right now, right? Because we just go swing, get that last security card, and then we play... Yeah, he, he has enough memory. He doesn't have a memory blocker. Nope. What is that last card, though? I think Frozen's just going to be very, very careful and make sure he's exactly seeing what we're seeing here. He doesn't have anything in security that either stops security checks um, or recovers him, so... Huh. Frozen is playing safe. Is there maybe not 20 cards in both players' trashes total? Or am I One, two, missing three, something four, here? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 13 right there. There's got to be. I'm... There's already 13 in, in just Pete's trash. Interesting. Wow. I I don't know what Frozen is thinking. I mean, he might be just thinking, I have it in the back. Let's yeah. not risk anything. Let's see what Pete's got, but... I'm a little confused as to the uh, the hesitance of going for a game. Like, what could be the card you're thinking of? Like, Holy Flame, maybe? We, he, 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 he doesn't he have knows. full information of the deck lists. Oh, he doesn't. Okay. But if it's Holy Flame, you still don't get to win next turn either way, right? Okay. I don't know. I'm a little bit confused at Frozen's hesitance. I am pretty sure Giyuman line was just win there because you just get to attack with your Leviamon, pop your boost, have 20 more cards in both players' trashes, play it, rush for game. Um, hard to say. I, I don't know. But either way, here we are now. Same exact situation, but now we have an extra Digimon that can attack. And that's our Leviathan X. So now we're extra insulated. Yes. Yeah, we're not hiding information. We've already revealed that we're playing Giyumon in our deck to our opponent. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. But hey, it doesn't really matter. Let's see what Frozen can do this turn. Whoa. Shine gets rid of that useless ruin mode. This card's garbage. Why do I even play this stupid card? <laughs> Salomon. Cool. That's a recovery ability. It is. Waru Sijiman stops on play effects, not on deletion, not on effects. deletion effects. You're right. But he doesn't have to attack it if he doesn't want to. Does not. But when digivolving, if he goes into something, then it will. And there's a Magna Angel Ace, and then we just swing for game. Yep. Boom. Game one goes to Frozen. Frozen still an undefeated player as far as we know in today's World Finals. And we saw it from that game. Setting up that double Leviathan X play in a single turn is so scary, so yeah. powerful, and just the aggression you need. When Very facing oppressive. Against deck like security control. Very oppressive. But to also combine that with the strain of going, I've dealt you three damage this turn and I get to keep both of my Leviathan Xs, I think I'm good. Let's not be greedy. <laughs> um, I've often said that Digimon is a game of tempo and not necessarily a game of, let me, how do I say this? Like, to me, Digimon is a game of, I'm going to do everything in my power to win the game before you do. <laughs> and... Sometimes that means having the assessment of if this play I'm about to make gives me the advantage or gives me the tempo that I need to win the game, yeah. let's weigh it against the cost that could be accrued by opponents having Blast Digivolves, powerful cards in their security, what they can do if I give them two memory versus one memory, for example. Yep, um, that's absolutely right. So it's right. always about doing the most. Yeah, it's always about doing the most while giving the least. All right, I want to do the most for my game plan while doing the least for yours. Uh, and sometimes that means, even though I have six damage on board, only attacking with three of that damage. Right. This is why I, I don't get punished. I just swing at everything. It says the guy who beats me every single time we're on camera and plays. <laughs> yeah. Not don't every listen. Don't time. listen to his woe is me uh -huh. Yoshi rhetoric. All right. <laughs> this man is a grinder. This man is as sweaty as they come, and he will. Stab you in the I just, I just get, I just get hot real easy. It. That's why I'm sweaty. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's the only reason. All right. What do you think Pete's mindset is here? This is like probably the third time he's lost or frozen today, and he's like, yeah. "Dang it! I thought but, I had him this time. It started off really cool, but it did. It did start off really good. But here's the thing, you know, that might be. He's like, okay, I, I see where you're at now. I see that you've changed your playstyle a little bit." Let me change my playstyle again, hopefully. And is that enough? Also, I can is what we need to see. 
Also, looking at Frozen right now, I totally hear what you're saying. This man has so much confidence. <laughs> yep. <laughs> which, which he probably deserves, man. He went undefeated at the World Finals. I can't stress enough. These are the best players in the world, and he didn't lose to a single one of them. He's in the we'll finals see. today, and he has a chance right now. One more victory of becoming the 2023 season Digimon World Champion. And Pete's demeanor is like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> Salty run back, powers act. One more time. Maybe two more times if he takes this. Also, KSD oh, Grid has there. not been showing up. Pillow and Pillow hand plus two recovery cards, it looks like. Loke yeah. and D Grade. That's actually pretty great. That's a great hand. Especially if he's going second, it's a really good hand. Also, yeah. I would say, too, if we can just draw that purple source. If we could just draw that purple source. Did, or get oh, Pete chose to go security. first. He always goes first. True. He chose to go first. He chose to go first, which I was a little interested by. But hey, giving away four versus giving away seven this time makes a lot of sense to me. Wanting to get that early recover when your opponent has the least opportunity to respond to your level five is pretty cool because then if you go Venusmon or Shadow Seraphi, they're like, oh, now I have to deal with this thing. <laughs> That's right. Training happens. Oh, again with the X antibody going to the bottom. That is unfortunate. Oh yeah, they're like, hey, yeah. put your put your hand on the thing, bro. <laughs> yeah, training is a super consistent card for every single color, but it doesn't get white. If you have a white card yeah. in your deck that you really, really want, sorry, it's not searchable off of wisdom training. Yep. <laughs> what now? He's like, you gave me too much memory. And I'm seeing the Rarmon see once the again one, yeah. in uh, Frozen's opening hand. He has two copies of that, I think, in his deck. And it's a really powerful card for setting up that trash, digging deeper into your deck, and just becoming more and more and more consistent. Uh, he has the option either to evolve into it and only give Pete one memory or just hard play it and give him two. I think because the fear of evolving into Shadow Seraphi is there, mm -hmm. hard playing it might be good because then you don't get Dedrich evolved. Yeah. There it is. Trash. And we trash the Seventh Lightning. Wow. Ooh, did we just draw Flame Hellscythe? No, we drew a copy of Revelation and Light, and we're attacking with the Magna Andromon. We need to deal damage. There is a clock, by the way, on this Grand Finals, as you guys can see, which means we have the same time rules as we did in the last round. Did he attack? Pete is aware of Oh, this. he got the red, he got the purple memory boost. Yeah, and then he played another Magna Andromon, gave him five, and went, I'm at seven security now. Your turn. Gain the memory. Uh, He's gain a memory six. at the start of your turn. Frozen's like, how can I delete both of these Digimon? Leviamon, that's how. That's how. It's the highest play cost and lowest play cost, right? Or yep, and when they're both... Uh, oh, yeah, and exactly. And, then, and that's both of these. Yep. Actually, I think it's highest level and lowest level. Uh, nice level, but yeah. Which is both, yeah. Which is both. They're both level fives, they're both the highest, and they're both the lowest. Yeah. And that five evolution cost looks a lot better when you get overflow three afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And gain two memory from deleting both. Yeah, there's so much memory in this format, it's crazy. Like through trainings, through boosts, like crazy evolution costs like six or even five on these Leviamons looks like nothing. Yeah. Is it six? No, wait, it's five, right? Leviathan X is a six evolu oh. dig dig evolution cost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, and I think even if you evolve on Leviathan, it's it's like four or something. It's 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 not even that much of a decrease. That's funny. Yeah, the whole point is like you're never actually evolving into it, and if you are, it's probably because your opponent did something pretty silly, and so you're like, okay, I guess I I guess I just get to do this now. Yeah. That hand is interesting. Not having access to, to, to Leviya X. Oh, we just discarded it, actually. Just Never mind. I was going to say, yeah. I was like, where's Leviya X? We really would love that right now. Swing. All right, here we go. We got to we gotta end the game, right? A Zulongmon? Too weak? Salomon, so. definitely too weak. He is like, my security has been awful these past two games, which can sometimes happen. Like I said, no security control player only relies on their security to win. But when you're behind, it'd be really nice if it helped for you. Security yep. is in the name oh, of my deck. Oh, here we go. 
This combo is so Leviathan. powerful. It is. Oh, yeah. At least you can... That's the only one he has. If it wasn't in security, they wouldn't be able to play it out. Mm hmm. I really love the sequencing here of Frozen using all of his um, inheritable when attacking effects before activating War Receiver Mind's ability to play so that way he can actually resolve the uh, X antibody, Leviathan, and Trash to evolve into it as he swings in and gains the piercing of three damage. So in one turn, yep. he has dealt three damage. Sorry, five damage to seven oh, security. Okay. Loke. Loke minus is 12,000 because he has more than three. And the second check is. Oh, are they confused on what happens? Oh, he said fix. Oh, the memory set should be higher. Uh, I think they forgot a memory gain off of the Waru Sijamon on deletion. It gains minus lose my memory as well as the Leviathan to gain a memory. So I believe he should gain one more. Boom, 2,000 to the now 2,000 <laughs> Leviathan X gets deleted by Salomon. Let's go, baby. The puppy power. <laughs> Dude. Imagine. Imagine that, that fight. Awesome. Everyone at home, imagine that fight. Salomon looking up at a gigantic floating crocodile with 25 rows of teeth going, oh arf. Gosh. And then that Leviathan just comes crashing to the ground. <laughs> Please, somebody draw it. Artists that are in the chat. <laughs> Please, for the love of all that is good and Digimon, please draw it. <laughs> What's the name of your, of your favorite artist for this game again? Tanami Kanji. Please, Tanami Kanji. Get on please. it. Get or, on that. or Koki. I'll take Koki doing it. Koki, please. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. Now that, what? Like, look, that was exciting. We love those plays. But now Frozen's like, okay, I expected it to get deleted. Now I'm just going to play Gazimon. Give Pete one and say, pass. Here we are. But then we just go Loke number two because we're at exactly three. Leviathan goes to the top of security. Gazimon gets straight up deleted with minus 12,000 DP. And just like that, the craziness of playing two Leviathan in one turn. We saw Frozen do that in game one. Pete was like, not this time. Not this time. I've got you this time. P -p -p Puppy power. <laughs> Did you like that reference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you get it in the chat, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Um, I know, right? For those that are wondering, Salomon is a dog. That's why it works. People don't know that. People are people are like, "What is this animal?" I'm like, "What is this animal?" It's a, it's clearly a dog. It's clearly a dog. That we, turns it has into a collar. A, it turns into a, a cat. Cat. That, that turns is, into a lady. <laughs> yes, fair. I mean, listen, Ooh. I didn't know Terrier Mon was. Uh, a dog until like last year not even last year something unfortunate ago. just happened frozen yeah. revealed the very top card of his deck while trying to fix his trash oh no it was just one card so they're just gonna, gonna put, put it, it to the bottom it's up to the judge here to decide what to do but you know in my opinion i think the fair thing would be like reveal the card or just have the judge shuffle it oh, because the importance yeah, of your deck oh, is to make sure that it maintain yeah so you probably got a warning which makes the most sense. It was a complete accident. We all saw that it was an accident. Uh, warning, judge shuffle, deck is now considered random. Who cares what, what the top guard deck is? No, neither players know. So it's fine. We're good. Yeah. We're just assessing all the really powerful cards in discard. We have two Leviathan X, one Seventh Lightning, and one Leviathan with Binding Crush in play. Uh, he's at one. Pushed him over to one too. That's rough. Oh, we've yeah. got the one other egg. Viximon, right? Uh, Viximon. Viximon. Yeah, let, I, I, I believe option. it lets you draw a card if you play an option card to cost right. or greater. Another Magna Angemon Ace comes down, recovering, taking him to four. Frozen What's has happening? the option here, potentially, given the cards he has in his hand, to like evolve up into Dragomon and then Biting Crush the board, and then I think maybe keep turn after all that math thanks to Overflow. That would be pretty cool. Yep, the Overflow. But then he wouldn't be able to actually attack is like the problem, and just giving 
you know, Pete another turn to answer yet an another Leviathan without getting like yeah. that big, big combo we've seen Frozen kind of go for in both these games doesn't feel that worth it to me because it, like a turn of setup for your deck is pretty cool. But if your opponent has an easy way to respond to it, it's like you didn't do anything for your turn. Right, exactly. He does have the memory boost, so crack that. But you're right. How does he go? Well, I guess he can digivolve into something that can play out. The yeah, but the problem is like oh, Yeah, okay. but the problem is like that the, the Leviathan he plays off of Biting Crush won't be able to attack. Right, which right. is like unfortunate. But he can go into Leviathan X here, right? If he has the no, he does X not have oh. X antibody in sources. I thought yeah. he had he had one in hand. Did he not? Uh, he did I not. He played not. it last turn. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's not there. That is the unfortunate thing about not playing Protoform is Protoform is not recyclable. Uh, it, it doesn't go to your security to go back to your hand. This X-Antibody, if it's gone, it's gone. You don't yeah, get to use true. it ever again. But the combination of Warwood Seedramon and X-Antibody is really potent uh, with Leviathan X. So Frozen's like good and the bad, right? Pros and cons of these two different cards. Right. <laughs> Warwood Seedra doing work, man. I feel like this Warwood Seedra has been... MVP for sure. MVP. It just enables so many plays. Oh, he forgot. Guys, Pillowman. He forgot. Because when he forced but him he to still... play. Still checks. It's the one. Oh, 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 that was a big misplay. The biting crush is gone and he gets a body on. Four. Oh, wow. That was this wild. is exactly what Frozen didn't want to have because, like, it was, it was kind of my point of view as well. Is like, if you force Pete to play Digimon and he plays Pillowmon, A, yeah. Biting Crush doesn't get to work. And even if you do get to Biting Crush this turn, that Leviathan at best is only triggering Overflow for you to gain extra memory for this turn. It's not actually, like, attacking or doing anything proactive with the tempo yes. of the game. So now Frozen's even more back because he has one less resource than he originally had access to in the Biting Crush. And he's like... I guess I'll just play another one. <laughs> yep. The thing is, like, if he, if he had realized it, he wouldn't have played it. Uh, he wouldn't have played it out. You know, he wouldn't have wasted the delay. But he play, he played it, <laughs> used the delay, and then nothing happened. That's rough. I think he would. I also think he would have done something like completely different. And because this Biting Crush is not discarding a Leviathan from hand, he does not get to activate the delay effect to keep it in play. So he's just yep. like, I'm going to get rid of your Magna Angemon Magna because if that becomes yeah. a Shadow Seraphi or just straight up attacks into my, oh, my Waru Seedramon, that's matter. really bad. He's just going to play the Shadow Seraphi. <laughs> Speak of the devil and he appears. <laughs> just play the Shadow I mean, Seraphi. You just play it out. Why not? Why not <laughs> indeed. Yep. Uh, and I want to add the Shadow Seraphi with, with three security can delete any Leviathan you want. Go ahead and play Leviathan all you want, Frozen. It yep. has to delete Seraphimon. <laughs> it does have to delete it. <laughs> Literally has to. It's not allowed to target anything else. We're just going to rebuild the resources it looks like from Frozen, getting the training and the uh, memory boost down, trying to get as many different cards he has in his Ooh. hand to figure something out. That's tough to lose all of those pieces. But he here's the thing. He could just keep the Drago and then swing with the Warusidra. Oh, but he can't. The Pillow. <laughs> Pillow's there. Pillow. Pillow the is pillow MVP. Is the one of Pillowmon. The one Repeat. of. Repeat. And what's tough is he made him play it out. It was gone. <laughs> and he, he had him play it out. That's unfortunate. That's the that's the bad thing about like I, I would say that's the one like if I had to give one crux to to the Leviathan strategy it's that its main drawback is your opponent has to have Digimon in play and most Digimon are really good Digimon <laughs> yeah and yeah, so if yeah, you yeah. give your opponent free ones even if you negate on play effects there's other types of effects that yeah, could yeah. get in your way. Like imagine he forced Pete to play a Shadow Seraphi right. Pete's like, yeah, yeah. cool. Thank Ooh, you. I'll take it. I appreciate you. Oh, nothing. Goodbye. I don't think there's a single card he can add except for. Can he add Guyuman? Mm, I don't. No, think no. So. He's just reordering them. He's reordering the yeah, bottom yeah. four. I'm like, 
I'm pretty sure that's not a Giyumon X antibody, and I'm 99% sure it does not say Gabumon. It says Giyumon, <laughs> but I could be reading those they G both words start incorrectly. as a G, yeah. Oh, and now that Pillowmon become is no longer suspended, so you can't even target it. Because when it first got played, you can't out, even suspended. activate. Yeah, yeah he, he he can't even activate Waru Sijimon's effect because Pillowmon stops both players from playing Digimon by effect, including yeah. the owner. So. Yup, yup, yup. <laughs> now what? Will this misplay cost him the game, though? Is what? It depends on if Pete can win the game in time. Because this game is on equal enough footing that I don't think deck out is going to happen in 13 minutes. <laughs> pretty and close. if Pete is not able to win by security in that time, one, two, uh, it's probably just tough. Seven, so eight, nine, Frozen may not nine. be able to win this game, but he might not lose. Yeah, and because right. he won game one, that'd be the he end of it. Win. Yeah. <sighs> but here's the thing. He's at that magic number. He's at three security. Did we just go into time? Is that why they're taking... Or are they just... No, no, no. No, no. Frozen's just like... He's just really concerned about what his next play should be. Right. Uh, I think they're looking at something. Oh, mm. is there a misunderstanding of how much memory Frozen should be at? Ooh. He mental training to evolve into Dragomon for a cost of one. No, sorry, for free into uh, Garurumon. Garuru, yeah. Did he play those trainings this turn? Is I think what they're asking. Oh, maybe. I don't remember. Because if he did, his turn will be over right now. If he didn't, his turn would not be over. Right. They're walking it back now. No, no, I think Do they're they just trying to like, like go through what the turn was. And they're yeah, like, yeah, how yeah, did yeah. we get here? Sorry, that's what I mean by talking it back. We're talking it back. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually don't know. Did Frozen play the training this turn? He might have, right? Because he had so much memory, he might have. Yeah, he was at nine, so he went two plus three. That puts so him to put four. It, back, it should pass. Puts him turn. back to one. Yeah, I actually think. Yeah, yeah. He he played the training this turn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just did so much. He thought a new turn happened. Pete didn't even yeah. notice either. Pete's wondering if we get a time extension for it, which uh, it sounds like they yeah. do. Yeah, they should. That was a very like, uh, pause the time, right? When they're figuring this uh, stuff It's out. hard to do that in like real time because there's only, I think, two people keeping time. Uh, but <clears throat> but the judges should have their own clocks, so they'll just do it that way. Yeah. Oh! The Viamon. On deletion. But on then deletion. Now you can delete the Warusidra. Yeah. Delete. Yep. Warusidra or the Guru here. Yep. It depends on what he's going to do next, I guess. Like, he has he Flame Hellscythe, but he doesn't have a purple source. If he had purple source, man, ooh, he'd be setting. He'd be sitting. Just past turn? Just past turn. Did he can't play the Flame Hellscythe anyways threat? to play any bodies because of his own pillow. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I, 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 I remember that being a problem in the finals of NA was the Pillowmon was turning off his own Flame Hellscythe. <laughs> but yeah. it was also turning off Anubismon, so like good with the bad, right? <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Uh, he's just trying to get the swings in. Oh, he didn't push out. Oh, there's a degrade. degrade. That's number three, boys and girls and everything in between listening at home. Make sure you keep in count. I know I am. Did we did we draw the Leviathan to discard here? We yep. did, so there we get to go. keep the Biting Crush. That's huge. That's our third Biting Crush. I believe we play a full four copies of this card right. in Frozen's deck. What next? It what may as well be called Biting here? Crush. Dot, dot exe. Oh, nice. Play out. Gets to look into security. Play out a body if is you want TK it. Doesn't see it. Is T but he gets to put it is on. T hmm? Yeah, is TK and Kari Kamiya considered Kari Kamiya? Yeah. It says Kari in Sweet. name, I think. Yeah, it says, exactly. It says, and you have a tamer in play with Kari in its name. That's so yep. cool. So many Karis. This deck should be called Kari.exe. <laughs> <laughs> Kari MVP. 
Like yeah, I really love this inclusion of Revelation of Light in uh, Pete's deck. It's essentially a four, if, uh, a four uh, play cost copy of Holy Wave mm -hmm. that also has a security effect to get rid of your opponent's uh, small Digimon and make their security Digimon weaker too. Pretty cool. Holy Wave? Holy Wave is... It's the six play cost, uh, just recover one. Recover one. Oh, okay. That's all it says. On security, oh. recover one, and then uh, on play, recover one. That's it. Gotcha, gotcha. Holy wave. But no minusing DP or anything like that. No. That's why it's like a little bit better, and it's cheaper too. Yeah. No gaining of memory because I believe uh, Pete no does Digimon, not have any Digimon yeah. in play. What to do? What to do? And if you yeah, Frozen's game plan, he gets yeah, exactly. more memory. Okay, here's the Octo. I think he's Octo. already at less, actually. Is he? Oh, yeah. Octo makes him play something. Now you can do the Biting Crush, play out the Levaya. Doesn't get rushed, though. Yes. No. No bodies to delete. Oh, has to delete the food. Whatever. The token. Uh, I don't believe he's able to delete it. Because I believe it, it can't be deleted by effect, or it could be wrong. Oh, okay. So, uh, I'm going to remind myself. It's got a funny uh, line of text. And then another seventh lightning goes to bottom. Is he going to do it or just leave? Oh, he's doing it. Make sure his uh, deck count stays pretty thick. As thick as possible, I suppose. Did he just choose not to activate Leviathan's effect? I guess. I guess you. No, oh, no. I think. He, I think Token it can't delete because no he has. Because he has. No, 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 no. It can't delete because he has more Digimon than Pete does. Oh, more Digimon. But also, I think yeah. it's level based, I'm, right? I think the the token. Yeah, yeah, but have it would delete the lowest level, and it and it and it's a level four Digimon. The token. Oh, it is a level four. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just like, wait a second. Uh, you have to activate Leviathan. What am I missing here? Oh, the requirements have not been met to activate Leviathan. Yeah, yeah. Of course. There we have Pillowmon. Now we, th this time we, we, we biting crush we before, guys. Well. Hey, yes. Frozen learned his lesson, okay? No, he goes. And this time we Levi do have X anybody. This is the bread and butter combo right here. Attack, yep. evolved to Levi X, piercing three damage. Need the memory off of the. Uh, no, it doesn't have. No, uh, because on deletion, um, lose one memory off of Warus Idramon. Yep. That's right, he doesn't run the Cerberus X, so there is no one. Minus 5,000. Kari Kamiya. gets played. There you go. There's your purple. Oh, the Chaos There's degrade. the 14 grade. Let's go. Ooh. Get that oh, one out of here. Get that one out of there. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. That's the one with the sources. The security control is insane. <laughs> And then now he I has, I believe, the Chaos Degrade in hand, right? So he can, and he has the ta uh, the Kari and the Yellow Source, so he's good. He's, he's finally unlocked his Purple Source. You are one thousand percent right, Yoshi. Yeah. He's uh, he's asking if you played that card. You don't remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He did play it last turn because he played it along the same time as the. Last and a check. swing with Guillemon? Minus, minus because, 5k, it's gone. So minus it's a, 5k. It's a, it's a blanket statement. Mm -hmm. It's a minus 5k. It's a, that's right. Oh, Frozen, shiza. Frozen is, I think, getting a little nervous, a little itchy. Yeah, yeah, he can, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. getting a little antsy and it's making him it's make gone, dude. It's incorrect getting plays, again. which again, <laughs> but it, <laughs> he's like, I, I just want to discard it from my hand. Again, this is all Frozen. He was like, I made a mistake earlier in the game and I feel like it's costing me. Pete's like, no worries. Top of your deck, trash it. Your turn, go. <laughs> Freaking security control players. <laughs> Frozen has no way to proc these seventh lightnings. No way, I think, to evolve into these Leviathan X's. And if he no evolves bites. even once or twice, he'll just gonna he's just gonna deck out. Yep. And then they're gonna go to game three. And I legitimately have zero idea what's gonna happen. But I'm pretty sure because Frozen has more ways that say draw a card in his deck, Pete will just end up winning again in time. Can he just play which would Pilamon be here? a crazy upset. Does he just play Pillowmon? What's your question? If he he could be playing Pillamon, but he's playing the Salmon because he wants the on deletion to heal. It has to be. Uh, there's no. I, I I don't think Pillamon would do anything here because there is no ways for Frozen to play Digimon by effects this turn. 
right but now. He's about to do it right now. There is plenty. Because uh, uh, Dra Drago Dragomon, oh, uh, when somebody I see plays. What you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he should be. They could happen at the same time, in which case it, it just doesn't matter, but I'll double check. Yeah. No, it happens sure because because a Digimon is played, then Dragomon gets to play a Digimon. Mm. I, I, it, it, it did not end up mattering to Pete at all. He got a free yep. recover out of the deal, and then yep. he gets and the Hellsize play again. another one. Oh my god! This is why Frozen I don't play needs. The, the, the control, because I would I would have played the wrong thing out. <laughs> Rosen needs to draw his last copy of X Anybody, but I don't think he has it. I think all X Anybody's have been accounted for, and he has no way to evolve into these Leviathan X's from trash. He's going to attack into the token and make Pete discard one card. He's going to get rid of Venus Oh, Mon. Venus. Interesting to... I feel like that. I would have kept that. <laughs> Again, It depends on what the I other cards play. are. Yeah, yeah. Like, if the cards are removal, they're better than Venus Mon. If they're not yeah, removal, yeah, yeah. it's probably a, a whatever. Frozen has no way to evolve into Levi X, which, is, which means he has no way to get more cards back into his deck. I have no idea how he gets the attacks ne 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 necessary to win this game, which means we're going to go to sudden death, or we're just going to let game three happen. I'm not sure what the judges are going to decide to do, um, but I'm really excited to see what happens. because <laughs> It's got to be game I'm, three. You've got to go to game three. Come on. I'm, I'm also very game. confident that if... But I think they have to respect time rules, right? Because I'm pretty sure if, if we go to game three and time rules are still, respect, are still respected... There's no way Pete loses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, there's zero way. He's the deck that doesn't digivolve. How yeah. would he draw more cards than Frozen Tusk? Right. There's he also no can way. recover and just have way more security. Yep. What do you do? Uh, so now we I are believe... seeing the guy who was super confident and is a champ who's clearly defeated all these other people before sweat mm -hmm. and we are seeing him really sweat and making misplays on, on, on little things misplays. yeah on top yeah. of misplays in the same turn that's what this kind of pressure can do and pete is cool as a cucumber right now he's like as far as i understand oh they also could have some time extensions by the way we forgot right, about that right. but um but Pete is like, if this game goes to time and I'm able to play game three, like as long as I as long as I can get to game three, I yeah. can win. Oh man, I my adrenaline. So I'm not gonna be able to go to sleep. It's already 11:30. My bedtime is <laughs> 10 p.m. You guys, you gotta understand, my bedtime is 10 p.m. And <laughs> I, I, my, <gasps> ooh, what's he gonna do? X antibody. Yo, we he have the it. X antibody. And then we just play. hard play Dragomon. Activate Dragomon's on play ability. Make yep. him play a Digimon, play the pillow, and then he pillow, gets pillow, the Leviathan pillow, pillow. X. Pillow? No, no pillow. No, it it evolves. It evolves. It doesn't get played. No, but but the thing is, if he plays pillow, oh, because Leviathan X will did evolve. Mm -hmm. I see. And now we get to recover off of Salomon too, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It also does de just delete the entire board, which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> now. Can he finish the game? No, that, that Leviathan X is going away. Well, we did lose our purple source, so it, d it would depend on the type of removal we have. If it's Wyvern's Breath, we're good. Yeah. If it's he just has to any remove. other card, we can't do it. Yeah, and he gets to play a, a, a body out now. Because of Dragomon. Okay, the timer has officially read zero on the stream. I think they have maybe a minute time extension, um, but we will see what they say. They're going to look at the deck thing again? Right, but then they'll go to game... But then that would mean Pete would win this game, which means the overall match would be a tie, which means I'm not sure what the third game would be. So don't draw, don't draw. So yeah, they did not get a time extension for those earlier ruling calls. This is interesting. Man. So yeah, as far as I understand, if, if we do end up going to time and, and Frozen will not be able to win through security, Pete would end up winning this game by the time rules, which means I don't know how game three would work. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So they're going to go into overtime, which means they get 10 minutes or two turns each or one turn each, as we saw earlier. 
All right, now they're allowed to play. Uh, we see Hellside, plus we see Reinforcing Memory Boost, which could be actually a really big card. Recovery. Wyvern's Breath. Oh, yes. my God. Easiest, easiest oh. Reinforcing Boost in the world. Dang, that is crazy. If this is the only turn Frozen has to attack, it is a bad turn for him. <laughs> it really is. Because uh, there's zero chance. Yeah, he will literally just deck out A, and B, he'll have less cards in deck than his opponent, C, so he'll lose after overtime, which means yeah. I actually don't know what happens here. And to my understanding, in a sudden death environment, if both players uh, end game two, and there's no winner after the match, they play out game three, and it's sudden death, meaning the first change in security, to my understanding, really? is the winner. Me meaning if you recover, you win. If you lose a security, you lose, right? Oh my so, gosh, Sekon just wins. Again, 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 I don't, I do not, I do yeah, not yeah, know yeah, what yeah, Japanese yeah, fair, the fair, judge, fair. judge staff has decided, but that is my understanding. I could be wrong. Dude, I can't even imagine the immense pressure that is going through his head right now. Because what do you do? You check, you, you lose your Leviathan X. You lose the Leviathan X, and then can you digivolve again into a Leviathan to check through? You have to check four. How do you check four? No, no, it's literally just, can I get my seven uh, lightning to make sure I don't automatically deck out? Because if they get two turns each, he uh, he automatically loses. Yeah. And if he doesn't, and it goes to They're, time, it's no, yeah. it's number of cards in deck, and he still loses. That survives. Attack again. Oh, Hellside. flame Hellside. Holy Minus six. Play out. Pillow. Can't play Digimon by effects. <laughs> Fucking look at Peter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's like, he's like, what are you going to do? <laughs> Peter, you are my hero, bro. How are you So this you game's so... rush. Oh, my. God. I am playing security control from today. Starting today. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Lewis, our, our mutual friend, is like, that's my thing. That's my thing. Oh, my gosh, dude. This. Ho, 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 ho. Okay. Swing. Check. Oh, Digimon Emperor. He just has to pass her? Yeah, I don't think he has any ways to get cards back. He's just going to pass. Yep. Pete draws. Pass he her. passes. No cards in wow. deck. He loses. Wow, wow, so wow, wow, at, wow. So wow, time wow. has been called. Both players have a victory under their belt. We have to go to game three. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. It's either it's either a world finals in sudden death, <laughs> which is crazy, oh or they just get to play a normal game. I'm not sure what they're going to decide to do here. They're it's looking into the, the rule book now. We're, we're looking rule book right now. Yo, my this is such a very is unprecedented pumping. Situation. Yo, my heart is pumping right now i the adrenaline that is going coursing through my body bruh i mean they're basically playing a different game now by the way you know? like the last the, the actual deciding match of the digimon world finals will be uh basically a different rule set than the normal version of digimon it'll be whatever rule set is being explained to everyone at home right now on the japanese broadcast i I'm trying to source out the information here for everyone to make sure that we have a very clear definition of the time rules. But yeah. it might just be sudden death, which if it is, Pete, if he draws a, reco a recovery card, just gets yep. to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to ask what the... Dang, that's crazy. That's but kind big of ups to Peter. Peter Listen. was playing his game. He was calm. He knew everything he was going to do. Yep. And he allowed his opponent to make mistakes. And he used those openings as a way for him to seize this game and get that game to victory and force what I believe is going to be a very favorable position for him. It'll be up to Frozen now to see if all those misplays actually cost him this championship. Wow. That's heavy. Just hearing those words actually spelled out is heavy. I mean, here's the thing. It's like... Frozen was cool, man. He came in with that confidence. He said, I've done it. I'm going to do it again. I'm not even worried. And now... Yeah. 
Wow, the underdog has come through. Again, don't forget, at the Nationals, Pete lost. He lost to Bryce. So again, mm -hmm. he is the underdog. I'm... Who? Second place, yeah. potentially turned champion. Frozen, being Swiss champ, potentially keeping that champion title despite potentially a mountain of misplays that I'm sure he was kicking himself for. You saw it on his face. The second he yes. made one, that emotion made him make another one. That emotion made him make another one. Happens all the time. Okay, I have the official time rules. Let's see here. What is it? The players play one more game with the first player's turn being turn one and lasting a total of six turns. Six turns. If the game has not ended in six turns, the player with more security cards than their opponent wins the game. In case they have the same number of security cards, the players keep playing. When there is a difference in the number of security cards, that's what sudden death is, the player yep. with more security cards wins. So, wow. Frozen will get to pick who goes first. They will play a total of six turns, three turns each. If after that, the person with more security cards win, and we're playing against security control folks, but guess what? Yes. Frozen has the ability to set up an attack, so it is actually anybody's game right now, given this rule set. We are playing Sudden Death Digimon. We are not playing Inevitability Digimon. Let's see what happens. Both players either have an advantage or they have a disadvantage, depending on what happens next. <gasps> <laughs> I'm nervous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. My gosh, I don't think I can sleep. I need a drink a NyQuil or something to chill me out after this. <laughs> the come down Chat, on let this us is know. gonna be wild. Everyone watching at home, Team Pete or Team Frozen, let us know. This is going to be a really intense couple of six. Let it go. Six turns. Six turns. Imagine. <laughs> oh, gosh, like, why is... Yo. We always play Digimon with timers, but why is a turn timer way more scary way than a, an actual scarier. number timer? Like, ten minutes? I'm like, cool, I have ten minutes. Six yep. turns? Mm. One, two, what three, four, I five, do? six? I'm just making sure. I, I think they're just making sure both players understand the rules of this last yeah. game that they're playing before they yep. move forward. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Could you think of a more dramatic finals? I mean, I wow. I cannot. My heart is We're basically playing Sun Death. This is crazy, dude. And and just the stark differences in, in both of the players' demeanors, right? That changes all of it. Being able to see their faces as they do this, it's... This is what we live for. This is what we live for. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so it looks like Pete has mulliganed, and he's going to start over. Uh... I don't think Frozen has chosen yet. He's cho he's choosing to keep. So I think we're going to see Pete play more aggressively like we saw him do in game two. And yep. he's also going to recover as much as possible. That's what he's hard mulliganing for. He's hard mulliganing for those recovery cards. He wants as many cards in his security as possible because if he's not able to establish enough control in these six turns, he needs to have that much resources in his security, and he just gets to steal a victory, essentially, without ever needing to do anything else. Yep. Also, I'm pretty sure the count is currently at four D grades checked in security. If there was ever a time where it was accurate to say that D grade just steals a game, <laughs> this format of Digimon could be yeah. a sudden death you, format. You kind of don't want D grade to be in security at this point. Because you could Every be self saving him. True, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. My, my, my thought was like, every attack matters. If even one attack gets one less security than it was supposed to, that could be make or break, but you're totally right. You could be giving your opponent the security card that puts them above you after yep. time is called. Wow, that's I didn't even realize that. Great that I would be okay, wild. Great Ayosh. Ho, 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 ho. And that's usually his play, is like letting his... You know, opponent have like nine security and, and they're all just Leviathan and they're, you know, the big bodies that they need. Yeah, but in this game, it won't go long enough for that stuff to matter. All that matters is number of security and attacks. We're going, we're going street rules Digimon, y'all. Yep, uh, two go in, turns. one come out. Six turns, there is no, you know, Gilmon rush. I don't think it's going to happen like that. So mm, Leviathan can trash a lot of cards. I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. We uh, will see. Both players essentially get one attack turn, by the way, is the way six turns kind of work out. Yeah. One a turn of attacking. 
but oh, he essentially go, has go. three turns of recovering. He's going right. first, first, going right into the Gilmon for one, passing the wow. uh, our security control hmm. player to one. Does he have a level three? Does not have a level There's three. There's the Magnus right Jermon. into the recover. Your turn, your move. Talk about being ahead already yep. Gumon now has to attack or whatever this Digimon is has to attack otherwise frozen just basically looks Pete in the face and goes here's your victory if he's not yep. able to deal some amount of damage this turn it's really bad okay oh, flame hell side just get rid of no it. target this is crazy this is out <laughs> this is brawler Digimon this this yes. this Digimon that we're seeing played is so it's crazy to see <laughs> By, there's the biting crush the biting crush Leviathan X though and that works as long as it's Leviathan. Oh no, it's a great demon. Do we have Andromon? Oh my God, we have we, we have Lament of Friendship. No, we have Lament of Friendship, so we can go oh, Kari, Kari. Lament of Friendship, add back yep. the Digimon. If I'm not what? mistaken, get what? back we the Magna Andromon. We see the Lament, bro. And then we just play it. it. I think so. Why not? <sighs> but I don't. Yeah, we just play it. We just we play, play it. it and pass. Recover. We have six. That's turn. This is turn what? One, two, three. This is three. One, two, three. This is turn what? five. Five already? <laughs> we are oh already God, on five. turn five. So, so Frozen's turn one. Pete's turn two. Frozen's yep. turn three. Pete's turn four. And now this is Frozen's turn five. He just has to go into so Pete the gets the very season. last turn of the game. And then make the biting. Oh, he doesn't have a body to play. He doesn't even have a level five. You're Frozen right. has no level five. If Frozen, Frozen has just no attacks. Level five. His Frozen attacking with this Octomon is essentially him conceding the game. Uh, yeah. He would have to mental training into Waru Seedramon into Leviathan X, but he uh, it no literally needs to be me mental. No, he has it in hand. He has, so he if has he draws Waru Seedramon, he can do it. Yep. Nope. Until and nope. Oh, neither nope. one. But biting, you could delete at least, or do you do go into? And the... he has Salamon. He just promotes Salamon and wins the game. That's true. Because Frozen will be at four and Pete will be at five. Yep. Wow. This is a really intense I mean, game, but you for sure cannot let that Magna Angemon stay there. If it does, he gets two attacks. Which is why I think he's going for the Biting Crush. Biting but Crush, yeah. But then it passes. It's the like if he. Yeah, but if he plays his Biting Crush, it's just over because Salomon just promotes and attacks, and that's game. Yep. Because Pete still gets his turn to attack. Wow. It's like I was saying, it depends on the hand. It depends on the way that people were playing. Frozen, I like Frozen's heads up play of going, I'm going to give Pete as little memory as possible the second I play. But we saw he chose not to mulligan. Yeah. Maybe this hand wasn't good enough. But this is a format he's not tested before. He's like, oh, I never yeah. thought I'd only have six turns to play Digimon. Yes. So he understands we made a mistake, I think. Yeah. Kari brings him down to three memory. And Frozen, he's got two Garurumons and two option cards. Yep. I don't see it. I don't see I don't what either. he does because no matter what, Pete has the attacks to just bring him down. Did you evolve in the We're going to evolve. But then, doesn't, let's see if you can grab something. We draw the Leviah X. Fighting Crush. Fighting Crush, discarding. Let's him delay. But, I mean, is it just promote and pass? Boom. Yep. Next anybody. anybody gain a memory survives can you uh, recover i think pete is no pete pete, pete already has five no no pete has five uh, oh Frozen yeah has so four. it doesn't matter it's already over yeah but i yep. think pete and has to end his he turn can't, he's, he's just like uh, it's cool man i'm just gonna do this and then i'll play it out for free recover and go to seven <laughs> and that's the game oh does he get one more chance no, it, it's over. That was turn six. Yep. What is it? Three, four, five, six. There you go. They're just going to count the security now, I think, with the judges to make sure that it is it is incorrect. It, it is correct. But we have six to four. Pete wins. <sighs> what the heck just happened? <laughs> 
Yo. The Digimon World Finals, baby. That's what just happened. World Finals. (laughs) The underdog Pete with security control wins. There's the handshake. Congratulations, Peter Frankie. Your 2023 Digimon World Champion. Our second player from North America. (laughs) Our very own. Okay, listen. I'm. I'm, I'm, I have to be partial, but I'm just saying. <laughs> the underdog won. The underdog took it, y'all. In Yo. such an unprecedented way before. I've yes. never seen the finals of a Digimon uh, tournament decided by these special time rules. We saw the judges have to scramble to be like, what's that section of the rule book we've never used before? Oh, it's right here. Great. <laughs> And he wins. And not only that, he had a deck that was perfect for those kinds of rule sets. If you draw your recovery yeah. cards, you're automatically starting ahead. If you don't draw your recovery cards, it might be really bad. It was definitely interesting to see Frozen's line of play of going for that Guyumon. I believe he chose not to mulligan that. And that's probably what do, did, did him in because he didn't have as many resources at the start of the game as Pete did. It was very, right. you know, street wise Digimon, you know, brawlers. Two go into the room, only one comes out. Uh, no holds barred and wow it was just such a different way like i felt so nervous the whole time for both players i'm like is this the move is this the turn and then and and then we're going through frozen's hand and we're like he just doesn't have it if he had a level five as well as this x antibody he probably could have gotten there but he just doesn't yep yep and and i think he took the gilmon because he was like i just make sure i have a rookie if i mulligan and i don't have a rookie i am washed right but I feel like you're right. Was the was that the best hand to hold? You know, maybe you mulligan on that. Because oh, he did have the four, right? In hand, he had the guru one. Mm-hmm. He just didn't have the level five. He need he need to see it off of that training. Um, but he already had a level four in play in Octomon, so he couldn't evolve into Guru Mon first to get the extra dig. If he did, yeah. he probably would have gone for that, but he just didn't. So yeah, really, really unfortunate kind of end there for Frozen. You know, being that undefeated Swiss champ, playing against the person you've uh, potentially already beaten in today's Swiss pairings, and losing because of these special time rules that are put into place for the yes. finals of a single elimination bracket. But Great job on both players. We saw in game one why Frozen got to be the Swiss champ with how amazing he piloted that double Leviathan X play turn. But we saw in game two, misplays, even at the highest level possible, happen, and they can be detrimental, awful, when it comes to your actual outcomes in matches. Yep. And And I think the mental fortitude has to be at its tip-top shape in one of these kinds of things, you know, everything that's happening around you. So that's tough. I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, all of us commentating, seeing this, looking at this can be, you know, in a cool head, but we're not under all these lights, under these, the scrutiny of all these people and having to deal with the time that is pressured. So, you know, big, big, big ups to all of these players uh, and all the things Peter that Peter with did. the gigantic smile and the bow. Always, I'm sorry, dude, I'm just dying. With the bow, man. <laughs> He's a gentleman through and through. We love to see it. So yeah, here you have your top four. You've got Peter, you've got Frozen, you've got Take, and you've got William. The award ceremony is being presented. With the gloves? They're like, yeah. Uh, Yeah, we we saw how nice those trophies are. (laughs) We have third place, Take. Ah. Congratulations. Claps in the chat, everybody. Claps in the chat for Take, piloting Leviathan X Antibody. Receiving the Jessmon X oh, Anybody Trophy. Yeah, yeah, it's a little wow, hard. Be wow, headed wow, two wow. things. Oh, look how gorgeous. That's great job, great yo, job. Yo, yo, show it to the world. Present it up. What is this? What is this? Oh, that was fourth place. Oh, fourth and third. Oh, so William is third place. Take was fourth place. Oh, they all get uh, prizing. That's so fun. I, I, I didn't know it was the same though. prizing, but fourth yeah, and yeah. third. Fourth and third. That's right. I, I did see that in the Digimon uh, Instagram. <laughs> Third and fourth gets the same one. Congratulations, Frozen. Second place, wow, getting that beautiful Gankumon the... X anybody in that trophy. That's right. Maybe not the final match you would have wanted, but a tournament run I'm sure he's proud of. Yes. It's tough to remember how far he's come, right? To make it all the way out here. And there we go. Wow. Peter Frankie, your 2023 World Digimon Champion with Woo-hoo. the Jessmon GX trophy card. Congratulations! <laughs> Woohoo! Oh my gosh. Yo, my heart is <laughs> it's beating so hard right now. 
and it's midnight. <laughs> and it's <laughs> you know, midnight. like we have all this energy and it's like, great. Now we're not going to bed. Just kidding. I'll probably crash the second stream is over. Probably. Let's hear a few words from our finalists. I like to imagine Take saying, I was so close, but security control is really good. <laughs> Absolute rock star. Great job. Thank <laughs> Uh, I feel pretty um, surprised I got here through all the miracles from all the way from nationals to worlds. Thank you for everyone who supported me. もう本当になんか奇跡のようで正直びっくりしてるところもありますね。私を支えてくれたもあのナショナルチームの皆さんですとか支えてくださった皆さん本当にありがとうございました。Oh my god, I just realized something. Peter is the second ever North American world champion. We have the first ever repeat region winning the world championships, and that is North America. We had the first ever world champion in Chung Manchan, and now we have the third ever world champion in Peter Frankie. Wow. But in the end, I'm still happy with the result, of course. Um, I wish it would be better, but uh, can't do anything about it. So I'm oh, fine yeah. with it, and I'm happy for Peter. And I'll give the mic to him next. <laughs> hey, that was Rose, an amazing job. Gracious. I imagine it's. I, I imagine he's beating himself up because of all the misplays that probably cost him that overall match. <laughs> Uh, but he's still second place. He's still proud of his achievements, as we should all be proud of him. It's not easy yes. to be where he is. He's an absolute rock star. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, I can't even, like, you know. Man, second place in the world is still a huge feat. Right now, it's yes. hard. Yes, 1,000. Second place, like, second in the world is beastly. Uh, relieved it's over. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it went out of the way. I didn't expect it to go. I didn't even expect to get this far. Uh, but I am Bro, you got this. great to uh, meet these wonderful players, awesome players. Thanks for, again, everybody that helped me get this far. To Yo, that New York accent, though. Let's go. Nights of playing. And, uh, thank He's you from the Bronx. He's from the Bronx, uh, baby. Represent the <laughs> United States. All right, Let's go, East Brooklyn. Coast. I see you. <laughs> out I see here you, East Coast. Place. <laughs> hey, us plays. Love it. You deserve it, Peter. You're an absolute rock star. It was awesome getting to meet you in NA, man. And thank you for, 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 for representing our nation really well. Hopefully, we can see you do more great things in this great game. Wow. And uh, hopefully, the next time we do a live commentary or something, it'll be you again, buddy. <laughs> And everyone will cheer for your chaos degrades every time. What was the final count, everyone in chat? Let me know. Five, six, eight. I gotta know. Eight, probably eight, huh? I think it was five, but I I wasn't keeping track all the way. Oh, I think the announcer is saying that he's the second ever North American champion. I think oh, he just said go. that. First place person. Uh, to anybody who wants to get into the game, uh, mm. uh, don't let <laughs> don't let deck ideas hold you back. Play what you want. Uh, put practice. Hey. In. And remember, as long as you put the work in, you could get wherever you want to be, even up here. Oosh, that was good, bro. Peter's dropping bars out here, man. Yeah, that was, man. That was pretty sick, bro. If you if you're out there and you want to play Digimon. Pick your favorite Digimon, build the deck around that, and go from there. Super yep. easy. Just don't make it Justimon, because it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts being a Justimon player right now. Man, Yoshi just loves coming on broadcast and sharing all of his dirty laundry. I have a problem with Steve and, and, having, and, and how he stacks Digimon. I have a problem with BT15 and how Machine Germon almost got me there. I have a problem with Justimon and how I can't play him. <laughs> Don't listen to this rhetoric. Listen. This man is a demon on the listen. battlefield of Digimon. <laughs> we just want Biomerge, okay? <laughs> Give me a Rio that Biomerges, okay? 
Uh, don't let my dreams just be dream. I know. It's okay. It's okay. Machine, until then, Machine Drummond support is just Imon support. Remember that. <laughs> Boys and girls, remember that. Oh, I think we got it confirmed. It was five D grades. Five, five D grades across D all of Peter's games. Thank you, everyone. The Japanese production, y'all were absolute rock stars as well. You guys are big hammer in the chats for them. We would not be doing this if it was not for them and all the great Absolutely. people that put, made this production go on so far. Also, a huge shout out to our a mutual friend Gavin for doing a great job on the One Piece stage. Uh, he's been there literally since 7 a.m. I think yesterday. I imagine Whoa. he's very tired. <laughs> Gavin. At least it's in his own time zone this time around. Yes, at least he got to uh, go home at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. I love that this guy just straight up exudes Gojo right now. Put some glasses on him. Done. <laughs> Union time. It's the hair. It's, it's so sleek. The hair. Congratulations again, Peter. Gambare! Omedeto, everybody. Omedeto. <laughs> what a night. What a day. I don't know what time of day it is anymore for everybody. But what a it's One Piece thing. time, baby. They're going to watch it's the One Piece one finals piece right after this. You think it's That's over? Right. No, it's it not. It ain't over. <laughs> We're just getting started. <laughs> just getting started. ということで、え、お時間もですね、いっぱいいっぱい使いまして本当に終了も目前ということなんですけれども、改めて最後までご視聴いただきありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございました。え、いうことになります。改めまして、デジモンカード
Let's go. How do we, how Let's do, we go. do the heart? Can we do the heart? How do we do the heart? There it is. My hands, my hands not big enough. There, there we go. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. It's great. We did it. We did uh, a thing. We did a thing. <laughs> y'all, I mentioned, I alluded that it's not over. Bandai not Card over. Game Fest 2324 in Japan is still going on. We have the final One Piece stage, semifinals, potentially the third place match, as well as the finals going on. We're going to bring back those lovely, lovely commentators you saw earlier, Doa and Ying, aka Human. But before we do, we have to say our goodbyes. Yoshi? Yep, this is it for me. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I have loved being your commentator and I have enjoyed my time, obviously, with my buddy Steven uh, doing the commentary for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the games. Thank you so much for cheering them on and, and, and bringing that spirit and that energy, that electric fire that we needed for the Digimon card game. I honestly love this game so much. It has become a huge part of my life and I'm glad I get to be a huge part of it as well or a small part of it as well. Um, and this is my good night. This is me signing off. Thank you guys so much. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys around. Let me just check my notes. Uh, yeah. Are we good there, Steve? Yeah. yeah. So it's been about four years of me covering this game and uh, sharing it with amazing people. And this has been a super awesome experience. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to stick around because it's midnight where I am at and I want to go to bed. But... Mm -hmm. I hope you guys enjoyed the One Piece stage as much as you enjoyed the Digimon stage and as much as you enjoy every stage and every game you play moving forward. That'll be it for us. Digital Gate close. Peace out, y'all.
したのはドン・キホーテのフラミンゴこの一年キングコングがこれがリーサルクイーンがキングになりましたすべてのプレイヤーが探し続けたそして最後に一のワゴンル最後に一番いけうわすげえよ初優勝キーロカタフリ最強が今決まる「ワンピースカードゲームチャンピオンシップ2023ワールドファイナル」自分の実力を、まあ、試せる最高の舞台かなと思います。ワンピースカードの頂点決めるって感じですよね、この世界、まあ、優勝っすよね、それは。まあ、環境の出来音で、まあ、それに有利な出来をちょっと持って,持っていくことにしてます、ね、使えるカードも多分もう決まってると思うので、本当、それからどれだけそれを研究できるか。今回日本一を取れたのでちょっと世界一も目指してちょっといいとこ見せたいなみたいな<笑>気持ちはあります昔の環境をやるみたいなもう5段調整し終わったんで、まあ、やってる数も違うんで、まあ、負けれないなと思います正直集う世界最高峰のプレイヤー I just want to show flawless gameplay and really cool gameplay that you know gets the audience off their seats or Just gameplay that gets them excited.、Um, I feel ecstatic. I'm super happy to win games one and three. And I'm looking forward to playing against even more insane players moving forward. I want to show them a more dynamic game plan where a lot of your strategies change throughout the entire game and a lot of different decisions are made because of it. But I never thought I'd ever have a chance to be able to win the most high level game in the world. That's why I'm very happy to win the most high level game in the world. That's why I'm very happy to win the most high level game. I believe that if you believe in yourself and your ability to win, you're going to have much better chances of actually winning. I feel、uh, very proud to represent my country, Malaysia, to go to the world final in Japan. I think the world is very proud to represent the country of Malaysia to go to the world final in Japan. Not many people will be able to get this ch- the chance to play at Worlds.、Uh, but I'm extremely excited to go to Japan and, can, and compete with all the best players in the world so I can show that Latin America is a very powerful region in one piece. I am very happy that my preparations and the time I have invested into the game have paid off. We have a lot of strong competitive players here in Europe, and I am one of the lucky ones who made it this far. It will be an honor to represent the European players. I generally want to be ahead of my opponent in,、uh, in terms of board presence, cards in hand, and the amount of life remaining. So, just,、um, so just generally, like being ahead of my opponent in a combination of these. Of those three factors,、um, especially board presence, is, is where I'd say I'd like is my, is my play style. One Piece Card Game Championship 2023 World Final. Kaimaku. ここからはワンピースカードゲームチャンピオンシップ2023ワイルドワールドファイナル決勝トーナメントの様子お届けしてまいります Hey everybody welcome back to the One Piece Championship World Final That's right I am Doa with me is Ying Ong otherwise known as、uh, just another human but he's not just another human to me he's my、uh, intrepid co-caster and Ying we are about to see some incredible One Piece card game action we are about to see the games that will decide the World Championship we got a semi-final And we're going to the final. And I got one question for you. Do you like Sakazuki? Of course. Of course I love Sakazuki. Like, I, I play、course. Sakazuki myself, and I'm excited to see the best of the best Sakazuki players duking it out and find out who is the real number one Sakazuki player in the world who is going to become the Pirate King, the first Pirate King of One Piece. How do you think lore wise Sakazuki would feel about being、uh, told he was becoming the Pirate King?、Uh, I wouldn't not be jealous, but oh, Lord. <laughs> you, I was going to say. That's the last、uh, thing you would、uh, think would happen. 
Yeah, that's a, it's a, we're kind of breaking the breaking the lore a little bit here, but that's okay because uh, we have four great players and uh, we have four different regions being <laughs> represented too out of our uh, top four players as well. So that's kind of exciting. We don't have any uh, specific region dominating. We've got uh, you know really great players from all around the world in the semis. Yes, we do. So we can talk about where each player is coming from once the players are introduced. But first things right. first. You said Anel was going to win initially. Now we have Sakazuki's. And only hey, Sakazuki's. <laughs> you know, my man Jonas, he, he came close, but, uh, you know, his his uh, North American rival slash brother was able to take him down and uh, make it. So let's get our uh, semifinalists introduced here. But first we have Makinu right here, our right. live action actor for Zoro. Yeah. I'm sure he plays the game, but he's not playing in these matches anyway. Yes. Did you watch the uh, the live action One Piece? Oh, wait, I, did, I definitely did. How about you? I did too. I thought it was great. I, I, I was agree. uh, I was incredibly impressed. Honestly, if I can just say for a second, like that kind of show, uh, really succeeds or fails by the uh, efforts of the actors, right? And so, and so people like the gentleman on your screen right now need to completely sell it right which is really hard to do you're being a human cartoon character mm -hmm. but everyone on that show absolutely crushed it so yeah honestly i loved it looking forward I to season two like, yeah. i was able a lot of shows you're not exactly able to sit through all of it all at once i sat through the entire thing all at once because was that amazing you know i it, that show was so amazing i'm not <clears throat> i mean i can tell a little story here is that uh my my dad who is 69 years old watched the netflix live action show and now he has started watching the anime it, it just shows how much uh one show can influence another that's right he was like that show is so interesting i need to see the the cartoon that it was based on and yeah now he's going through the the uh the anime so uh yeah i never would have expected that but uh he's enjoying it which is great <laughs> i gotta get him to start playing the card game now indeed mm -hmm. i'm excited for this so we have our semifinal and then the finals. We're talking about the um, the rules for this. Yeah, it does appear to be the uh, the rules. I suppose neither of us read uh, read Japanese. I uh, only it's... understand a bit, <laughs> not enough, just a bit. All right, what can you glean from this? I mean, obviously, we know the finals is the best of three. I believe the semifinals is going to be a best of one. That's generally how we do it with One Piece, but we'll kind of wait and uh, you know see what happens as we go along here. Either way, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hyped for Sakazuki Mirrors, and I'm not just saying that. I'm not just trying to, you know, tow the company line or whatever you want to call it. I do think it's one of the most skillful matchups out there. Uh, we saw that earlier in uh, some of our matches. Clyde, especially from North America, no bias, but man, he was playing extremely well. And he said, you know, in an interview when they asked him, you know, how he wanted to approach Worlds, he said he just wanted to try to, you know, play a flawless game. And I think we saw about as close as you can get to that earlier today from him already. So I'm very curious to see what he can do in the semis now. Uh, look at these prize cards for our first, second, and third place. Yeah, how about that? Wow. That is uh, that is awesome, actually. I, I do I love, love that we get special I cards for, uh, for things like that. One of ones, that you know? Movie. Yeah. The Gear 5, I have no idea what it means, like, story-wise. I haven't gotten to that point yet. But it's a cool-looking character. Oh, I like playing the 10-cost purple, uh, purple Gear 5 Luffy. The thing about Luffy is <clears throat> he represents... Being able to represent freedom, being able to do what you want, you do however you wherever you like that's what mm -hmm. the gear fight is like he's free he's always laughing i have noticed that he seems like a very jolly guy when he's in his gear five mode that that isn't that why he's called joy boy <laughs> is he I, I don't know actually i don't know either oh my gosh get these guys off the stream <laughs> oh what do we have here He's wearing the white gloves. Everyone put hey, on the you white gotta put gloves. Your gloves for this. You gotta this put on the white gloves. This is not just anything. That's right. Are these <laughs> the crown jewels? No. These are probably the prize cards for the One Piece World Championship. And we even make sure we don't we don't want to get 
Roar Nora Zoro's fingerprints all over these. <laughs> there yeah. we go. The first card. Oh, nice. I thought he was going to interview it for a second. He was like putting the microphone up to it. Look at that, Luffy. Oh, wow. That is sick. <clears throat> That's a family it's heirloom, a right? Beauty. If, you, if you win that, that is getting passed down through the generations to where a thousand it years from now. It is the third place one, so it's in the bronze color. Yeah, but I kind of like that, though. <coughs> I mean, they all look good. McAnew looks like he's got... Which one do you think he has? It looks like Mikey oh, has he's the, got the first gold. place one. So, yeah. Gavin here is holding our second place, the silver one. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Good, beautiful shine. Very nice, that's right. Very steady ha hands uh, Gavin has as well. Holding on to that. I like the little case they have it in as well. Very cool. And now, the unveiling. Last oh, but not first least. Place. Card. There it is. The gold. First wow. place, world champion. Pirate King will be receiving this gold. Luffy. I mean, the foiling on it too almost looks a little bit more, uh, a little bit more shiny, a little bit more shimmering. Do you think he's going to give it back? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I, think he ha I think he has to, but the thing is, I feel like if he wanted to keep it, you know, who's going to be able to take it from him? Ooh. That's the danger of, of handing something like that to s such an accomplished martial artist. All right. Yeah, you got to be careful. Okay, right, dude, he's giving it back. The... All right, he's, he's a right, good guy. Back onto the yep. play, back on to safekeeping. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're fine. <clears throat> <laughs> now, oh, we get we get to see the trophies too. We have our trophies. That's right. One of them is much larger than the other. Oh, Makes sense. We have the looks like the first and second place trophy right yeah, here. Yeah, believe so. You ever hoist a plaque like that? That that's heavy, man. I don't when know. If the biggest place? plaque I've ever hoisted was only in third place. Ooh, I'm telling you, if you win that first place one, you can just like lift that, you know, like a. Uh, do like sets of uh, 12 in each arm and you will get ripped. Oh, yes. Yeah. Alright. Here we go. This is going to be Guanrong from Malaysia. Guanrong from in Malaysia. Our first he is semi finalist. Our first place after Swiss as well. Yeah. Performing extremely well. And one of the things I'm looking forward to with this game, too, is seeing, you know, what is revealed as we see them go through their decks, too. And there's someone we know well, Clyde from North America, second place in the U.S. Nationals, now with a chance to compete in the Grand Finals if he can make it through the semis here at the uh, at your Worlds. Yep. All right, and there's Rails. Rail Zero. Whoa. From the uh, European region. Yep, so we have Malaysia, we have North America, you have Europe, and Shirokuin oh. <laughs> from Japan. Four different regions. Yeah, the big cheer for uh, the hometown hero, Shirokuin from Japan. And so, yeah, we have Japan, Malaysia, North America, and Europe. A lot of the globe represented here, but that's what you want to see in a world championship, right? Exactly. More rep There's so much region representation right here. Four different regions. Luke in and out in the top four. Yep. That's right. <coughs> oh, that guy sells his gloves on. He could pick up those cards again. All right, a little so interview we're with our semi We're having an interview with our players right now. Yeah, I mean, can't blame him. Confidence coming in after 5-0 in the Swiss round. I'd be, I'd be feeling pretty uh, good about myself coming into this, too. Oh, yeah. Being able to go 5-0 is an amazing feat, especially against the top players across the world. Yeah. Now we go to Clyde. Um, yeah, I think Bandai created a wonderful game off like a, a, my, one of my favorite anime and I'm really glad that they gave me the outlet to be here and to you know show off and just want to thank all the people that supported me 
both here and at home, and you know, of course, always my beautiful fiance. Aww. You love to see it. Yes. Yes. It's always nice when a uh, person with understands what you do, you know? Understands that it's not just playing cards. It's work, it's serious, it's competition. That's the kind of support that gets you to first place. Yang. That's right. Yeah. All right. Next, we're going to chat. With Rail Zero from uh, so EU. I'm also very happy to be at this amazing venue uh, playing for the world title. I hope to bring it home for Europe. Uh, but yeah, I'm just happy that I got this far and I hope to do as well as people expect. Thank you to everyone who's supporting me. All right. There you go. So, I mean, you gotta, you gotta feel the nerves are probably out of control right now for all four of these players. I mean, you work so hard, you go through your locals. At your local game yeah, store, right? You go through the qualifying yeah, things. You get to nationals. You get through nationals. You come to worlds. You get through Swiss, and now here you are in the top four. Like you know, you've got the skills to be there. But man, the stress has got to be out of control. Well, I would love to translate for you for what you're saying, but Me I too. cannot. Do so. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm guessing he's saying something similar. Happy to be there. He's going to play hard. He's going to show great games. And you know this hometown crowd is going to be cheering for him. Yeah, look at the crowd. His goal is to win. That was the end. I understood that part. His goal is to win it all. I mean, that's a good goal that they have in this situation, I suppose. Yeah, he's definitely got the hometown uh, crowd energy behind him. I can make a difference for sure. Mm. And so, we're just moments away from getting started in the semifinals. We'll see what our matchups are going to be. What do you think? Who make your make your predictions here? Who do you predict to win it? Are you just going Clyde? Are you just going regional I, I, bias? I have to support my, the NA counter report. Like, oh, I, me too, man. I, I have to do it. Me too. There's also the fact that we. It's not just the fact that it's NA. Um, uh -huh. It's also being able to support someone a, a good friend and it's so we, we've been testing we played the, uh, the game since this beginning and i know he is a super good player possibly even the best in the world so oh here we go we have Here's our... clyde first rail rail zero uh, for rematch and then yeah. shiroku kun i guess going wrong on the other side. Yeah, so we do get that rematch that uh, we saw a little bit earlier uh, with Clyde, I believe, taking that one. That was a great soccer mirror. And they're going to face each other one more time to see who gets to the grand finals. And then uh, on the other side, Juan Rang from Malaysia versus his opponent Shiroko Kun from Japan and uh, I th I've heard that's the one we're going to be watching which makes sense because we did see the other one once already yes, like to get some new players on the stream yep. we will be watching those two uh, we have North America versus Europe on the other side for the rematch yeah, that's right. Only time will tell who we will see in the finals. I mean, like, you know, the, the bias coming through a little bit there. I'd love to see the NA versus EU rematch, but uh, we these, these decisions are beyond our control. So we will see uh, again, like, try to showcase some players we haven't seen as much on the stream yet tonight. Yes. Whoever makes it through from the Clyde Rails match is going to be seen on the finals anyway, so... Yep. We'll get wrong versus Shiroku will be on stream. Sakazuki yep. versus Sakazuki. We will be saying in uh, Rebecca Hina Luchi a lot for the <laughs> remainder of the night. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, keep that in mind. Rebecca Hina Luchi. Uh, we, we, need a ha we need a counter somewhere on how many times we say Rebecca Hina Luchi and then play it. Yeah, don't don't uh, be playing any games uh, where you're imbibing certain beverages uh, around us saying that. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you can try a, a bingo card. There's going to be things to look out for. Uh, I think we should have a counter of how many times the combo goes off in a row. Turn to turn. Wait, here, here's the thing, right? We know Goron came in here as a five 
Zero. Yeah. Oh, uh, after Swiss. There is a chance of him finishing the entire World Championship completely undefeated. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that would be an amazing run, though. Mm. I mean, it's one thing to just, it's one thing to win the World Championship. It's another thing to be undefeated in the World Championship. He's got a chance to do it. And we will see. We're going to get into that uh, semifinal in just a moment. I think another thing we should have is a, a Kaido counter. How many times we see the Kaido actually played? Uh, here's the thing though. We don't even know. We don't know. We, had, we have their list. What? Their list is not. <laughs> well, we know we, we've seen Kaidos from some of the players already. Already. We know, uh, we know Clyde's rocking the Kaido. We know, uh, yeah, we know that, um, his opponent, Rail Zero, is rocking the Kaido as well. So we've seen some of it. I'll we'll have to wait and see, uh, what the other players are running. Mm. Well, now I just want to see One Piece Season 2. Yeah. Alright. And here we go. We're going Camera to the flying. tables. Wong Rong on the left and Shogoku on the right. Yeah, the cards are being shuffled. The players are getting ready. Japan's hometown hero, Shiroko Kun, right there on your screen, taking on the player from Malaysia. Wong Rong, there he is. And uh, that's got to be intimidating, right? To be playing against the last representative of Japan in the semifinals on stage in Japan. You just got to keep your head down, play your game. It's got to be the best you can. Play, play however you can. Play to your comfort. Understand your cards. <laughs> exactly. Wow, that is that is quite the cut. Look at that. He's like he's reshuffling his deck completely. I mean, over on the you know Guanra, uh, Guanra, he's a uh, he did a little bit of shuffling. You know, put it together a couple times, but that is a full stack shuffle on the other side from uh, Shiroku Kun. So I don't mind that actually. I'm always like a little bit nervous that I don't shuffle well enough going into a tournament match. So hey, if my opponent's gonna do that for me, I'm like yeah, go for it. More shuffling the merrier. Yeah. And then there's the final cut, presents the deck. Wow. I think he does that at locals. Oh, oh, oh. oh. It went off the screen. I, I don't know what he rolled. Oh, okay, all right. right again. It's a five. All right. all right. Yeah, you roll off the table. You have to re roll. That's Two rules. and three. Ooh. All right. Wins the dice roll, he opts to go second. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think you're going to find too many Sakazuki players that are going to want to go first in the mirror. Uh, and so a little, little edge there. Or Guanrong starting things off. At least a lot of players would say that that's an edge. Your curve's just a little bit smoother, it seems like, coming in as the, uh, the even Don player. Oh, Mulligan. All right. Interesting. Mulligan from Guanrong, it looks like. Thinking about it, he will also mulligan. Okay. Both players rolling the dice in more ways than one here. Sometimes you don't, just don't get your perfect start. Yeah. I mean, if your opponent mulligans too, it's like one of those situations where it's like, all right, well, yeah, at least I'm on even footing with them, right? So it's like if you have a if you have a hand and you're like I'm not so sure about this, and your opponent says they're gonna mulligan, I'm usually like, yeah, okay, why not? They're doing it, I'll do it. Yeah, it really depends on how the opening hand is, also, because you yeah. you're looking for very specific cards, especially in the mirror match. So yeah. you have key cards. Some of your key cards are Rebecca Hinaluchi, which is the cards that we will be seeing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And Houndblaze, being able to bottom deck those Inas or Luchis so they do not get reused. And of course, if you're second, you want to see the brand new so you can start bringing cards into the trash and be able to search for uh, your removals or your uh, Hinas or your Houndblaze. Yep. Wanting to get that brand new for uh, first turn if you're the second player wanting to you know, maybe grab that blue Hina. There is a blue Hina in the hand of uh, Shiroko Kun, it looks like. 
Non Sherry? Oh. Shigi? All right. So we see Kuzan, Borsley, no brand new. Ray Roshit and Houndblaze. Okay. You have the you have an amazing going second hand right there. You have no the brand new right off the bat. You have a Kuzan or Borsley, no. Depending on the situation, one could be better than the other, and how you want to play it. And of course, uh, having your Great Eruption and the Houndblaze for removal, it is yeah. one of the best hand you can start. Absolutely. We know uh, Quan Rong's got to be a little bit psyched when he's second getting a hand like that. And it looks like we are almost about ready to get going. As soon as the timer begins, the players can start playing. Everyone wants to jump ahead start right away. Can't blame them. Here we go. It is time. And there we go. All right. Players we are now underway. Again. Semi-final time. And it's going to be one Don, probably just Sokka ability, yeah. A cycle and then pass, as oftentimes, is uh, what you're going to be doing as the first player in this matchup. Starts by discarding the Tashigi. Yeah. Because he believes, Shiroko thinks, all right, I need the Sina later instead. I won't just, I don't have to use it. Yeah, I don't need to discard it yet. Well, he used the one. He does use the one. Oh, okay. Draw the edge card. All right, yeah. So really trying uh, to... There's the Rebecca. Oh. You have Rebecca, you have the Hina. You have, ha you have two of the three of the combo already. Yep. I was able to grab a brand new as well uh, for the first uh, card he got from that Sakazuki cycle. All right. There is that brand new so, Brand new right sees Rebecca, uh, Suru, and Great Eruption. Yeah, now, he does not have a, no, he does have a Rebecca in hand, so yeah, I was going to say, that Great Eruption certainly looks tempting, that's what he's going to do, he's going to Sakazuki ability, he's going to trade that out, yep, he values the Kuzan more than Borsino right here, yeah, and it's one of those things that kind of demands the response from your opponent like we've talked about before, right, you don't want that Kuzan to live long enough to start uh, giving the negative cost to your cards, so, you know, that compared to the Borsalino, if you're trying to get responses, get cards out of their hands early, the Kuzan uh, is a great way to do that. Oh, yes, for sure. But here we have Shogoku, go, uh, because he's going first, he can actually play either the brand new or the five cost Hina in hand that can let him draw a card. Uh, so he's. Let's see, what will he opt to do? Hmm. This card's Hina. Okay, yeah, so maybe gonna look for the so brand new. We'll he's see looking what he for finds. the brand new play. All right, that uh, looks like there's a, a nine ooh. cost. That's a Mihawk. Mihawk. It, yeah. He, ha he has to turn um, seven down turn. He can play a Borsino. And then on the nine down turn, Mihawk right after. All right, I'm officially a Shiroko Kun fan. I, I'm, I've been a big advocate for Mihawk in, uh, in Sakazuki in this deck for a long time. You, you see it a little bit, then it kind of fell off in favor of the Kaidos. I really like it in the mirror, though. It's such good hard removal and uh you also just get that big body on the board too yes it's more now, immediate board impact i love that lose the Luchi and rebecca though both players have lost the rebecca off of a brand new he was able to grab a kuzan off it so he's not with at the very least yeah, you can always get it back later with another uh you know with like a monster or something like that so yeah, tossing a couple of those early on isn't the biggest concern now, will he go for the 6k swing, or will he save it for measure? He goes for the 6k yeah. swing. Alright, I feel like you just take this. Yeah. More often than not, you won't take that first hit. Yeah. You want to build that hand size a little bit. You're not really feeling too much pressure yet. Four down turn now. For a Guan Rong. He does draw the man sherry. Both players does have the man sherry. 5k swing. Starts over 5. Alright. Oh, uh, he dropped cards. <laughs> Just wait. Judge has to grab that for you, I guess. Yep. Yes. <laughs> the judge will grab the cards for <laughs> here. Hey, I mean, we're all nervous. We've all dropped cards, you know, at locals and things like It happens to the best of us. It does happen, for sure. We knocked a few of them on the ground. Oh, my yes. goodness. And there's the Kuzan to draw one. So, yeah. Oh, we saw the Kuzan in hand. He's going to recycle the card. This card's been sure to draw another. Mm-hmm. 
All right. So that what, was a what makes Kuzan better than Borsino in this mirror match is being able to play on curve means you get to draw a card, of course, and mm -hmm. it ha force your opponent to answer it. Well, as your opponent answers it, your opponent's using cards to remove it, whereas yep. you already got the card back from Kuzan. So you're taking, you're gaining more card advantage as your opponent loses cards. Yeah, and like you don't really want to. It's it's weird to think about, but you don't really want to use removal on the Kuzan because you're like, I would rather save that for bigger. things things down the road, you know, the Rob Lucci's, the Rebecca's, things like that. But you have to remove the Kuzan, because he's got such a great ability, right? Being able to minus four something is, is something you need to deal with, like, right away when it's the board. Yes, you need to be able to respect the Kuzan for sure. Yeah. It's funny, because you have to respect it, but you don't want to respect it. So You'd rather was, save that stuff. We have the Borsino being discarded, the 7 cost Borsino being discarded, he drew a Chi off of it, so it goes for another 6k swing. Mm -hmm. And that 6k swing. Will, we'll see will he counter maybe. with the Tashigi or we take another 6k swing? Counters with All the Tashigi. Right, yeah. Okay. Hmm, what do you think about that? Kuzan's right back. Yep. <clears throat> However, being the second Kuzan in play, it means that first Kuzan will be able to remove the second Kuzan if he has enough removal. Or he has yeah. the removal cards. If there is a Luchi, that is both characters being removed. Yeah, it still is the advantage over to Quan Rong, able to, uh, like we're saying, minus that Kuzan right there, not have to use anything from hand to reduce the power and get it ready to rob Luchi or something like that. Yes. However, Shiroku-kun is going to 7, that means the 7 costs for Sino can come down the following turn. And bottom decking Luchi is detrimental in the mirror match. Yeah. We'll see when we get to that turn, but I wonder then, yeah, do you just attack their Kuzan with your Sakazuki then? Use the 7 cost Borsalino to bottom deck whatever's left? Or? Another 5. So now five, yeah. another 5,000 to leader. Will he counter again or will he take it? Hmm. Thinking. Thinking. A tough choice. He did already I mean, counter uh, one of them. The thing Does is, he want to stay healthy? Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you and I have both played at, at uh, you know, high-end matches and tournaments and things like that. We've both been in finals and things. And and when you're in this situation, you start to second guess every single decision. And that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, is to not second guess every decision and just play your game. You know. All right. Here's the brand new. It's the seven cost Porcelino. Yep. And then, discarding a brand new to draw a card. What, let's see what he drew. And not a 7 cost for Sino, that's two of them. And there's the Luchi. Yep. Luchi yeah, no number one come comes down, down hitting yep. both the Kuzan and the brand new. And that's quite the board uh, built right now for uh, Quan Rong. Two Borsalinos, the Kuzan and the uh, Rob Luchi is, yeah. is going to need to be dealt with. Definitely, definitely do. Uh, that Kuzan needs to be dealt with as well. If that Kuzan yeah. stays, it's just to keep on removing more and more bodies. Well, I mean, I feel like on the back foot. I feel like you don't get to see a lot of Kuzans actually uh, do the minus four. On uh, because a lot of times they will just be taken out. They'll be KO'd the the immediate turn after. So. Just the fact that Guanrong's Kuzan lived long enough to actually do its thing is is kind of crazy. But here's another thing, right? We know he ha uh, Shoku has the Hound Blaze. He just drew a Hound Blaze. He is yeah. able to get a Hina out, Hound Blaze the Luchi. That means there's no Luchi for um, Guanrong anymore. If he does that, he can yeah. attack over the Guzan. And in response, the only way to get rid of... Um, Shokokun's uh, Hina or any other card would then be bottom decking the cards himself by Gorong or using um, Hound Blaze via Hound Blaze, like via Hound Blaze or via the uh, Porcino that we saw he grabbed earlier. Yeah, it's a tough, I think this is a tough turn for uh, Shokokun actually because you've got a couple different ways you can approach this. And like you said, you really do want to try to bottom deck Rob Luchi because that that puts it away the most permanently. Yes. He's going to play the Rebecca. Starts the Rebecca. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, uh, hound blazing this Rob Luchi, 
It's nice, but you know they've got more coming, right? So you're not really slowing down the, the flood of robs all that much. Starts with Rebecca and yeah. Tina. Okay, yep. Reducing the Luchi. There's the Hound Blaze. There's the Hound Blaze, yeah, like we kind now of expected. Eight, and then a nine at the Kuzan. Yeah. This is only this is the best way to remove the Kuzan and be able to get some kind of ore presence. Totally. Yeah, that's the expected play, and that's what you definitely need to do in that situation. You got a blocker out, now you've got the Hina out. You know, the Hina protected a little bit by the Rebecca, but uh, you know, you'd imagine Guan Rong has a way to remove that. He's got his own Hound Blaze, you can see. And uh, a couple other things, too. Be... First, the 6k swing. That's the Hina. <clears throat> yeah. So we know he has the not a seven cost uh, for Sino, so it's very likely to come down at oh, yeah. one or the other. So if Lihina remo is removed, oh, he does counter. So now here comes the Borsino. Oh, yeah. back in the Hina. Slam. I do yeah. believe that it's the only Hina in the, uh, at the moment. So the Hina is gone. Alright. But here's the thing. Shoku-kun does have nine. We do see the Mihawk. Yeah. And so the Mihawk can just come in and, and uh, bounce the uh, bounce the Borsalino. Yes. But at the same time, you... right? Shogun yeah. can also use the Great Eruption, attack for 6k, and play his own 7 cost, I believe, unless he discard. No, it's still there. So he the 7 cost. Yeah, it's true too. Couple choices. All right, yeah. Starts with discard the first. effect, discarding the three cost, you know. Finds a Borsalino, just going to be a 5k swing at life. And that one, Guanrong's going to just take. No hesitation there. And there's the Mihawk. Yep. All right. Yeah, so Mihawk, Mihawk comes is in. a powerful card. Especially Absolutely. in the mirror where it's a 9 cost. You can remove a body as well. Uh, and being a high cost makes it difficult to actually remove efficiently. Unless he has Kinas or uh, Great Eruptions or even Ice Age. It starts with a yeah. 6k swing, minusing one to uh, Mihawk. So Mihawk is now 8. Yep. Great it eruption. takes a lot. There's a Great so, Eruption. Okay. Six bring cost. down the Mihawk a little bit farther, I believe. Second Great Eruption. Oh. <laughs> Four okay. costs. All right. So we've got a way to deal with the Mihawk, but it's it's costing a lot and of cards. And there's the personally yeah. no bottom decking Mihawk. Yeah, okay. But, but even though it cost a lot of cards, those great eruptions recycled itself. Fair enough. Yeah. Is, is this the Sakazuki mirror? You go back and forth, back and forth. Yep, that's right. It is just kind of a battle of removal until one person just can't do it, you know? <laughs> you get a couple poking uh, hits here and there. But overall, it's a battle of uh, who has the. who runs out of removal first, essentially. Seven cards in hand for Shoko King or Gorong at eight cards. Mm -hmm. Starts great eruption. Okay. And the question a lot of times too is, you know, like we saw earlier, are there going to be occasions where you can find ways to do sneaky attacks? To avoid we having used cards. Do we go for the 5k swing? Or we go for the uh, uh, 7k swing, hoping to take two cards or damage? Because he can go for the 5k swing and play brand new right after. Yeah. Or he can go for the 7k and really try and take two cards out of hand or damage. So, go for the 5k swing. Yep. Brand new. That. Yep. Brand new. Hound Blaze. Yeah. Hound Blaze is the only target here. All right, yeah, two hand blades, one calls, goes to the Borsalino crash, right back to Borsalino. We're going nice. back and forth. Yep, that's how the matchup goes. You go through these turns, then you watch for those little turns with the big difference maker things. It's it's the little things in the Sakazuki mirrors, right? It's you know, the little thing that matter. Yeah, it's, it's the counters, right? Like, did you need to counter there? Could you have taken the life there? At the end of the game, those are the things you're going to be wondering about. <coughs> Was there a way you could remove something with an attack instead of by using a card from hand? Like it is those kind of things. Here's a check. Here's a look at Guanrong's hand. Mm -hmm. so, Guanrong does have the Rebecca Hina Luchi. He is. He does have that play available to him. He's also. Yep. He 
also has the eruption, so he can re completely remove the board and go for a six, uh, six K swing. Right. Thinking too, I was wondering if we were gonna see the sound of Pilaf. Yeah. The Pilaf, he wants he thinks it's okay to start drawing now. <laughs> yeah, I mean I you've got two health remaining. Uh their board is not super super scary yet. The Borsolino is kind of annoying, but it's not terrifying. So you're gonna want to find a turn to sneak that stuff in, right? Six K swing now. Six K swing. The Bors and then Borsolino does get the minus one, so he is at five costs. I mean yeah. six costs. Scars, Luchi, draw. Mm -hmm. Let's get that back later with the uh, Rebecca later. And there is Rebecca. There's Rebecca. He's going to Rebecca, grab something, and he does have the Hina. So that means he can Hina and then go into a great uh, Hellblaze to remove the Porcelino. Yeah. All right. Next up, Shigi. Okay, yeah, once I take the off the effect. Yep. Now, Borsino is now a two cost. That means Houndblaze is a target. And going yeah, for a 6k well. swing. Hmm. This is a tough one. The hand size is starting to get a little bit concerning for Shiroko kun right now. Uh, yeah, he's going to go and take the life. Getting yeah. uh, lower and lower. Yep. Kind of have to there. That is a Luchi. That's a really, really good draw. Yeah. And I do believe... Was there a uh, Rebecca? It's kind of hard to tell. I think there is... There is... It's really hard to tell. I can't tell if there's a Rebecca in hand or not right now. But there's a... Uh, I see a Mansherry. I... There's a Suru, Hina, Downblaze, uh, Mansherry. It looks like a Luchi. I can't tell the card right under the Luchi. Yeah. In between uh... the two Luchis. <laughs> between two Luchis, yeah. There's a little bit of a glare there, and, and uh, the alternate art comes into play, too, from time to time. <laughs> what do you think about that Sanju's Pilaf play now? I, I really like it. He was that able was to really get good because uh, he's able to gain even more card advantage. He's keeping board advantage. He's keeping life, life advantage. He has every single advantage possible right now. Board yeah. and life. And uh, maybe mood as well after that. The hidden advantage. Vibe. Oh yeah, he, he's vibing for sure. Yeah. Oh, good thinking hard and uh, yeah. We're gonna go in. Brand new v brand new. Brand new attack. Yeah, I don't think you do have run the brand new to the Hina. That that would not be very productive. <laughs> so, no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You does does you want to save it? It is one extra attack. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's a. a that's a tricky little play uh, by uh, Shoku-kun to say, okay, and he does draw the he card out with the counter, too. It yeah. is one extra attack, it then it can take out more cards from hand. Yeah, drops a Sabo for that. Okay, it was a Borsalino, like. so it was not a... Yeah. But he does have the... Oh, okay. Mansherry to get the Rebecca back from the trash. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What's the plan now? Like Shoku-kun. Really starting to think. Maybe kind of second guess some of these choices here. Going after the brand new Hina instead again. Going to the brand new first. Move the finger over the Hina. That's going to be the Rebecca coming in the block. There's the Mansherry. Yep. Can Mansherry to look for uh, Rebecca that was trash earlier? Yep. Seems like that's definitely going to be the plan, and that lets you get the Hound Blazes back into your deck, too. And we have our most famous play for Sakazuki coming up right about <laughs> now. The classic. The Rebecca! Classic. Say it with us Rebecca. And. 
Shiki back. Shiki, sure, but yeah, we, we know it's in the hand. Ina? Ina, like, Ina, show us the rub. And there he is. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Wait a second. Okay. Yeah, Hina, yep, you gotta you gotta pick the target first with Hina, I suppose. Then there's a Rob Lucci. There you go. It happened. Rebecca there Hina is. Lucci. Our famous yep. Rebecca <laughs> Hina Lucci. Right. And gonna send three to the uh, the bottom of the deck with uh, the Rob Lucci, of course. Oh man, I think I think the nerves are running high right now for both these players. Oh, absolutely. And we have, let's see, the five cards to mm. first with a three into Monsheri. Yeah. Will he block? I, I think you do because you can just use the Monsheri next turn theoretically. If he does block if she it, lives, now will he attack going the five into it? Will he remove yeah. it with Luchi? And goes out. Wait, I don't think that Manchuria is going to last until next turn. I'd be very surprised. But I think you do need to block with Rebecca because at least need to be like, all right, if you really want to get rid of it, you got to use a little bit more. Time to check out the trash. I mean, it's so important if you're if you're new to this matchup. It's so important to keep track of what has been used, what's waiting in the trash to be retrieved with the Mancheri or the Rebecca. Um, very crucial to yes. We do this have a um, the eruption and Hound Base in hand. There is also a Luchi in hand. Yep. So we could see a potential board wipe here. Generally, you do see that be the case with this matchup. He can choose the board wipe, or he can choose to remove um, something else. He can choose to remove, try and go for the last life instead. Oh, he's attacking to the Hina. Uh, so he attacks the no, Mancheri. attacking the Mancheri, all right. Yeah, never mind. <coughs> Plays his own Mancheri instead. No. Mancheri. And, of course, we do have our favorite, yep. Rebecca. Rebecca. Wait for it. Wait Rebecca. for it. I wonder what's going to be... Oh, three done. I wonder what's going to be... Play. Oh, there's the Hina. Okay. Hina. Hina gets played. What's the target going to be? Luchi. Luchi, yep. And there Here we go. Is. Right back. Rebecca, yes, Hina, Rebecca, Luchi. Hina. All right, that's two. That's two turns in a row. The Rebecca, Hina, Luchi. Can we make it three? Back to Shirokoku. Yep. This is not a good spot for it uh, to be in right now. Five cards in hand. Yeah. And it's uh. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, tosses a Borsalino. Finds a great eruption with the Sakazuki ability with the cycle. Hmm. A little rearranging. Putting the uh, exhausted characters on one side. And another look at the trash. Alright. Shiroko can really think hard about this decision. And again, it's a decision. All these decisions can mean the difference between going to the finals or not. Also, a great eruption. Into another great eruption! Huh, seen that before. Not the card you want to find. You, with can, it. you choose your target after seeing the draw. Yeah. ここで使おうと別にリーサルに行けるわけでもないし。それは全てなくなってしまうので。スタートはマンシュスイングアマンシュ。いや、ギャラでが。ま、all right, 5k maybe swing. Yes, 5k swing. At the... Okay, minus on the brand new. No, attacking it's attacking brand new, minus one to the Hina. Okay. 
And that's well, it's going to be a Rebecca Block either way. Eruption, second one. Mm -hmm. Draws the Hina. There's the Hina. Slams it immediately. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Minus on the Rob. Yeah. And then uh, using his own uh, Rob Lucci to take out the Hina Rob. All right, so so we got there. That, that was kind of Rebecca Hina Lucci in, in a long extended fashion. Although there was no Rebecca, though, was there? No. no, no there All right. was no Rebecca. This, However, the we're cycle down was to broken. one life for Shirokoku. And he's down to yeah. four cards in hand. Yeah. This is looking rough for, uh, for the player representing Japan. And that'd be rough for the first uh, One Piece World Championship to not have a player from Japan in the finals. But we are looking at that very possibility right now. Oh, he draws into Luchi, so he has wow. the Hina of the Rebecca already. This could wow. be another Rebecca Hina Luchi play right back. And the thing is, is every time Guanron gets to do this, you go back over to Shiroku and he just doesn't seem to have the same quality of hand to respond. It's rough right now. Yeah, minus on the Hina. Attacking the Hina. Exactly. There he is! Repeat after me. Rebecca. Rebecca, yep. Hina, there's the Hina. Hina on the Luchi, and there's a Luchi, yep. There's the third Another board one clear. right there. Rebecca, Hina, Luchi. Yep. Three out of the last four turns, we got the combo. <laughs> But again, like, it's it's easy for that combo to stand out as, like, the only thing that happens in this matchup, but that is that is so not true. There's a lot of other things going on very subtly. Large is... a Tashige is like, I don't need this 2k counter anymore. I would discard yes. the Tashige to draw a card, because my other cards in the hand have more value. Large yep. Mihawk. Okay. Four in the hand. Four cards in the hand. Yep. Starts with Kuzan. Okay, yeah, I get the card draw with that. Finds a Suru, so that's another 2k counter at least. Hmm. Think and hard. Is it going to be a big swing with the Sakazuki possibly? No, I don't think so. You've got the Rebecca right there on the other side to block, so... He's gonna play the Hina, yep. Minus and right. Luchi. Uh huh. And, and get the Hound Blaze. Blaze. Yeah. And that's nice to be able to just bottom deck the uh, the Rob Luchi at this stage in the game. That is probably not a Rob Luchi we're ever gonna see again. And 9 to Hina, we will block with the Rebecca. Yep. That's right. Two cards in hand. That's a 7,000 liter. It does take out both cards in hand if he. Jesus. Yeah, I think this might be about and it. And then yep. default 8, That's 13. It. That is game. Gorong takes the win. He is one of our finalists. That's right. So Quanrong from Malaysia moving on to the One Piece Grand Finals. And, I mean, it just, I think it came down a lot to that hand quality, right? He just seemed to have it the entire time. Yes, he, he kept hand advantage, kept board advantage. It was always leading in life. That was amazing play by Kwon Wong right there. The peel off was very strong, being able to oh, yeah, gain totally. card advantage there and remove the board on the same turn. Yeah, like uh, I I haven't been running Sanji's peel off in my Sakazuki. After seeing that game, I'm like, all right, maybe I need to give that another look. Yeah. Yeah. Mac and Ryu. Uh, do you think he's upset our Zoro player didn't make it? Uh, I'd be a little maybe. bit upset. <laughs> if, if I played that character in the show, I'd want to see that character in the top four. You know? That is also very true. Yeah. And so, we know one of our finalists. We have to wait and see who the other one is. Remember, the other semifinal match is between Clyde from North America and Rails Zero from well, EU. Here's the thing, though. We, uh, we, they did finish their match before this one. But I will not spoil who is in the finals <laughs> okay. until we see our matchup. Like Ying with the secret information here, man. I'm, I'm just paying attention to the game in front of me. And Ying's out there uh, researching while casting. That's multitasking. Wow. 
So this is a great show. Legion. And I would imagine we're going to find out pretty soon. We did run both semis simultaneously just uh, due to. According to what they're saying, since yeah. their playoffs for um, Malaysia finals, one wrong. It's currently on a 13 win streak. That is wild. That's, I mean, it's he's got a six win streak in the world championship so far. No. Knight came into this 5 0. Now he's 6 0 on the day. That's seven more, so that's 13. Wow. Unbeatable. 13 game win streak. Yeah. That's scary. I mean, if he can 2 other the Grand Finals, too, that'll be kind of one of the best runs, I think, I've seen in, like, a card game tournament in a long time. I mean, you certainly have to say he's, like, the best Sakazuki Mirror player in the world, that's for sure. Oh, he's so... He, he played extremely well. He understood the matchup. He understands where, uh, what cards to use, what cards to fish. Uh, yeah. Understanding. The Shigi is okay to discard. Like, yes, it's a 2k counter. But your other cards have so much more value. Your Hinas have a lot of value in your hand. It's not just because it's a non counter doesn't mean you should discard it every single time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of times you don't want to ditch the uh, the Hina too early. A lot of times, I mean, you can toss a you can toss a Rob Lucci, you can toss that seven cost Borsalino. We saw a lot some things where you're like, it feels very important, but. It's uh, it ends up being something that yeah, you you actually don't mind tossing, right? In the grand scheme of things, right? You have to think about what's going to benefit you the most long term. Yes, you're not looking one turn at a time. You're not yeah. looking at just your current turn. You're looking at next turn. You look at the turn after. You look at the turn after that. You keep on looking. You want to have a nice future site. Have a plan for multiple turns uh, going forward. Yeah. All right. I want to know one on the other side. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I'm like, come on, let's, let's move along. Let's move along. What are the results for the other, other semifinal? But, you know, again, we, we got to talk about the fact that coming into Worlds today, there were six representatives from Japan, and uh, they only got one into the semifinals, and that player did not make it to the finals, too. So... But the region that the card game that the anime is from, it's got to sting a little bit. I think that means next year Japan's going to kind of come storming back with a vengeance. <laughs> sure. Oh, favorite card time. Don Quixote Do Flamingo. Oh, all right. Not what I would have expected. <laughs> or is this a season two preview? <laughs> I mean, we gotta know everybody's favorite card. That's been the theme of the night, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like the uh, the two. Oh, he's got his whole deck box there, actually. I feel like the. Uh, yeah, he came to play. Right. I, I feel like the. Uh, oh, go ahead. He was playing in the matching uh, games oh, okay. yesterday. Nice. I feel like the two most popular cards we've seen have been the Don Quixote, Do Flamingo, and the seven cost Big Mom. Yeah, they have been very popular. The Big Mom has a really, really nice art. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised we don't have more uh, Gear 5 Luffy getting picked. We saw a couple, but I'm like, come on, it's the star of the show. <laughs> Being the star of the show doesn't mean it's everyone's favorite. You, you gotta look at the art and everything as well. Some people are like, oh, well, I can't pick Luffy, he's the star. I have to be like, I have to be unique, you know? I'm like, no way. Luffy's cool, pick him. Anakuri is uh, a favorite for a lot of people as well. Mm. Not just for the card, but like the character itself. It's... I haven't uh, very I've gotten impactful. that far in the show yet. I haven't gotten to any of the Big Mom Pirate stuff yet. Like You'll get I there said before, I'm, I, uh, I, I admitted this earlier on the broadcast, but uh, I didn't start watching the anime until I started playing the card game. So I'm in Skypea right now. That's all. That's all the farther I've made in the anime, and I'm like, I'm spoiled for everything, right? Like, oh, yeah, obviously you, you can't play the game now. without. Yeah, you can't play the game without being spoiled with like every single plot point. But like, I don't care, you know. Um, but it's been fun to watch. Yeah. I actually enjoy it. As has the uh, live action version of the game. Ver the game. Version of the, uh, <laughs> you know, the live action show based on the card game. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, Looks like we're gonna get, get it, we're gonna keep uh, chatting with McInerney here. Yeah, I, I want to translate for you, everyone, but I, unfortunately, I only able to do it. They're speaking too fast for me to do so. <laughs> I hear that. Okay, well. Oh. Ready for something. Oh. Alright. Tell us who won the other semifinal. Oh. Alright. We're having a replacement. See ya. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> He's been voted off the desk. So, okay. We have a new commentator. He has returned from earlier in the show. But nobody replaces McEnroe. He is he's staying. He's staying for the remainder of the night. Staying forever. Yep. I mean, do you want to be the person who tells me he has to leave? I don't. I don't want to be. No. He's like, yeah. I'm here for the duration. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> looking ahead to the finals, we it's it's hard to really, you know, do much of a preview right now because we only know one of the players going to the finals. Apparently, Ying knows the other one, but he won't tell me. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to tell you. I, I'm not spoiling it for we've, everyone. <laughs> we've been instructed we can't talk about it until they I'm, until they show sure it on the broadcast. So. Some of you guys already know who Straight it is, up. but yeah, I'm keeping myself in suspense. You're just trying to listen and translate, aren't you? I, I, I'm trying my best. I can it's tell. really hard. I can tell. It's really hard. It's really hard. Really hard. You haven't done any translating yet. I've done very, very little. It's, it's tough. It's tough when they it does, speak so fast. I, I understand the very little. It does sound tough. <laughs> okay, you don't so, want to hear just us. You, know? you want to hear the Japan side. You want to hear what they're talking about. You want to hear Mike and you as well. Just in case you can speak Japanese out there and you've decided not to watch the Japanese <coughs> language. <laughs> はい。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。
Um, I did miss who is he is going, going first or second. I think I think Clyde is going second, but um, I have to see. Once we see I, the board, well, no. I thought I did see it earlier, Ooh, but I could be wrong. Double you know, a Zuru big eruption and. Seven cost for Selena again as well. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, Selena. the funny thing is that that would look like a rough hand sometimes, but with Sakazuki's leader ability, with being able to cycle a card every turn, like you're still in in a great position to filter that into something that becomes much more usable between the card draw and the cycle every turn. It looks like Clyde is going first. We see the mark there, and Shoko oh, is, is okay. our second. All right. So what do you what do you cycle with Sakazuki if you're if you're Clyde here? What would you pick? Yeah. You know he's got to, probably one of the brown ears, I would imagine. Here we go. And they out. may begin. Clyde yeah. is going first. Starts with a dong, discarding the Luchi. Oh, okay, the Rob uh, Luchi. All right. And play a man shared right off the bat. Whoa. Okay. I mean, it's like, hey, if you don't remove this, I'm just going to start bringing things back. I mean, I don't know how soon you want to pay for that, but I think the mantra out there is, is actually pretty interesting. And I always feel like we it's see stuff that... You see something like this. No, I, I was about to say, I feel like we always see things from Clyde that you don't see from other Sakazuki players. Yes. In a good way. Now Blaze for the little bit more cycle. Now going for the eruption. Draws a yep. Suru off of it. So here we go, draw. Okay. See a Suru. Speaking of drawing Suru. Starts with a 5 at leader. But here, here's the thing, by playing that Man Sherry, when you play that uh, brand new, Man Sherry is live for yeah. an immediate play to recycle something back to hand. And in this case, because Banshee is rested, it is also it also acts as a blocker, forcing the Sakazuki to attack into the Banshee. Otherwise, there's going to be numerous um, uses of Banshee, so he exactly. will not get hit. I think it's actually really smart. I mean, you've got four of them in your deck, probably, right? You're, so you play one of them early. Again, you're just draining resources from your opponent, and, and that's pressure. Like, Clyde putting pressure on his opponent, legit, by playing a turn one Manchery. Oh, it's cool, Suru. I like it. Yeah. Grabs the Suru, uh, we plays see the Brown, it would be fine. Kuzan and Suru takes yeah. the Kuzan. And we'll see the Masher get rested. Putting two Surus to the bottom and grabbing a Luchi back. All right. Don't mind that one bit. No. So now Masher will act as a blocker. It deters one attack at life. Yeah, obviously you aren't like forced to attack the uh, the Manchuri, but you don't want to let that ready again. You don't want to keep it up. Yeah, you, no. you can't leave it there. You don't want to let that stand, yeah. Okay, Borsalino comes in, and uh, yeah. And back to Clyde. <coughs> yeah. So we see... Clyde's totally fine with that Manjuri gets getting yep. hit by the Sakazuki too, so... There's a great eruption, and we know he has the town base in hand to remove the Borsalino. Yeah. The question is, will he pump the leader or will he pump the... Brand new. Oh, he does pump the brand new, so it will can see a 6 and a 5k swing. Starts with yeah, a 6k swing. With nothing on the opponent's board, I think I think being able to set yourself up to swing twice is, is really great because, again, it's it's more pressure, right? Yes. Do you drain the, the more life pressure a you bit? can apply, the better. So if he takes the 6k swing, you could see a potential 7k swing. But it is a 5 instead. As we do know, I does have another brand new in hand. Right. Okay. Gives up the Suru. What are you gonna do? You gonna brand new here? <coughs> Those are pretty and obligated to do that. Right? I do believe he has not used the leader effect yet. Yep. Yeah. Discarding the Hina. And there's the second brand new. You found a Rebecca off of it. Grabs a 7 cost Porcelino. He is on curve for that 7 cost wow. Porcelino. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really nice. Getting the Rebecca from the Sakazuki uh, leader ability, then finding the uh, find the Porcelino with the brand new. Like, things really coming together so far in this, uh, this game for Clyde. 
そしてじゃあ白子くん選手ターン返ってますが。<laughs> and is that Mihawk? Yeah. We, this shows the mastery of how I was playing the game. He understood because of the player uh, player did Mulligan, which is why at the end of the hand they had, he was saying, okay, Mulligan, or at, at the very least, um, Chokoku uh, Mulligan probably. And because of Mulligan, he can take the chance. Unless he has that brand new. On turn one, he will not be able to answer the man Sherry efficiently. And we saw him toss the Mihawk for the Sakazuki leader ability. Brand new comes in. Being a grab from that. Do you want to grab the, the Kuzan or do you want to just grab the uh, the Tajiki for the counter? Yeah, how many two is I don't think Kuzan is right at this moment. It is too late to play it totally, efficiently. Totally agree. Yeah. Especially since we know Clyde does have the 7 cost post node hand. Kind of like the. I mean, I kind of like the Hound Blades, but you could make a great argument for the Tashigi too, just to get that counter. He does oh, he's going to pull the Kuzan. On. Wow, okay. That is interesting. So, we may yeah. see a Kuzan being played here. Yeah, you so definitely you can. can. Extra so, you can get the extra draw. But will he go at life or will he go at the brand new? He goes at the brand new. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. There's the Kuzan. the Kuzan. You get to replace it anyway. You get to draw because of the uh, the Kuzan uh, when played. Yes, it does replace itself. So we can yeah. see a potential um, force tail coming down to remove the Kuzan. And mm -hmm. of course, we will get a 5k swing at leader as well. Yeah. Mm, Clyde thinking through his <coughs> turn here. Let's see. He has a... Uh, as access, does he have the Hina in the trash? I'm trying to remember. No, he's got a Hina in the hand now. So he does, he does have, have Hina in the trash, but he does have Hina in hand. He does have access to the cards for the combo, but I believe this is just a 7 Dawn turn, right? Yes, this is the 7 yeah. Dawn turn, but okay. he is able to remove t both if he chooses to remove both. Yeah. Uh, Starts from 5 at leader, minus yep. This is such a big lead. You're 4 life to 2 life. Oh, yeah. All right, looking through the trash. So, do you think we're going to see just Hina and Rob Lucci then? Uh, so you can remove the board, establish two. I think I, I can't say. I, I think the board wipe is better. I I agree. I mean, yeah, it looks like that's what we're probably going to see. Yep. Yep. There is the board wipe. I mean, that's the thing, is the removal that you have access to in Sakazuki is also going to establish your board. That's why these that's why these games look so back and forth, where it's like 3 to 4 on one side, then 3 to 4 on the other side, and, and so on and so on. You know, it's because you're, you're doing two things at once, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing about removing the board and keeping the board still in the hand, if my opponent plays a Hina or plays a Lushi, and that's the only one, I can bottom deck those. Or yeah, if they play a um, Porcelino and... Because Porcelino is 7 cost, it's much harder to remove at higher cost based on numbers. Uh, 7 cost Porcelino can end up being a removal for the higher cost cards instead of multiple cards. Yep. That is true. <coughs> Having a number of uh, attacks they have access to is such a premium too in this, in this matchup. And here multiple you have to things. you need to be able to answer Rebecca Hinalucci or some way of removing multiple bodies. What? I don't see a Hina in that trash. I see a yeah. Rebecca, I see a Lucian in hand. Yeah, that's, but that's is what I was there a Hina in hand? Too. I think there is. I think there's a fourth from the right. Looks like a Hina That does look like Yeah. Calculating the Don. Yeah, you just go six to face to start off with. All right. Then uh, six to face. We might see the same kind of thing, right? Yeah. So minus on the Hina, and then we might uh, see the Inaluchi come out or uh, Shokoku then. Yep. Right yep. back. There's yep. the Hina, and there's yep. the Luchi. Hina Luchi versus Hina Luchi. We don't see a Rebecca Hina Luchi. We see a Hina Luchi. That's coming later, you know. You got now, part that of now that there's some Hinas in the trash, now that that's when the Rebecca's come out. It's going to be back and forth going for this uh, removal. Who can keep their board the longest? But we have what, seven cards in hand versus six? 
Seven or six? Something like that. Pretty pretty even hand size so far. <coughs> so minus on the Hina. So looking at the hand of Clyde. Now that's the hand of uh, So here's the thing, right? Moment. He has nine dawn. If I remember yep. correctly, there is a Helm Blaze in hand. So you can Helm Blaze the Hina. And then seven drop. Uh, forcing to removing the Luchi as well. Hitting both cards to the bottom of the deck, and both cards are very critical in that mirror match. I think you're absolutely right. I think that's the, the most efficient way to do it, and it's, uh, you're going to be building a board too. And uh, and Shoku and, uh, oh, I think he dropped another card. Judge had to grab a card. He did, and there we go. We see it. We see the Hound Blaze, and we see oh, yeah. the Borsalino. Oh, Hound Blaze? We assume we're going to see the Borsalino. Uh, there you go. Bottom deck, hitting both cards. Yep. That, those cards, like I said, they're vertical in the mirror match. And because there's no he no more Hina in the trash. Yeah, exactly. Well, so now uh, Shoku-kun runs into the situation where, you know, what's your answer for this Borsalino? Look at that hand. Ah, uh, doesn't look like there's no any answer see? hand. He needs to be able yeah. to find it. The Scar's yeah. Borsalino you know, draws. There's a Hina! He drew oh, it! He drew wow. a Hina. He does have an answer to the Borsalino now. I mean, that's the thing. You can never count Sakazuki out. He just has such a, a, a way of going through the cards in his deck. Finding what he needs. Drawing one and then getting another one from the Sakazuki leader ability is so strong. That was a really, really good draw. I have to say. Yeah. yeah. Now, how will he play the turn? Yes, you can play um, the Hina. Mm. You're also able to play uh, the deck. <coughs> yeah, it's a good question. I mean, you've got. But you are Don unable to... to remove both bodies. It's very difficult to remove both bodies with that hand. Right. There's only. He was saying, even though if you remove that uh, the hand, right? He's only at one life. If that brand new stays, that would be lethal. So he, he has to either attack the brand new, or yeah, set up a way that he can remove at least one and keep up at least a blocker. I think you do attack the brand new. I think you remove the Borsalino. You know, you'll have a Rebecca out there then as a blocker at least. Yeah. Or he but can play the Hina and, and then play, use the seven cost Borsalino to remove the Borsalino, uh, and yeah. having a 5k swing at the brand new. Then you're just going to see the counter. But probably right. I think we're going to see that either way. No, he's just going to let it go. Huh. Alright, so Clyde not wanting to give up anything from the hand. He goes for the Rebecca Hina Luchi instead. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Then, yeah, we're going to see the, uh, the Luchi. Rob come in. Mm -hmm. That's Luchi. Yep. His resources running thin, though, at this rate. Yeah, but he's been able to grab the board back again. And... But he also kept a Manchuria. He is also able to play Manchuria and use it now because of that. I like this. We bring back with this. You can go for a counter or you can go for a blocker. He gets Shigi maybe? To Shigi. He wants yeah, to counter. Okay. Yeah. So if we know he grabbed two to Shigi's back. I think at this point in the game that's uh definitely not a bad idea. Yeah, to Shigi is very important in this case. <laughs> Yeah, managing your counters uh, between keeping the trash, bringing them back to your hand is, is one of the more uh, subtle parts of this matchup. No. Here's the thing though, um, Pai does not have Rebecca Hina Luchi. Yeah, I mean, things seem like they were going in Clyde's favor and now suddenly it's turned around in a big way. Now he's on that, the back but, foot. If that match stays, life. there's going to be a lot of value coming in. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, so we do have a Han Blaze. What else do we have? The Suru, I guess. I mean, you're going to have to Sakazuki leader ability and figure something out and toss on the Borsalinos. We'll see. Get a closer look. Yeah, it tosses that Borsalino. What do you draw? Draws Hina. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't help you out a ton, probably. 
Starts at Hina at and minus him Hina. Well, he let the Hina go. Well, he counter. Hmm. Well, he blocked. Uh, Rebecca Rebecca used blocks. the box. Yeah. That trash looking very sparse now for uh, Shoko Kun as well. But here's the thing Hi, can. Right. He can play Rebecca. Does. To get Luchi back. And just play the Luchi. Yep. To remove the Hina and the Mansherry. I would imagine that's what we're going to see. Oh, the Tsuru on the Rob, though. Yeah, okay. I mean, you can do this, too. That, that, that works, too, yes. Yeah. Now, he opts. Does he want to remove Luchi, or does he want to remove the man Sherry? Uh, with three life, I'm more afraid of the man Sherry than the Luchi. And uh, he also has the Houndblaze to remove yeah. the other, to bottom deck the other one. So he can true. KO, he, one gets KO'd, one gets bottom deck. Question is, which one does he want to KO? Which one does he want to bottom deck? I think you bottom deck the Luchi, just because you you don't want that getting brought back by uh, by something. Two and two, right? Two, two. We'll see. Okay. Uh, and bottom yeah. decks the Luchi. Yep. I think that's uh, that's what we were expecting. I believe that, that is like, the better play as well because we totally, knew totally. um, Joko could grab multiple cost reductions from the trash. Rakazuki mm -hmm. uh, leader ability uh, to start the turn for Shoko Kun finds a brand new. The brand new can. <laughs> Find a Luchi. If all this is put in the trash, what is mm. able to find a, a, a uh, Hina off of it? He can Rebecca Hina Luchi right back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I appreciate the uh, three cards in hand. Yeah. I appreciate the sportsmanship between the two players too, really kind of taking the patience to make sure they both understand what the other one's doing, overcoming the little bit of the language barrier that uh, we've got in the match. It's a thing though. Shoko kun can. Because uh, Rebecca is zero attack, Tsuru uh, mm -hmm. is also zero attack. Um, that. Seven cards. Uh, Borsino can remove the Luchi. Mm. Yeah, very true. And go for vanish that way. So you can attack into one and remove one. So it stops our brand new to start. Yeah. Still got the Don to uh, work with here. Uh, well, it's a. You grab the Tashigi maybe? For the counter? Shigari for a counter? Morcelino? Great Eruption? They're, they're all actually good cards here. Yeah. Uh, I would say Tajigi or Great Eruption has the most value in this case. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a tough choice. I don't mind either one. Looks like he's going to go with the uh, Great Eruption. Goes for Great Eruption? Okay. Yep. And minus on Rob, it looks like. Takes the hit because he wants yep. more cards in hand. That is a Hina. Wow, it's huge. Yep, and there's the Borsani that I was talking about earlier. Because mm -hmm. Joku is not afraid of the board because they're both uh, power attack. That is a Rebecca! <laughs> All right. Say it with me now. Rebecca, Hina, and of course we Rebecca do have the Lucy in the trash. Oh, wait, is there Lucy in trash? I think there's still one. Yeah, I think I see one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a Lucy okay. in trash. Yeah. There's that hand again. Yeah, so the Rob on top. Uh, we know he wants to bring it back. There's Rebecca on the board already, so he's going to be able to establish a good amount of blocking, too, actually. Well, Rebecca Hina Luchi does take up eight, uh, eight on, so it starts with a uh, seven at leader, minus a one to the Borsalino. I like it. 
Yeah, Nothing looks in the trash. Let me see if he's got always two rocks. Always inspect the trash. Always inspect to see what's left in there. What resources does your opponent have? Yeah, you. When you play the soccer mirror, you are a raccoon, man. You are always in the trash. <coughs> you want to know everything that's in there. This 7k swing. He takes it. He's putting wow. himself in lethal range. That is bold. What What do you think the plan is? I mean, because, yeah, your board's going to be removed. You you kind of have to make that assumption that the combo is going to come through. So how do you come back and win from here? Looking very rough for Shoko Kun. Right here, yes, there is a board, but they're all zero attackers. Um, and, of course, you have the leader as a five. Yeah. Oh, uh, see. Is it just me? Is that a Hound Blaze in Clyde's hand? But we do have the Rebecca Hinaluchi in Shokoku's hand. Our Spike yep. discarding a Kuzan with the leader effect. I mean, how in the world do you even get through? There's, there's two blockers out there. Yeah, you can get a good amount of removal with your combo, but it's, it's looking a little bit grim. In this third place match here for uh, Shiroko Kuna, representative from uh, Japan. Clyde playing Starts. for that bronze and cost Luffy. Starts with a 5 at leader, minus and 1 to Hina. Hina's now 2 cost. Mm. Take it. Takes the first 5. Oh, finds a Kaido, alright. It's a little late for that, in my opinion. I was gonna say, do you think you're gonna find a chance to play it at this point in the game? I don't think you I don't think, I don't you, think do, you do, either. Yeah. Then... Imagine if it was a Mihawk. <laughs> I do, based on the play, our next turn play from Clive will most likely be the Tashigi onto the Rebecca that's gonna come down. And then Houndblaze going for, let's see, 5 plus 3. Uh, that is a 13k swing at life. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be extremely difficult for uh, Goku Kun to uh, survive here. Now, can Clyde reduce the cost of that combo based on what he draws? He draws a. Brand new? Uh, yeah, but you've got that, like I said, you've got that hound blaze. Blackhawks can combo out of a 13k swing. He needs yeah. four 3K, uh, 2Ks and a 1k counter. And we know Shiroko Kun grabbed multiple Tashigis from the trash. True, I want to take a look at his hand one more time. I'm trying to recall exactly what his counter potential was. So, Alright, here one, we go. Two, three. There is ele there's 7k encounter. So you can go okay. up to 12. Okay. And remember, Clyde can go upwards to 13k right here. Mm. I mean, you gotta. You're gonna attack in first, you're gonna draw that Rebecca block, and then you're gonna go for it, right? Uh, no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> you, go, you go for the Tashigi to reduce the Rebecca oh, to sure, sure. two. Oh, sure, sure. Hound Blaze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm taking Rebecca. It's 3.30 a.m., man. <laughs> and here we go. A 13k swing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, looking at his hand, doing the math, and that is showing a it. Oh, yep. takes the win. That's that's that. And Clyde is our third place player here at the One Piece World Championship. That's the three, right? That's the three, right? Oh, I don't believe it is a. I don't believe it is best of three. Yeah. I, do, I, do we do we know? Do any of us know? <laughs> Alright, we we've heard from production on our side it's it's best of one, but we'll see what they say over there. <laughs> I think Clyde's our third place player in my heart. 
and he is <laughs> reality so as well. So only a best. <laughs> okay, so it's it, a best was, it looks like a best of one. While Clyde was ready to play the long game, man, he, he was, was ready. Like, he was uh, like, you know what? It's a game two. Let's it, go. He has it. If he doesn't, <laughs> go for it. If yeah. He did not have it. Clyde takes the win. I love it. Our third place match at the Bronze Goofy. Our finals, it. however, is the best of three. Yeah, we know that for sure. We know that for sure. We are getting a best of three for the finals, but uh, but we do uh, we do have Clyde as our third place player here at the One Piece World Championships. Shokukun takes fourth. Still a very respectable performance from our top four representative in uh, Japan. But uh, NA takes third, and that uh, means we can start to look ahead to the grand finals, EU versus Malaysia. I I'm excited for that match. Like, both players play phenomenally. We can see the mastery of the deck from both players uh, throughout the whole tournament. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I... Roborye did lose on stream earlier and then did get win the uh, rematch afterwards. Mm -hmm. he, even though when he, he lost that match, he played phenomenally. He played... I don't know, and I don't know anyone else that could play as well as he did at that time. I mean, that's kind of the interesting situation, right? Is that now in this best of three, you know, we get a chance to see players maybe take a few more chances, right? Yes. And who is who's going to be, uh, you know, more willing to do that kind of thing? That's a question I've got. But uh, I, I do feel like... I do feel like uh, Rails has his uh, work cut out for him. He's going up against Guanrong, who has not lost a game yet in the World Championship. That's an intimidating prospect. That said, you know you got to win two in a row if you want to stay undefeated in the finals. Yes. If you're Guanrong, so we'll see if he can pull that off. But uh, any more you want to recap with that? Because we, we saw the semifinal and then we jumped right into our third place match. Any more to add to that? <laughs> I, I, I don't have much left because. Me neither. It's, it's more Sakazuki, it's more Sakazuki. And players just play phenomenally. I, I, I'm repeating after myself again and again because I, I don't know what else to say besides the fact that they are the best of the world right now. Yeah, I. Yeah, at the end of the day, like, uh, you, we do see all these Sakazuki <coughs> mirrors, but we do see, like, little differences in terms of how the players approach them, which has been fun. I, I, I think the, the best example of that is that Clyde will play the game in a way that doesn't seem to be the same as the way the other players will do it. Uh, he's willing to do some kind of wacky stuff like the turn one Manchuri, like, uh, you know, attacking his blocker into your blocker, that kind of thing. Um, really kind of putting the opponent on the back foot, and I think that served him well. It, it wasn't enough to get to the finals, but it was enough to take third, and something to take note of if you want to play this leader and you want to play this uh, matchup, because, man, I mean, I don't think we're going to be uh, seeing any less Sakazuki anytime soon unless there's some sort of uh, thing I don't expect coming up, but I think it's still a, still a good leader, no, still a good leader to uh, to be studying right now. Yeah, but the thing is, um, let's go back to that uh, turn one match here. Like, I explained it earlier. He... It looked like he opted for the turn one man share play because Shoko-kun did mulligan. If he mulligan, that means he, it's very unlikely for him to open that or uh, that brand new for the turn one play. Because the brand new is only there's only four brand new's in the whole deck. Uh, he can only there's only four cards you can find where you can play that as a turn one, uh, and that is the only card that can actually punish the man share being played on turn one where he plays a, a brand new afterwards. Turns the brand share sideways to get a card back, is now rested, and uh, now the brand new can attack into it, as well as the leader attacking a uh, leader. However, because he didn't see it, he did not see that brand new, so the leader attacks into the man share instead and saves one extra card from his hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're swapping, it uh, looks like we're swapping hosts again on the desk over there in Japan, but uh, McEnroe will not be moved. He stays. Welcome back, other host. Welcome back. Hope we had a nice break. <laughs> Soon we'll have our world champion. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Moments away from uh, getting By the way, that's into my translation. our best of three. Oh, really? Oh, oh, that was your translation. I thought you were just yeah, that was that. what he said. Soon we'll have our world champion. <laughs> All right. 
Establishing right off the bat that it is a best of three, that's always a good thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. And it does seem like we're going right into the uh, the finals. Doesn't seem like we're taking a break. I mean, I don't think I don't think I need one. I don't think I need one either. Well, you I am so hyped after that match. Like just in general, match after match, these guys are amazing. These guys know what they're doing, and they understand exactly what your opponent is about to do because you do it yourself. You know your play. That means your opponent knows your play, and it's back and forth. Yeah, I mean, at this point. All the player, you know, both players should be familiar with each other's decks. They should be familiar with each other's play style, either from playing against them or from watching them. Um, so we should get a really good match. And, you know, in a mirror like this, too, you almost just kind of expect it to go to the third game, too, because where things are decided by such, you know, minute decisions game to game in this in the Sakazuki mirror, like, you're, you're probably... It's hard to 2-0, you know? It's very, very hard. So, yeah. I... I am personally hoping for a full three game match. I think we're going to get it. I would be surprised if we didn't. We'll find out. Now the players are getting ready. Again, uh, we are going to have rails from Europe taking on Kwanrung from Malaysia. <laughs> so Kwanrung has so phenomenal play. He is still undefeated after uh, the Malaysian finals and then into the world finals. 13 games. Can he keep that going and stay undefeated? Yeah, that's. I think that's the big story coming into this one, is to have a player go through Swiss undefeated, go through the semis, win that game as well, come into the finals, that is a ton of momentum. Um, and it can go a couple different ways, right? You can crumble under the pressure. If you lose the first game of the finals, suddenly that streak is broken and you start to doubt yourself. The nerves can kind of get a hold of you, right? So there's a lot of mental fortitude that's required on the side of Quanrong, I think, to uh, approach this match in a in a healthy way, right? Yeah. Uh, then on the other side, you've got uh, you've got our player from Europe. You've got Rail Zero, who w had to lose a couple games to get here. You know, had to uh, lose to Clyde, then come back and beat Clyde again later uh, in the semis to make the finals. So already showing some resilience, showing uh, the ability to handle defeat and move forward. That's an intimidating opponent to go up against if you are the undefeated player, actually. Oh, for sure, absolutely. So, here's the thing, though. Rail Zero. He lost to Guangrong earlier today. Right. And then he lost to Clyde earlier today. Yep. He came back and beat Clyde in uh, the semifinals. Can he come back and beat Guangrong in the finals? I mean, it is kind of crazy, right? You know, we've got one of our one of the bubble players, essentially one of the players that uh, did take two losses in Swiss. Uh, he snuck in there, you know, and uh, now that seems to just kind of be the comeback king, and that uh, you know, take those losses and then come back and get that revenge later. Did it against Clyde? Can he do it against Quan Rong in the finals? That is the Cinderella story. Just because you lost earlier doesn't mean you lose the entire thing. You can come back. What matters is the playoff finals. Losing Swiss does not mean you're out. All right. I mean, I can't imagine getting that excited without thinking about ready to get into the game. At least that's my hope. <laughs> oh, it looks like they're getting ready to get in. Hey, all right. Here, Here we, we go. go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. The One Piece Card Game World Championship Grand Finals. Europe versus Malaysia. There is Rail Zero from the EU region. Playing the Sakazuki and his opponent Kwanrong from Malaysia, also playing the Sakazuki. Kwanrong undefeated coming into this one. 6 0 oh so far on the day between Swiss and the semifinal match. Uh, meanwhile, we just talked about it. Rails on the other side lost to Kwanrong in Swiss, looking for revenge here, but he did defeat a player that he lost to in Swiss in the semis to make it here. So, a player with resilience, I think we're in for a great series. And we see here, Rail Zero did optimal again, and he is going first of our first game. Um, Guarong opts to keep his hand, and 
will be setting life. Uh, I noticed it was a brand new in hand, there was a cruiser in hand, and I do believe there was a um, Hound Blaze as well, from what I noticed. Unless I'm wrong on the Hound Blaze, I know for sure the other two. Yeah, I didn't catch a glimpse of it off to look when they when they show us again. On wrong with a little uh, shuffle there. Sending the deck back over again. And uh, yeah, there it is. Rob Sabo. There's a Sanji's oh, it was, peel-off. Okay. It was Sanji's peel-off. Yeah. But He's we got do... that manga Sabo. That is his one and only Sabo in his deck, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you see that uh, pretty <laughs> often where we've gone down to, at one point, there were people running like three Sabos, and now a lot of times, if you see one, it's just one, it seems like. It's one, two, or three. It really depends on how you want to build a deck and what you're building the deck for. Mm -hmm. Sabo's super good against yellow, but not too, too good in the mirror. It's not bad. Totally. It's really good against, uh, you know, Luchi plays, but... It doesn't do much against the bottom deck in place. Wow, look at those uh, championship uh, Kuzan and Borsalino. That, that is looking pretty nice, too. Yeah. So we have a Manchuri, Borsalino, Tsuru, Kuzan, and Hina to start. That is the black Hina and not the blue Hina. And Relzio is going first. You want to see the blue Hina uh, in the opening hand. You want to see the brand new in your opening hand. However, yeah. he has two... Uh, you have... The uh, leader effect, draw for turn, leader effect, he has up to three chances to see one of them. Yeah, I mean, Sakazuki is just such an incredibly powerful leader. Uh, the cycle alone, I mean, if that's the only ability he had had, he'd still be a great leader. But he also gets that right. minus one cost on the attack, too. Here we go. And here we go, about to get, get started. Alright, the battle has started the timer is ticking down already 30 minutes for this first game here first and turn going to rail zero shake. yeah so it starts by discarding the borsalino passing turn because kuzon has good value in the mirror match yep <coughs> exactly so the brand new of course oh out we the, see uh, the rebecca as well yeah so good start hand wise for kwan rong i feel like yep takes the the eruption, discarding the peel, uh, peel off that was already in hand, because yeah. he doesn't need it now. He has no. so much cards that have a good advantage. There's the Kaido, but will we get to the point of seeing the Kaido being played? All right, yeah, leader. Hit. Start with the five leader. Yep. And find a uh, Borsalino, okay. Next, what will he discard? What card does he think does not have the value? He discards the Mansherry. Okay. He does not get the Hina. Well, he played the Hina, though. That's a good question. I think he chooses the Pastor. He doesn't want yeah. to play the Hina. I, you know, and I, I think that's fine. I, th I think you are willing to accept a little bit of pressure from your opponent in order to get that one more turn to possibly set up a combo. The last thing you want to do is play that Hina, not accomplish much with it, and then not have that piece when you need it. You know? Yeah, it could possibly get removed. It gets bottom deck. That is the only Hina he'll ever he'll have for exactly. a while unless he sees exactly. another one somehow. And we see the uh, the Kuzan being played. Gets value. Discards the Sabo. Doesn't really need a Sabo. He has triple Rebecca in hand. All right. Well, I mean, that's going to be a, a lot of blocking. That's going to be a lot of uh, bringing things back. A lot of combo potential. He draws the number Porcelino. However, yeah. he doesn't have many plays left. You want to discard it? He does discard the Porcelino. Yeah, the Borsalino, I feel like, doesn't give you a ton of value, it seems like, in this matchup. Um, you know, so a six at leader. Yep. You just see it discarded a lot of times. That's going to be another life taken by Quanrong. Down to two life already, but wanting to build that hand size, finds the Toshigi. There's a Kuzan from Rails as and well. And Hound Blaze. Yeah, okay. Useful draw, definitely. Definitely, definitely very good. <coughs> All right, so Quan Rong is now. on 6th dawn. He has two Luchis in hand. Hmm. Starts with a 5. He can go 5-5-5 five, five, five here and play Luchi to remove the... Who's on? Another 5. True. 
This is taking a lot of cards out of uh, Real Zero's hand right now. He's already on the back foot as of this. Yeah, and he's going to use the uh, Bart to, the, uh, Bart to uh, counter again. So really wants to keep that life advantage play. for the moment. Yeah. I didn't notice Brandon, but he did see a... Uh, so brand new play does grab a Houndblaze. Yep. The first look through the trash coming in from uh, Rails there. And... There's cars. Brand new, uh, the, of course, you know, for the Eater effect. Yep. And there it is, the new. first Luchi <laughs> of the game. Yeah, I mean, you gotta remove the Kuzan on the other side. Uh, that is that is very clear, but it's it's so nice getting to remove it that smoothly, right? Just getting the minus cost from the Kuzan on your side, playing the Rob, really establishing a strong board, and now it the pressure is really on Rails already yes. to uh, try to come back and, and even this board out. Does he have the tools? He's got the Hina. He, can, he does have multiple Hinas now, so he can play a Hina, then use the Hound Blaze, and then attack over the Kuzan. True. <coughs> this does remove both the Luchi and Kuzan. Hmm. So first by the Scars, the Hina. That's not that's true. Then, he plays the Hina. Luchi? Yeah, I, I think we're gonna... Luchi. I was gonna say, yeah, I think we're gonna see what we expected, right? And and getting that uh, Rob Luchi bottom deck with the Hound Blaze is so nice. And here comes the attack on the Kuzan. Not much you can do to stop that. Yeah, and, it doesn't uh, only give out that many cards in hand. But yeah, that is yeah. a removal. Uh, Sonrong is going to 8. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I believe there was a Borsalino in hand. Yep, there is a Borsalino in hand, so he doesn't have to use too much and play be able to play a big body. Okay, gonna uh, discard the brand new to cycle here. It's gonna be a 6k attack coming through onto rails, and, and yeah, just gonna counter that out. He wants with to keep, stay as healthy as possible. Yeah, and this is one of those nice uh, board establishing turns, right? Yeah, you can play that 7 cost. Uh, Porcelino, keep the brand new. So again, the, the pressure kind of mounting still for Guanrai. I mean, those uh, those brand news could come in clutch down the road. So, Rail Zero is on nine right now. He can swing six, play Suru, and then play his own uh, Porcelino down to remove his Porcelino. There's yeah. the Suru. It's very unfortunate that he doesn't have a um, great eruption instead. Uh, playing a Suru is not what you want to do. <laughs> You're losing a 2k counter. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not ideal, but you do what you got to do, right? I mean, at least it does let you establish your own 7-cost uh, Borsalino. So the job got done, you know? And I do believe we do have a Rebecca Hina Lucci play. Possibly. I've got if Ooh. there is a Hina in trash or not. Mm -hmm. There is a Hina. Right there. Yep. Round the bottom. Should be. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to probably see that attack first. We can see an attack. Uh, we can see. A... See the Rebecca too. Yeah. Yep. He can attack. He can do 5 5. He can do hmm. 7. And make the play. I don't know if you want to use the uh, Great Eruption hand or not. Yeah, I don't know. Yep. I think this cars definitely make an argument to hold one. on to it. Yeah, I do like that. I Starts with a 5, minus the yeah. uh, Borsino. He's found a Hound Blaze, too. Yep. You know, we, one thing we haven't talked about, too, is the hand size for uh, Rails is, is very low compared to his opponent right now. Had 3, took that life just to get up to four. Oh, there's also a man share play. I missed it. Oh, wow. Yeah. He can Plenty really of options. get advantage. The game state is Rong's oyster right now. He has so, got a lot of ways. so much advantage. This is unfair at this point. He goes for a second <laughs> five. He wants to take cards from Real Zero's hand. I think I, I really love this because 
not only are you, you know, putting the pressure on the life total, but you're reducing the options that your opponent has in their next turn, too. So, yeah, here comes the classic combo. That's going to clear the board out. And now you leave your opponent with just three cards drawing into a fourth at the beginning of the turn. That's got to feel really good for Quan Ron. You can go for the five and then the Kaido play because he doesn't have much. Oh! He drew a healer! Hmm, okay, well. Suddenly your options do expand a little bit. He's going to attack 5,000 into Hina. Yep. Let's the Hina go because he's saying, you know what? I don't want to lose the Hina. Kaido's pretty clutch here, actually. Being able to drop... <laughs> Draw four, replenish the hand, suddenly back up to seven cards in hand. You're going to feel However, a little bit more comfortable there. However, he doesn't have a lot of counters. Oh, only 3k counters total out of that seven card hand. That is ooh, that is a little bit awkward, yeah. He still has the leader effect that he can uh, discard. Yeah, that's true, doesn't he? Yeah. Question is, what to discard? I personally, I'd probably discard uh, either Ice Age or the Borsalino. Yeah. I'm personally leaning towards the Borsalino. Yep, I think uh, I think where you're running a little bit short on removal anyway, keeping the Ice Age uh, to facilitate some of the cheaper removal is, is decent. Um, otherwise, that 7 cost Porcelino does become a bit clunky too, because you're, you're going to be wanting to play more than just a, you know two cards in a turn probably. I'm not Nobody sure. Like, if Kaido gets removed, right? If there is enough cards to remove the Kaido, Rail Zero is in that extremely poor uh, bad spot. It makes it even yeah. worse than what it was before. So yeah, Shashua 5, reducing the Kaido, yeah. gives up the yeah. brand new. Then a 7. <laughs> okay. Alright, things are getting a little bit Takes scary now. Seven. That's a life taken, yeah. No That's counters. A rob. That's a First rob eruption. Kaido is now 7 cost. Okay. This card's Hina to draw mm -hmm. 1. Crown Blaze this is a draw, I believe. And uh, there's a great eruption. Is now five. Yep. Pays four for the Rebecca. Guess who's coming back? It's going to be Hina. Brings the Kaido down to one cost. One. Yeah. Crown right, Blaze. That's going to bottom deck it. And then oh 7,000 to leader. That is terrifying. He, has I mean, no, Rails no, he is... doesn't have enough counters to get out of it. Rails is on the ropes, man. That is, that is a full board. But can we see the board control come back on the side of Rails? I think it's going to be really rough either way. I, I don't, don't know how think you so. Get we see the good yeah. option. We see the Hound Blaze. The Rebecca is not staying on board. Yes, he can Rebecca. Yes, he can Hina. Yes, he can Luchi. There is not enough counters in hand to come back. I mean, yeah, like I was going to say, I don't know how you get out of this one. If you are Rails here. And uh, I think we're about to see Guan Rong extend his win streak to seven games in a row here at the World Championships. Unless something absolutely crazy happens here. So he starts with you know, decking one, attacking the other. There's the Rebecca. Yep. And we we can see most of this board dealt with. Does he? What does he take? He, does he take a two K counter? Does he take the Hina? Does he take a one K counter? What will he take? The Hina wants to remove the board. Minus and on the Rob Lucci, the Lucci his own Rob. The yep. Board. yep, there it is. Because he understands, yeah. even if he takes a 2k counter, if he, there is a removal from our own side, it's going to be game regardless. So he yeah, takes the sure. gamble saying, all right, there's, if there's no removal, there's a chance. If there's a removal, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Six cards in the hand for and There's uh, the Rails. Great Eruption. Yep. We know there's not a lot of counter. And the Hound Blaze, no blocker, 15k at leader. That is game. Yeah, that's tough to handle, yeah. And Quan Rong does extend his win streak here at the One Piece World Championship to seven games in a row. 5-0 in Swiss, won his semifinal, now wins the first game of the Grand Finals, and he is one game away from being the world champion. One more game. He's keeping the streak. He's currently 14 games in undefeated.
That is incredible. I mean, yeah, you mentioned that earlier. He's got a win streak that extends back to the regional uh, tournament that he played in to get here. 14 games in a row. That is that is amazing. At, at this level of play, especially in something like the, the Sakazuki Mirror match, which you know he has played a ton of. Oh, yeah, for sure. That, yeah. This is not simple. It's not very simple. You have to understand the match. Understand, like I said, you have to predict what your opponent would do, predict what you will do, uh, and be able to respond. Yep. <coughs> yep, exactly. Maximum efficiency, zero mistakes. I think we're seeing some pretty flawless play from uh, Quan Rong. Uh, it's not to say that Rails is, is any slouch himself. He's playing well. But just ended up on the back foot early on in that last game and just never seemed to really be able to uh, to you know find his footing. There we go. Yeah. Here's the thing about um. There's another thing about the Sanji's peel off that makes it amazing. Uh, in the mirror match, it's mm. a trigger converts its Kaido. Yeah. If it's Kaido, it, if it's hit in life, it's just a Kaido. But if hit in life, uh, as a Sanji's peel off. You're drawing too. You're getting more and more value every single time. Yeah. All right, here we go. About to start game number two here of the uh, One Piece World Championship Grand Finals. Just waiting for that uh, last little bit of shuffling to happen. Wait to see if players are going to end up uh, mulliganing. Yep. And Real Zero does decide to mulligan. He doesn't want to keep his hand. Yep. Uh, I can't tell what's in Guarong's hand right now. He's thinking. He's thinking really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't really see either. Uh, that said, I, I do really love these little slanted shelves I have, so we can get such a good look at the hand of uh, each player. Yes, can he we does just, opt can to we keep disagree? his hand, though. Can we just agree that this should exist at every tournament, every card game tournament? Especially uh, on feature matches, I believe. That is yeah. the biggest thing. Well, I mean, match yeah. You don't need it at the regular tables, but give, give us it at every feature match table for every game ever, please. Oh, every, every card game. Every card game. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, if you're, you're playing darts, you're not going to need it. But so, every card game, for sure. Gorong is going first here. We see two Hinos and Luchi. Very important in Mirror. He does have the brand new for his turn two play as well, along with a great eruption uh, for when he needs to play it. That's right. And now, okay. vice versa, going to Rail Zero. He is... Going second, that means he is on curve for the Kaido if, when he hits the Tendon, if he chooses to play it right away. Uh, he does have to turn one brand new play when it goes to his turn. And who knows, maybe he'll discard the uh, Borsalino to draw one first, discard something to draw one first before playing the brand new. Or he can play the brand new first. Oh, I always think about whether it's better to play a card first and then brand new, or brand new, then discard a card. I... Uh... That's an interesting question. I, I feel like, off the top of my head, it feels like it's kind of a wash, right? I mean, you're going to see those four cards either way, right? Mm -hmm. It's all a matter of personal preference as we take a moment of silence to reflect before the second game of the World Finals begins. Here we go. And it's time. First player is Quarrel. Going second is Rail Zero. Game all right. two. The pressure is on Kwang Rong. A win here in this game will make him the world champion. Rail Zero trying to stay alive, trying to tie up the series <laughs> in the Sakazuki Mirror, starting things off with a brand new. Uh, to those watching home, uh, the clock is each game gets 30 minutes. Yeah. So game one, you have 30 minute timer. Game two, you have a 30 minute timer. I mean, in Sakazuki Mirror, sometimes you need that full 30. <laughs> yeah, and then game three will also have a 30 minute timer. Yep. So, starts with brand new, takes the Kuzan, discarding the Borsalino. Because he saw the Kuzan, that means on turn two, that Kuzan can come down. And we've seen how impactful a Kuzan can be. If you can't remove it right away, you know, then your Kuzan helps remove their Kuzan. That is just a huge edge already. Sanji's peel off, it's used, and we've seen that be an impactful card as well for Quan Rong. Yep. It's a really good turn to play because when you play it like that, your opponent isn't responding. There's not much that you can, put, can do. Yeah, um, totally. 
Leader. You're not gonna see a, a eruption into a um Helm Blaze or right. possibly even a Helm uh, attack and then Helm Blaze and then even play in the second brand new. So All starts right, with attack Kuzan. and then plays the Kuzan to draw. He still has his leader effect to discard a card. We see two Hinas. Does he need to keep both Hina or does he want to discard something else? I think you can definitely trash one of the Hinas here, but that said. <laughs> That we do have said, a lot of cost reduction already. It yeah. discards a Kuzan because yeah. I already played one. I don't need a second one. I'm yeah, probably not going to play the second one. But here's the thing. He, there is potential in playing that second one because he can attack with the first one, use the Hound Blaze, then play a second one. The opponent yeah. now has to respond to both. That is an option. Starts with a 5. Mm -hmm. Reducing a brand, uh, one of them. Doesn't matter which one. And then goes the eruption. He does have the Luchi to remove both if he chooses to. Yeah. He draws another the... Sanji's peel off. Yep. And there's the Luchi. This does hit both. Yeah, and that's what you want to see if you're uh if you see the Kuzan on the other side. You gotta remove that right away. Letting the Kuzan get even one swing uh can start to be pretty devastating. Yes. Another great eruption. That's three great eruptions in hand. I mean, at least you know you're not going to be drawing into them, probably. <laughs> one. Sure. First one. But here's the thing. Because great eruptions used, we do have a Houndblaze. Houndblaze being bottom decking a Luchi is super strong in the mirror. Especially yeah. if your opponent doesn't have a second Luchi or multiple Luchi to, be, to recycle. Scars the Hina to draw. Rebecca. All right, now the combo is is uh, close to being online. Just need to find that Rob Lucci at this point. Yes. And second, draws another Hound Blaze. All right. There's the Hound Blaze. Blaze we talked about earlier. I feel like you're in a pretty comfortable spot as uh, Rails here. Yep, and AK to leader. Takes it. No trigger. Yeah. He, draws it. he takes a Kuzan off it in passing turn. There's nothing to play. Yep. Yeah. It's really it's unfortunate that there's right no now. characters on board on Real Zero side, though, despite being able to remove the board or Guan Rong. Yeah, I'm going to take that hit. <coughs> so, okay. five. Plays a Kuzan. And then a Sanji's peel off. This is perfect timing <laughs> for it. He's getting so much card advantage from that Sanji's peel off. Look at that hand size for Quan Rong. That this is, is amazing. This is actually playing Kaido before playing Kaido. Kind of, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're you're getting all the cards. You've gotten a total of what? Yeah, you do get a total of four, don't you, from two peel offs. And, and having that uh, Kuzan out there is pretty nice, too. It's been a strange early game, a very character light early game. But it has seemed to go in Guanrong's favor so because first, of that draw power. Right. Here's the thing. He is on 8. He can. Does he have a 7 cost per signal? I don't believe he does. He does not. He can remove the Kuzan. Yeah, there's another the question is how hand, he wants to but, remove the Kuzan. Yeah, I was going to say. You've got a Rob Lucci, you've got a, a Hound Blaze. You probably want to hold on to the Hound Blaze, I would guess, but we can go Ina Rob. What do you think? Does that feel too inefficient? Yeah, okay, I was going to say, that might feel a bit too inefficient, so we are going to use the, the Hound Blaze instead. So 9,000 like leader, that. he wants to push yeah. him, put him down to one. <coughs> this, he feels fine, he takes it because he has so many cards in his hand, he can uh, counter the later hits instead. Because a 9k is a lot, it does take numerous cars to get out of. Alright, yeah, and there's that 4 cost Porcelino coming down. But we have a 7 cost Porcelino on Guanrong's side that can easily remove it. Yep, 4 cost Porcelino is not protected against being bottom decked. And then he can go for a 7k swing, putting Rail Zero to 1 if he, or tries to put him to 1 if he chooses to do so. It's a large hand. That's an amazing hand. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 cards. <laughs> oh, wow. Dude. I tried to count as fast as I can. I could have been wrong. Hey, I'm There's, impressed, man. There it is. And then a 7K swing. Yep. 
yep. And Rails, I mean, you can see he's <coughs> head down, concentrating, but the nerves are definitely there. He, he, is, counter. he needs to counter. He doesn't want to go down to one and then yeah. play a Kaido. He wants to be able to go be as healthy as he can before playing it's, the Kaido. But like, it's so does funny he because... wants to play the Kaido here, or does he want to remove it using Rebecca Hinalucci? It's such a tough choice, right? Because normally you'd look at your hand size and be like, I'm feeling pretty good about this. You know, I've got six It looks like it's going to be Rebecca hand, Hinalucci. But... Starts with a 7k swing. Yeah, I think I think you have to. I think you do have to establish the board a little bit more that way. Yes. There's the Rebecca. Because now you're trying to put on pressure, right? Now you're saying, all right, well, do you have your removal? Let's find out. And there's the Rebecca Hinalucci. Yep. Okay. Or and then passing the combo. That. Yep. Now, well wrong, sir. Yeah, what'll be the draw? It's gonna be another Suru. We see... I believe a Borsalino, Mancheri... Uh, there's three... <laughs> Let's just peel off. Another... Let's just peel oh, no. off, yeah. He, okay, oh, he, he, oh, he cycled he it. Okay, I was gonna say. He discarded <laughs> it. He didn't use another... He, he, he discarded say. it using the leader effect. Yeah. I, mean, oh, it was I was funny. a little afraid for a moment. It was it was funny. You heard the Japanese commentator getting excited for a second there too. And then, oh, okay, he's just <laughs> <later cycle. laughs> Yeah, I, I seen that peel off right there. I was like, wait a second. Is he using another one? Is he discarding it? The triple peel off. All right, no. we have uh, the eruption. Yep. Uh, Mine's a Sabo. That's uh, you know, usually it's ended up being Sakazuki leader ability fodder here. He's gonna hound blaze to send the rob to the bottom of the deck. And a 5k swing. No, it's going to oh, no, be uh, more swing. than 5k swing. Yeah, I get, with that Hound Blaze, it's an 8k swing. Oh, uh, he bottom decks both the Luchi <sighs> and the Hina in this case. Wow. All right, what is Rails Nine have? cards in hand. <laughs> yeah. That's scary. Terrifying. But Check we do track. have a Rebecca Hina Luchi again. If he chooses, do so. Definitely do. Hmm. Yeah. I think uh, you just want to start with the leader attack. Yeah. And I mean, this is just sort of a good uh, a way to sort of feel your opponent out this turn. What are they going to do? <coughs> is going to be the counter with the, uh, the brand new. Yep. Now, uh, I do believe we saw an Ice Age on the end of the uh, table for Garong. Okay, yeah. Did he go for the Monster Play? Hmm. I do believe the Monster Play is better. Um, much better than the... And uh, looks like Rails agrees with you. They're going to pay right away for that ability. They'll send a couple to the bottom, and then, the bottom. and then, what do you Who's grab? Rebecca? Rebecca, of course, yeah. Hmm. So we know we have a Hina and Luchi on the bottom of the deck for Rail Zero. Yep. Yeah, the Hound Blazes, the uh, Borsalinos have been really coming at the right time for Quan Rong this game. Yep. Discards the Hina, plays Rebecca, grabs the Hina back, giving as little uh, information to your opponent as possible, and there's yep. the Luchi. Okay, so the combo comes through. You do manage to take out that seven cost for Salino and now over to Guanrock to see. Yep. However, Rails is only down to be. three cards left. Yeah, that's where it gets scary, right? And we saw the same thing. <coughs> it really does feel like that Sanji's peel off is making such a huge difference because hand size is so important in the mirror matchup. We see the Rebecca in the hands of Guanrong. Yeah. I mean when you have a hand this big, you're you're gonna pretty much have access to everything you want to every turn, it seems like. Yeah, and I believe that it's four Surus in hand. That's 8k counters. Every Sabo, Manshari, and wow. Rebecca, uh, Houndblaze, <laughs> and Ice Age on the end. He has that. access to pretty much anything he wants. Yeah. Counter for days. Yep. But what do you do to push? I think right now you just... Work on your removal Cars, game a little bit more. Manchary, and draws a Luchi. Wow. Okay, that feels pretty good. That 
That's the Rebecca Hina Lucci play right now if he chooses to do so. Starts with a Hound Blaze. Bottom decks, Man Sherry. Yep. Goes you don't want after the Hina, back. reducing the Hina. Does he keep it? Oh, box. And there it is. Rebecca! Hina! Yeah. Lucci! There he is. The combo. Comes back once again. Rebecca Hina Lucci. One more time with feeling. And, uh, or one more time with peel off this game, I suppose. But, back over to Rails now to see if there's a way for him to start to mount a bit of a comeback <laughs> in the game. He's got four cards in hand. That Kaido is going to be what hits the board this time. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it now. He didn't really have access to a whole lot else. Yeah, he doesn't have anything much to do. Uh, he drew a lot of counters okay, off. He drew 5k okay. worth in counter. He can yeah. discard a Borsnino here. All right, so this is a much better situation than he was in last game after he Kaido, right? That is the right? Hina. Yeah. So he can he can play the Mancheri next turn, get a Rebecca back, play the Rebecca, get a Luchi back, play the Hina, then Luch uh, Rebecca Hina Luchi once again. But now, Guanron, he needs to answer this Kaido. Mm -hmm. oh, the question is, is he able to answer the Kaido? I think you've got the potential. He does definitely has potential of answering the Kaido, as he does yeah. have two, um... Oh, okay. I think Sabo, Plays does he Sabo. draw? Yeah. He drew the Hound Blaze! What? Oh my gosh. Alright, alright. He drew the Hound Blaze! That is the out <laughs> to the Kaido! That's absolutely wild. I mean, we, we that's the first Sabo we've seen played all day. And using it for that card draw to uh, find exactly what you need and... I mean, man, I, I feel like this is just a showcase of what makes this deck so deadly. It is it is a card draw. It is a cycling. It is the ability to just go find what you want so consistently that makes Sakazuki just the head and shoulders best deck in the meta right now. I have to say, Rojo did find a very good timing to play the Kaido. However, totally. Goro does have the double Ace Age, and he does have the... Um... <clears throat> Double Ice Age into the Hound Blaze to remove the Kaido. First oh, it was stuck in my throat for a moment. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. 7k coming in via the uh, Rob Luchi. And what will Rails do? Again, only 6 cards in hand. And we know he has a good amount of counter, but you're going to have to use a good amount of counter. You're looking at 3k to avoid this. Avoid this damage here. Use not to take... Nope. Yeah, knows that he will have to sacrifice at least 2 cards from hand to avoid losing <laughs> life. Mm -hmm. It's a tough choice. You see him kind of shaking his head there. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and drop the two uh, Tashigis for 4k and counter. Yeah, absolutely. To protect it. Yeah. He doesn't want to go down to one yet. Yeah. Keyword, yet. Ice Age number one. Ice Age number two. Oh my god. And Houndblaze! Oh. That hurts so bad if you're Rails. It's so painful. There it is. There's a swing. Yep. And he didn't even get to swing with the Kaido. He still ends up losing a life anyway. Here Why is the, the biggest thing that this happened last turn. Sabo got played. The yep. board is protected from Luchi. Luchi yep. cannot remove the board. I, it's so funny because we were talking about the amount of Sabos in Sakazuki's deck. It, it ranges from 1 to 3. A lot of players, I feel like, lately have have been gearing, uh, excuse me, towards the one more, but that one Sabo is making a world of difference right now. Maybe a world championship worth of difference for Quan Rong. So go with a brand new, he's looking for cards. He's, there is a 2k. That's really good. You want to grab a 2k. Yeah. You want to grab counters now. He has two blockers in his hand. Hmm. He can play the Rebecca to grab a 2k and then play the Orselino as well. Because he knows he cannot play um The Combo. Luchi afterwards. He cannot go yeah. he cannot do the full combo. You can't do the combo. You gotta you got a bottom deck. You can't KO. Sabo's protecting your opponent's board. So you need to protect 
that life with as much as possible. And Goron is down to two cards in his hand. That is very unlikely for Goron to be able to remove multiple blockers as well. Since he did use Double Ice Age and the Helm Blaze. Ran out uh, of if I'm not wrong, Goron has a Suru for sure. I'm not sure about the second card. He has at least one Suru. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. He goes for a 6k swing. Oh, so Suru, it looks like Suru and Rebecca. Alright. This is Rebecca on the rail side. He grabs. Mm -hmm. We did see the 2k uh, are off of the brand new. So you can grab the Shigi back. Yeah. I'm getting that 2k counter. Does he want to play so useful. extra body or not? He, he does play it. And what's the to pass turn? Flying Dawn, yeah. All right, so you do have the uh, Bartolomeo, which is, again, not a, not a card you see played very often in this matchup, but, <coughs> you know, now that it's out, he draws. it's something to kind of worry about, yeah. I can't see with the hand in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell what he drew. He drew a Kuzan, discards oh, the Kuzan okay, to draw. Yeah, I think we have to. A Hina. Hmm. He does already have a you know in trash though. This is a close um, game right now. Very very close. Yeah. One Starts. life to one life. Can you just get through with enough attacks? Your opponent has four he cards can. in hand. Rebecca here yeah. Lucci. He can go he can. for. Starts with six. Six at the Hina. Or six six and maybe reducing the cost on the Hina. See. At the Hina. And, yeah, and it okay, looks like it was at the Hina. All at right. the Hina, reduce Hina, I believe. Yep. Six at leader. 2k. Three cards in hand. Alright, does he have it? Oh, uh, yeah, Rebecca. Rebecca, Hina, Luchi coming down, coming right down. Does yep. remove both if he chooses mm -hmm. to. Oh, no, he doesn't. He goes oh. for a force leader saying, alright. You gotta deal with three blockers now. Yeah, he is just trying to set himself up for the win next turn. He doesn't need to win this turn. He can win next turn instead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's it's the age-old question, you know, do you take like a, you know, what, 60%, 70% chance to win now, or like a, in your eyes, a 99% chance to win next turn, right? Try to lock it down, and, and when a world championship is on the line, you cannot take chances that you don't need to take. And he does not have a Rebecca in hand, I believe. Yeah, it's a little bit rough. Rail's trying to stay alive here in game number two. While his opponent Guanrong on the verge of going undefeated in the World Championships here. Potentially one turn away from the end of the entire tournament. Those last checks through the trash really want to make sure that you have a, a great sense of everything that's available for your opponent <coughs> to play. Yeah, there are no more draws left in 4 real 0 We remember yeah. there was a um, Mancheri, there was a Porcelino, there was a Suru, and an Ice Age. Mm -hmm. All right. The most you can do now play? is play the Mancheri to get one card back, but that one card can only do so much. I mean, just such mastery from Guanrong with this deck too. Just knowing, all right, now's the time where I just establish those extra blockers. The fact that the Sabo is on the board at all, uh, when it came down, the protection was so important. It's 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 been a really really great great series, great tournament from Guanrong. Yes. All right, yeah, gonna counter that okay, one counters. card in hand though. That is tricky. Six at Luchi. Lock Rebecca, because we don't need a Rebecca. Yep. Alright. Rail's moving fast now, knows exactly what he wants. Gonna grab that. Uh, well, obviously, put those two at the bottom first. Mm -hmm. Then, gets grabs Rebecca. Rebecca. Yep, yep. Play the Rebecca. Grabs Tashigi back. Okay, yeah. Gets Just wants that counter, you know? He's getting as many cards back as possible. Here's the thing. Guarong can opt to 
or wipe here. He can remove. He can try to remove board and go for a, another turn if he chooses to do so. Yeah. Hmm. So it starts with a 5 at brand new. Alright. Let that one go. Girl's all too eager, in fact, five. to drop that. Yeah. At the Manchery, reducing the Bartolomeo. Hmm. Alright. Now the board that Rails presented last turn requires a response now. And seven at the seven K swing, yeah, at life. I'm gonna take a blocker probably, right? You don't want to give up two cards from hand right now, do you? But you don't want to give up uh, Bartolomeo either, because the moment no. you give it up, you have no chance of winning because that is a potential attacker. That's your attack. He takes yeah, the exactly. hit. Ooh, bold move, and it's a it hound blaze. It is a hound blaze. Okay, that might end up being important. <coughs> Does he turn the blockers sideways? Do you oh, dare? Five cards in hand? I don't know. That seems like an awful risk. That's a Rebecca risk. in hand, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Sabo swinging in for, uh, I believe that's seven, right? Yeah. Seven, yep. Counters. Two cards out of the hand. Yeah. Rebecca and a, and a uh, Borsolino in the hand right now for Quan Rung. The four cost Borsolino. You can play Borsolino. both blockers, or yep. you can play the Rebecca and then Luchi, uh, Bartolomeo. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the uh, Tashigi. Takes the Tashigi. Yeah. Thinking, thinking. He can play the Borsolino from hand and play mm -hmm. and have another blocker. Yeah. He's one. He's deciding whether to attack with that Borsolino or not. He turns sideways and plays the second Borsolino passing turn. One card in hand. Wow. One card in hand, but... And draws a but Hina. four blockers. One turns sideways, though, so three blockers. Yeah, there is that Hina. There's a Houndblaze. He needs Tyson. another Houndblaze right now. And he finds... Not a Houndblaze. Oh, okay, a brand new... Hmm. Zero life for rails right now, too. He needs to find a hound blaze or any chance. Nothing oh, there. Oh, and a whiff! Wow. With that nothing hurts. off of there. That hurts. He just going knows in. Knows he loses, so he just goes, all right. Yep. Big I swing go. with the... Uh... Big swing. And then passing turn. Yep. And Kwang Ron knows he's going to just start... Start swinging this block, he's just going to concede, and that's Quanrong undefeated right. through the World Championships, and he is your One Piece World Championships winner. Wow. 15 and 0! Oh. That is insane. What a run, not, th not only through his regional, but through today as well. You can see the relief on his face, but that was seriously a Sakazuki masterclass all day long. Incredibly impressive play. Very, very impressive. Yeah. A 2 0. I can, can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I mean, it's. Right? It's it's not just winning, Ying, right? It's winning in the way he did. Incredible stuff. He was dominant throughout the whole event, dominant in the playoffs, dominant in the finals. That's right. It wasn't just the win, it was the presence and how he won. Yeah, you know, again, just the poise. I think the big thing is is the the Sanji's peel off, knowing when to play that, just valuing that hand size kind of more than anything else. You know, really, really helped. I I loved his list in terms of helping get that little hand advantage in the mirror. <coughs> it's not just that. It looks like Sanji's peel off plays very well in that mirror match. It looks like because he's able to grab advantage while. From moving your opponent's board. This, that right. three dawn is very awkward to use in a lot of situations, but he was able to use those three dawns efficiently by getting gaining more and more advantage instead of using those three dawns for an additional attack or uh, having a higher power attack. So it's not, uh, using these dawns 
four more cards in my hand. And having more cards in my hand means I have more chances of, of drawing those Rebecca's, drawing those Lucy's, drawing those uh, Hina's, having the removal needed for any situation possible. Wow. Matthew's still got his white gloves on. He's ready to hand over a trophy, it looks like. But what what a day. It is uh we we've been casting all night here. It's four thirty AM for me, it's five thirty AM for you, but I have been sustained by pure one piece card game hype. And it has been a such a great series of matches to watch. Always fun to watch any game at the highest level. I feel like we really saw that tonight. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So as we yeah, they're, they're talking about how um, Sanji Pilaf was gaining more and more advantage. Yeah, I mean we were talking about the same thing, right? I mean that's uh, that it that does seem like kind of the MVP card in that particular series. But as we as we sort of uh, bask in the uh, the glow of the end of the tournament. What are your thoughts here? What what uh, just going over the last you know about ten hours or so that we've been watching games of uh, One Piece with a little Digimon in there. What uh, what stands out to you as we, we get our players on stage here? I mean, one of the, mo the most stood out game to me was the Clive versus the um, our EU representative, uh, Real yeah, Zero, Rose, yeah. our, in Swiss play. That was an amazing game. That was something that stood out a lot. Outside of that, of course, that Wang Rong with his dominant plays, dominant throughout the whole event. Yep, leading the way onto the stage, we have our top three Quan Rong in the middle, Clyde from North America in third place on the right there, and then the runner-up from EU, there he is, Rail Zero, taking the silver medal this time around, but uh, three really excellent players. We, there we go. We have our first, second, and third. Warong is first. Our world champion, our pirate king for the first season. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Real Zero, second place, our EU representative, and Clyde, third place, and a representative. Yeah, it gets that sweet uh, bronze Luffy card. Very cool. He's even allowed to touch it with his bare hands. Wow. He's earned it. Of course. Here we go. Yep. Looks like we're going to have uh, Gavin handing over the uh, second place trophy and the uh, silver Luffy card. It's bittersweet, right? For Rail Zero. Like, you want to go home with the win, but, you know, coming in second, coming in runner up. Out of the entire world, that is not a bad result. Not bad, not bad at all. Like this is, he came in second in Europe. Now he came in second at Worlds. Mm -hmm. There and it is. Quan Rong. We have Maki Yu uh, presenting our first place winner with the trophy and the winner card. <laughs> Pause for photo. There we go. And what a moment. What a moment for Quan Rong after all the games, after all the learning, after all the studying, all the stress, all the pressure, able to conquer it all and, and not just win, but win with dominance. A 7-0 in, uh, or an 8-0 rather, on the weekend. All right, we interviewed our right players. There. Yeah. Obviously a little disappointed. I wanted to win the whole thing, but third place is still really good. Um, yeah, you'll see me next year. Short He's already saying it! Spy <laughs> says you will see him next year. We expect to see him at the road stage again. Thank you, thank you. Making a decoration. And now we go over to our runner-up. Still chatting with his finals opponent. I'm a bit disappointed. I really hope to like, go all the way and win the finals. And I got demolished too. To zero, but Quan Rong played really well, so <laughs> massive congratulations to him. And yeah, also like Jackson, hope to hope to be here next year as well. 
All right. Making the proclamation that he'll be there uh, next year. I, I wouldn't say got demolished. I mean, uh, I, I think he definitely put up a, a, a strong battle in that finals, but uh, it's got to feel that way. Nobody wants to go down on two. Oh, yeah. One more question. I mean, yeah, he was an amazing opponent. Definitely the best player in the room today. Just went completely undefeated, so... Yeah, not much debate. <laughs> there you go. Looks like they asked him for a, a couple words about his uh, finals yeah. opponent. He asked for thoughts on Goron. He says, yep. Thank you. Completely dominated and the best player in the room today. I mean, I mean the dude went uh, undefeated. What more can you say, you know? <laughs> yes. Definitely not an easy feat to do. I feel very happy today and can play with those top players uh, around the world. I feel very proud and I, I really appreciate this opportunity and thank you Bandai. And now I want to say, Malaysia best! <laughs> <laughs> Malaysia <Hard to>, best! <laughs> I mean, hard to argue with that right now. I mean, uh, he stands alone. Number one in the world in the One Piece card game. And not only that, again, going undefeated. In the World Championship, incredible performance for Guanon from Malaysia. Yeah. Third place, Jackson on Fly on Sakazuki. For Broye um, on Sakazuki going second, and Guanon being first with Sakazuki. Right. Now, are we going to talk with our uh, players a little more? Uh, a little bit of discussion, perhaps? But hey, what, what do you think? Uh, I, I think the first uh, World Championship was, uh, was a pretty big success. I, I think the games were extremely good. Yeah. The games were played, like you said, extremely well. Um, there were phenomenal plays throughout the whole tournament. Yeah, and I mean uh, it's it's been fun. You know, you and I got to be at the uh, North American, uh, the U.S. Nationals rather. Uh, got to cast the finals there with uh, with that man on the screen right now, with Gavin actually. And uh, now getting to follow that into the finals, it's it's just been a great journey, and it, it makes me hype for OP6. Makes me hype for uh, a next uh, another year of One Piece card game. And we've got a lot of a lot of stuff to look forward to for sure. Yep. Maybe Mac and Rue will uh, come and cast with us next time. <laughs> he said there's a truly amazing plays. He wants to come back next year. <laughs> we blame him. <laughs> as a player, maybe, huh? He wants to be here as a player. Alright, alright. Alright, so another thing to look forward to. I can be coming back to the World Championship as a player next year, apparently. Well, he hopes so. He hopes so. so. <laughs> Alright, well it looks like we're gonna close that there. I'm not sure if we're coming back to us or not, but uh We have Guarong so. taking the championships. Alright, look at that we crowd. We have the crowd, look at the crowd. There look at all the smiles in the faces of everyone. Yep. A final wave from Quanrong as they exit the stage. And what a what a series, what a tournament that was. Yeah. And that means that means that uh, we'll come back to us for a moment to uh, close things out. Here we are again, Doe here with uh, Ying Hong, and we got to uh, the, have the pleasure of casting this for you tonight over the last 10-ish uh, hours or so. It's uh, been a lot of Sakazuki mirrors. It's been a lot of fun games. It's been a lot of extremely high-level play, and, and incredibly, one uh, amazing undefeated player, Quan Rong from Malaysia, winning it all. Uh, Ying, as we close things out here, what are your final thoughts on the night? Final thoughts? Uh, I can't. I don't really have much to say besides 
Goron being the most dominant person, I'm going to repeat that so much. I repeated that so many times so far already. I, hard he's, not just, to. he's just way too good today. He was yeah. the best player today. He was the best player in Malaysia when he won. And now he's continued to be the best player. We hope to see him back again next year and see if he can have a repeat. Wow, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, there's so much to talk about with next year as well. I mean, obviously, North America something coming so close to sweeping both Digimon and One Piece. You've got Japan hosting, of course, the World Championship. Six players in there, and they don't win it. There's a, there's a lot of energy out there in terms of coming back, getting a bit of revenge, some vindication here to try to knock Malaysia off of their throne here at the One Piece Championship. So we'll see what happens. Either way, like I said before, a lot to look forward to. Uh, big thanks to our production scene behind the scenes, putting everything together, putting this broadcast together for you tonight. We hope you enjoyed it. So until next time, uh, from here at the Bandai Card Games Fest World Tour Final for One Piece, Doa, and Ying Hong, saying goodnight, go get some sleep, get set to play some more One Piece, have a great time, and we'll see you next time. Good night.